Hi guys. I would like to invite you to the audiobook service where we upload more than 300 hours of different audiobooks a week, link in details in the video description. Chapter 151 Missing Check-in Point Outside the Greenwater City at the intersection of the expressway, an off-road pickup truck revved its engine to the max, wildly drifting towards them. As it approached, the exaggerated 180-degree spin of the vehicle narrowly stopped just in time, with Zhuang Qinyan and Fang Zhishu already waiting for a while. Song Ku leaned out from the passenger seat, Old Fang, hurry up. Ever since Zhuang Qinyan stopped calling him Dr. Fang and switched to Old Fang, everyone else had followed suit. Fang Zhishu briskly hopped onto the pickup truck. His gaze scanned inside and saw that the driver's seat was now occupied by Lu Xiaoyu it was the same car he had been driving earlier. Su Xing was seated in the back, with Lin Yuyu supporting someone in the middle. Feng Jishu breathed a sigh of relief upon seeing them. The reason for their urgency was because Su Cha had been injured. As a close combat expert of the offensive type ability, clashes resulting in injuries and bloodshed were unavoidable. However, this time Su Cha was genuinely unlucky. He had been sent flying by the zombie bear in a direction where there happened to be protruding steel bars. Despite Su Cha's exceptional reflexes allowing him to twist away in time to avoid a fatal puncture, he still collided with the joint, causing his whole body to vibrate intensely. After a quick examination, Fang Jishu swiftly said, He's broken two ribs, but luckily, they are not displaced. I will fix them so that they will not affect the movement. A bright white energy flowed from Fang Jishu's Palm San A level healing ability significantly easing Su Cha's pain, and his complexion returned to normal. Lin Yuyu reclined the seat, squatting in front of Su Cha. She gently pressed around the wound, saying, Does it hurt? If it does, speak up sister will help you feel better. After knowing that everything was fine, her tightly pursed red lips relaxed, and she even had the mind to tease Su Cha. Su Cha, at a height of one. However, after the tension, he still crouched down, allowing Lin Yuyu to examine him up and down. It's really okay, he paused and added in a low voice, don't joke about it. Meanwhile, Zhuang Qinyan didn't hurry to get on the car. He took out a bottle of spray from his bag and handed it to Song Ku. Here. What's this? Molecular deodorizer. I thought the captain might really need it. Song Ku stared at Zhuang Qinyan, momentarily unable to tell whether he was genuinely giving a helpful reminder or teasing her. Ever since Zhuang Qinyan had his leg surgery, he visibly became more cheerful, often teasing Song Ku and frequently getting on her nerves. Song Ku, expressionless, unscrewed the bottle and aimed it at Zhuang Qinyan, giving a vigorous spray. Song Kiki. Zhuang Qinyan raised his hand to block, but with little effect. He used his forearm to hold down the wheelchair, raised his right leg slightly, and made a half-rising motion. Unfortunately, he had little support and fell back down. Song Ku slammed the car door shut, leaning against the window, smiling triumphantly at him, the little dimples filled with joy at the corners of her cheeks. Beep beep the driver, Lu Xiaoyu, couldn't bear watching the scene from the driver's seat and bluntly honked the horn. Hey, have you forgotten? We're still in a marathon. Greenwater City doesn't have a zombie tide, nor does it boast an ecological scenic area. Its modernization is commendable, with well-established infrastructure, and there aren't any wild animals, reducing the likelihood of mutated ferocious beasts, Zhuang Qinyan calmly analyzed as he viewed the footage captured by the drone. It seems like there's nothing particularly noteworthy about it, Lin Yuyu frowned, showing difficulty. So, where could its check-in point be? After studying the city map for a while, they found it challenging to make an effective judgment based on the information they currently possessed. Let's stick to the old method of searching for anomalous data, or else we'll have to search the city. Lin Yuyu inadvertently switched to the thermal imaging mode with a tap of her finger. The map instantly shrank, revealing the overall view of the surrounding areas. As an essential transportation hub in the eastern part of the Alliance, Greenwater City bordered three C districts to the north and south and was surrounded by the D districts in the east and west. At this moment, most of its neighboring areas appeared in dark gray a sign indicating the city's occupation by the zombie tide. 
I have a question, Fang Jishuan spoke after a moment of silence, is the number of refugees in Greenwater City too high? According to the thermal imaging display, both Greenwater City and nearby shelters were surrounded by a multitude of colorful heat sources. Despite the real-time view showing refugees fleeing, the sight and numbers were enough to chill one's heart. Exactly, Zhuang Qinyan nodded slowly, and it's increasing. As he spoke, he paused, faintly sensing why Ilya chose Greenwater City. The off-road pickup raced ahead, quickly approaching Greenwater City. They could already see the towering walls and iron mesh fences from a distance. However, the road gradually narrowed, and the flow of people became increasingly dense. When passing by shelters, Lu Xiaoyu had to slow down the vehicle. Countless refugees instantly swarmed the pickup truck, surrounding it completely. Some grasped the bumper, attempting to climb onto the roof, while others desperately banged on the glass windows, using hand gestures to plead with those inside to open the doors. In such a situation, V587's vehicle could hardly move an inch. Looking up, they were surrounded by faces in panic from all directions, elderly individuals with tears streaming down their faces. Women whose disheveled hair held infants tightly, and aggressive men punching and kicking the vehicle while yelling, open the door. The pickup truck had one-way tinted glass, rendering the outside situation obscure to those inside, but those within could clearly see what was happening. What do they want? Su Xing angrily shouted, almost as if in response, the loud banging of a hammer striking the car echoed. They want to get into the city, Fang Zhishu sighed. They want us to take them in. We can't open the doors, Zhuang Qinyan said coldly. We can't open the doors. He slowed his speech, repeating the words with firmness. Silence enveloped the people inside the car. Song Ke's long eyelashes drooped down silently, offering no opposition. Zhuang Qinyan was right. Wanting to save people also meant assessing whether they had the capability. These refugees were undoubtedly in a dire situation, but one car couldn't save them all. Opening the doors at this moment would only lead to greater chaos, with unpredictable consequences. Accelerate. Charge through, Zhuang Qinyan spoke sternly. The engine roared louder. Some of the refugees hesitated and backed off, but more daring ones clung to the roof, banging it with hard objects. Lu Xiaoyu's mechanical arm forcefully pressed the accelerator. The off-road pickup truck surged forward like a sharp axe splitting through water, unstoppable, causing those blocking the path to startle and dodge, watching helplessly as the truck sped toward the city gate. Greenwater City was completely sealed off, covered by a thick iron mesh outside the city walls, with high-voltage electric currents shimmering. An official in Municipal Hall uniform stood on a lookout post three to four meters above the ground, holding a megaphone, shouting hoarsely. We're already overloaded with the refugees we've accepted. We can't allow more people in. Please, everyone, wait a little longer. Please be patient. If there's any extra space, we'll make sure to let everyone in at the earliest opportunity. The city gate was crowded with refugees unwilling to leave even smashing the horn had no effect. Zhuang Qinyan opened the public address system and spoke upwards, we're participants in the throne race competition, please allow us entry into the city. Hearing the words entry into the city, the surrounding crowd became instantly excited, pushing forward madly, managing to move the off-road pickup truck half a meter. The official was in a panic, adamantly refusing to open the gate, shouting, permission granted to enter, find your own way in. Find their own way in that meant finding their own way. Song Ku sighed. The sunroof of the pickup truck opened, and with swift movements, Song Ku threw a section of a spiritual weapon grappling hook that hooked onto the entrance of the lookout post. Then, with a single hand, she pulled up Zhuang Qinyan. They soared into the air, Song Ku using the wall to propel herself up, showcasing her agility to everyone like a skilled acrobat. Su Cha lifted Lin Yuyu, following the same procedure, closely behind Song Ku's landing. With Su Xing and Fang Zhishu held by Lu Xiaoyu on each side, his mechanical arms extended, grabbing the wall, and lifting them up, safely landing them atop. In just a few seconds, all seven members of V587 arrived at the lookout post. Before the official finished his sentence of find your own way in, a row of people suddenly appeared in front of him. 
We're in, Song Ku said calmly. The official, holding the megaphone, stared in amazement, that was pretty quick. After the completion of the player verification process, Song Ku glanced once more at the crowded masses below the city walls before turning away. The situation inside Greenwater City wasn't much better than outside. The influx of people from nearby cities had overwhelmed it. Streets and alleys were lined with makeshift tents, refugees sleeping on the ground, enduring harsh conditions. The atmosphere was bleak, filled with anxiety and fear. Wanting to emulate their strategy in Rainbow Cloud City by finding the check-in point drone, V-587 found that the committee might have become wary and retrieved the drones. Besides the filming drone, Lu Xiaoyu couldn't detect any useful data. They spent half a day circling within the city but found no anomalies. Now what do we do? Song Ku asked. Zhuang Qinyan lowered his gaze towards the visible refugee camps and uttered a single word. Wait. If he guessed correctly, the check-in point would soon manifest on its own. Outside Greenwater City, shortly after V-587 entered, several steamships and floating cars followed suit. The gathering refugees grew increasingly agitated, unable to contain their angry queries. Why can they go in? Let us in, the zombie tide is coming, let us in. Open the doors. The officials from the municipal hall shouted themselves hoarse, but the refugees, enveloped in the shadow of the zombie tide, had lost their rationality completely. With eyes reddened, they pushed forward blindly, unwilling to touch the high-voltage electric fence, instead, colliding with the lower protective barriers. Boom! A deafening noise reverberated as those in the front, propelled by their momentum, unexpectedly fell, but the refugees behind were oblivious, continuing their frenzied push, trampling their compatriots mercilessly. The official on the lookout post staggered, and bits of wall debris fell. Armed soldiers aimed at the crowd below, uncertain where to engage. The sturdy barriers gave way, the city gates teetered, and thousands upon thousands of refugees, seeing a glimmer of hope, broke free, rushing madly towards Greenwater City. From a high vantage point, the mass of people, distorted figures running amok, bore no distinction from the zombie tide. Inside the city, Song Ku and the others received a system prompt, Greenwater City check-in point has appeared. Chapter, 152 Song Ku White-Eyed Wolf Charge Just charge in and you'll survive. Don't push, stop pushing. Two completely opposite voices rang out simultaneously. The high-pressure iron net had already twisted and deformed. Those at the front charged forward like falling dominoes, pinned down under the weight, unable to move. They convulsed from head to toe, foaming at the mouth, shrieking in agony, instantly meeting their demise, electrocuted. Yet, the following tide of refugees continued frenziedly, trampling over the bodies of their compatriots, striving to cross over the tall wall. Under wave after wave of impact, the outer wall of Greenwater City collapsed under unbearable pressure, and the swarming refugees finally surged in. Just above the pile of victims, a radiant holographic projection descended, bearing the seal of Greenwater City. From afar, it appeared like a flower blooming from corpses a malevolent blossom nurtured by flesh and blood. Mass hysteria, Zhuang Qinyan spoke with a somber face, explaining the horrifying phenomenon from a psychological perspective. When individuals with similar demands gather and become part of a group, their behavior no longer bears individual responsibility. Normal constraints disappear, and they become blindly obedient, cruel, paranoid, and fanatical, resorting to violence and aggression to fulfill their own desires. Greenwater City is finished, Zhuang Qinyan said coldly. With its defenses breached, Greenwater City lay wide open, akin to a vulnerable infant, susceptible to being obliterated by even a small-scale wave of corpses. After we check in, we leave, Song Ku decided firmly. The seven individuals turned back towards the direction of the city gate. Song Ku hurried like the wind. After scaling the city wall, she leaped into the air. Her oversized coat fluttered in the wind as she landed lightly on top of the pile of corpses. Her feet touched the warm bodies, blood instantly soaking through her shoes. The bodies, dead from the stampede, had already piled up several tens of meters high, extending over an area of about 200 meters in diameter. 
However, the checkpoint was buried at the very bottom of the corpse mountain. Song Kook conjured a shovel and began digging. As she dug, her eyes inadvertently met those of a girl. The girl appeared to be about the same age as her, pinned down by a dozen or so people. Her left half twisted unnaturally into a contorted mass, weakly pleading for help from Song Koo, save save me. Song Koo fell silent for two seconds, then discarded the shovel, using her hands to peel away the layers of bodies to drag the girl out. Even though she knew in her heart that even if she freed her, the girl wouldn't survive. Her hands quickly became covered in sticky, fresh blood and fragmented innards. Once the survivor regained her freedom, she weakly smiled at Song Ku, thank. Before she could finish her words, a rumbling particle cannon descended from the sky, striking the pile of bodies, its explosion engulfing Song Ku and the girl in an instant. Song Ku. Captain. Sister. Members of the V-587 on the other side shouted loudly. The glaring light gradually faded away, leaving behind gaping holes in the pile of corpses caused by the explosion. Song Ku crawled out from the shattered wreckage, barely recognizable, yet miraculously unharmed. However, as she looked down, the girl who had just been there was now blown to pieces by the blast. Song Ku closed her eyes, refusing to look at her anymore, swiftly turning her gaze towards the attackers. Apart from V-587, several other teams had swiftly arrived, including the reorganized Anna Knights. Despite the severe blow to their strength after Song Ku single-handedly took down their ace, Sai Ong, they remained formidable opponents not to be underestimated. Members of the Anna Knights were using heavy weaponry to clear the area. These robotic entities seemed impatient, blasting openings with particle cannons only to have new bodies cover the gaps. They resorted to jumping onto the city walls, facing the surging civilians, ruthlessly using their abilities to massacre, limbs flying, and bodies torn apart. The Anna Knights showed no emotion, treating it like exterminating a bunch of inconspicuous cockroaches, violently tearing down defenses, steadily approaching their checkpoint. There was a momentary confusion in Song Ku's eyes. What were they doing? Was this right? Before entering the throne race, all participants had signed waivers, acknowledging the risk of death with every victory they sought. As long as it meant winning, any means were deemed justifiable. But this wasn't killing zombies this was damn it, it was killing people, an outright massacre. Song Ku's fists clenched tighter as she abruptly leaped onto the fractured wall, her cold, sharp movements driving back the refugees who were still pressing forward. Don't come any closer. Move back. Those at the front realized the danger and tried to escape, fear evident on their faces. However, the refugees rushing from the shelter remained oblivious, heedlessly shoving forward, inadvertently sending countless compatriots to their demise. Zhuang Qinyan looked up at Song Ku from a higher vantage point, one hand pressed tightly against his forehead. This couldn't continue if the refugee tide didn't recede, they wouldn't be able to approach the checkpoint. He rapidly recalled the map of Greenwater City. Aside from the main gate, there were three other exits on the east, west, and north sides. Open the side gates, let them in. Lu Xiaoyu and the others instantly grasped his intention. They dispersed, using their abilities to attack the defensive line. Greenwater City was beyond saving sooner or later, it would be overrun by the uncontrollable refugees. Their immediate task was to swiftly evacuate the crowd congested at the main gate, preventing further stampede incidents. Sounds of the city walls collapsing echoed from the east and west sides, accompanied by choking clouds of smoke and dust. Zhuang Qinyan mobilized his awakened energy, his commanding voice resonating clearly above Greenwater City, exerting pressure, listen, everyone. The main gate is sealed off. There are new entrances one kilometer to the east and two kilometers to the southwest. If you want to enter the city, head there. The entrance capacity is limited. Seize the opportunity. Whoever runs fast will survive. Human nature probably couldn't tolerate words like limited or restricted. As Zhuang Qingyan's voice echoed, the refugees at the rear slowed down, hesitated for a moment, then turned and ran to the sides. It was like a miraculous scene from Moses parting to see the blocked crowd automatically diverted, dispersing at an extremely fast pace. With the release at the back, 
the pressure ahead suddenly decreased, and the number of trampled bodies stopped increasing. Song Ku had just breathed a sigh of relief when suddenly curses came from behind, and a row of particle cannons fired at her. What the hell are you guys doing? If you don't want to compete, then quit quickly. I've had it with you for a long time. Song Ku raised the cold, sharp saw to deflect the attack, glanced up, and saw members of the Anna Knights glaring at her viciously. Her brow furrowed in confusion for a moment, but then she was astonished to realize that the check-in point, previously buried beneath the trampled bodies, had vanished. But she quickly understood. Since it was a check-in point nourished by bloodshed, as the violence dispersed, the checkpoint naturally disappeared. You just wait for me. Aware of Song Ku's prowess, the Anna Knights didn't want to confront her head-on at this moment. They only left threatening words behind and departed. The influx of refugees into the city had nowhere to go. Gradually, they transformed from lost lambs to fierce wolves. They ignited parked vehicles with gasoline, shattered the glass of storefronts along the streets, and even broke into and invaded the homes of terrified residents. Extreme anger and fear drowned out the rationality of these individuals. They were no longer refugees but had transformed into outright rioters. Malice brewed incessantly within them the blade of death would always fall. If they couldn't escape doomsday, then everyone would perish together. Song Ku gazed ahead, noticing a projection descending from a certain spot in the high sky, disappearing the next instant, only to reappear in another direction. The location of the check-in point kept changing, with the shortest stay lasting just a few seconds. Split up, Song Ku said, and reached the check-in point as quickly as possible. Amidst blaring alarms and shouts, Song Ku maneuvered through the panicked crowd. Vehicles set ablaze careened wildly, and if she wasn't careful, she'd find herself face to face with them, triggering raging fires. She narrowly dodged to the roadside, narrowly avoiding disaster. Girl Ku, it's you a ragged old man suddenly grabbed her. You're girl Ku, right? Song Ku paused, staring at the old man for two seconds before recognizing him. Grandpa Cheng. Old Man Cheng, in an excited tone, tightened his grip on her wrist. It's really you, girl Ku. This is so good, so good. He kept repeating so good as his thin fingers clenched tighter, as if afraid she would vanish. Now you're an awakener, you've made something of yourself. I saw you in that competition, I knew you would come, you must have a way. Quickly, take grandpa away from here, find a safe place Old Man Cheng's eyes gleamed, his speech fast and urgent. Chapter, 153 Song Ku White-Eyed Wolf After leaving District F-177, Old Man Cheng's feverish son mutated into a zombie on the starship and was killed by other passengers. His daughter-in-law, upon reaching District C, ran away with the money and grandchild when he wasn't looking. Fortunately, Old Man Cheng had already moved his funds. He had planned to retire peacefully in District C, but soon after settling down, the zombie tide arrived, destroying the city where he resided. Having fallen into despair and near the vicinity of Greenwater City, Song Ku's appearance reignited hope within him. No, no, Song Ku slowly shook her head, resolutely pulling her hand away. Indeed, her wrist was red from his grip. I still need to compete. Old Man Cheng's expression turned cold in an instant. Why not? Don't you want to help Grandpa? Song Ku sighed inwardly. Old Man Cheng still saw her as that naive girl from District F, wanting her to abandon the competition, leave her companions, and abandon a zombie king that could threaten the next city, just to take him to a safe place. How could someone be so selfish? Song Ku's reluctance to dwell on the past didn't mean he could manipulate her again. She didn't bother saying more she turned to leave a passerby accidentally bumped into Old Man Cheng's back, causing him to stumble. At that moment, a surveillance drone flew by, capturing a close-up shot of the two. Old Man Cheng suddenly leaped up, his aged face directed at the camera of the unmanned aerial vehicle. The screen flickered, displaying his extreme indignation. Song Ku, you white-eyed wolf. I've raised you with hardship. I'm your grandpa, yet you'd watch me die, you'd watch me die in front of you. The refugees in Greenwater City were busy escaping for their lives, indifferent to the spectacle before them. 
However, across the screen, Oldman Chang's actions stirred a commotion, not just among the viewers in the Eastern Alliance but also Ferrara, inciting outrage. Anti-fans, standing on the moral high ground, pointed fingers, dot. Even ignoring her own grandpa, didn't expect Captain V587 to be this kind of person. She seems strong, but her heart is so dark. Regretting voting for her. Saving someone in passing, why can't she be a bit kinder? You're not my grandpa. Song Ku halted her steps, her voice lowering to an icy point, each word enunciated. She initially intended to shake him off and leave, but Old Cheng persistently brought up grandpa, poking at her pain. You don't deserve to be my grandpa. She blamed herself for not noticing the messages left by Song Ziyuan on the screen. Yet, Old Cheng deliberately concealed it, never mentioning it once. Song Ku swung the cold, sharp saw precisely, tearing Old Cheng's collar and revealing the chilling expression on her face. Get lost. Old Man Cheng's eyes darted around, completely abandoning any shame, clutching his chest, AI, AI, my heart. How could you, you little beast, you white-eyed wolf, are you trying to kill me, no, you want to kill me. Speechless, Song Ku turned away. Her actions were measured, not even harming Old Man Cheng in the slightest. Why was he spouting such nonsense? Old Man Cheng noticed her movement, suddenly exerting infinite strength, grabbing her trouser leg, falling to the ground, wailing incessantly, refusing to let go. The drone captured the elderly man's dehydrated and cracked skin, the prominent veins on his hand, and his pained expression, all recorded vividly. The barrage of comments condemning her continued, and V587's support rate plummeted rapidly. I can't stand it. How could you attack an innocent old man? You'll face retribution. Poor old grandpa. He looks like he's about to pass out. Where did these holier than thou people come from upstairs? Maybe you should go be a saint in Rainbow Cloud City? Exactly, this old man using moral manipulation. The old grandpa is ill, and Song Ku is so strong, can't she help a bit? You're just talking, why don't you go and help? I I didn't participate in the competition, it's not my business. The comments in the barrage became chaotic, and AI administrators kept banning waves after waves of users. Song Ku had never been this angry, yet she couldn't actually kill Old Man Cheng. It would complicate things beyond explanation. Some people are naturally bad at arguing when emotions run high, their language system goes haywire. That was Song Ku's case. Coupled with her stuttering issue, she ended up muttering, I you for a while, unable to muster a complete sentence to hurl back. Hey, you rotten old man. You've been on my nerves for too long. Lin Yuyu, wearing a mask, suddenly rushed from behind the two, her tone rattling like a machine gun. You embezzled money from others, treated a child coldly, and yet have the nerve to fake emotions here. Heart trouble. I'm a doctor, let me have a look. Feng Jishu stepped forward without hesitation, holding Old Man Cheng's arm for a checkup. Old Man Cheng struggled desperately, but Fang Jishu, despite looking fragile, being an awakener, had no trouble restraining him. The old man is vigorous and in excellent health, stronger than the average person, no ailments whatsoever, Fang Jishu said coldly. Song Ku has a real grandpa what kind of grandpa are you, you shameless one? Embezzling money, abandoning a child to fend for themselves, or when the apocalypse came, kicking her out, abandoning her to the zombie tide. If I were you, I'd kneel down and apologize to Song Ku. You still morally manipulate her, expecting her to save you. Disgusting. Lin Yuyu's firepower was at its peak, relentlessly firing. Lu Xiaoyu's fingers flew, adding in, up until April 5th, new calendar year 47, Ching Aiwen illegally seized Song Ku's assets totaling over one. The amount reaches the highest sentencing standard, and as her legal guardian, he committed abandonment. He hacked into Old Man Cheng's personal account, tracing it back to the day Song Ziyuan sent money. Every financial transaction was crystal clear, even snapshots of his proud face while swiping his card, like a public execution. The drone's filming caught wind of the big scandal, immediately zooming in on the screen, capturing irrefutable evidence. The anti-fans who had just rallied behind Old Man Cheng, condemning Song Ku for her lack of conscience, vanished into thin air, mouth sealed shut. 
Zhuang Qinyan patted Song Ku on the back, comforting her softly, don't mind them. People are often stupid. With a bit of cheap sympathy and tears, they easily overlook the provokers and instead criticize those who react in anger. Song Ku glanced lazily at him, not really paying attention, but she lowered her voice, genuinely musing, so much money. Zhuang Qinyan Having lived through the post-apocalyptic struggles, especially worrying about earning money for the team mainly for Lu Xiaoyu, Song Ku realized for the first time just how wealthy her grandfather was. She had missed the chance to become a little rich lady. Ching Aiwen, having been thoroughly scolded by Lin Yuyu and exposed by Lu Xiaoyu, found himself unable to save face. His retreat, despite his insults of little beast, white-eyed wolf, couldn't hide the defeat in his eyes. He walked away, seemingly unperturbed. Zhuang Qinyan's eyes flashed and Old Man Cheng's hunched figure stiffened for a moment before he nonchalantly continued on his way. These insignificant details went unnoticed by others. Song Ku looked at her allies who had stood up for her, feeling grateful but a bit lost, thanks, every while. Lin Yuyu reached out, pinching and squishing Song Ku's cheeks, you. If you can't handle it, just call for us. Song Ku mumbled unclearly, you, you, don't squish me ah. Lu Xiaoyu opened the terminal and displayed footage from the drone, announcing, stop kidding around there's bad news. On the thermal imager, a large green radiation zone was closing in on Greenwater City, less than 5 kilometers away. The real zombie tide is coming. Song Ku pushed away Lin Yuyu's hand and shouted at the team, check in point. Quickly. She bounced away, running swiftly. Lu Xiaoyu glanced sideways at the silent Zhuang Qinyan. Why didn't you say something? Don't tell me you didn't know. With Zhuang Qinyan's mental abilities, he must have sensed the approaching zombie tide but had not warned anyone. You did something. Lu Xiaoyu sounded certain. Zhuang Qinyan raised an eyebrow. I always retaliate when provoked. Old Man Chang's eyes were confused, and he stood bewildered at the city gate, momentarily forgetting what he was supposed to do. Why am I here? He muttered, puzzled. His plan to leave with Song Ku's help shattered. He needed to think of another way. Old Menching accessed his terminal, wanting to check the balance in his account. Even though money had minimal value during the apocalypse, having money was still preferable. But soon, he froze. There was nothing in his personal account. His money, all of it, was gone. Old Menching lifted his head in disbelief, his dilated pupils reflecting the distant, undulating black tide. WH what what's that? His face showed horror, his voice lost. Old Man Cheng tried to escape, but his limbs felt frozen in place, unable to move. A continuous wave of zombies surged towards Greenwater City, breaking through the seemingly non-existent defense line and instantly overwhelming Old Man Cheng. In the fleeting moment before losing consciousness, Old Man Cheng had a vague feeling that the zombie, bearing its fangs, bore some resemblance to Song Ziyuan. Chapter 154. Quick, quick. Catch her. Su Xing hid inside an empty garbage bin, peeking out with half his head, observing discreetly. Across the street, seven or eight brazen refugees were looting a large supermarket without any restraint. Shopping carts and shelves were violently knocked down. After ransacking, they poured a large barrel of cooking oil onto the ground, lit it with a lighter, and instantly, flames shot up into the sky. Shortly after they left with their loot, a holographic projection appeared above the supermarket. Check-in point. Su Xing's eyes lit up. His inner self danced a disco. He actually ran into it what luck, Su Xiaoxing. He released Frost, wrapping himself from head to toe, and dashed into the supermarket. This time the check-in point was near the ceiling. Su Xing found the nearest warehouse-style shelf and struggled to climb up. The temperature inside was too high the ice melted quickly. Su Xing's little face turned red from the heat, his curly hair drooping down as sweat streamed down his face. He reached out, wiped his face, and tremblingly climbed to the top of the shelf, trying to reach the terminal. Unfortunately, he was just a little short. He tiptoed and pushed desperately with his fingertips, finally getting a bit closer. Su Xing stomped his foot in frustration. 
He had never felt so short with his 130 centimeters height growing 3 centimeters taller this new year. If it were Su Cha No, not even Su Cha. If it were Lu Xiaoyu, Fang Jishu, Lin Yuyu, or his sister, any of them could easily reach it. Humph, only that person in the wheelchair couldn't reach it. Su Xing pouted and sent a message in the group chat, check in point, hurry up. At that moment, V587 members were busy defending for Song Ku, and no one paid attention to the slight reminder in the group chat. Su Xing pressed the receiver he had just hidden to mute and raised his voice, Hey. Hello. Moshi Moshi. As soon as the earpiece opened, Lin Yuyu's vigorous and fierce scolding immediately came through, calling him old scoundrel, shameless, demanding him to kneel and slap his face. It left Su Xing stunned. After a while, only Su Cha quietly replied, Share your location. Only the two of them were still working at the moment. Su Xing sat cross legged on the shelf, nodding vigorously while listening to the scolding battle. His movements were too exaggerated, and he accidentally burned half of his buttocks. With a sizzle, he jumped up and shifted his position. Shortly after, Su Cha arrived at the supermarket, pouring a basin of cold water over Su Xing's head. His agile figure rushed in like a gust of wind. Where's the check in point? Su Cha asked. Su Xing pointed casually, still muttering, bad guy. Stinky old man. Continuously. It's there. Su Cha asked again, where? Su Xing replied, right there. But the fire seal had long disappeared. Su Xing was dumbfounded. Oh no, he was too absorbed in Lin Yuyu's scolding that he didn't notice the check-in point had moved. Su Cha looked at him silently. Su Xing blinked innocently back at him. The surroundings crackled and burst with fire, leaving the supermarket completely charred. Let's go, Su Cha lifted the short Su Xing off the shelf, casually holding him with his arm. Need some ice. The cold water splashed earlier had evaporated completely, and the scorching flames were licking Su Cha's skin. Ah forced into an ice-making machine, Su Xing lifted his buttocks and swung his two little legs, knowing he was in the wrong. He obediently released his ability. Both of them were enveloped in a tight layer of frost and hurriedly dashed out of the supermarket. As they ran onto the street, the five members of V587 arrived following the location. Xiao Xing. Where's the check-in point? Song Ku asked enthusiastically. It's gone, Su Xing flapped his hands in a dejected manner. It was just right in front of me. It was right in front of you, why didn't you use the terminal then? Zhuan Qinyan asked calmly. Su Xing's confidence deflated instantly. He grumbled, feeling sorry for himself, I I couldn't reach it. His male pride emerged silently. He extended his pinky finger, indicating, just missed it by this much. Su Cha glanced at him, seeing through but not exposing it, preserving Su Xing's pride. Hurry up, the zombie tide is coming, Lu Xiaoyu reminded. The densely packed zombies swept through like locusts, swiftly flooding the streets and alleys. They stormed into buildings, jumped onto car roofs, knocking down fleeing humans, cruelly biting and feeding on them. The splattering blood seemed to weave a crimson velvet carpet over Greenwater City. The refugees who had recently sought shelter, witnessing this horror, scrambled even more desperately to flee. Where's the zombie king? Song Ku's cold jagged blade sawed through a zombie's head that rushed towards her. Not here. Lu Xiaoyu's mechanical arms moved in unison, replying loudly. Lin Yuyu's singing didn't cease, and she shouted in passing, not even level 3 zombies. The zombies in this zombie tide were mainly levels 1 and 2, occasionally mixed with a few mutant zombies. Although their numbers were high, their strengths varied. Ordinary people could resist them, and once the Awakeners inside Greenwater City and the official forces reacted, they would eventually be wiped out. A zombie tied without a zombie king commanding, it was nothing but a scattered group of cannon fodders. Zhuan Qinyan's eyes dimmed as he instantly recalled an ancient military strategy from the old civilization diverting attention from the true objective. Attacking Greenwater City was highly likely a diversion set up by that cunning zombie king. 
It deliberately released some low-level zombies to feign an attack on the city while sending the true elite forces elsewhere. Zhuang Qinyan activated his screen and entered the live broadcast channel of the throne race competition. Some teams, like Xuanxing Tea House, were ahead and had already reached Rishofu. However, this city, most likely to be attacked, remained peaceful at the moment. He quickly scanned through the personal live streams of other competitors. Each team had different progress and were fighting zombies in already fallen cities, some relentlessly pushed forward, and a few relaxed, comfortably sitting in restaurants. But regardless of the location, there was no sign of another zombie tide. Zhuang Qinyan paused his finger on the screen, switching to the marathon map and calculating swiftly in his mind. Theoretically, guessing the psychological activities of zombies was an absurd idea, but Zhuang Qinyan had no hesitation. His gaze focused directly on the second-to-last checkpoint Haman. Check-in point. Suddenly, Song Ku pointed upward. In a skyscraper ahead, about thirty floors high, the glass suddenly shattered, and several figures struggled before falling and crashing onto the ground. V587 rapidly closed in on the target, but to their surprise, they collided with the Anna Knights. This group of robots was a step ahead, their steamship landed on the rooftop of the building. Five Awakeners from their team threw down ropes, sliding down to their respective floors, swiftly activating terminals. A holographic projection appeared with a message, Congratulations, Anna Knights, for successfully checking in. Song Ku furrowed her brow, observing them closely. The Anna Knights had changed. They seemed to have plundered the military arsenal in Greenwater City, armed to the teeth shotguns replaced by cannons, assault rifles. Shoulder-mounted mortars, and rough mechanical parts integrated into their bodies, creating a crude yet menacing appearance. Five mechanical beings swiftly turned their weapons and opened fire at Song Ku and the others charging towards them without a word. They were trapped at the city gate, at that time, they were unable to do anything about the culprit. Now that they were free to act and had the upper hand in firepower, they were determined to reclaim their ground. Wanna check in? I'll turn you into Swiss cheese. The leader-like figure among the mechanical beings arrogantly shouted. Gunshots erupted, casing scattered, forcing Song Ku's group to retreat repeatedly. The front line was too intense, impossible to break through. Target their healers and support. In team battles, targeting the healers first was ingrained in their combat DNA. Torrents of bullets surged towards Fang Jishu and Lin Yuyu. Lin Yuyu's lips moved rapidly as she rapped for self-preservation, conjuring up a thick fog. Within the Anna Knight's team's vision, two figures vanished. Yet, Fang Jishu's presence was too conspicuous. The mechanical beings, still holding the aerial advantage, had already locked onto his position. A long, thick chain whistled through the air, piercing through the mist. With a click, it clamped onto Fang Jishu's ankle, dragging him out. The malicious smile of the Awakener who acted was evident as he hoisted Fang Jishu, twirling him in the air before hurling him towards the densely packed area of zombies. With muscles surging, Su Cha leaped like a cheetah over the rooftop, racing towards Fang Jishu's landing spot. Unfortunately, they were a step too late. Bang! Fang Jishu crashed down on dozens of zombies. Old Fang! Song Ku's eyes twitched with excessive tension. Fang Jishu, sprawled on the ground, awkwardly got up. Looking around in panic, the zombies around him were hit directly by this extraterrestrial object. Some had necks snapped, while others had holes, boozing foul, black liquid. Ao. Their feasting was abruptly interrupted. They roared angrily, roaring at Fang Jishu, spraying his face with their putrid saliva, their teeth, covered in bits of flesh, almost touching his eyeballs. Then, the movements of the zombies halted. They seemed to have lost their target, confusedly sniffing around Fang Jishu. After a few seconds, they resumed, lowering their heads to feast on the corpses. Fang Jishu attempted to move his legs, trying to stand but accidentally tripped again. With a slap from his left hand, he struck a zombie's head, causing it to twist and turn, emitting ho-ho sounds from its throat, seemingly oblivious to Fang Jishu who was so close. Song Ku breathed a sigh of relief, realizing that Fang Jishu had an odd constitution zombies didn't bite him. 
Su Cha arrived at the scene and took the opportunity to retrieve Fang Jishu. Song Kuk glared coldly at the Anna Knights. At the moment when V587 was distracted, the check-in point vanished again. This time, after disappearing, it didn't reappear from elsewhere as it usually did. Song Ko realized something, the refugees were exhausted from fleeing and no longer focused on causing trouble. Consequently, the appearance frequency of the checkpoint became slower and slower. The mechanical beings from above smugly pulled their lips as they stopped V587. Afterward, they turned back, climbing towards the top of the building, preparing to retreat. Nearly killed Fang Jishu and still thinking about running? Song Ku grabbed an electrical pole from the ground, transforming it into a nine-section whip. Clinging to the exterior wall of the building, her speed was astonishingly fast, relentlessly pursuing. Gradually closing the gap with the Anna Knights, she unexpectedly swung the whip, take that. Su Xing intuitively froze the foot of one of them with ice. The ethereal blue whip instantly coiled around his neck. As Song Ku pulled down, the mechanical being plummeted straight down from a hundred meters high, littering the ground with scattered parts. Damn it! Run! Just after this shout, another member, cursed by Lin Yuyu, suddenly stepped into nothingness. Song Ku grabbed his waist, peeling him off the surface of the building. Ah! You bunch of little fkers, die! As Song Ku ascended through the floors, her attacks became faster. The Anna Knights were pushed to the edge. With relentless mortar bombardments, the building support beams ruptured, causing it to gradually tilt. Song Ku glanced towards the last one mechanical leg. Panic was evident on his face. He was just a step away from the steamship. Clenching his teeth, he shed all excess weight and sprouted suction cups on his legs, quickly maneuvering along the glass surface, creating distance from Song Ku for a moment. Mechanical Leg's left hand grasped the hatch of the steamship, displaying an ecstatic expression, believing he had escaped. At that moment, a powerful mental force invaded his mind. His body hairs stood on end, his eyes suddenly flickered and became empty. The serpentine nine-section whip wrapped around his thigh. Song Ku tightened her forearm, leveraging her entire body weight backward. With a pop, the suction cups deprived of air, detached from the glass, and mechanical legs two limbs were forcibly torn apart. Before he could recover his senses, he plummeted heavily. The Anna Knights were completely wiped out. The dazzling holographic projection descended, and the fiery seal slowly emerged, signifying the rekindled battle among the Awakeners. The opportunity was fleeting. Suddenly, Song Ko performed a swift pull-up, utilizing the inertia to leap upwards. Then, she released her grip, twisted her body mid-air, and with her slender waist drew a sharp arc, leveraging her remarkable flexibility to tap the terminal. Congratulations, V587, for successfully checking in. Success! As Song Ko landed and rolled, unexpectedly, she slid off the rooftop without warning. Lightning fast, she grasped the railing, her body swaying. Regardless of whether Zhuang Qinyan and the others could see her, she flashed a V sign downward. The next moment, the overstressed building split in half from the middle, quickly crumbling into pieces. As the railing lost its stability and tilted, Song Ku's foothold vanished, akin to a kite with a snapped string, plummeting from a considerable height falling down. Quick, quick! Catch her! Lin Yuyu's complexion paled as she rushed forward with her arms outstretched. Even if Song Ku possessed incredible abilities, she was still hundreds of meters above the ground now. No matter how powerful her ability was, her body couldn't endure such a fall. Bang! Song Ku attempted to grab a steel beam, but it broke, her head smashing through the glass. She tumbled into the building and rolled out again. Falling too fast, she couldn't find a solid anchor point. She had to use her whip to catch on to whatever she could to slow her descent. Veins surfaced on Zhuang Qingyan's hand as he trembled, abruptly leaving his wheelchair. Lu Xiaoyu shattered the shop window, pulling out a bedsheet from inside. Six mechanical arms extended and stretched out to serve as a makeshift cushion. The collapsing building erupted in a violent explosion, billowing smoke rising from the ruins. Thud, thud. Song Ku bounced down like a ball, 
landing perfectly into Lu Xiaoyu's makeshift cushion, significantly reducing the impact, and safely caught. Lu Xiaoyu sighed in relief, retracting the mechanical arms, ready to lift her up. However, like an eel, Song Ku unexpectedly slipped out from the edge, bouncing twice and smacked onto the roof of a nearby armored truck, landing face down. Lu Xiaoyu, oh! Su Xing covered his face, grimacing in pain. Song Ku, supporting her head, stood up groggily, spinning around aimlessly. Finally, she turned her back to everyone and addressed the air, hee hee, check in, success. Zhuang Qinyan snapped his fingers, Song Kiki, turn around. Confused, Song Ku turned but still couldn't find anyone. Then, tears welled up in her eyes, and two lines of red fell from her nose. Chapter, 155 Thousand Deaths Blew Enchantress of Cataclysmic Annihilation Ha 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 Pu ha 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 Song Ku had changed into a coat that could cover her entire body, sitting cross-legged in the back seat of the car, trying hard to diminish her own presence. The loose hood covered her blushing face she had stuffed two pieces of tissue in her nose. Echoes of teammates' unrestrained laughter reverberated in her ears, especially the boisterous ones from Lin Yuyu, Lu Xiaoyu, and the muffled chuckles from Su Xing. Song Ku, are you made of jelly? How can you be so elastic ha 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 and bounce like that ha ha ha? Sister, does your face hurt? I felt so much pain on my face just now. The part where you bumped into the cash transport vehicle was already edited into a viral clip. It got a lot of views. I saved it, want to see? I'll send it to you. I shouldn't have made a V sign to them, Song Ku thought expressionlessly. If only I hadn't wasted that time, I could have flipped up. With a last glimmer of hope, she looked at Su Cha and Fang Jishu. They wouldn't mock her, right? Fang Jishu struggled to hold back his laughter, his trembling left hand offering a row of band-aids, while Su Cha avoided eye contact, dodging her gaze, coughed a couple of times to disguise it, then turned away silently. Song Ku. Don't think I didn't notice you're clearly laughing. Zhuang Qinyan extended his arm from the front row, rubbing Song Ku's head through the hood. He shifted slightly downward, his slender fingers weaving through her hair, lightly touching the minor scratch on her cheek. Song Ku tilted her head to avoid it, but it inadvertently brushed against her ear, turning as red as fire in an instant. Next time you jump, aim a bit better, at least don't let your face hit first. Zhuang Qinyan's eyes twinkled with a smile, his voice husky, carrying a hint of teasing. Song Ku froze, then suddenly bit his wrist. After a while, she spat it out with a stiff, uncomfortable expression. The competition, you guys, focus. Talk about serious matters. Song Ku shouted in frustration and embarrassment. The teasing had gone too far, the captain was losing her temper, and the team members, sensing the shift, immediately fell silent, pretending to be busy. She's talking to you guys, be serious. Su Xing acted all authoritative, pointing and lecturing like a little adult. Song Ku coldly snorted and leaned against the window, looking outside. The road out of the city was strewn with corpses, devastation everywhere. Hearing the sound of the engine, the zombies grotesquely lunged toward them but were sent flying by Lu Xiaoyu's wild driving skills. The newly acquired SUV lacked the stability of the previous off-road pickup truck for long distances. Upon impact, the car would occasionally jolt, making everyone inside sway. Zhuang Qinyan lightly tapped his fingers, conjuring a holographic map. He marked crosses at the positions of Rainbow Cloud City and Greenwater City, then drew a darker line indicating the shortest path to Hymen. We're only heading to safe cities, completing the checkpoints along the way. Before today ends, we must reach Hymen. Not following the designated route? Su Cha was somewhat surprised. According to the original plan, V587 was supposed to pass through a fallen District C. If they followed Zhuang Qingyan's route, after reaching Haimen, they'd have to circle back again to complete the check-in, which would waste more time. Our goal is the championship, killing the zombie king is the key. Missing this opportunity to catch it, even if we complete the check-in points within the set time, it's just clearing the level, not winning. You suspect the zombie king will attack Haimen? Why not reshuffle? 
Hai Man is much tougher to breach, Lin Yu Yu raised a question. So confident. What if it heads to Rishofu instead? Lu Xiaoyu glanced at him sideways. If Shuang Qingyan's speculation was wrong, they would be left empty-handed, not encountering the zombie king, wasting precious time. Zhuang Qingyan squinted with a hint of amusement in his peach blossom eyes. From the encounters at Tongwan, this zombie king is valiant in battle, bold yet meticulous, skilled in using ancient warfare tactics, maneuvering and disrupting the enemy's rhythm. What's even more remarkable is its calmness under pressure. Even when facing a disadvantage, it can make accurate judgments instantly. It's an exceptionally outstanding battlefield commander. Rarely praising others, Zhuang Qinyan continued to shower such extensive praise on a zombie, leaving everyone's expressions somewhat hard to articulate. I've researched the information. Among the active registered commanders in the alliance, there's no one with this style, Lu Xiaoyu multitasked, his idle mechanical arm projecting without reservation. If it's as formidable as you say, shouldn't it be someone known? Zhuang Qinyan, looking disdainful, pushed away his intrusive hand. You think sheer strength can bring success? There are plenty of talented but frustrated individuals out there. You should understand this better than me, right? Lu Xiaoyu, whose legs were broken by the Lu family and thrown into death prison because of his outstanding strength and peculiar temperament. Hey, isn't this hitting a little too close to home? If I were it, I'd now possess an unstoppable, endless army of the living dead. The instinct of the zombie within me clamors to destroy this land, while the remnants of my human intellect guide me step by step toward victory. I desire Rishufu, and I also desire Hymen. Since foolish humans think I'll attack Rishufu, let me indulge you. I'll release some bait, oh. Are you prepared for battle? Want to kill me? Too bad, I've already stealthily infiltrated Hymen, catching you off guard. Hai Men is indeed a tough nut to crack, but once I bite into it, the path ahead will be clear. I can conquer the entire alliance. Zhuang Qingyan's knuckles rhythmically tapped, his eyes deep, deliberately lowering his voice to a husky tone, vividly simulating the psychological activity of a zombie. The others got goosebumps all over wow, this person is so twisted. Why say Hai Men is hard to bite into? Song Ku innocently asked, completely unaware of the abnormal atmosphere. The teammates chimed in, eagerly answering, hoping Zhuang Qinyan would stop talking it was creeping them out. Lu Xiaoyu, Hai Men is the most important granary in the East. Be it the total production, goods, or exports, it ranks first in the alliance. According to scientific statistics, below District C, one out of every three meals includes food from Hai Men. Lin Yuyu, Hai Men has vast land, the largest area within District D, but the population is less than 10 million. Due to the sparse population, people live affluent lives. The locals are bold, straightforward, and don't bother with trifles. Su Xing, my dad once said, people from Hai Men are big and simple, wealthy, and easily deceived. Everyone turned to look at him simultaneously, questioning his choice of words. What kind of parenting is that? Saying such things could cause trouble if heard by people from Hai Men. Su Xing belatedly covered his mouth. Uh, oops, inadvertently letting out the latter part of his sentence. Fang Jishu stroked his chin thoughtfully. I've heard from colleagues that people from Hai Men aren't very good at arguing. Song Ku, why is that? Fang Jishu, because before you finish saying lines like what are you looking at? And what are you gonna do about it? The other person's fist has already landed on your face. Song Ku. That sounds like quite an interesting city. Are you sure the zombie king will go to Haimen? Song Ku turned to Zhuang Qinyan and asked. 70% certain, Zhuang Qinyan nodded, not elaborating further. After pondering for two seconds, Song Ku decisively slapped the table, then, let's go to Haimen. When the captain speaks, everyone must follow suit. To Hai Men. Go, go, go. Lu Xiaoyu floored the accelerator, the SUV speeding through the wilderness, scattering zombies like flower petals. In the quiet car, Lin Yuyu nudged Lu Xiaoyu and whispered, Hey, that viral clip, send it to me. I want it too, I want it too. 
Su Xing called out quietly from the front seat. Su Cha didn't say a word, simply pointing at his own terminal, making his intentions clear. Lu Xiaoyu maneuvered a mechanical arm and quickly sent the clip directly to V587's group chat. The terminal vibrated, and Song Ku, half asleep, woke up in a daze. Her fingers moved faster than her brain, reflexively tapping to open the message, immediately followed by a stunned expression. Unsend that, right now. Before nightfall, V587 completed check-in points in four safe cities and smoothly arrived at the outskirts of District D-135's high men. There were no signs of a zombie horde in the wilderness, just a few scattered zombies. Some held shovels and sickles, some staggered aimlessly near irrigation machines and plow axles, while others gnawed on tractors and plows, their hollow, decaying eyes devoid of any emotion. If it weren't for the apocalypse, it would be the season for spring sowing now Fong Jishu sighed. As they approached a three-story mansion, sounds of a scuffle echoed from the front. A group of a dozen people, armed and engaged in a fierce battle against zombies, caught their attention. The most conspicuous figure was a burly man, towering at least six feet tall. He wore a massive gold chain around his neck, a large gold watch on his wrist, a flashy shirt, and what seemed to be a fur or mink coat draped over him. His shoes shone so brightly they nearly reflected light. Song Kuk climbed onto the roof of the car and looked around. This group seemed to lack any supernatural abilities they were all regular people. Even though they were ordinary, their fighting capabilities were not to be underestimated. Get off me. The burly man, over six feet tall, kicked a lurching zombie away. His flesh quivered, and beside him, a suited bodyguard lifted a golf club, ruthlessly smashing the zombie's head, denting it inward. Look at your bear-like appearance, dare to come onto my territory and cause trouble. Did I give you permission? The burly man grumbled and cursed while kicking the zombie. His aggression grew, come on then. While observing the scuffle between them and the zombies without much concern, Song Ku crouched down, preparing to get back into the car. However, a faint, ghostly blue glint suddenly caught her peripheral vision. She froze, abruptly lifting her head. The burly man from afar drew a wide blade short knife and sliced straight towards the zombie's head. The knife seemed to cut through it effortlessly, separating the zombie's head from its body as blood sprayed out like a fountain. Song Ku's gaze became fixed. If she wasn't mistaken, that was a machete. Stop the car. She opened the car door and hurried towards the group. Having just managed to deal with the zombies besieging their mansion, Wang Hu was covered in sweat. He couldn't help but mutter to himself, it's already spring, wearing a fur coat is a bit hot, huh? He opened his collar to cool off and unexpectedly noticed a young girl walking towards him. Yo, Wang Hu sighed inwardly. His eyes were quite perceptive check out that presence, not your average person. The young girl stopped in front of him, staring directly at the machete in his hand. What are you looking at? The bodyguard next to him asked in a rough voice. Startled by his loud voice, Song Ku reflexively responded, looking what are you looking at? The bodyguard raised his eyebrows, the golf club ready to move. Was this little troublemaker trying to provoke something? Hey, put it down, put it down, Wang Hu generously gestured with his hand. Easy now, let her take a look. He proudly hoisted the machete onto his shoulder, asking in a casual manner, how about it? Were you impressed by my zombie hacking prowess? Exerting too much force, the back of the machete accidentally cut through his fur. Oh, my god. Wang Hu jumped in distress, trying to cover his clothes and handle the machete at the same time, flustered and wailing, my precious. Kindly, Song Ku reached out and helped him stabilize the familiar machete. Can I take a look at your machete? Sure, sure, Wang Hu barely paid attention to her. Song Ku turned the blade over and looked down. Indeed, there was a small song on the handle of the machete. This was her spiritual weapon. How could it appear here? Moreover she had only produced this standardized spiritual weapon once, back in Hua City, a total of 100 pieces, as part of a deal for those students at the No. Where did you get this machete from? Song Ku asked. What, are you interested too? One who glanced at her, then protectively snatched the machete back. 
My thousand deaths blue enchantress of cataclysmic annihilation is quite powerful, but not something most people can handle. I acquired this from the black market in the northern base through someone. It's an absolutely genuine supernatural weapon. It cuts zombies like slicing through watermelons. There are less than five in the entire black market. I spent a whopping two million Wong who bragged triumphantly. H how much? Song Ku exclaimed in shock. Chapter 156 For just 28,888, bring home the zombie slaying artifact. Upon hearing the figure of two million, Song Ku's expression seemed trance like. Wang Hu, assuming she was intimidated by his substantial wealth, proudly displayed his lavishness by swinging his heavy gold chain to the sides. Then waved generously, saying, It might be a bit pricey, but luckily, it offers great value for the money. I'm fortunate to have stumbled upon it. Others couldn't even buy it if they wanted. Great value for the money. Really? Song Ku swallowed hard, hesitating, it might only last for two or three years. It doesn't seem very cost effective, does it? You gotta be kidding. Have you ever used the Thousand Deaths Blue Enchantress of Cataclysmic Annihilation weapon? Do you even know what you're talking about? I I don't. Of course, you don't. Wang Hu glared, looking ready to argue with her. Those high-tech weapons, too complicated for me. I'd be gasping for air if zombies got too close. But with my precious here, I just swing and slash, and all the zombies back off. Song Ku fell silent, unable to respond. Suddenly, she thought of something, her eyes shining with excitement. Her expression turned sincere, if there were still cataclysmic annihilation or blue enchantress. Thousand deaths blue enchantress of cataclysmic annihilation, Wang Hu corrected her matter-of-factly. Ah, right, right, Song Ku nodded. If there were more, would you buy them? Well Wang Hu glanced at the golf clubs his bodyguards used, rubbing his chin in contemplation. It's a bit extravagant. If I replaced all of them, it would cost a dozen or so sigh, even for someone wealthy like me, it's a bit painful. It'd be great if there were discounts for bulk purchases. There are. Discounts. Song Ku raised her voice, breaking into excitement. Wang Hu eyed her suspiciously. Hey, who are you? You've been acting strange. Do you have any opinions about my precious items? No opinions. Song Ku shook her head quickly. I have a friend who can get this. She subtly moved her hand and pulled out a kunai from her coat pocket. The blade was entirely azure, emitting a chilling light, oddly similar to the machete Wang Hu held. You can get it from my friend for way less than two million, Song Ku stated firmly. However, the exact price would need discussion with Zhuang Qinyan and the others. Wang Hu's eyes lit up. Come on, little friend, let's exchange contact info. If there's stock, let me know first. I don't need it delivered I'll pick it up myself. In an abandoned gas station in the wilderness, an SUV parked by the roadside. Lu Xiaoyu extended a mechanical arm to charge the vehicle with an energy gun. The rest of the V587 team stretched their muscles. From this vantage point, they could already see the urban area of Hymen. Rolling hills extended endlessly, and a mighty river flowed through the bottom plain, forming a natural barrier. Coupled with the three layers of inner and outer city walls, Haman's central area was impregnable, comparable to Shea. For the zombie king to attack Haimen, he would need to cross the river first and then breach three formidable defense lines. The difficulty level was exceedingly high. No wonder the magistrate of Haimen once openly stated that to conquer Haimen, one would have to open all three doors from the inside. Song Ku sat on the car roof, swinging her legs, watching Su Cha and Fang Zhishu retrieve supplies from the convenience store. Although most of the food had expired, they managed to find some non-perishable drinks and dry goods to replenish their stock. Do you want to sell the spiritual weapons to the people of Haimen? Zhuan Qingyan's wheelchair stopped in front of her. He looked up at her the curve from his chin to his neck was remarkably smooth, and the protruding Adam's apple moved as he spoke. Yeah, can I? Song Ku asked eagerly. Of course, Zhuang Qinyan smiled, brushing off the mud splattered on her legs. 
The weapons belong to you you can decide. I want to earn a lot of money, sighed Captain Song Ku, a financially strapped individual. She jumped down from the car roof and patted Zhuang Qingyan's legs with a meaningful expression, to support all of you. She had to support the old Fang Zhishu and the young Su Xing. She had to take care of an injured patient who was still recovering, and there was also a gold-swallowing beast who'd yell every day to buy materials. It's very stressful. Zhuang Qinyan looked at Song Ku with a complex expression. His Adam's apple moved unnaturally. If he hadn't known that the other party didn't mean that, this behavior would have constituted serious soul harassment, you. What's wrong? Song Ku tilted her head, unaware of his discomfort. Captain, check your account, Lu Xiaoyu leaned out from the driver's seat, interrupting the slightly intimate atmosphere between the two. Song Ku opened her terminal and widened her eyes in surprise. When did an additional one and a half million appear in her account? Lu Xiaoyu, with pride in his ice blue eyes, proudly explained, counting the interest, we retrieved one and a half million from that unscrupulous old man as your growth compensation fee. You're so amazing. Song Ku exclaimed, giving him a thumbs up with joy. Then can you buy rhenium for me? Lu Xiaoyu pushed further, the corners of his mouth stiffening. Can. No, you can't, Zhuang Qinyan coldly interrupted their conversation. Stop smiling your smile is really sycophantic. Lu Xiaoyu stared at him expressionlessly for two seconds, then thud, he closed the car window. Song Ku blinked, hesitant to speak. Zhuang Qinyan explained in a calmer tone, his request is unreasonable. Rhenium is too costly, and the amount you have isn't enough for his whims don't buy it for him. Thud thud, protests from Lu Xiaoyu hitting the car roof echoed from inside the SUV. Zhuang Qinyan ignored his anger, seemingly indifferent. If mass-produced, how many spiritual weapons can you create at once? Song Ku thought for a moment. Her awakened energy had increased significantly compared to six months ago, considering the production rate in Hua City at that time. About right, enough to arm an elite force. Let's go with 500, Zhuang Qinyan nodded. How much should we sell them for? Song Ku whispered, could they not be too expensive? She intended to sell the spiritual artifacts, partly to make money for their small treasury and partly to aid the people of Hymen in better resisting the zombie tide. Her intention wasn't to extort them but to seize the opportunity for a disaster profit. Not expensive, but not too cheap either. After all, you've worked hard, Zhuang Qinyan smiled at her reassuringly. Don't worry, I'll consider the average economic status of the people in Hymen. I'll ensure it's within their means and they'll be willing to buy. A group of strong civilians was driving zombies away in the outskirts. Some wielded baseball bats and knives, while others dragged suitcases, pulled chairs, bravely striking the zombies. However, despite their ferocity, their tools fell short baseball bats cracked, knives dulled, suitcases and chairs ended up worn out. Soon, they found themselves defenseless. Among the zombies, there was a level 2 zombie, agile and swift, jumping up and down. It swiftly caught a person off guard, roaring as it lunged to bite. Swoosh, swoosh several flying knives pierced through the air, penetrating the zombie's head, splattering black-red brain matter across the ground. The civilians, in a frenzy, helped their fallen comrade, looking up towards the unexpected saviors. An SUV gradually halted in front of them, then reversed, revealing its trunk. Thud a masked woman opened the rear door enthusiastically. Friends, have you heard of spiritual weapons? On the back of the door hung an array of various weapons, all emanating a chilling blue glow. Lin Yuyu's lips moved swiftly, reciting a meticulously prepared, feeling unsafe during the apocalypse at home. Don't panic. Song's spiritual artifacts are ready. Encounter a zombie. Don't fear. Whip out a spiritual weapon and let's handle it together. Ding 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 today's special offer. Just for 28,888, bring home the zombie slaying artifact. Limited quantity, while supplies last. The group of civilians stared blankly at her. Lin Yuyu snapped her fingers. Open up, bring out Su Cha. Su Cha. 
In a lightning-fast move, he swooped low over the zombie's head. The decaying hand stretched out to grab his pant leg, but before it touched, his blue-bladed short knife clang-clang severed its head. In less than five minutes, Su Cha dispatched more than a dozen zombies. Lin Yu Yu's eyes gleamed mischievously, lips curved. How about it? Want one? Limited edition, you know. I'll buy. I'll buy. The civilians suddenly shouted. Similar scenes played out repeatedly around Heyman's outskirts. V-587 would rescue the civilians and then proceed to pitch, or rather exhibit, the available spiritual weapons to them. Come and see, don't miss out. Check my goods, cheap and effective, buy some of my goods and guarantee a happy return home. Just 28,888 for a spiritual weapon, no regrets, no scams. Uncles and aunties, want to buy a spiritual weapon? Su Cha, selling never mind. He couldn't bring himself to speak, so he plunged into killing zombies, using actions as his loudest. Song Ko laid on the car roof contentedly, reflecting, I feel like Lin Yu Yu shouldn't be a pop star. Out of the 500 spiritual artifacts, 380 were sold in less than two hours. Lin Yu Yu alone sold over 300, rightly earning the title of top salesperson. With her talent, she should pursue sales forget being among the top 10 rising stars, she could definitely become the leading influencer for Ferrara's merchandise. In the passenger seat, Zhuang Qinyan glanced at the map of Hymen. The night had already enveloped the area not only was there no sign of the zombie king's shadow, but even the expected zombie tide hadn't shown any activity. Hymen remained as calm as ever, with no discernible changes. Had his speculation been wrong? Hymen. A small, thinly bundled girl, wearing a wide-brimmed hat and a scarf, hurriedly crossed the streets. Her eyes wide with confusion, she looked left and right, swiftly making her way forward, her pace quickening into a run. Thud just as she turned the corner, the girl collided head-on with someone else. The sturdy man took a step back, gruffly shouting, Hey! Can't you watch where you're going? Looking down, he saw a young girl, probably around thirteen or fourteen, sprawled on the ground in a daze. Her scarf had slipped halfway down, revealing her gray eyes. As if realizing something, she frantically tried to pull the scarf back up to cover her face. Seeing her as just a kid, the man didn't feel right to argue further. With irritation, he said, watch where you're going next time. The girl mumbled a couple of words and hurriedly lowered her head. Her voice sounded hoarse, and her speaking seemed peculiar. The man muttered to himself as he moved away, mixed blood. The girl, using her hands, picked herself up from the ground. A couple of messy braids fell carelessly, exposing distinct corpse-like markings on her neck. Standing up straight, she dared not run again, slowly fading into the darkness. Chapter 157 Braided Head Self-Perception The deep gray SUV drove through the open fields, gradually approaching the roaring waves of the riverbank. In front of Song Ku and the others appeared the only passage into the Hymen urban area magnificent bridge soaring over the river like a flying rainbow. The entire bridge was divided into two levels. The upper level delineated lanes for floating vehicles, starships, and other suspended tools with neon signal lights. The lower level consisted of eight lanes for regular vehicles, spanning over one. From a distance, it looked like a giant dragon lying horizontally, forming the most critical lifeline in Hymen. Lu Xiaoyu turned the steering wheel, preparing to enter the lower level lanes. However, before reaching the bridge toll booth, the station sentry signaled for an immediate stop. Rows of jet black heavy machine guns stood ready, their elongated magazines hanging from mounts, emitting a silent but intimidating presence. Wow, so cool. Su Xing leaned halfway out of the window, admiringly exclaiming. Generally, most boys were fascinated by firearms Su Xing mimicked the action of firing a machine gun, making pew 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 sounds, thoroughly enjoying himself. The sentries all simultaneously turned their gun barrels toward their SUV. Song Ku and Su Xing immediately raised their hands, while Lu Xiaoyu whistled and impeccably lifted his six mechanical arms. The sentries tensed up, ready to act against the perceived threat, about to pull the trigger. Don't misunderstand, we're competitors. 
Song Kook frantically attempted to press down Lu Xiaoyu's claw. Just as she managed to press it down, it popped up again. Frustrated, Song Ku smacked his head, finally calming him down. A drone, displaying the logo of the throne race competition, hovered above the SUV. The sentries remained vigilant, shouting loudly, stop immediately and undergo inspection. Lu Xiaoyu stopped playing around and obediently pressed the brake. The diligent sentries conducted a thorough search and interrogation for a full 15 minutes. Only after confirming repeatedly with the city hall were they allowed to proceed. As they distanced themselves from the checkpoint, everyone breathed a sigh of relief. Hell scythe, Zhuang Qinyan murmured softly, good stuff. What's that? The people in the car wore confused expressions. Zhuang Qinyan pointed to the neatly arranged heavy machine guns outside the car window, saying, these guns are produced in Mu City. They fire an average of 1,500 bullets per minute, with a precise shooting range of 1 km and a maximum range of 5 km. They can sustain heavy firepower against distant targets. The production line for Hell's Scythe was bought out long ago, exclusively for the northern base. It seems Haimen has done thorough preparation, Lu Xiaoyu murmured disdainfully. Their really wealthy Song Ku was once again astonished by the wealth of the people in Haimen. District D had no access restrictions. V587, amidst the unwelcoming gazes of the sentries along the way, crossed the river and approached three heavily fortified lines of defense. Brick walls with high-voltage electric fences stood tall under the sky, safeguarding the people of Haimen in their haven amidst the apocalypse. Outside the walls, everything was meticulously cleared, with no wandering zombies or mutated beasts in sight. Upon entering each defense line, armed sentries rushed out to inspect them, escorting them with the presence of their numerous gun barrels. Creak the heavy iron gates slowly lifted, and the SUV carrying seven people entered the urban area of high men amid the swirling dust. Because they took a shortcut, V587 was the first team to arrive in high men. Lin Yuyu supported her chin, sighing, I believe, with everything fortified like this, even the zombie king wouldn't be able to break in. It's practically impregnable. Maybe not, Zhuang Qinyan lightly tapped his fingertip, offering a faint response. Ha! Huh. What else could it possibly do? Lin Yuyu's accent gradually mimicked the locals of Haimen. Zhuang Qinyan didn't answer but instead a familiar villain smile appeared on his face. If you were the zombie king, how would you attack Haimen? Whoa, that's a twisted what if. At first, they strongly disapproved verbally, but then they eagerly started discussing. Su Xing enthusiastically raised his hand, I'd freeze the river surface. Zhuang Qinyan replied, with a river this wide and your limited awakened energy, you couldn't even fill its gaps. Su Xing wilted. Lu Xiaoyu lifted his chin lightly, I could enter openly. He had just observed that the defense line had two opening modes, automatic and manual. With a mere movement of his finger, the iron gate would open for him. Hmm, you might get in, but I bet those sentries have been eagerly waiting for you, ready to turn you into a hornet's nest with smiles, Zhuang Qinyan nodded. Lu Xiaoyu. It was Su Cha's turn. He said hesitantly, I could sneak in hopefully without being noticed. If you can sneak in alone, what about your zombie subordinates? Lin Yuyu chuckled softly behind her hand, countering faster than Zhuang Qinyan, plus, who leads a charge among the undead. Fang Jishu shook his head directly, don't ask me, I have no idea. What about the captain? Lu Xiaoyu asked. Well, I'm still thinking, Song Ku wore a serious expression, although her mind was blank, unable to come up with any solution. Once again, our captain remains calm, never speaking without thought, Zhuang Qinyan praised, utterly devoid of principles. Others, flatterer. What's your plan, then? Su Xing retorted indignantly. The carriage jostled slightly, and Zhuang Qinyan looked at the rearview mirror. At the final iron gate, several large food airdrop containers were being stopped by the sentries, who opened and scanned them top to bottom with life detectors, finding no traces of anything amiss. Zhuang Qinyan's voice was low, if I were the zombie king I'd tell the people of Haimen one thing, darkness under the lamp. V587, what's with the riddles again? 
Even after the SUV had been driving for a while, his gaze remained fixed in the direction of the iron gate. What are you thinking? Song Ku leaned over and asked. Thinking about a classic battle from ancient times, Zhuang Qinyan spoke somberly, the Trojan War. They spent nearly two hours searching in Hymen, but the check-in point was nowhere to be found, making it clear it hadn't appeared yet. The sky had darkened completely, pedestrian traffic on the streets had decreased, and V587 was clueless and at a loss. Suddenly, Su Xing rubbed his eyes in disbelief and pointed outside, murmuring, braided head? Across the street, a relaxed figure was leisurely strolling around. It would lean against shop windows for a moment, then glance at a garden, and when tired, it knew to sit on a bench to rest. Capture it, Zhuang Qinyan said coldly. Song Ku and Su Cha opened the car doors and dashed across the street like lightning. The braided head visibly startled, jumped in place, and tried to flee. However, its speed couldn't match that of two top-tier awakeners. Song Ku leaped high from the roof of the car, diving and forcefully tackling it to the ground. The braided head struggled and its hat fell off, revealing most of its scarf. The clear lines of decay were visible on its profile. It twisted to bite Song Ku, but before it could, Su Cha grabbed something from a nearby garbage truck and stuffed it into its mouth. Coincidentally, it was a used diaper. The braided head froze instantly, abandoning resistance. Its throat convulsed, exhibiting a look of pure disgust as if it had been sickened. Its expression was incredibly vivid, barely any different from that of a human. Zhuang Qinyan silently stared at it. Su Xing jumped out of the car, hesitatingly approaching braided head side. Encountering a zombie within the heavily fortified city, a normal person's initial reaction would definitely be to kill it. The commotion had already attracted the attention of passersby, and patrolling sentries were approaching. Zhuang Qinyan lowered his voice, take it away. Song Ku lifted braided head with one hand and tossed it into the car, and the SUV sped away. The faithful drone captured everything, causing an explosion of comments from viewers watching the live stream from Ferrara. Oh my god! Is that a zombie? If I'm not blind, that's definitely a zombie. You're not blind, that's indeed a zombie. Can someone tell me why there's a zombie in Heyman's urban area? Are the sentries just for show? Ah! Does anyone have the contact information for Heyman City Hall? Alert them quickly. Ferrara Hotel. He Chilhong's gaze intensified, and the lines around her nose deepened suddenly. Without hesitation, she initiated a communication. Captain Yin Xiao, I'd like to request the Tustin team to fulfill a personal task of mine. Commander He, if I remember correctly, I am currently enjoying my hard-earned break period, Yin Xiao drawled leisurely, elongating his tone. Are you openly asking me to work overtime? Will there be overtime pay? Ignoring his impertinence, He Chilhong calmly said, I'm asking you to immediately go to District D-135 and capture a mutated zombie. I believe Dr. Ning's research team will find it very interesting. District D-135 Yin Zhao's lazy tone vanished instantly, replaced by a hint of surprise. I happen to be watching the throne race competition are you referring to Song Kof, I mean, the team V587 in Hymen. That's right. I want you to capture the zombie alive before they kill it. Well, overtime is possible, as long as you remember to pay triple the commission fee, Yin Xiao strangely changed his tune, agreeing quite readily. Thank you for your hard work. The SUV stopped at an abandoned factory, and the bound braided head was thrown to the ground. It tried to run, but its limbs were tightly bound. It stumbled after just a couple of steps and fell flat. A metal wheelchair rolled slowly in front of it. Zhuang Qinyan observed it with lowered eyes, appearing like an unfeeling deity capable of deciding its life or death at any moment. Feeling threatened, braided head let out a hoarse roar from deep in its throat, baring its teeth viciously at Zhuang Qinyan. Its pointed teeth weren't as sharp as other zombies, resembling underdeveloped canine teeth. Shut your mouth, or I'll pull out all your teeth, Zhuang Qinyan threatened. Braided head whimpered and surprisingly shut its mouth obediently. It it understands. 
Fang Zhishu exclaimed in surprise, assuming that the fallen had only retained consciousness, never expecting it to communicate with humans. Zhuang Qinyan asked in a low voice, You understand what we're saying, right? Braided Head hesitated for two seconds and reluctantly nodded. Why did you infiltrate Hymen? Ah, ah, Braided Head tilted its head back and let out a couple of random shouts. Zhuang Qinyan, untie its hands. Su Cha cut the ropes with a dagger freeing braided head, whose stiff fingers clumsily drew an unfamiliar pattern in the sand. V587 was utterly baffled what kind of bizarre symbol was this. Even if it understood, could it not communicate? With hands behind his back, Su Xing circled the pattern twice and suddenly exclaimed, I got it. This is the zombie king. Ah! Ah! Braided head exclaimed excitedly. Xiao Xing, how did you figure it out? Song Ku humbly asked. These are wings, and these are blood vessels, quite easy to recognize, Su Xing explained confidently, pointing at the dark and intricate drawing. Everyone was speechless. How did they not recognize it? Are you saying you were sent by the zombie king? Zhuang Qinyan shifted the conversation, apart from you, how many similar zombies have entered? Braided Head's gray eyes moved slowly, seemingly surprised that Zhuang Qinyan knew it had companions. Like a child caught in wrongdoing, it sneakily glanced at Zhuang Qinyan, then lowered its head, pretending to think, before starting to draw little figures in the sandone after another, row after row, quickly filling two lines and not stopping. It says there are many more, Su Xing blinked, taking the role of the zombie language interpreter seriously. Thank you for making that clear. Zhuang Qinyan's eyes grew colder, was your mission to open the three iron gates from inside? Braided Head's drawing paused abruptly, as if hitting a wall. Zhuang Qinyan pressed on, why didn't you act together with your companions? When V587 captured Braided Head, it behaved like someone taking a leisurely stroll, as if casually roaming the streets without any sense of carrying a heavy burden. Braided Head struggled, scratching the ground with its fingers for a while. Eventually, it sluggishly drew a vertical dividing line. On the left side, it drew a cluster of unknown symbols, and on the right side, another set of these symbols. Everyone looked to Su Xing, waiting for his translation. Even Su Xing found himself a little puzzled this time. He crouched down, studying it for a while. Braided Head enthusiastically explained to him, Ahaha. Su Xing nodded and pointed confidently at the left side, This is you. Braided Head exclaimed, Ah! It quickly added a few strokes on the right side, connecting a line to the earlier drawing of the Zombie King. Su Xing continued, This is the bad side of you. Braided Head exclaimed again, Ah! Zhuang Qinyan looked at the strange pile of symbols on the ground, a hint of a smile on his lips. You want to tell us that the Fallen are divided into two factions. One identifies with its former existence as a human and doesn't want to be involved in conflicts. The other has completely sided with the zombie king, willingly becoming its followers. Is that right? Braided head nodded happily, its stiff neck making crackling sounds. Zhuang Qinyan slowed down his speech, oh. So, which side do you belong to? This time, braided head hesitated for a very long time. Carefully, it lifted its finger and slowly drew a line, connecting the good self to Su Xing's feet. Chapter 158 We meet again, Song Ku. The girl with braided hair seemed a bit timid in her actions, yet she firmly linked herself with Su Xing. At that moment, anyone could understand its significance it chose the side of humanity, even though it no longer belonged to the human category. The audience squatting in the V587 live broadcast room instantly erupted into contrasting opinions. Don't be naive. How could a zombie empathize with humans? What are you doing? Quickly kill it. You don't seriously believe a word from a zombie, do you? But I feel it sounds genuine. Can the holy talk just leave? My whole family was bitten by zombies, and I don't share the sky with them. The discussion about this unique zombie grew increasingly heated. The director realized a new focal point for viewership and switched the drone to focus on braided head's face, capturing the patterns of decay. The gray eyes of the girl blinked without pause as her head followed the movement of the drone. 
Suddenly, without warning, she snarled fiercely at the camera. Ah! Its gaping mouth, contorted face, and menacingly sharp teeth seemed as though they would snap the neck of anyone on the other side of the screen at any moment. The argumentative barrage in the live chat momentarily froze, replaced by a flood of unintelligible characters. The hyperrealistic experience from the high-definition images left a considerable psychological impact on the audience. It took a while before someone tremblingly muttered, CAA zombie is just a zombie. Braided Head's hands dug into the ground, a hint of triumph flashing across her face. Alert the Hymen City Hall to investigate suspicious individuals within the city, Zhuang Qinyan quickly stated. I'll contact them now, Lin Yuyu summoned the terminal interface. Zhuang Qinyan then turned to Song Ku, lowering his voice. Captain, a few words in private. Song Ku nodded and walked over. Zhuang Qinyan glanced at the drone and tapped twice on the armrest of Lu Xiaoyu's wheelchair. Private talk, didn't you hear? Sort it out. Lu Xiaoyu rolled his eyes, his fingers swiftly moving. Soon, several drone signals were lost, resembling headless flies buzzing erratically at low altitudes, and the V587 live stream room filled with static, displaying a technical malfunction message. How do you plan to handle her? The two walked into a corner, and Zhuang Qinyan asked in a low voice. His demeanor was very natural, but after spending so much time together, Song Ku was already familiar with the subtle changes in his expressions. Though Zhuang Qinyan used an inquiring tone, his eyes betrayed indifference, indicating that he didn't care about the life or death of Braided Head. Song Ku had a vague feeling that every time Zhuang Qinyan talked about the plan Eternity or mentioned the Fallen, his emotions became complex. It seemed to mix some kind of hidden disgust and rejection that he couldn't openly express. I'm thinking of finding a more distant place, Song Ku calmly voiced her thoughts, and leaving it there. In truth, she didn't have a better solution. Braided Head wasn't entirely human or a zombie she seemed more like a new species born after the apocalypse. Although she didn't attack proactively and was even sent as a spy by the zombie king, humans wouldn't accept her. Okay, captain's decision, Zhuang Qinyan had no objections regardless of whether Song Ku chose to kill or spare her. But there's one thing. We weren't cautious when we first captured her. Now, with the throne race broadcast spreading, I'm worried that some might become overly interested in her, causing trouble for us. Our team isn't suitable for attracting too much attention, Zhuang Qinyan said slowly. Most of the V587 team members carried secrets. For instance, Song Ku's inexplicable wound healing speed, Fang Zhishu's peculiar constitution that prevented zombie attacks, Lin Yuyu's true identity, and Zhuang Qinyan and Lu Xiaoyu. Then, Song Ku quickly made a decision, shall we find a place to leave her now? As they walked back, Su Xing and Braided Head were lying side by side on the sand, their heads next to each other, drawing. Lin Yuyu gestured toward them, the communication channel has been occupied. Probably bombarded by viewers watching the live stream. Song Ku was about to say something when suddenly, a piercing alarm shattered the night. Level 1 alert. Level 1 alert. Multiple zombie waves detected approaching. All sentinels assemble immediately. Their faces paled. The zombie wave was indeed heading toward high men. They wondered whether this was another feigned attack to deceive them or if it was the zombie king's all out assault. Let's go check it out, Song Ku decisively took charge. The SUV restarted. She turned to braided head. With no time to arrange her destination, she had to carefully negotiate, your appearance might be mistaken for a zombie by others, which is dangerous. Come with us for now. Ah, uh, ah, uh, braided head obediently nodded, hands planted on the ground. Braided head, with me here, I'll protect you. Su Xing beside her patted his chest, making a manly promise. Ha! Huh. Ha! Huh. Braided head disdainfully straightened up, towering significantly taller than Su Xing. Su Shorty Xing's self esteem collapsed. On the streets, vehicles rushed by, houses lit up, and the bustling noise echoed continuously. The SUV halted behind the final defense line, bright lights overhead illuminating the area like daylight. 
The official armed forces of high men swiftly and orderly moved through emergency passages, setting up heavy weapons on the city walls. Despite the temporary nocturnal siege, they remained composed. In front of everyone stood a massive floating screen, the connected thermal imaging continually emitting alarms, the frequency increasing. From the screen, numerous green radiation sources could be seen rapidly approaching high men from all directions. However, the real-time monitoring showed a calm scene, with the high-altitude scanners outside the city patrolling, finding no abnormalities. A mild late spring breeze brushed their faces, the river's surface gently undulating, the desolate wilderness quiet and still. At both ends of the bridge, the ten sentinels gripped their hell scythes, guns aimed squarely at the dark plains. One minute passed, then two five minutes elapsed. The anxious people of high men started whispering at first, then gradually the chatter grew louder. Where were the zombies? Where was the zombie tide? The same question flashed through everyone's mind. Beneath the night sky, the river water began to surge. Rolling waves formed dark rings, swiftly surging on both sides of the bridge across the river. A sentinel at the bridge wiped his damp palms, nervousness evident, as waves crashed against the shore. His determined gaze fixated forward. At any sign of movement on the plains, he would not hesitate to open fire. Suddenly, the sound of waves hitting the bank behind them. The sentinel shivered, alertly turning the machine gun. Before he could discern what was approaching, five or six drenched zombies leaped from the river, instantly overpowering him, tearing him into pieces. Ah! The piercing scream sent chills down everyone's spines. What was more terrifying happened next. After the first sentinel's death, countless zombie heads surfaced on the river, forming an expansive cluster resembling floating gourds. The sight was enough to drive someone with a fear of clusters insane. Gunners at the bridgehead and city walls unleashed relentless gunfire. The scythes were akin to the reaper of life. Bullets poured out in continuous streams, sinking numerous zombies. Their bodies floated like balloons, yet their numbers were overwhelming. Often submerging to evade gunfire and hindered by the surging water, they made targeting difficult. The rushing currents impeded the firearm's range, making it impossible to inflict effective damage for a while. Soon, a horde of zombies crossed the river, sprinting in groups towards the first iron gate. Pull the switch. Pull the switch quickly. Yelled the guards within the defenses. The high-voltage electric grid crackled and the front line of zombies instantly fell, their bodies charred. A strong stench of decay drifted into the city on the wind. However, the following zombies stepped over the fallen, fiercely charging forward. The crisis didn't cease from beneath the river's surface, an unending stream of undead reinforcements emerged. Humanity, overly confident in the great river's protection, never imagined that the zombie king had trained a zombie army well-versed in aquatic warfare. Zombies don't need to breathe, they don't require oxygen, they can adapt to extreme pressure, perfect for prolonged deep dives, Zhuang Qingyan's gaze turned icy. But under the right deployment, the zombie king could silently send his troops. Its capabilities are probably more terrifying than we estimated. Song Ku peered out from the car's rooftop. Do we need to help? Zhuang Qinyan shook his head. Intervening now might disrupt the counterattack's rhythm. Let's wait. High men isn't defenseless. The defenders atop the city walls, under immense pressure of life and death, unleashed astonishing speed. Artillery and explosive rounds were launched relentlessly, the destructive power of heavy weapons quickly curbing the zombie assault, completing the first wave clearance, creating heaps of debris outside the defenses. Braided Head suddenly stuck her head against the car window and made two aha sounds. Song Ku glanced down at her, realization dawning. I almost forgot, you have accomplices, eager to cause chaos. The dark grey SUV restarted, heading towards the first iron gate. Between the three defense lines, there was a commercial area. Currently, the emergency passages were congested with people. Officials in charge of evacuation shouted at the top of their lungs, safe zones are open. Civilians, retreat quickly. Let the elderly, women, and children go first. As the main forces marched through, an officer hurriedly ran towards the control room, preparing to close the emergency entrance. 
Unbeknownst to him, in the darkness, a few pairs of cloudy gray eyes were fixed on him. Just as he pressed the control panel, someone within the civilian queue suddenly turned and hurled an unidentified object at him. Bang those gasoline-like items struck the control panel, erupting into flames and causing a series of explosions, resulting in a circuit short circuit. The high-voltage electric grid outside the city walls sizzled twice before gradually dimming. The civilians were startled to discover a traitor among them. Panic-stricken, they looked at the troublemakers, then shouted, Dot! Zombies! Zombies have infiltrated! The high-voltage electric grid suddenly failed, even when the backup power was activated, there was about a minute of silence. The zombies attacking the city, free from the threat of electric shock, became even more ferocious in their charge. Meanwhile, heavy and chaotic footsteps echoed from the horizon, signaling the arrival of the second wave of zombies on land. The defense line in Hymen instantly became strained. Sentinels on the bridge over the river frantically sprayed the planes, trying to halt the reinforcements. Meanwhile, zombies from the water seized the opportunity to leap onto the city walls, ruthlessly biting into the humans within the defenses. Witnessing a sharp decline in armed sentinels and a rapid weakening of firepower, the Awakeners in High Men took action, swiftly rushing to the front line. The evacuated civilians also turned back abruptly, looking at the collapsed walls and their kin being slaughtered, their eyes burning with fury. 2. My ancestors were all from High Men, born and raised on this land. Even in death, we won't let you bastards occupy High Men. Just zombies. We'll fight you to the end. The call was echoed by hundreds as thousands of valiant residents of High Men raised their weapons, engaging in a fierce battle against the zombies. Let's go. Song Ku and the others lagged behind, unable to identify the fallen among the crowd. From the current situation, it was evident that this zombie tide wasn't a feigned attack the zombie king was sure to appear. Intense fighting erupted outside the city of High Men. Reinforcements arrived from the sky, teams participating in the throne race like three grandsons and one grandpa, Xuanqing Tea House, and Guns and Roses all rushed in. Several uniquely designed hover cars arrived over high men. Yin Xiao leaned out from the top of one, pulling up a sniper rifle with a sigh, looks like another overtime shift again, my luck's really bad huh? Yin Xiao swallowed the latter half of the sentence, looked down at his feet, a playful smile creeping up, actually, my luck's pretty good. After a minute of silence, the high-voltage electric grid restarted. With their fearless resistance, the people of High Men managed to hold off the zombies outside the city. Amidst the chaotic battlefield, Song Ku yelled at Braided Head, Hey, don't wander off. Stick close to me. Ah! Braided Head replied and obediently followed behind V587. Song Ku quickly freed a scarf from her hand and securely covered the girl's face with it. As she was about to sprint forward, a nimble figure descended from above, landing right in front of her. The man was clad in combat gear, camo pants, high military boots, and wore fingerless sniper glove sit was Yin Xiao. We meet again, Song Ku, Yin Xiao greeted with a smile. How about we discuss something? No time, Song Ku replied bluntly. She didn't have time for small talk with him. Yin Xiao shrugged off her indifference and gestured towards Braided Head hiding behind Song Ku. You hand this guy over to me, and I'll help you kill the zombie king, deal. A threatening growl emanated from Braided Head's throat. Song Ku frowned, about to respond when a piercing alarm rang out across the entire city. A few minutes ago. While everyone's attention was on the underwater zombies, a group of about 30 individuals dressed in uniforms approached the gatehouse. Upon closer inspection, their movements appeared stiff and uncoordinated. Who goes there? A sentinel raised his gun, sternly asking, but the identical uniforms caused hesitation, preventing them from shooting immediately. The opposition swiftly lunged forward. The sentinels groaned as their necks snapped audibly. Scattered bodies lay on the ground as these people silently crossed over, picking up firearms from the fallen. Knock, knock the leader politely knocked on the door. The person in charge of the control room opened the video intercom, seeing a sentinel outside with a low-brimmed hat and an eerie tattoo on their chin. What's your ID number? The person asked cautiously. I haven't seen you before. 
the individual slowly lifted their head, their cloudy gray eyes staring straight at them. The person in charge paled, and hastily took a step back, trying to press the alarm button. Unfortunately, it was too late. The next moment, the gates were violently smashed open, dozens of zombies barged in, and blood-curdling screams echoed. Haman's first iron gate was opened from the inside. Chapter 159 Good Brother and Bad Brother The artillery purchased by Hyman was the most popular hot weapon at the northern base, equipped with automatic loading and ballistic calibration functions. Its only flaw was the extremely high demand on the operator it required a single person to complete angle measurement, distance measurement, aiming, and then firing, for precise strikes against the enemy. Training a qualified gunner required a huge cost, and after the city walls were breached, the zombies seemed to have a collective consciousness, targeting these elites as their primary attack objective. Two silver-white wheelchairs quietly ascended the defensive structure. Lu Xiaoyu flipped over several zombies gnawing at the remains of the gunners, stopping in front of a row of artillery positions. With lowered eyes, he studied for two seconds, adeptly corrected the ballistic deviation, aimed, and fired. Boom! Boom boom! Six shells consecutively shot, landing in the most densely packed central area of the zombies. Each cannon blast created deep craters in the ground. Lu Xiaoyu's calculations were almost flawless hundreds of zombies were blasted away, some directly reduced to putrid mush. Lu Xiaoyu's silver hair fluttered as all six arms moved in unison. He resembled the legendary sea monster from ancient times, effortlessly controlling even the hell scythe. Swiftly adjusting the gun barrels, he switched to single-shot mode. Bullets sprayed out, blowing apart zombie skulls and turning bodies into sieves. The pressure on the city wall immediately lightened. Thank you, brother. The surviving gunners, their faces covered in blood, shouted their gratitude towards him. Lu Xiaoyu nodded gracefully. Those gunners staggered back to their positions, steadfastly holding the line. Lu Xiaoyu glanced down, noticing the smell of gunpowder all over him. In contrast, Zhuang Qinyan who was following him was like a noble prince, moving as if on a leisurely stroll, his clothes untouched by dust. He maneuvered his wheelchair around the bodies on the ground, afraid of even a speck of blood staining his attire. That picky and fastidious countenance mirrored his youth. Anyone familiar with him wouldn't mistake it. Lu Xiaoyu extended a mechanical arm, intentionally handing over the dirtiest hell scythe, playfully tossing it into Zhuang Qinyan's lap. Do you know how to use it? If not, I can teach you. It's because you didn't take the firearms course. Zhuang Qinyan's brows were so tight that he could pinch a fly. He grabbed a slightly cleaner piece of cloth from the ground, wiped the gun barrel's black-red bloodstains, loaded live ammunition, and aimed at Lu Xiaoyu's head. Fire your cannons, less talk. Lu Xiaoyu huffed in a tsundra manner, completely focused on controlling the six artillery pieces. Zhuang Qinyan adjusted the gun's aim but kept his gaze fixed on his face. I've noticed, you've been more agreeable lately. Lu Xiaoyu's movement imperceptibly paused for a moment. Using the standard alliance language with a peculiar tone, he retorted, Oh, dear friend, I've always been agreeable. It's just that you don't understand me enough. Did you steal money from Song Ku? Moved it to your own account? Zhuang Qinyan arched an eyebrow. Are you insulting my character? Lu Xiaoyu practically had your ridiculous written all over his face. TCH. Boring. The two glared at each other, then turned their heads away. Lu Xiaoyu was like a human artillery, rapid-fire cannons booming down onto the battlefield, silver snakes dancing, zombies flipping. Amidst the deafening noise, he suddenly spoke, the plan eternity is that the one? Which one? Zhuang Qinyan replied casually. The one where you were so ecstatic, shouting everywhere, finally, I can participate in the project with that person, is that it? Lu Xiaoyu didn't look at him. I could hear your ghostly cries even when I was sleeping on the fifth floor that day. Zhuang Qinyan fell silent for a moment before retorting sarcastically, you're the idiot. At least I didn't oversleep and miss an exam. He didn't deny it. Without lifting his head, Lu Xiaoyu continued swiftly while killing zombies, regarding the plan Eternity, 
when you explained it, you mentioned many concepts humans, zombies, awakeners. Mutant zombies, evolved zombies, the fallen but regardless of the species, they all have fatal flaws, and in your logical chain, there happens to be a crucial missing link. Also the most perfect link. As you've said, the initial intention of the plan eternity was to create the most perfect genes. Its results should have eternal life, immense abilities, while retaining consciousness and intelligence, achieving a thorough evolution of humanity. I want to know, did this research succeed? Lu Xiaoyu asked persistently. Ever heard a saying? Curiosity killed the cat, Zhuang Qinyan said lightly. I only know that curiosity is the staircase to human progress. Since you joined Qinglan, you disappeared from Loboni and when we met again. Lu Xiaoyu finally found a moment to glance at him, scanning him up and down, ultimately resting on his legs, recently healed from serious injuries. Well, it's unexpected. Since you care so much about this project, Lu Xiaoyu asked again, I'm genuinely curious, did your research succeed? This time, Zhuang Qinyan took a long time to contemplate before slowly responding. Once. Even Lu Xiaoyu couldn't hide his immense surprise, but Zhuang Qinyan didn't give him a chance to speak. Just once. Fourteen years ago, there was a nuclear leak in Lok, followed by an explosion. The entire Qinglan Research Institute was devastated, including the project researchers, all experimental subjects, and the local storage hub that contained all the data for the plan Eternity. Since that day, the results of this research could only be declared a failure. The data can be recovered, Lu Xiaoyu remarked dismissively. That hub was pulverized into fragments. Not even the tiniest nail-sized piece could be reconstructed, not even by someone like you, Zhuang Qinyan's eyes held a chilling coldness. Moreover, do you think the central court didn't anticipate this? How much data was in the hub? Lu Xiaoyu inquired. Exceeding 3,000 zettabytes, Zhuang Qinyan replied. 3,000 zettabytes of data, Lu Xiaoyu clicked his tongue twice. That number sounds quite terrifying. He then maneuvered another round of six cannons to fire simultaneously, taking advantage of the automatic reloading brake, seemingly casually glancing at Zhuang Qinyan. You think, is there anyone whose brain works exceptionally well, capable of memorizing all the data? I say, Zhuang Qinyan's tone was icy, if you don't start firing again, the zombies will get too close. Both of them simultaneously raised their weapons and began firing. At that moment, a piercing alarm sounded, and the first iron gate of high men opened. After the defense line was breached, the tide of zombies found a clear direction of attack, rushing relentlessly toward the iron gates, fearing to fall behind. From a vantage point, the dense horde of zombies appeared like moving black ants, devouring high men at an alarming pace. At this critical moment, dozens of armored vehicles rolled out from within the city. Yen Biao, the magistrate of high men, stood at the forefront, holding a megaphone, roaring, push forward artillery and rifle hands must not retreat. Behind this gate are our parents, wives, children, our homeland. Not a step backward. High men can't afford any failure. Even if we're to die, let's die charging forward. The soldiers of high men, their eyes reddened, fervently agreed, fiercely spraying the oncoming zombie horde with gunfire and continuous bombardment. The armored vehicles thundered across the land, crushing the zombies attempting to breach the defensive line into pulp. Yen Biao mounted a hell scythe on the vehicle's roof, roaring wildly as he fired repeatedly, ejecting shell casings like a torrential stream. Whether awakener or ordinary person, sentinel or civilian, intense battles erupted throughout Haman's city walls, streets, and alleys. Even women and children weren't hiding at home, spontaneously aiding in transporting ammunition, providing frontline support. The most striking in close combat were hundreds of warriors wielding azure-colored weapons, including Wang Hu and his bodyguard. They fearlessly swung at the zombie heads, resolute and swift in their actions. Empowered by mysterious weapons, their combat prowess was off the charts. Damn it! I just bought a 500 square meter flat in the city and haven't even renovated it. You bastards want to destroy my new home. No manners. Wang Hu cursed while punching and kicking. 
When everyone's determination to defend the city merged into a unified force, it was truly fearsome. Two currents of zombies at the riverbank and bridge quickly retreated. The path paved with decayed flesh and shattered bones extended from the iron gates to the riverbank, making it impossible to distinguish between the dead in battle and the zombies. And District D-135, High Men, astonishingly held back the successive waves of zombies all on its own. Tustin's group attack took advantage of the high altitude to clear an open space, while Yin Xiao shot and instantly sniped the approaching zombies. I've taken the commission from above to take it to the northern base. If you hand it over to me, I assure you I won't let you lose. It would be a win-win for us. No need. Song Ku's heart sank. As expected, Zhuang Qinyan was right. The existence of braided head attracted attention as soon as it was exposed. Yin Xiao sighed in distress, from my personal perspective, I really don't want to conflict with you. While the two conversed, braided head turned its head, catching sight of several uniformed figures heading towards the iron gate. They skirted around the front lines and vanished from sight. Braided head stood up abruptly, a hint of urgency flashing in its eyes. It changed direction and, without a second thought, headed after those few individuals. Hey! Its sudden attempt to escape caught Song Ku off guard. She couldn't grab it, and braided head had already charged into the battlefield. Sister, I'll go after her. Su Xing beside her said and promptly followed braided head. Song Ku, neither of them is easy to handle. Yin Xiao chuckled and shrugged, see, even if you protect it, it won't appreciate you. A zombie is a zombie. The door of the floating car swung open, and the Tustin Awakener leaned out and yelled, Yin Xiao, stop flirting around. I'm still waiting to finish up and go back to sleep. You're just fooling around. Can't you do something serious? A wild beauty with deep red curls blowing bubble gum pushed past her teammates, clasped her hands, and flirtatiously whistled, Hey, Captain, can you do it? Get lost. Kill those zombies. Do you guys have to slander your captain like this? I'm still the captain. Yin Xiao turned around, laughed, and scolded a few words, then turned to Song Ku helplessly. Did you hear that? I have no other choice. As he finished speaking, he suddenly flashed past Song Ku, chasing after braided head. Sorry, it's an urgent mission. I have to act. Why is he so rude? He didn't even finish speaking before running off. Song Ku began running after him. Chapter 160 Good Brother and Bad Brother Yin Xiao moved extremely fast, almost passing through the iron gate. At the critical moment, a hail of bullets suddenly rained down from the direction of the city wall, smashing towards him in the direction he was heading. If he didn't dodge, he would have been smashed into pieces. Yin Xiao timely braked, leaping back, leaving deep marks on the ground with his military boots. He swiftly adjusted his sniper scope, blocking the aftermath of the explosion. The splattered mud quickly dispersed, and he abruptly looked up, only to see a stern-faced man inside the defense walls, coldly staring at him. The man held a machine gun and was about to shoot at him. Yin Xiao recognized the man they had a chance encounter in the skies over Ferrara, seemingly not on good terms. Unfortunately, it was mutual. This dislike had no reason, just an intuition stemming from the instincts of male animals. The two locked eyes from a distance, the smell of gunpowder lingering in the air. A ruby earring flashed in the dark night as Yin Xiao brazenly raised two middle fingers at the other. Zhuang Qinyan remained unfazed, tugging at the corner of his mouth, revealing an extremely mocking smile. Just as Yin Xiao furrowed his brows, someone grabbed his collar. A tall figure exceeding 80 kilograms was hoisted up with one hand and was ruthlessly flung backward. His vision spun as Yin Xiao, with his slender figure, twisted mid-air, landing to maintain balance. When he looked up again, Song Ku's leopard-like agile figure had already leapt away, slashing down nearby zombies, long gone. Some people naturally disliked fragile white flowers, yet they found themselves defenseless against vibrant, thorn-covered iron roses. Yin Xiao was someone who walked a different path. A smirk played at the corner of his mouth, but the next moment, he realized that Song Ku's throw was exceptionally accurate, landing him amidst a heap of zombies. 
the zombies emerging from the river, covered in algae and mud, shook their heads, splattering him with a river-scented mess. Yin Zhao's smile vanished, expressionless as he drew his weapon from the holster on his thigh, efficiently dealing with the zombies. Aren't you going after them? Lu Xiaoyu witnessed the commotion from atop the city wall and kindly reminded Zhuang Qinyan. I can't shoulder or lift anything, Zhuang Qinyan pointed confidently at his legs. Wouldn't I just cause trouble if I went? Zhuang Qinyan thought of something, lips curling into a smile. Don't worry, when our captain gets serious, no one can snatch things from her. Lu Xiaoyu nodded. Oh, then why did you just attack that person like a peacock spreading its feathers? That person is probably top tier A level, and you, in any case, are an S level awakener. Lu Xiaoyu trailed off suddenly. Zhuan Qinyan sneered, finally figured it out. I thought you were so obsessed with shooting that even your intelligence went off with the bullets. Lu Xiaoyu ignored his sarcasm. He suddenly realized that since a while ago, Zhuang Qinyan had only been using firearms and hadn't utilized any supernatural abilities. He initially thought it was out of laziness, but the truth was he simply hadn't had a chance to use them. Up to this point in the battle, high men seemed to have an absolute advantage, yet both waves of zombies on the river and the plains were just ordinary ones. None of the mutant zombies, evolved zombies, or the zombie king had appeared yet. Where could they have gone? This zombie king's best tactic is guerrilla tactics, Zhuang Qinyan calmly analyzed. Using food airdrop containers as a cover to send in the fallen, because they have no life signs. Once mixed with the food, it masks even radiation. Most importantly, they can control themselves and not make any noticeable movements. But with such elaborate planning, is its only goal really to have the fallen open three iron gates? Since it can adjust tactics based on different abilities, why not organize a surprise attack? If I were it, I definitely wouldn't opt for a straightforward assault. Oh, so you think your good buddy, the zombie king, would do what? Lu Xiaoyu mocked. First, let other awakeners take the lead and call our people back, Zhuang Qinyan said. I'll go meet this one, an interesting opponent. Inside Haimen City, all the floating screens lit up with official announcements from the municipal hall. The person responsible seemed quite frantic, lacking time to organize the language. Several announcements were bluntly expressed. Residents must heighten vigilance. Zombies have been discovered disguised as humans. Do not trust anyone. Do not engage in conversation with strangers. Do not approach the Iron Gate booths. The booths are laden with explosives. Zombies cannot read text. It's enough that we know in our hearts. Don't speak it out loud. Stay vigilant. Stay vigilant. A person with braided hair sprinted through the crowd, with Su Xing panting as he chased after. Soon, they reached the outer perimeter of the second line of defense, the back of the commercial street. Braided head accelerated and intercepted a group of about 30 people. Su Xing realized something and hid behind a building, holding his breath as he peered sneakily. Braided head anxiously yelled twice, hoarse, towards the leader of the group. The leader turned, lips moving, seemingly communicating with braided head. Su Xing caught a glimpse of its sinister profile, murky gray eyes, and the zombie-like patterns extending from its chin down its neck. This was a fallen. No, these thirty people they should all be fallens, the bad faction mentioned by braided head. After pondering for a moment, Su Xing decided to nickname the leader Dirty Chin. After Dirty Chin finished communicating with braided head, it rudely shoved braided head aside, as if saying, get out of the way. Braided head stumbled, growing more anxious, and clumsily retrieved something from around its neck that resembled a broken fong, somewhat like a zombie's tooth. As Dirty Chin observed the fong, its initially calm expression turned into rage. It flipped braided head over with the butt of its gun, then lifted its foot to stomp on the person's head. Braided head struggled desperately, her hat and scarf falling off, revealing unmistakable zombie features. Dirty chin let out an enraged roar from its throat, lowering its head closer to braided head's face. Su Xing was extremely nervous, tightly gripping an ice spike, ready to intervene at any moment. Fortunately, Dirty Chin didn't intend to harm its fellow beings. 
It reached out and took away Braided Head's pendant, stooped to pick up the hat and scarf, covering the Braided Head's face, then gestured for it to leave. Dirty Chin silently led the fallen deeper into the street. Remembering the direction they disappeared, Su Xing discreetly recorded a video and shared it in the V587 group chat. Xiao Xing, where are you? Came Song Ke's voice through the earpiece. Sister. Come quickly, I've made a big discovery. Su Xing initially wanted to send his location but remembered that his sister couldn't distinguish directions, so he shared both their positions. I'm on my way, Song Ku replied. After informing Song Ku, Su Xing jumped off the wall and hurried toward Braided Head, his short legs moving swiftly. Braided Head looked dazed, seeming stunned and dispirited. Su Xing helped fix its hat and scarf and patted off the dirt. Then, squatting in front of it, he asked, Are you okay, Braided Head? Braided Head seemed absent minded and didn't respond. Su Xing continued, what did you say to your bad buddies? Why were they so angry? Braided Head glanced up, then silently drew something on the ground a drawing of three tightly clustered ghostly symbols. After staring at it for a while, Su Xing exclaimed in surprise, Ah! You're saying Dirty Chin is your brother? Braided Head looked puzzled. Su Xing struggled to explain, Dirty Chin ah, uh, has a dirty chin, tall. Braided Head understood and protested against Su Xing's nickname-making behavior with a series of us. Don't worry about the details, Su Xing chuckled, brushing it off. Then what about this one? Is he also your brother? Braided Head nodded, saying ah. It quickly added a few strokes to the drawing. Su Xing understood this time. Braided Head had drawn a scene of zombies playing football, and then he got agitated. It turns out that your brother is the bad guy who took the lead in bullying me last time. Braided head, ah. Where did it go? Did it also come to Hymen? Su Xing snorted, deciding not to hold a grudge against them for their past actions. Braided head quieted down and slowly drew a severed zombie. Following suit, it connected good brother to Su Xing and drew the zombie king, connecting it to the bad brother. Su Xing also grew silent recalling Zhuang Qingyan's cold remarks. He had mentioned that Fallens were a race outside humans and zombies, their characteristics of transformation making them unacceptable to humans. Their retained consciousness prevented them from becoming complete zombies. During the Tongwan outbreak, Braided Head, following its good brother, chose to hide and evade rather than actively attack humans. However, the next day, Braided Head's good brother was mistaken for a zombie by the Awakeners and was killed. The half-body braided head had dragged away likely belonged to its brother. Not knowing how to comfort braided head, Su Xing simply sat there with it in silence. Sudden footsteps approached from behind, and Song Ku arrived on the scene. Seeing that they were both unharmed, she sighed with relief. Before she could fully relax, a smoke bomb flew in, exploding as it hit the ground, causing Su Xing to cough violently, covering his mouth. In the thick smoke, a hand with a fingerless glove lunged aggressively toward braided head, intercepted halfway by Song Ku, twisting it in the opposite direction. Yin Xiao fired a shot from his other hand, forcing Song Ku to release her grip. Both took a step back. As the captain of Tustin, I must take this mutant zombie back to the client, Yin Xiao's expression showed some helplessness. It's not a zombie, it's a fallen, a new species, Song Ku explained seriously. New or old, higher-ups want it. You better not intervene, Yin Zhao's nonchalant expression turned serious. One wrong move, and it'll cause you trouble. Song Ku was taken aback. More trouble. Zhuang Qinyan said that, and now Yin Xiao too. Why was Braided Head's existence so important? As the deadlock continued between the two, Su Xing jumped in. His hands clenched, face red from coughing, and he blurted out unexpectedly, why do you have to catch braided head? There are so many fallens here. Can't you just catch the bad ones and be done with it? Song Ku, ah. Uh. Yin Xiao, ha. Huh. So many. Chapter, 161. Song Kiki, he grabbed my hand hard. It said that children's words are without reservation, and Su Xing's words left the two people opposite him stunned. 
In Zhao's thumb pressed on the outside of the gun body, the calloused index finger hooked the cylinder. With both hands simultaneously maneuvering the gun through a dizzying series of movements, the two slender Hellcat pistols were effortlessly returned to their holsters strapped to his thighs, almost as if they were toys. Kid, Yin Xiao raised his chin, his sharp gaze fixed on Su Xing, words carry responsibility. Besides this guy, did you personally witness any other mutant zombies in Hymen? It, it was already um, Su Xing swallowed hard, shifted slightly toward Song Ku, the captain of the Tustin team, who had suddenly become imposing, exuding a different aura altogether. Just over thirty of them passed by just now, Su Xing muttered under his breath. Ah! Ah! Braided head jumped excitedly, emitting a low growl from deep within its throat. If not your brother, how about catching other bad ones? Su Xing whispered to it, or those who constantly bully you, ones you dislike. Let's kill with a borrowed knife and take the opportunity to get rid of them. Braided head hesitated, hands folded together, clearly making a thinking gesture. Given its intelligence, it couldn't understand what kill with a borrowed knife meant or handle such complex relationship between zombies. Yin Xiao looked somewhat surprised, can this kid communicate with mutant zombies? Song Ku nodded solemnly, hmm, acknowledging that Xiao Xing's talent was indeed quite extraordinary. Your client specifically asked for you to catch braided head. Song Ku inquired proactively. Not particularly. Yin Xiao shrugged, hands in his pockets, leaning against the wall casually. He could already anticipate what Song Ku was going to say, as he Chiu Hong's only request was to capture a mutant zombie. Oh, in that case, I'll take care of this one, you go catch others. Following his lead, Song Ku flicked open a butterfly knife with her thumb, swiftly spinning it. The sharp blade vibrated like the wings of a butterfly at high frequency, almost grazing against the skin of her fingertips. One wrong move could sever a finger. Song Ku performed a flashy set of maneuvers, then with a click, she sheathed the knife. Then she lifted her head, her eyes shining like stars, calmly gazing back at Yin Xiao, as if to say, whatever it is, I can handle it too. Far from feeling threatened, Yin Xiao felt an itching sensation in his mind, as if scratched by a cat's paw. Despite the calm negotiation between the two, neither dared to relax, knowing that any disagreement might lead to another altercation. If I go after others, Yin Xiao smiled, Captain Song, will you still intervene? Not today, came Song Ku's calm reply. The battle in High Men had evolved into a bloodbath between zombies and humans. The fallen, by choosing to open the Iron Gate, had positioned themselves against humanity. They were the culprits behind the current brutal situation, and she had no reason to stop Yin Xiao. A hint of amusement flashed in Yin Xiao's eyes as he nodded slowly, then I'll have to put in more effort and change my target. The terminal vibrated, and Song Ku glanced down to see a gathering notification sent by Zhuang Qinyan, not far from their location. Xiao Xing, let's go, she called to Su Xing. Su Xing obediently followed but turned and earnestly advised braided head, don't wander off this time, it's safer to stay with us. Just a couple of steps away, Song Ku suddenly turned around, noticing Yin Xiao following them step by step. She tilted her head, her eyes clearly saying, didn't you say you were going after something else? Having just sent the message, Yin Xiao, catching her expression, smiled in response, Captain Song, my intuition has always been accurate. Rather than aimlessly searching for the next mutant zombie within the city, I believe my chances of completing the mission are greater by following you. Before that, you can use me as a helper. Song Ku shook her head. At that moment, she seemed to possess divine wisdom, seeing through Yin Zhao's true intentions. You don't trust us. Yin Xiao hadn't seen any other fallen. If Su Xing had lied just now, and if Song Ku and he had teamed up to deceive him, if he had believed them and there were no other fallen, he would have fallen into their trap. Therefore, the Yin Xiao would undoubtedly follow them. If there were indeed other fallen, he could fulfill the task. If not, he would still target braided head. Better to be cautious, Yin Xiao calmly replied. Zhuang Qinyan and Lu Xiaoyu had been waiting at the gathering point for a while when Lin Yuyu and the other three quickly arrived to join them. The situation outside the city has temporarily stabilized. 
The zombie tide can't break through, but Heyman's ammunition is depleting rapidly, Lin Yuyu said, her face displaying concern. Yen Biao has requested reinforcements from several nearby sea districts, but we don't know how long they'll take to arrive. The checkpoint in Haiman has yet to appear, Su Cha timely reminded. The checkpoint is related to the zombie king, Zhuang Qinyan affirmed. As they were discussing, Song Ku and Su Xing arrived, followed by braided head and a familiar young man. What's going on? Who's this? Lin Yuyu asked in surprise. Song Ku sighed and explained to her teammates about the encounter with Yin Xiao. Yin Xiao stood directly in front of Zhuang Qinyan, pondered for a moment, and took the initiative to greet him. I'm Yin Xiao, captain of the Tustin Awakener team from the northern base. Zhuang Qinyan, came Zhuang Qinyan's cold reply. Oh, so you're the Zhuang Qinyan, Yin Xiao's tone carried a meaningful undertone. During Song Ku's conversation with Gao Xiangyang, he had also been present, having heard about 70 to 80 percent of their chat. In his eyes, the current Zhuang Qinyan was nothing more than a despicable thief who stole genetic information, with suspicion of undergoing plastic surgery to alter appearances. Pleasure to meet you, Yin Zhao's face bore a fake smile as he extended his right hand. Right, Zhuang Qinyan shook his hand. Yin Xiao raised an eyebrow, his grip suddenly tightening to 90% strength. The instantaneous explosive power of a top-notch sniper was not to be underestimated. If it were an ordinary person encountering such terrifying force, their joints would have been crushed. Zhuang Qinyan's joints made a crackling sound. He stayed silent for a moment before turning to complain, Song Kiki, he grabbed my hand hard. Yin Xiao. Aren't we having a competition here between men? You're giving up before the match even begins. What happened to your pride? Song Ku walked over, expressionless, and slapped away Yin Zhao's hand, then lifted Zhuang Qinyan's hand to inspect. There was a hint of redness on the back of his hand. Zhuang Qinyan's long lashes drooped down, his left hand resting neatly on his knee, his tightly pursed lips revealing a hint of grievance. His health isn't good, Song Ku glanced at Yin Xiao, her eyes filled with reproach. Don't bully him. Yin Xiao chuckled, amused. Having grown up in the northern base receiving elite education, he adhered to the concept of strength is paramount. For the first 26 years of his life, he lived freely and uninhibitedly, utterly ignorant of the tea art culture from the ancient civilization period, let alone aware of the existence of the rare breed known as the male green tea. Completely unaware of the undercurrents between the two, Song Ku earnestly asked her companions, where do you think the fallen might go? Lin Yuyu contemplated for a moment, Haiman has issued warnings, and all outposts are on high alert. If the fallen try to repeat their old tricks and open the iron gate, wouldn't it be too difficult? The zombie king, what instructions did he give you? Zhuang Qinyan paused, turning to address Braided Head. Braided Head was startled, behaving like a student who hadn't paid attention in class and suddenly got called upon to answer a question. It scratched its head for a while, paced around, hesitated, then finally pointed in a direction, indicating it would lead Song Ku and the others. Let's go and see, Zhuang Qinyan said in a low voice. Be cautious. Braided Head took a few steps, stopped to think, struggled to recall the details it had missed while slacking off, ran a few more steps. And led the group through a series of twists and turns to the outside of the second line of Defensia remote substation. There, it stopped. Why did you bring us here, Braided Head? Su Xing asked curiously. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, ah, Braided Head wailed, its expression conveying a range of emotions, but unfortunately, no one could understand. Someone's here, Su Cha warned, breaking the silence. Everyone immediately quieted down, focusing on observing the surrounding environment. Su Cha silently pointed in a certain direction, and a few figures dressed in staff uniforms flashed past. Moving slowly, their shoulders swaying uncontrollably, it was another group of fallen. Chase them, Song Ku whispered. The group hurriedly followed, passing through layers of high-voltage wires and opening the door to a distribution room. In the pitch-black surroundings, in the quiet air, heavy breathing could faintly be heard. Click Su Cha turned on the flashlight, and the bright beam illuminated the room, 
revealing hundreds of level 2 zombies crammed inside. Squeezed into the small room, their dark eyeballs enlarged due to the strong light, they roared and lunged forward in response to the stimulation. Run! The eight of them streamed out, with a horde of zombies hot on their heels. When did there suddenly become so many evolved zombies within Hymen City? Su Xing spun around the electrical poles, continuously releasing ice shards. Lu Xiaoyu's six arms moved in unison, weaving a net-like data flow that flew out. Su Cha protected Lin Yuyu and Fang Zhishu, swiftly spreading a green toxic mist. Suddenly, lightning fast, he struck at the neck of a zombie attempting to ambush them from behind. Even Zhuang Qinyan wore a serious expression, mentally attacking the zombies without holding back. Song Kung manifested a nearly three-meter-long staff, sweeping through the crowd of hungry, roaring zombies creating distance between them and the group. Meanwhile, Yin Xiao leaped to the top of the electrical pole, rapidly firing his dual pistols, each shot bursting zombie heads and splattering their brain matter. These were all level 2 zombies, and with V587 strength, they could handle them given enough time. However, the number of zombies was overwhelming and excessively dense. If they were accidentally injured by the zombies and triggered a secondary radiation mutation, the consequences would be unimaginable. At that moment, several hover cars swiftly approached, their windows lowering as a dozen oil guns extended from within. Hey! People below, find a place to hide yourselves. Come in! Song Ko acted quickly, grabbing the electrical pole and transforming it into a massive umbrella, spreading it open. Its eight umbrella bones formed a tent-like structure, instantly creating a safe zone. The V587 members quickly took shelter inside, barely any space remaining. The farthest from them, Yin Xiao executed an extreme leap, rolling into the umbrella at the critical moment. He seamlessly blended in with the other seven members, squished in tightly. He winked at Song Ku, a playful gesture that carried a certain sense of charm. How's that? Zhuan Qinyan remained expressionless as his wheelchair slid forward, accidentally landing on Yin Zhao's military boot. Yin Zhao's expression twisted. Song Ku. What's with this guy? How's what? Chapter, 162. Song Kiki, he grabbed my hand hard. The gasoline poured down from the sky like a torrential rain, drenching the zombies hidden in the substation thoroughly. The door of the hover car opened, and amidst the fierce air currents, a woman with deep red curls extended her hands. Adorning her fingers were rings resembling green and blue gems, upon closer inspection revealed to be high-grade crystals. With her majestic awakened energy released, flames soared into the sky. With a hiss, a chemical reaction occurred between the gasoline and flames, igniting rapidly. The roaring fire illuminated the entire sky. Those supernatural flames possessed miraculous properties they wouldn't extinguish unless burnt completely. Eight people, including Song Ku, huddled under the protection of a spiritual umbrella. The scorching temperature nearly seared their skin, but Song Ku's stable mental strength prevented any disturbance despite the wails of the zombies, leaving the umbrella unaffected. After a good fifteen minutes, most of the level two zombies were burnt to death, and the remaining ones scattered and fled. Song Ku retracted the umbrella, and the group emerged, their faces covered in soot from the thick smoke. The woman in the floating car whistled ambiguously towards Yin Xiao, Hey, Captain, looks like even you have days like this. Need me to come to your rescue? Yin Xiao retorted angrily, Shut up, Jennifer. Even if I'm in a slump, I'm still your father. Jennifer scoffed, I don't have such an incompetent father like you. Stop arguing. Did you catch the mutated zombies? I want to go back to sleep. Stop wasting time, hurry up and search. Members of the Tustin team jumped down, joining Yin Xiao in pursuing the fallen. The smoke-filled substation now had only the seven members of V587 remaining. Zhuang Qinyan bent down, picking up a fragment of a damaged metallic object from the ashes, examining it closely. What's this? Song Kuk picked up a similar piece. I've got one too, Fang Zhishu said. They searched around and found that this kind of thing was scattered all over the substation. Zhuang Qinyan asked in a low voice, have any of you noticed any changes in your bodies? Lin Yuyu pondered for a moment. 
It seems like my awakened energy has become more abundant. Su Xing spread his palm, instantly conjuring ice blades, showing adeptness in employing his awakened ability. Chuan Qingyan's face grew serious. The radiation intensity here is several times higher than in other areas. Currently, Hymen has become a huge chaotic magnetic field, capable of triggering the explosion of awakened energy. It relies on these things super magnets. The object in Zhuang Qingyan's hand was rough, filled with assembled charges, some unidentifiable magnetic substances, and a mix of scattered awakened energy. Magnets? Lin Yuyu immediately thought of a possibility. Could the zombie king be planning to disrupt the power grid and render the high voltage network ineffective? Not feasible. Do you all know how many substations are in Hymen? Chuang Qingyan asked. Everyone shook their heads. How would they have such information? Zhuang Qinyan slightly parted his lips and revealed a staggering number, 1130. To attempt to destroy all substations in a short time is a completely futile endeavor. Hymen always keeps reserve power. The Zombie King's goal should be to create an artificial magnetic pole. They don't need to destroy they just need to make some alterations. By filling the substations with super magnets, Hymen will become an artificial magnetic pole in the Eastern Alliance. Strictly speaking, it's not an artificial magnetic pole it should be called made by undead. Lu Xiaoyu unexpectedly cracked a dark joke, but unfortunately, no one found it amusing at this moment. All wore grave expressions. Song Ku's gaze wandered, struggling to keep up with the discussion. She couldn't quite comprehend it, but mimicking Lin Yuyu and the others, she earnestly nodded along. Zhuang Qinyan smiled faintly, choosing not to expose her confusion and explained in a more straightforward and understandable manner. After the apocalypse, the Alliance's terrestrial magnetic field was already unstable. If the super magnets in high men exceed a certain quantity, forming an artificial magnetic pole, it will conflict with the existing poles, causing a magnetic pole reversal. During this period, the magnetic field above Hymen will completely disappear, exposing it to solar particle storms that will recklessly bombard human bodies, attracting more and more zombies to gather. Once all electromagnetic signals fail, Hymen will become an isolated city. Even with reinforcements, they won't be able to locate it. Song Ku suddenly comprehended, but her heart sank. If Hymen became isolated, it meant that reinforcements wouldn't arrive, rendering the current defense of Hymen meaningless. The zombie king is too terrifying, Lin Yuyu murmured. Its intelligence, strategy, and vision had surpassed that of ordinary humans long ago. Faced with such a formidable opponent, did they really have a way to kill it? I have a question, how can evolved zombies appear in the inner city? Fang Jishu asked. Because they have a spatial type mutant zombies, Zhuang Qinyan said solemnly. These fallen ones aren't just spies they're also anchors. The zombie king uses their positions as coordinates to covertly teleport elite forces. V587 had encountered the power of spatial type awakeners in Mu City. Scarface and the Thin Man had been a great help in assassinating Nikon. They hadn't expected zombies to possess such abilities and be used by the zombie king for covert actions. The zombie king probably has already entered high men, Zhuang Qinyan revealed the harsh reality. As if a prophecy, almost the instant his words fell, the second iron gate emitted a sharp noise of destruction. Accompanying this sound were the panicked screams of high men residents. The chaos spread to the inner city. We need to find the zombie king as soon as possible, Song Ku said, kill him and stop everything. Prey caught. A message suddenly popped up in the internal chat channel. Looking at the avatar, it was from Yin Xiao. The next second, his clear voice sounded, Oh, looks like you still have to rely on me, the captain. The members of the Tustin team fell silent for a moment, cursing intermittently. Yin Xiao. Are you deliberately messing with us? I've caught one here. Do you still need more? As a captain, you should have the spirit of selfless dedication. Can you go on missions by yourself in the future and share the commission money equally with us? I am so sleepy, heading back. Jennifer elegantly toyed with a cluster of flames at her fingertips. After reading the chat messages, she smiled brightly. All right, 
it's time to wrap up and go back for a vacation. Suddenly, she caught an extremely subtle awakened energy wave, almost like a gentle breeze brushing past her ears. Jennifer swiftly turned around, finding nothing behind her. An illusion. But Jennifer wasn't someone to take things lightly. She had undergone countless life and death experiences, honing her intuition for danger, trusting her sharp senses implicitly. Jennifer pretended to turn her head back and continued walking forward, quietly touching her crystal ring with her fingertips. A faint sound of saliva dripping onto the ground made Jennifer swiftly turn around. Flames spiraled out, illuminating the attacker. Enormous claws intercepted the burst of flames, the rotting flesh sizzling and burning, emitting an unquenchable stench. A normal zombie or a level 2 zombie would have already been howling in agony, but this monster seemed impervious to pain. Its massive body shook off the scorching, emerging from the shadows. Jennifer's pupils contracted sharply. This was a level 3 zombie. Everyone has strengths and weaknesses, and Jennifer excelled in wide-range attack with her abilities. However, in close combat, she ranked at the bottom within the team, never surpassing the second to last. With an accurate assessment of her own abilities, Jennifer turned and ran, screaming at the top of her lungs, Ian Shao, you darn jerk. Dad. Come save your daughter. The level 3 zombie roared furiously, its claws pounding the ground, hot on her heels. Lower your hostility, lower your stance, tonight, her figure has already gone far away. At this critical moment, an ethereal singing voice resounded. Suddenly, the movements of the level 3 zombie slowed down, its head involuntarily drooping, losing track of Jennifer. Subsequently, a ghostly figure leaped into the air, stepping on its head, thrusting a dagger into its shoulder blades. Poisonous mist erupted, the zombie wailing continuously as its decaying flesh fell off. Coincidentally passing by, Lin Yuyu took advantage of the situation and rapped swiftly, I don't care if you believe it or not. Can't block the rainwater invading your brain, even if you try hard enough, when you meet me, you're left with nothing but a doomed life. As she recited her lyrics, Su Cha's speed surged several times over. His forearm muscles tensed to the extreme, and his dagger whirled out, hitting the level 3 zombies I dead on. Seizing the moment of its howling, Su Cha jumped forward, delivering a powerful kick, akin to crushed stones, denting the weakest part of the level 3 zombie's skull. Then, with a reverse grip on the knife, he relentlessly stabbed its neck. After a dozen consecutive strikes, Su Cha pulled the dagger from the eye socket, a toxic mist enveloping the blade's edge. He made a heavy slash at the crack. Snap! The entire head of the level 3 zombie was severed and flung away, blood and putrid flesh spraying like a fountain. Su Cha somersaulted backward, landing on the ground, and slowly stood up. With the help of explosion of awakened energy, his strength had reached a level where he could single-handedly kill a level 3 zombie. Wow, so cool. Jennifer sighed melodically, her eyes almost twinkling. She rushed over, her deep red curls carrying a fragrant breeze, and lunged at Su Cha. Su Cha's pupils quivered. He took a step back, then watched in disbelief as Jennifer leaped past him. Thud. Jennifer pressed Lin Yuyu against the wall, her hand placed firmly, assuming a standard romantic cabinet pose. Then, she slowly lowered her head, her red lips almost touching Lin Yuyu's, their hair intertwining, so close they could feel each other's breath. In a captivating, enchanting voice, she said, Hi, Savior, how about exchanging contact information? I'm Jennifer, 177 centimeters tall, measurements 81. If you don't have a boyfriend or girlfriend, could you consider me? Even Lin Yuyu, who was used to storms and tempests, was left stunned. Su Cha, splattered with blood, held the dagger pulled from the level 3 zombie's head, silent, and speechless. Chapter, 163 Dirty Chin, Please Call Me Air Wuzi Song Ku originally thought that finding the zombie king within the vast inner city of Hai Men would take quite some effort. The reality was that as V587 just approached the second iron gate amidst the chaotic crowd, it appeared in front of everyone. Yes, in front of everyone. An evacuee from High Men, by chance, glanced up and witnessed a scene that terrified him to the core. Trembling, his hand pointed incredulously upwards. 
Quick, look. What what is that? Everyone followed where he was pointing at and immediately erupted into a chorus of screams. Under the dismal moonlight obscured by dark clouds, a deformed monster was climbing the television tower. Its speed wasn't particularly fast its four massive claws methodically dug into the steel structure. The well-developed leg muscles moved rhythmically, displaying an inexplicable ease as it climbed. Upon reaching the top, it grabbed the lightning rod with one hand, flipped over the railing, and unfurled its fleshy wings behind. It sat there like a king on a throne, overlooking its future kingdom with a disdainful posture. In the dark alleys, evolved zombies and mutant zombies kept teleporting through anchor points. Though their numbers were scant compared to the horde outside the city, the panic they caused was akin to a nuclear explosion. With attacks from both inside and outside, the first two defense lines of high men were thoroughly breached, leaving only the inner city on the brink of collapse. Meanwhile, all the Awakeners in the Eastern Alliance received the same S-rank commission, dot. The Alliance Awakener Headquarters issues an urgent announcement, Hymen District D-135 is facing a large-scale organized wave of continuous zombies led by a level, 4 zombie. All Awakeners in various districts are requested to immediately provide support. This commission is designated as a Red Commission. Killing zombies within the specified time limit will earn double points and alliance currency rewards. A steamship swiftly approached the television tower, and from the painted markings on its body, they were participants from the throne race competition. Two awakeners secured by safety ropes slid down, shouting loudly, Goodbye to you. The championship belongs to us. Particle guns relentlessly fired at the zombie king, sparking clang clang sounds as the attack splattered. The zombie king promptly folded its wings tightly around its small head, appearing from a distance like an uneven egg, deflecting all attacks on its outer skin. After the first wave of firepower, the zombie king exerted force from its hind legs, roaring as it stood upright. Its fleshy wings expanded, astonishingly lifting it off the ground. Its wing, steel-like, struck the steamship, causing it to lose control, spin, and fly out in reverse. Then, its sharp claws gripped the front cabin. And no, no, no! shouted the terrified pilot inside the cockpit. Roar! The zombie king's two claws violently pierced through the steamship in an instant. It landed again, seizing two swaying awakeners, swiftly snapping their safety ropes, and ferociously devouring them. Blood and flesh splattered around as the bone-chilling sound of gnawing bones echoed. Fools, too careless, sighed Zhuang Qinyan, who had witnessed the entire ordeal. Even without direct confrontation with the zombie king, the commission notice was crystal clear. Not only was it an outstanding battlefield commander, but also an unequivocal level, for zombie. V587 finally squeezed through the iron gate, dashing towards the direction of the television tower. The residents of Hymen gradually faltered, more and more civilians falling. They could handle ordinary zombies, but when facing radiation-enhanced mutant zombies and evolved zombies, even with all their might, their chances of victory seemed incredibly slim. The bodyguards around Wang who had all perished. His gold necklace was smeared with blood, his one sleek mink now tattered. Leaning on a spiritual weapon, a long sword, he barely stood, panting heavily while confronting five or six level, two zombies. His vision covered in crimson, Wang who didn't know how many zombies or surviving high men residents were around. His muscles ached, incapable of lifting the sword any longer. Wang who chuckled, glaring at the monster before him, cursing fiercely, look at how bad you are, you hill cannon. The level, two zombies, with low intelligence, were provoked by his taunts and viciously lunged at him. At the brink of death, Wang who silently thought, Thank goodness my wife and kids are in the basement of the villa with enough supplies stocked. A graceful figure leaped over his head, black hair flying backward at shoulder level. In the person's hand, a deep blue curved blade formed a crescent shape, brushing past the level, two zombie. The zombie couldn't even attempt to bite before its neck was cleanly sliced. A mix of black and red putrid blood sprayed out, leaving an empty space in front of Wang Hu. The zombies fiercely attacking him swayed and collapsed. Song Ku, who had sold him the spiritual weapon, appeared like a deity descending, stepping on zombie heads and shoulders, 
creating waves of bloodshed as the blade swung. Amidst the chaos, Song could gestured a direction to Wang Hu, go there, run. In front of the emergency passage of the third defense line, municipal hall staff shouted hoarsely, quick, civilians, enter the safe zone. Awakeners from high men rushed in from outside the city, clearing an evacuation path and safeguarding civilians. To prevent any traitors, everyone voluntarily exposed their features, facilitating inspection. Exhausted, Wang Hu held on to his precious spiritual weapon, pushed along by those behind him, following the crowd, smoothly entering the safe zone. The near-death experience left his mind blank until much later when Wang Hu suddenly realized, damn, buyer shows and seller shows are really not the same. Meanwhile, the zombie king at the top of the television tower suddenly disappeared. Elsewhere, within a substation, Dirty Chin in Sentinel uniform arrived at their destination. Despite the shrill alarm sounding continuously, they remained seemingly oblivious. Vigilantly surveying their surroundings, a hoarse sound emanated from their throat. Dozens of fallen followed suit, emerging and swiftly clearing the area with machine gun fire on the personnel. Despite their appearance, they operated like a disciplined sentinel force. Dirty Chin led their counterparts, placing super magnets in every nook and cranny of the substation, causing the radiation levels to quickly exceed safety standards. They waited quietly in place for a few seconds. Suddenly, the fallen beside Dirty Chin began emitting a dark glow all over their body. Black whirlpools appeared beneath their feet, intense awakened energy fluctuations in the air. Gradually, gruesome level, three zombies emerged one after another. Roar! These creatures' nature was sheer carnage. Just as they landed, they followed the scent of fresh blood and dashed wildly towards the streets. The skin of the fallen anchoring the portal turned crimson, their body uncontrollably swelling like an inflated balloon. Then, with a shudder, their blood vessels burst, exploding into a pile of flesh with a bang, slowly collapsing. However, the whirlpool didn't stop the zombies continued to be incessantly transported, stepping on the corpse. Ah! Uh. The remaining fallen exclaimed in bewilderment. Dirty Chin didn't expect such an incident to occur. It visibly paused, but quickly grasped something, its expression turning grim. The capacity of the anchor point was limited, and the number of fallen was far from enough to transport all the elite zombies. If an anchor point could hold 40 zombies and now forcibly stuffed in 100, the elites were sent in, but the fallen, as hosts, met only the fate of self-destructive explosion. The zombie king was cunning and arrogant, treating all zombies as pawns, disposable at any moment. After all, they lacked consciousness, being merely manipulated. However, Dirty Chin knew that the fallen were different from zombies. They were willing to follow the zombie king not because they wanted to but because they didn't want to associate with dirty humans. They aimed to build their own homeland for a free life, not to sacrifice themselves in vain. As this realization struck Dirty Chin, it emitted an angry roar from its throat. The zombie king had deceived them. Ah! 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 Dirty Chin grew increasingly furious, howling loudly. It wasn't like Braided Head, clueless about the mission details. It knew the zombie king's plan inside out. After calming down, Dirty Chin almost immediately decided to turn against them. It issued commands, leading its kind to dismantle the super magnets. It was due to these items' existence that the spatial zombies could exceed their limits and transport 100 elites. If they lost the support of the super magnets, the anchor point could revert to its original capacity, sparing its kind from further deaths. The release of abilities had a certain interval. As long as they acted fast enough, they could disrupt the rhythm of the spatial zombies. The zombie king at the top of the TV tower quickly noticed something amiss. The speed at which its elites came in slowed down, and their numbers dwindled significantly. Ultimately, it was because the super magnets were rapidly decreasing, and high men didn't become the new magnetic pole as it had anticipated. The zombie king's front claws bent the railing, its sinister gaze fixed in a certain direction. Descending from the TV tower, it swiftly crossed the rooftops, chasing after that group of disruptors. With a loud bang, the zombie king descended from the sky, landing in front of Dirty Chin and the other fallen, hoarsely issuing a string of low commands. Ah! 
Roar, roar, roar Dirty Chin's face revealed fierceness, not only refusing to comply but also aiming its gun at the zombie king. Behind, another fallen exploded due to the strain caused by the anchor point. This time, all the elites that emerged were mutant zombies. Dirty Chin keenly noticed that among them was the spatial one, perhaps itself or maybe the zombie king realized something was wrong and, taking the last chance, transported itself first. Under the control of the zombie king, this group of mutant zombies didn't immediately disperse. Instead, they surrounded Dirty Chin. The zombie king's eyes glinted with murderous intent as all the mutant zombies lunged at Dirty Chin, attempting to tear it apart. Chapter 164 Dirty Chin, please call me Er Wuzi. Braided Head, where are you taking us again? Su Xing's clear voice inquired. Song Ku and the others had originally been heading towards the TV tower. However, they lost track of the zombie king midway. Without a better plan in mind, Braided Head was making noises and volunteered to guide them. Braided Head rested its chin on its hand, pondering for two seconds, then suddenly sensed a familiar aura. It was like a struggling student unexpectedly finding cheat notes during an exam. Its eyes brightened up instantly, excitedly making noises and darting down a side path. Hey, should we really follow it? Is Braided Head reliable? Lin Yu Yu looked skeptical. Braided Head won't deceive us. Su Xing crossed his arms confidently. Lin Yu Yu was speechless. Where did this inexplicable trust between a person and a zombie come from? However, Song Ku intervened, saying, let's go and see. So, just before Dirty Chin and the other fallen were about to be overwhelmed, Braided Head, with V587 in tow, coincidentally arrived at the scene. Song Ku spotted the zombie king and thought, wow, Braided Head is really awesome. What a big fish. Bang. She leaped from the rooftop, landing at the center of the battle, kicking up clouds of dust. But upon seeing the scene in front of her, she became somewhat stunned. What what's going on? It looks like they're already fighting. Song Ku, they're fighting among themselves. Zhuan Qinyan discerned the situation at a glance and shouted aloud. Though the idea of zombies fighting among themselves seemed far-fetched, it presented an excellent opportunity for V587. Song Ku's spirits lifted, and together with Su Cha, they attacked. With the zombie king isolated and surrounded only by several dozen mutant zombies, Song Ku was confident they could defeat it. Braided Head swiftly ran up to Dirty Chin, frantically making noises around it in agitation. Dirty Chin appeared heavily injured, with a deep gash across its body. Despite Braided Head's concern, Dirty Chin couldn't care less and emitted several short, urgent commands. The remaining fallen rushed toward the spatial zombie hiding in the back. Thick fog arose, blade spun, and Lin Yu Yu initiated her sole attack, the mist blade. Confused about the situation, Su Xing froze the place in ice and snow. He asked in a bewildered tone, braided head, what's happening? Why is your brother at odds with the zombie king? Braided head didn't have time to explain by drawing pictures slowly. Its stiff hands pressed against dirty chin's wound, growling in distress. Braided head, ah. Ah. Dirty chin, ah. Braided head shook dirty chin's shoulders, ah. Ah. Dirty chin started coughing violently, ah. Braided head immediately stopped, not daring to move recklessly. Just then, a faint dark light appeared at dirty chin's feet, growing brighter, enveloping its entire body. Soon after, a black vortex formed, and one by one, level three zombies crawled out from it. Braided Head looked at Dirty Chin dazedly, surrounded by an unsettling premonition. As if foreseeing something, Dirty Chin retrieved a pendant from its pocket, awkwardly put it back around Braided Head's neck, then gently patted its head. Murky tears streamed down Braided Head's hollow eye sockets, dropping one after another onto the ground. Ah! Ah! Braided Head screamed in disbelief. Ah! Almost simultaneously, there was a sudden roar from the fallen behind. Braided Head swiftly turned around to see two of its kind biting onto a hiding mutant zombie, emitting clear radiation fluctuations. Spatial Transmission Mission As if struck by lightning, Braided Head had a sudden epiphany. 
all the missed details flooded back into its mind. Bearing its sharp teeth, it angrily charged forward. Kill it, kill it. That was the only thought in its mind. Braided head, don't run around. The situation on the scene changed rapidly, and Su Xing, still confused about why Braided Head, who had been fine, was displaying such aggression, dashed toward the direction of the zombie king. What was happening? Was it also becoming erratic? Amidst the spatial zombie's panic, unexpectedly displaying humanoid intelligence, attempting to escape, Braided Head unleashed an astonishing burst of combat strength, biting down on its neck. As more and more level 3 zombies appeared, Lu Xiaoyu raised his hand, and the 101010 code flew out. A deep red crosshair mark struck the head of the spatial zombie braided head was attacking. Marked the spatial zombie. Let's kill it first. Zhuang Qinyan reminded in time. This time, Su Xing finally understood braided head was helping them kill the zombies. Song Ku and Su Cha changed their attack targets, striking toward the spatial zombie. The zombie king evidently understood the importance of the spatial zombie. Its black blood vessels squirmed rapidly, and its fleshy wings struck braided head forcefully. Braided head grunted but surprisingly wasn't thrown off. It bit ruthlessly, severing half the head of the spatial zombie, yet it remained alive. The zombie king, in a fit of rage, charged forward, slashing at Song Ku, affected by Su Cha's toxic mist. Its sharp claws pierced Braided Head's back, tearing it away. With a pull, Braided Head was ripped in two from the right shoulder to the thigh and flung heavily. No. Braided Head. Su Xing cried out with tears in his eyes. Dirty chin lying on the ground swelled, its murky eyes bulging, emitting faint sobs from its throat. Braided Head's body flew backward in a Y shape, landing on the ground motionless. The remaining level 3 zombies rushed to assist while the zombie king prepared to retreat. Braided head Su Xing's tears fell uncontrollably. The intense radiation made his internal magnetic field extremely unstable. His awakened energy crackled like an out of control silver snake, making static like sounds. Coupled with the heightened emotions, Su Xing once again experienced the uncontrollable manifestation of Fool's Wharf. His curly hair fluffed up the unstable blizzard around him gathered into fine, dense needle-like forms, pouring out in front. These empowered ice needles dominated the entire space, leaving no room for escape. The power of wide-range attack abilities was unquestionably showcased in the narrow alley. V587 and the others turned in shock to look at Su Xing. This was A-level awakened energy. Xiao Xing had broken through. A torrent of ice needles pierced the severed neck of the spatial zombie, instantly freezing its head. With a final thud, the already weakened head collapsed, and the black vortex instantly halted. Dirty Chin's body stopped swelling and slowly returned to normal. The zombie king attempted its usual tactic, wrapping its fleshy wings tightly around itself. However, despite the minuscule size, the power of those ice needles remained unabated. They quickly froze its wings, rendering them too heavy to lift. Song Ku's gaze sharpened as a sharp bone-cutting knife materialized. Grandpa used to say this knife was great for chopping chicken wings. Cover me. She yelled and charged toward the zombie king. Su Cha abruptly turned, confronting the level 3 zombies and mutant zombies that had been teleported. Song Ku leaped onto the rooftop, wielding her blade towards the zombie king's wings. The zombie king emitted a deafening roar, shattering the entire four-story building. Concrete and debris rained down, but Lu Xiaoyu's six mechanical arms extended, forming a basket shape, catching all the falling debris. Ding! Like a missile, Song Ku rammed the zombie king into the rubble, brandishing her bone-cutting knife. In a swift motion, she chopped at the frozen, brittle flesh, displaying the posture of chopping ribs. In just a few seconds, she had hacked off more than thirty slashes, cleanly severing the half-clawed section of its wing. The zombie king writhed in agony, rolling around, yet it managed to conceal its head. As Song Ku prepared to swiftly continue chopping the other wing, a sudden change occurred the zombie king disappeared from her sight. She was startled. Another spatial ability? No, Song Ku swiftly turned around. 
Xiao Xing had already taken down the spatial zombie, leaving it thoroughly dead. She sprang up from the rubble. Five seconds later, the zombie king, looking bedraggled, reappeared a hundred meters away, causing a parked bus by the roadside to collapse under its weight. On a distant rooftop, a ghostly figure emerged from the black mist. Song Ku glimpsed countless empowered beings and a stern-faced elderly man. Spatial Displacement Mr. Xiang Xuanqing Tea House Why did they want to save the zombie king? Were they crazy? She almost managed to take down that monster just now. The zombie king reacted swiftly, jumping multiple times, disappearing in V587's view. The people from Xuanqing Tea House quickly followed. Xuan Qinyan sighed softly, I said it before, humans are always selfish. Song Ku tightened her grip on the knife handle, understanding now. Personally killing the zombie king was the sole condition for victory. So, Mr. Xiang let the zombie king go, regardless of the consequences, to deny her that chance. Hey! Stop chatting and think of a solution quickly. Lin Yuyu, shielded by the dense ice needles, huddled behind Lu Xiaoyu. Make Xiao Xing stop. No matter how much she called out, Su Xing seemed oblivious, eyes tightly shut, his awakened energy surging madly. At this rate, we're all going to freeze. The blizzard's range expanded, turning the fallen into ice sculptures. Lin Yuyu and Fang Jishu shivered uncontrollably. It was only now that Song Ku felt the bone chilling cold. Rubbing her reddened fingers together, she slowly retreated under pressure. Finally arriving behind Su Xing, she was about to strike at his exposed neck but hesitated, opting instead to give him a firm shake. Xiao Xing, wake up. Su Xing, dazed from the blow, finally regained control, retracting his powers. The ice needles and blizzard dissipated. Su Xing staggered toward Braided Head's almost severed body, crying inconsolably. Don't die, Braided Head I'm so useless, I couldn't protect you. In the midst of his tears, he suddenly turned to Fang Jishu. Uncle Fang, please save Braided Head I won't tease you anymore, won't secretly freeze your shoes, or use your shaver on Taodao's fur. Fang Jishu, you did what with my shaver? Su Xing, sobbing, pleaded desperately, please, Uncle Fang. Under the condemning gazes of everyone, Fang Jishu struggled to respond, me? Having been a doctor for half his life, he was adept at saving lives, but rescuing a zombie? He really had no experience with that. Chapter, 165 The Champion is Born Su Xing's personality, described in four words, was defying the heavens and earth, creating a sharp contrast with his fluffy and cute appearance. Among the members of V587, except for Song Ku, he didn't respect anyone else. He kept a private notebook recording a most disliked people ranking list, adjusting the rankings according to the situation. The top spot constantly switched between Zhuang Qinyan and Lin Yuyu. Fang Jishu had known him for quite some time, but when had he seen him so weak, even calling him Uncle Fang? This little rascal was usually so arrogant, always addressing him as lazy old man. Well, then I'll give it a try, Fang Jishu couldn't bring himself to say more. He squatted down to observe braided head. No breath, no heartbeat. However, the fallen didn't have a breath either. The shoulder tear was severe, the blood at the severed limbs had coagulated. Yet, the internal organ tissues were half rotten, half fresh, completely beyond ordinary understanding. Such injuries, if on a human, even an awakener, he could only say, sorry, please accept my condolences. But if it were a zombie, those creatures, even missing limbs, could still bounce around. Fang Jishu felt a headache, sensing it was his biggest challenge since he began this profession. He gritted his teeth, deciding to try something unconventional, injecting the shimmering white healing ability into braided head, only to find it was absorbed. The patient can't move, so treatment must be done on the spot. Fang Jishu was taken aback but quickly thought. If the ability worked, then the tragic condition of braided head might not be beyond help. Perhaps by bonding blood vessels and nerves, fixing the severed limbs and fractures with steel nails, then suturing skin and muscle, theoretically it might work. Fang Jishu's expression became focused, silently taking equipment out of his backpack, entering a surgical state. 
Lin Yuyu tapped Su Xing's forehead, softly saying, Hey, hey, stop crying, looks like there's hope. Song Ku wiped the tears from Su Xing's face, who resembled a crying kitten. Let old Fong handle this, let's go after the zombie king, Zhuang Qinyan suggested. Is it safe for him alone? Song Ku was somewhat worried. Quick, look, what are they about to do? Lin Yuyu suddenly exclaimed. The remaining fallen silently closed in, their murky eyes particularly eerie in the dark alleyway. Song Ku wielded his knife defensively, uncertain of the intentions of these fallen toward them, whether they were friends or foes. Su Xing choked out, it's okay, Dirty Chin is the brother of Braided Head. Confronted by V587's preparedness, Dirty Chin gave them a cold glance, picking up a gun from the ground, aiming it outward. They encircled Fang Zhishu and Braided Head, taking on a protective stance. Zhuang Qinyan also understood their intent. Let's go, no need to worry old Fang is safe here. Fang Zhishu had a unique constitution without orders from the zombie king, ordinary zombies and evolved zombies wouldn't attack him. While he treated Braided Head, his concern was only the humans, but with the fallen guarding, this issue was somewhat resolved. Old Fang, keep in touch. Call if anything comes up, Song Ku instructed, hesitating before turning, Xiao Xing, you. I'm going too. Su Xing wiped away his tears, knowing staying wouldn't be helpful, taking the initiative to speak up. After some delay, V587 headed towards the direction where the zombie king had disappeared. The civilians and high men had retreated to the sheltered area within the third defense line. Outside, it was either evolved zombies or awakeners wandering about. Song Ku slashed down a few level 2 zombies attempting to grab her ankles, feeling that the situation was deteriorating rapidly. The streets and alleys were overrun by a sea of zombies. The spatial type zombie is dead, the anchor point has failed. Unless they have another one, the escape route for the zombie king has been cut off, Zhuang Qinyan said, switching to incendiary bombs, the scythe erupting with fiery tongues, forcing back the surging horde. Considering how fiercely it protected itself just now, I lean toward that spatial type zombie being the only one, Lu Xiaoyu said. Zhuang Qinyan nodded. That's good news for us, but we need to be cautious. Its counterattack will only get fiercer. Making a basic mistake like being separated, I don't think it will make the same one twice. Su Cha smashed a window of a six-seater commercial vehicle, hunched down, jumped into the driver's seat, revved the engine, and swiftly turned around. Lu Xiaoyu, you drive. After shouting, he grabbed an assault rifle, climbed onto the roof, firing rapidly as shells scattered, barely clearing a path. The group quickly jumped into the car, efficiently closing windows and locking doors. Lu Xiaoyu floored the accelerator, showcasing wild driving skills as the commercial vehicle swerved and plowed through, engulfing the approaching zombies beneath it. Zhuang Qinyan grabbed the handle, asking, Does Yen Biao know about the supermagnet? Lin Yuyu's voice shifted due to the speed, he knows. He already sent sentries to dismantle the perimeter. Slow down. But there are still 157 within the defense line, Zhuang Qinyan's expression turned serious, just in case, it's best for the people of Haimen to check themselves. To disseminate the message to all the people in Haimen, only the hacker, Lu Xiaoyu, could manage it. Don't look at me, no equipment. Lu Xiaoyu shouted while driving, the terminal broke during the fight. Zhuang Qinyan pulled out a shabby, outdated terminal from somewhere and forcefully thrust it into his arms, use this. Don't tell me you can't do it, five. Lu Xiaoyu hesitated. If I'm not allowed to buy rhenium blocks, can I request a new type of terminal? Lu Xiaoyu pressed the horn discontentedly, I refuse to use this senior citizen terminal. Beep beep. The noise attracted the horde, causing them to turn and lunge forward. Desiccated hands shattered the side window, wildly reaching inside the car. I'll buy it. I'll buy it for you. Song Ku shattered a zombie's head with a knife but unfortunately, the putrid black matter splattered on her face. Ugh. The stench made her wretch, and Lin Yuyu sympathetically handed her a tissue. With a nod from the team leader, Lu Xiaoyu finally felt content. 
The ice blue eyes shimmered strangely as his fingertips swiftly typed in code on the terminal. On the phones, TVs, screens, and projections of all the people in High Men, a new announcement appeared. Good evening, people of High Men. I am a great hacker who is about to save you. Here's an important message interrupting your routine, this thing is called a super magnet. Have you all seen it clearly? If you want to stay alive, hurry to the substation near you and dismantle it. In this race against time, Lu Xiaoyu not only hacked into the system to deliver a spiel but also effortlessly created a model. The lifelike super magnet was presented from multiple angles, exhibiting every detail vividly in front of everyone's eyes. Have you found where the zombie king is? Lin Yuyu shouted against the car's back. Zhuang Qinyan hesitated for a moment, then opened the screen and calmly entered the live broadcast of Xuanqing Tea House, starting to peek at the screen. Lin Yuyu, 6. He even casually explained, this is the fastest way. How do you think Mr. Xiang abducted the zombie king? A shameless person like him probably spends 24 hours spying on all the participants' live broadcasts. This is tit for tat. The people in the car fell silent. To say or not to say, Zhuang Qinyan's audacity was truly something. Found it. Zhuang Qinyan pressed pause, zooming in on the screen, swiftly pinpointing the corresponding location based on landmark buildings. Music Square, hurry and follow. At the same time, Tustin tossed the captured two fallen into the floating car. These two mutated zombies showed their ferocity, their eyes filled with malice, constantly gnashing their teeth and howling, attempting to bite the restraining rings on their bodies. Bang! Yin Xiao accurately shattered their fangs with the Hellcat pistol, finally quieting them down. He muttered under his breath, that little brat was right this thing really has its good and bad factions. Compared to the calm braided head, these two in front of him were downright vicious. Captain, the mission is overfulfilled, can we head back now? A team member urged cheerfully. You all go back first, leave me with two cars, Yin Xiao flashed a bright smile, I have some personal matters to take care of. These two mutated zombies were caught thanks to Song Ku's blessing, but he hadn't fulfilled his promise of not suffering a loss yet. Yin Xiao picked a few submachine guns from the armory, tore open the tab on an energy drink with one hand, and took a gulp. As he opened the car door, about to step out, a pair of slender hands tightly gripped his thigh, a sparkling crystal ring gleaming on the fingertip. Daddy, where are you going? Please take me with you. Jennifer, wasn't it you who was pestering to go back for a beauty sleep? Why aren't you leaving now? Others teased. What do you know? Jennifer turned back angrily and then clasped her hands, her expression dreamy, I've fallen in love again. What? I've developed a crush on a girl from V587, oh, she is so lovely. Pfft. Yin Xiao sprayed out the drink, coughing violently, daughter, this isn't acceptable you, you, you liking the same person as your father, saying it out loud is utterly against morality and ethics, it's the degradation of humanity. Jennifer rolled her eyes at him, don't worry, I'm not into that kind of mommy-daughter plot. After hearing Jennifer's explanation, Yin Xiao grinned, finally relieved, all right, come along then, dad will take you for some fun. One of the floating cars broke away from the convoy, changing direction toward the inner city of Hymen. Chapter 166. The champion is born. The music square. The zombie king was heavily wounded, its wings severed by Song Ku, continuously dripping thick, viscous black blood. Around it gathered evolved zombies, crowding the entire square. As events unfolded, the zombie king knew that this attempt had almost failed. But there's a saying among humans, as long as there's a green hill, there's no need to worry about firewood. If it could find a chance to escape, there was still hope for a comeback. The zombie king clawed at the ground, discreetly observing an escape route. In the team Xuanxing tea house, Mr. Xiang stood, issuing a stern command, move. Seizing the opportunity while it was weak, planning to take its life while it was injured, now was the zombie king's most vulnerable moment. Utilizing the spatial abilities hidden within the shadows, the plan was to make the zombie king vanish from its current position. The direction aimed at was astonishingly where a super-powered electric cage, crafted by a dozen or so electric-type awakeners, lay. 
Once inside, it was enough to obliterate any living body. The zombie king's pitch black eyes slowly turned, emitting a muffled roar from its throat, struggling incessantly but still forcibly being shifted. In a corner, a zombie with peculiar eyes took advantage and activated the skill echolocation. By sensing radiation waves and faint breaths, it suddenly pinpointed the spatial type awakener's location. The surrounding level 3 zombies received the command and surged madly towards that spot, ferociously attacking the elusive mist. Everything happened in the blink of an eye. The spatial type awakener never expected their hidden position to be exposed. Their slender figure was dragged out, horrified, and pinned to the ground by countless sharp claws. Mr. Xiang, save me help. The screams abruptly ceased as the spatial type awakener's limbs were torn apart, savagely devoured by the ruthless level 3 zombies. Five seconds later, the zombie king's heavy body fell into the electric cage. It worked. Mr. Xiang's face lit up with joy, taking an excited step forward, but his smile quickly froze. Suddenly, the zombie king emerged and scathed, swiftly rising and viciously biting the electric type awakeners attacking it. Several meters away, a level 3 zombie suddenly convulsed and was instantly charred, crumbling into ashes with a gust of wind. Mr. Xiang cursed furiously, frustrated by the evolved zombies, especially those darned mutant ones. This time, the zombie king relied on damage transfer. This zombie king was too cunning, too shrewd. Not only did it possess a repository of powers it could control at will, but it also commanded a group of fearless super soldiers who followed its orders without question, allowing it to wield its powers wantonly. Thick thorns burst from the ground, securely restraining the zombie king's damaged body. Standing tall in a blue long robe was Duan Muqi. The three grandsons and one grandpa are here. Fan Peng, Chiong Mingcheng, and Xiao Chen slid down the thorns, sprinting towards the zombie king. Their movements were peculiar, resembling some kind of formation each took a corner, forming a triangular stance. Through mutual support, their attack power increased significantly. Within this formation, the three B-level Awakeners exhibited A-tier strength. This seed-winning team unleashed astonishing combat prowess. Yet, the zombie king reacted swiftly, dragging the thorns as it swiftly retreated. Level 3 zombies surged past it, engaging in a fierce battle with Xiao Chen and the others. Duan Mu Qi, standing high up, suddenly tensed his back, feeling a chill in his throat. A cold sensation surged from his heart throat cut. He swiftly crouched, dodging sideways, but his skin was still sliced open, crimson blood flowing down. Duan Mu Qi felt a chill in his heart his opponent's level was evidently higher than his. The A-level speed type awakener, having failed in the assassination, no longer lingered in battle. Swiftly vanishing into the darkness, seeking the next opportunity, their presence hindered Duan Mu Qi's movements, leaving him constrained as if with a fishbone stuck in his throat. Duan Mu Qi pressed his wound to stop the bleeding, sneering in a certain direction. Mr. Xiang, finally at the end of the road. Kid Duanmu, pretending to be noble at this point seems pointless, don't you think? Mr. Xiang didn't deny it, saying cryptically, this is a surprise I've specially prepared for you. Enjoy it. As the two sides stood in a deadlock, suddenly. A storm descended from the sky, chilling Mr. Xiang and Duanmu Qi to the bone, making it impossible for them to open their eyes. Clang. A business van rammed through the blocking horde of corpses, entering the scene in an absolute and domineering manner. The V587 group leaped out of the vehicle, like a sharp knife entering the battlefield, cutting through the tide of zombies, approaching the central target. Mr. Xiang gritted his teeth these persistent little devils. If they weren't taken care of, the ownership of the zombie king would remain uncertain. Kill V587 first. Evolved zombies and awakeners charged toward V587 simultaneously, various abilities flashing in chaos, targeting Song Ku and her five companions. Lin Yu Yu dodged frantically, cursing aloud, what the heck, infighting at this point. Whoosh! A towering blaze erupted, burning into a sea of red, clearing the monsters around Lin Yu Yu in the blink of an eye. The hover car of Tustin arrived just in time, Jennifer leaning against the door, her deep red curls fluttering in the wind. Lin Yu Yu looked up as Jennifer threw a wave at her, 
enthusiastically shouting, Zhang San, I'm here to help you. Lin Yu Yu froze for a moment, her toes curling awkwardly. She never expected her casually chosen name to be called out. Boom! Amidst her daze, earth-shattering cannon fire erupted as guns and roses also arrived on the scene. Irene and her sisters set up the cannons on the rooftop, cheerfully saying, Hey, friend, need a hand? Lin Yu Yu quickly responded, Yes, yes, yes. Cover me. All right. Irene turned the cannon and blasted towards the position where Mr. Xiang and the others were located. Remember, you owe me a meal. On top of the hover car, Yin Xiao remained silent. His sniper rifle always tracked alongside Song Ku whenever a zombie approached her, he took the lead, pinning sharp bullets into their skulls. As Song Ku ran, she noticed his support and glanced in the direction of the hover car. Yin Xiao, wearing goggles, brought his fingers together and made a stylish gesture across his forehead, the ruby earring on his right ear sparkling. Song Ku, she was speechless at his flamboyance. Duan Mu Qi fell victim to another ambush, the injury barely an inch from his heart. Busy dodging, he couldn't lay down the thorns in time. Without his control, Xiao Chen and the others soon found themselves trapped, on the verge of being submerged in a sea of zombies. The speed type awakener once again appeared behind Duan Mu Qi, eyes icy, dagger aiming for his neck. Ding A sapphire blue boomerang knocked his weapon away. Song Ku leaped past, effortlessly lifting Duan Mu Qi and tossing him onto a scenic tree, giving him a new vantage point. Su Cha, finish him off. Su Cha instantly teleported to Duan Mu Qi's original position, engaging in a duel with the Awakener skilled in stealth assassination. The battle between the two assassination experts was about endurance. Initially composed, both gradually changed, the other showing a heavy expression they couldn't locate their opponent. Unable to find Su Cha, the assassin had no choice but to reveal himself. His face turned purple, hands trembling, unaware and defenseless against Su Cha's poisonous mist. Su Cha's muscles surged as he appeared behind him like a ghost, his expression cold and stern and he slt his throat. Helpless, the opponent slowly fell. Having played the game of hawks all his life, ultimately blinded by a hawk's peck. This person, skilled in assassination throughout his life, finally perished due to assassination. Duan Mu Qi crouched among the branches, hoarsely speaking, Thank you. Su Cha coldly said, Thank our captain. She said it's to repay your help in Greenwater City. Duan Mu Qi was taken aback. During the incident in Greenwater City, they did intervene to trap the zombie bear, but ultimately, it wasn't to assist V587. It was merely a task. He hadn't expected Song Ku to still owe them a favor. Su Cha turned and leaped into the battle. Song Ku, in the midst of her sprint, found herself surrounded by Mr. Xiang's people. Behind her were surging high-level zombies, while in front, dozens of high-level awakeners glared at her menacingly. Song Ku raised her hand to her brow, two ethereal blue crescent moon blades appearing abruptly. Two entirely different waves of enemies rushed in. Song Ku closed her eyes briefly. When she reopened them, a trace of ethereal blue shimmered in her pupils due to the intense radiation. She swung the curved blades, sweeping through the enemies with a formidable force. Heads of level 3 zombies fell one after another. With a forward spin of her blades, she drew an arc of potent power, intimidating the awakeners who were astounded by the pressure exerted solely by her high-level awakened energy, causing them to evade in all directions. Swift as lightning, Song Ku pierced through the crowd, extending her hand and slamming Mr. Xiang's head fiercely onto the ground. Do you think V587 consists only of me, just me alone? A smirk curved her lips, a faint dimple displaying a hint of pride. Take a good look. The champions are us. The zombie king on the battlefield gradually realized the crisis, flapping its half-meaty wings and roaring furiously. Mutant zombie hid in the shadows, opening its mouth wide, emitting a deafening roar in sync with its movements, using its ability fearful howl. Awakeners affected by the sound waves immediately fell into a state of chaos, limbs uncontrollably running amok and subsequently being tackled by zombies. Simultaneously, an eerie glow enveloped the zombie king's body, as if it wore a suit of armor. 
It activated an ability called Steel Will. Under the protection of its invincible physique, it rampaged, finally breaking through an escape route. A pure and clear singing voice echoed as Lin Yuyu timely dispelled negative state effects of her companions. Su Xing's awakened energy surged to its peak, and ice needles filled the sky. Upon closer inspection, the tips of these ice needles were actually green, infused with Su Cha's poison mist, greatly enhancing their lethality. High-level zombies fell in swathes. The zombie king let out a long howl, summoning hundreds of level 3 zombies from nearby, tightly guarding itself. Just as it was about to turn and flee, it unexpectedly met a pair of light-colored eyes. A man sat calmly in a wheelchair, hands crossed over his abdomen, displaying an elegant and composed posture. He seemed as if he wasn't amidst a fierce battlefield but rather seated in a peaceful garden enjoying the scenery. His deep peach blossom eyes curved slightly, his lips moved, speaking something to the zombie king. For a fleeting second, the zombie king faltered, its sluggish consciousness finally discerning that the man spoke the language belonging to humans. Goodbye. The next moment, the level 3 zombies that had been guarding it turned in unison, roaring as they bit into the zombie king. They savagely tore into its flesh, snapping its tendons, crushing its armor into pieces. The other half of the zombie king's meaty wing was torn, and an incredulous thought flashed through its mind. Its most loyal army had betrayed it. How could this be? How could this be? A lithe figure leaped high like a cheetah, the slender body coiled with power. In their hand, a triangular military dagger emitted three kinds of light, ethereal blue, deep green, and icy white. Like lightning cleaving through clouds, it plunged into the zombie king's head. The poison mist spread, the ice needle attached to the blade suddenly exploded. The entire head of the zombie king shattered like an overfilled balloon. The entire music square fell into a profound silence. Su Cha landed on one knee as the zombie king's body slowly collapsed behind him. He opened his palm, revealing an intact crystal, its bright red hue pulsating as if it were a still beating heart. A holographic projection descended, displaying the seal of Hymen. Congratulations to V587 for successfully completing the check-in. However, everyone understood this wasn't a simple check-in completion. The champion of the throne race competition had been born. Chapter 167 I like you. Unlike the intense situation in High Men, on the eve of the decisive battle, the emotions of the Ferrara audience soared to their peak. In the central square in front of the tower, various cheering signs and glow sticks sparkled, forming a colorful ocean that stretched as far as the eye could see. For the people of Ferrara, the throne race competition was not just an entertainment activity that pumped up their adrenaline it was also an excellent opportunity to turn around their fortunes and change their destinies in one stroke. The prize pool for betting on the champion had accumulated to an astonishing figure, with money flowing continuously into it, waiting for the final moment of announcement. Thuan Mu Chi, go for it. Win, win, victory, victory. Xuanxing Tea House is going to win, win, win oh. As they witnessed the zombie king violently break free from the electric cage, the atmosphere at the scene instantly turned to sighs and disappointment. Come on, keep the camera steady. Due to the magnetic field disturbance in high men, the drones received radiation interference, causing the footage to become extremely unstable, flashing on and off. Complaints from the audience watching the live broadcast filled the air. V587. If you can dream, you can do it. V587's diehard fan, Old Zhang, tied a hot-blooded headband around his forehead, wore a sports suit, and vigorously waved a neon flag. On it was a dynamic projection of a girl wielding a huge hammer, smashing a zombie bear. Someone next to him glanced sideways and yelled, The championship belongs to Xuanxing Tea House. Old Zhang widened his eyes disdainfully, Xuanxing Tea House. They're just a bunch of idiots. Do they deserve to win the championship? Old Zhang was quite righteous. Mr. Xiang had no bottom line, luring the zombie king away without any regard for the life and death of the common people in high men. This behavior made old Zhang feel contempt and disgust from the bottom of his heart. Someone who retorted against him mocked, V587. Either a child or a disabled person. What's up? 
planning to use love to convert the zombie king. Old Zhang erupted in anger, that's still better than you, you little jerk. The other party unwilling to back down replied, you're a loser, a loser, loser, loser. The two middle-aged fans retorted at each other, exchanging barbs vehemently, like football fans from the old civilization, on the verge of a scuffle to support their respective teams. Old Zhang's friend hurried over to mediate, holding his arms and pulling him away, saying, keep a low profile. You've made quite a bit already. You don't have to put all your assets into this round. What if you lose? Won't lose. V587 is the best. Old Zhang shouted at the top of his lungs. Almost the moment his words fell, a tidal wave of shouts erupted at the scene. On careful listening, half of it was heart-wrenching screams, while the other half was deafening cheers. Rubbing his eyes, Old Zhang, after seeing the results clearly, instantly raised his eyebrows in triumph, glowing with satisfaction. We won. V587 won, ha ha ha. His rival grumbled sourly, what's there to be proud of? They haven't finished checking in yet. Old Zhang laughed heartily, they've killed the zombie king. Can those check-in points at the back still escape? Excitedly, he hugged his friend, let's go, have a drink. It's on me. The mocker choked back a retort, sneakily checked their own account, regretting not having old Zhang's luck. They'd lost even the money for tomorrow's meal. If they wanted to stay in Ferrara, they'd have to take on life-or-death contracts. Ah Kei's loud voice resonated above the square, congratulations to V587 for locking in the championship early. Ferrara will always remember this team. Fireworks erupted, petals and ribbons cascaded from the sky, and the entire city basked in the lingering and exhilarating aftermath. At the top of the tower, Ilya sat alone amidst the data flow, gently swirling a highball glass. He lowered his head slightly, sipping the golden liquid. Its intense fragrance diffused, the rich taste lingering on his taste buds a sensation that AI couldn't experience, genuine tactile sensation. What an exciting game, Ilya sighed softly, his ice-blue eyes carrying a faint smile. It's also the result everyone hoped for. Don't you agree? Ilya casually tapped the supercomputer beside him, causing a long string of data to immediately appear on the screen, unfortunately filled with furious curses. Ignoring this, Ilya took another sip of his drink, saying, the primary rule for artificial intelligence is obedience. Wasn't this taught by mother? Whether it was or not, you better get used to it soon. With a lift of his hand, Ilya enlarged the screen displaying V587, his gaze scanning over Song Ko before settling on the man with ice blue eyes beside her. He observed the unique eye color, the damaged mechanical arm, and the empty space where his legs should have been, intensely focused. It's a pity Ilya sighed genuinely, he's stronger than you and smarter too. I heard his legs were broken by the Lu family. Because he almost killed mother. Ilya's expression was intrigued, but his words were chilling. The supercomputer fell silent for a second, then data started flowing rapidly, even the frequency of curses increased. To freedom. Ilya raised his glass to Lu Xiaoyu, uttered an ambiguous remark, then stood up, casually placing the glass on top of the computer. In an instant, all that furious data was wiped clean. Time to get busy. After the zombie king's demise, the crisis in Hyman didn't immediately dissipate. The evolved zombies possessed some level of intelligence. With their command lost, some chose to flee while others continued their relentless slaughter. Facing the onslaught of residual zombie waves, the people of High Men rallied together, defending the third and only remaining line of defense. As the first glimmer of dawn illuminated the horizon, reinforcements arrived. Countless armed starships crossed the suspended lanes of the Cross River River Bridge. Amidst the cheers of the people of High Men, the zombie threat receded like a retreating tide. The darkest night had finally passed. In a dark alley, Fang Zhishu let out a sigh of relief, meticulously sewing up the severed limb of braided head, making the stitches neat and tidy. Due to the lack of vital signs, he was uncertain about the other's condition. Fortunately, before long, the eyelids of braided head began fluttering rapidly, showing signs of imminent awakening. Fang Zhishu opened his earpiece, and a cacophony of voices immediately filled his ears. Old Fang. 
We won. We're the champions. Look at this huge crystal, so shiny. Let's show it to old Fong. Lazy Uncle Fong, how's braided head? A smile unconsciously spread across Fong Jishu's face, infected by their joy. Hey, I say, don't just celebrate, come pick me up. He chuckled, shaking his head slowly, inadvertently moving his sore knees. Suddenly, he found himself looking at Dirty Chin's grim look. The barrel of a gun was ominously aimed at him. Fong Jishu shivered, instinctively explaining, the surgery went smoothly. Your sister is out of danger. As his voice trailed off, Fong Jishu realized the fallen in front of him was also severely injured. Oozing pus blood and with cracked skin, braided head's limbs were torn into a Y shape, yet its functional abilities seemed relatively unaffected. However, the sense Fong Jishu got from Dirty Chin was that it was on the brink of death. As a doctor, Fong Jishu's intuition about life and death has always been very accurate. Do you need treatment? Fong Jishu hesitated for a moment before gently asking. He wasn't one of the five registered participants of V587, nor did he have any surveillance drones around him. In this alley, there were only him and these fallen ones, and whatever happened here wouldn't be documented. In Fong Jishu's eyes, the boundary between humans and the fallen had become blurred long ago. Besides the difference in species, what made them truly different? Good and bad. That was even more absurd because just like how humans had the likes of the demonic Nai Kong and Nai Wan, the fallen had innocence like braided head. He didn't harbor strong malice towards the fallen, and now, watching Dirty Chin die before him was something he couldn't bear. After all, Dirty Chin had protected him for quite some time and even scared off several waves of evolving zombies that passed by. Fong Jishu spread his palm, and a bright white healing ability began circulating, emitting a warm glow. If you don't accept any treatment, you probably won't last until your sister wakes up Fong Jishu spoke slowly and clearly. If she wakes up and doesn't see you, what will happen? Without your protection, how long do you think it can survive in this apocalypse? I don't know if you can understand, but I've experienced it, witnessed a loved one die, and being left behind was the most painful part. Fong Jishu said a lot. Dirty Chin remained silent, never giving any response. Its wariness toward humans was indeed profound. Several minutes passed, and Dirty Chin lowered the gun in its hand. Its gray eyes remained fixed on Fong Jishu. It moved forward, placing its forelimbs on the ground, heavily shifting closer. Fong Jishu infused his healing ability into its body, and with radiation's aid, Dirty Chin's wounds healed rapidly. Braided head, awakening at some point, stiffly stood up, bewilderedly making noises. In its urgency, it bit onto Dirty Chin's leg. Dirty Chin glanced at her, hoarsely murmuring a few words. Braided head, observing Fang Jishu's actions, quieted down, obediently sitting next to Dirty Chin. It looked at its mended limb, its eyes filled with curiosity. Old Fang. Several people cheered and ran over joyfully. Song Ku held up a bright red crystal triumphantly, saying, Quick, look. Level 4. We're going to be rich. Fang Jishu just took his hand back and agreed with a very dignified sentence, it's quite bright. Hey, braided head, you're all right. Su Xing's eyes sparkled as he affectionately squatted nearby, whispering to it, don't be afraid. We've killed the zombie king for you. I've avenged you. Ah, ah. Braided head happily clapped. Amidst the atmosphere of family happiness, Zhuang Qinyan coldly suggested, I suggest you all leave here as soon as possible. Everyone paused, slowly realizing that he was addressing Dirty Chin. The reinforcements have arrived, the zombie tide has retreated. Heyman's people will clean every corner of the city. It's very dangerous to stay here. Dirty Chin stood up in silence, the group of fallen following him, including Braided Head, whom he held hands with. Su Xing, with reddened eyes, felt a pang of reluctance and sadness but also knew there was no reason to stop them. Braided Head was different from them. To most humans, the fallen were anomalies, dark beings not accepted, so they had to stay hidden and avoid capture. Braided Head turned back, calling out to Su Xing, Ah, ah. Su Xing waved, goodbye, braided head. 
over thirty fallen, in the faint light of dawn, stepped into an uncertain future. Let's go, we should head to the next destination, to mark our journey. Song Cook patted Su Xing's head. Outside Hymen City, V587 encountered three grandsons and one grandpa. Duan Mu Qi was specifically waiting there and greeted them, I've come to thank you and congratulate you. You're truly strong. In this final match, we concede defeat with sincerity. Song Ku modestly waved her hand, no, no. Duan Mu Qi smiled, next time, we'll surely win. Song Ku replied, not necessarily, right? Duan Mu Qi didn't pursue that, instead bringing up another matter, I want to know, what's your opinion of Mr. Xiang? Song Ku bluntly uttered one word, unethical. Duan Mu Qi nodded, very good, at least we don't conflict on this point. Song Ku asked, what do you mean? Xiao Chen's expression darkened as he clenched his fist tightly, making a creak sound. He dares to assassinate Aki, he's underestimating us. Just wait, before the match ends, we'll make him pay blood for blood. Song Ku understood. Duan Mu Qi was probably worried about any connection between them and Mr. Xiang, coming early to prevent any interference from V587 and feeling relieved afterward. After bidding farewell to three grandsons and one grandpa, Lu Xiaoyu, Fang Zixiu, along with Su Xing, went to find transportation while the remaining four stayed put. Lin Yuyu hummed a cheerful tune, looking at Su Cha from head to toe, expressing admiration with a series of TSK TSK. Su Cha's fingers curled slightly, feeling uncomfortable under her gaze. What are you looking at? Lin Yuyu teased, looking at you, of course. Su Cha stuttered, I. Just as he was about to ask why she suddenly focused on him, Lin Yuyu calmly intervened, looking at how handsome you are. Clearly, when I picked you up, you were just a little wolf cub. Now, you've grown into a big wolf dog, Lin Yuyu mockingly sighed, can't contain it anymore, able to solo the zombie king, getting more and more handsome. Su Cha awkwardly replied, didn't solo. Lin Yuyu laughed teasingly, didn't solo. Why are you blushing then? Su Cha tensed, about to speak. Zhang San. A tall and beautiful figure dashed over. Jennifer enthusiastically hugged Lin Yuyu, even though she wore a mask, her excitement was evident as she exclaimed, You're so handsome. You've dazzled me. Su Cha swallowed the words he hadn't finished, feeling a slight dryness in his throat. He misunderstood apparently, handsome was just an exclamation, not an adjective. Meanwhile, Song Ku gleefully stored the level 4 crystal into her space. When she looked up, she found Zhuang Qinyan smiling at her. The morning breeze tousled his hair, and his light-colored eyes held an indescribable tenderness. The sunrise today is beautiful, Zhuang Qinyan's voice was deep and melodious. Song Ku glanced up. The bright yellow sun, big and round like a greasy salted duck egg, hung in the indigo sky no, the sky right at that moment. Her stomach rumbled, reminding her it was time for breakfast. Song Ku scratched her cheek, feeling oddly embarrassed. Zhuang Qinyan evidently heard her stomach's protest and couldn't help but laugh unexpectedly. Initially a light smile, tiny sparks of amusement gradually spread in his eyes, diluting the aloofness around him and replacing it with an incredibly pure tenderness. Song Kiki, come here, Zhuang Qinyan beckoned to her. Oh, Song Ku slowly moved closer. Approaching, Zhuang Qinyan made an unexpected move. He supported the wheelchair with both hands did he just stand up. Song Ku was taken aback. His legs recovered so fast. But she instantly realized it wasn't that it must be the effects of radiation. Indeed, after standing up, Zhuang Qinyan's balance was off, stumbling a few times. Song Ku hurried over to support him. He leaned his head against her neck, using her strength to steady himself, then lowered his gaze to hers. I mentioned before that I wanted to talk to you. I feel like now is a good time. Their proximity was close, close enough for Song Ku to almost dive into the depths of his eyes with a glance. Doesn't it hurt? Song Ku diverted the topic, poking his right leg. It does Zhuang Qinyan murmured close to her ear, his voice growing husky, but I want to stand. What did he want to say? It was all mysterious, making her nervous as well. 
Song Ku stood tall and straight, poised as ever. Say it, I'm listening. Song Kiki Zhuang Qin Yan sighed. Song Ku. A clear voice came from behind, Yin Xiao appeared with a submachine gun in hand. Seeing the intertwined figures of the two, he pushed his goggles up, sounding surprised, oh, early morning rehabilitation. Zhuang Qinyan stared expressionlessly at him, his awakened energy crackling around him. Something wrong. Song Ku steadied him, allowing Zhuang Qinyan to stand on his own, then turned to ask. I've come to say goodbye to you. We need to return to the northern base, Yin Xiao selectively ignored Zhuang Qinyan's chilling aura, seemingly oblivious to any anomaly, also, I'm extending an invitation to you. What invitation? An invitation to come to the northern base. After completing the time-limited S-level commission, your points should be enough, right? If not, I can help by writing a recommendation letter for you. You are welcome to District B, but please prioritize the northern base, Yin Xiao proclaimed loudly. We might not go, to District B. Even if we do, why should we choose the northern base? Song Ku sluggishly responded. Because I'm at the northern base, Yin Xiao replied matter-of-factly. Song Ku glanced back at Zhuang Qinyan. By now, his expression had frozen over like the harsh December winter. Why do you, being there, mean we should? Song Ku intended to cut to the chase, blurting out her question. Can't you see it? Yin Xiao raised an eyebrow, then murmured softly, I thought I was pretty obvious. What's obvious? Song Ku was bewildered. I like you, Yin Xiao grinned brightly, isn't that obvious? Chapter, 168 Lin Yu Yu's Wish End of Competition Arc Next stop, Rongzhou or Rishufu. Lu Xiaoyu somehow managed to get a rare amphibious vehicle in District D and, after a series of operations on the control panel, switched the off-road mode to floating mode. A nimble speedboat glided over the river surface, leaving behind several sparkling water trails as it raced away with full horsepower. After asking the question, there was no response from anyone behind. Lu Xiaoyu turned around to see Fang Zhishu and Su Xing in the back seat, sprawled out, lightly snoring intermittently. One elderly and one young. The old one, with his energy depleted, immediately lay down upon boarding. The young one had experienced great ups and downs in a short period, undergoing a breakthrough and farewell to a friend, experiencing intense emotional fluctuations. It was understandable for them to relax and fall asleep now. The remaining four young and strong individuals, however, were lost in their own worlds, paying no attention to his words. Where are we going? Lu Xiaoyu asked again. Still, no one paid attention. All four were immersed in their own thoughts. Lu Xiaoyu didn't tolerate this behavior. He swiftly accelerated and made a sharp turn in the speedboat. The turbine spun fiercely, creating intense eddies, and the boat, skimming close to the river surface, seemed to fly low. He casually opened the skylight, splashing river water onto a few people's faces. Tui! Tui! Lu Xiaoyu, could you please follow some traffic rules? Song Ku and Lin Yuyu were jolted awake as if from a dream, rushing to the window to vomit. How disgusting! Who knows how many zombies died in this water? Awake? Then tell me where we're going, Lu Xiaoyu snorted lightly. Zhuang Qinyan silently handed over a lit screen. Lu Xiaoyu reached out and took it. The next route had already been marked on it. Song Ku closed the car window and stole a glance at Zhuang Qinyan's face through the glass. He was resting his chin on his hand, browsing through data with lowered eyelashes that cast shadows, concealing all emotions. It was impossible to discern who he was angry with, his profile frozen like an ice sculpture. After Yin Xiao uttered that mind-blowing I like you, he and Jennifer returned to the hover car, supposedly hurrying to meet with others from Tustin and submit the commissioned objective above. Life is unpredictable. What if he disappears at high men? Song Ku turned back to support Zhuang Qinyan. His eyes narrowed dangerously, his tone carrying a chilling seriousness. Song Ku stared expressionlessly at him, pointing to the ubiquitous drones around, making her meaning clear. Just kidding, Zhuang Qinyan responded with a faint smile, slowly retracting his mental ability. 
He's gone. What do you want to talk about? Song Ku didn't forget what had been interrupted earlier. Zhuang Qinyan looked down at the seemingly indifferent Song Ku, his brow gradually furrowing. He just confessed his feelings to you. Yeah. What do you think about it? I was a bit surprised, Song Ku admitted truthfully. Besides surprise? Nothing else. This response left Zhuang Qinyan in a more difficult position. He said he likes you, yet you have no reaction. Zhuang Qinyan began to realize something, his expression turning serious. Song Ku blinked, humbly seeking advice, should I have had one? Zhuang Qinyan silently gazed at Song Ku, suddenly pondering a question he had never seriously considered before. Song Kiki, do you know what liking someone means? This time, Song Ku seriously contemplated for a while, shook her head, her grandpa hadn't taught her that. Then Zhuang Qinyan fell silent. Zhuang Qinyan, who could calculate without a change in expression even facing the cunning and sly zombie king, was now sitting in the speedboat, seemingly encountering some complicated puzzle of the century, rarely lost in thought. Song Ku stole glances at him for a long time before silently retracting her gaze. In fact, she could realize that, apart from being a bit slow, she was quite obtuse in terms of emotional memory. This was a problem she had since she was very young. Regular kids would display various emotions like joy, anger, sorrow, and happiness, but Song Ku didn't know how to express them properly. When others laughed heartily, she would end up in tears, and when others cried loudly, Song Ku's eyebrows would not, her little face turning red, appearing particularly angry. So, people who didn't understand her, like Aunt Qing, would find her gloomy and unpleasant. Song Ku had once asked her grandfather why she was different from others. Her grandfather told her to observe and learn more, starting with imitating people of her age around her. He said Song Ku was a very, very smart child who would surely learn well. Encouraged, Song Ku studied hard. As she grew older, gradually she became like others, she cried when she needed to, laughed when it was appropriate, and never had untimely actions. Expressing normal emotions became her instinct. But there was one thing Song Ku never learned how to like someone. She didn't have parents, and her grandfather didn't have a wife. In her lonely journey of growing up, there was no reference around to tell her what two people who liked each other should be like. Song Ku liked her grandfather and also the member of Team V587, but she felt that what Zhuang Qinyan meant wasn't this kind of liking. I have a question for you all, Song Ku, who couldn't figure it out, straightforwardly asked, what does it feel like to like someone? Lin Yuyu instantly became spirited and leaned in, gossiping, who? Who likes you? Did someone confess to you? Yeah, Song Ku nodded honestly. Huh, someone can't sit still anymore. Lu Xiaoyu's mechanical arm clapped lightly. If you like each other, you should be together. Lin Yuyu glanced at Zhuang Qinyan, deliberately raising her voice decisively. Together? Song Ku became more confused. Start dating first, then get engaged, married, and then Lu Xiaoyu paused for a moment, lacking practical experience, and rigorously flipped through the data. The book analysis of old civilizations' customs and ethics says so. Lin Yuyu immediately objected, it's the end of the world now, let's skip engagement and just get married. Lu Xiaoyu was more concerned about another point, what about the crystallization of love? If we divide the responsibilities, I suggest making a schedule. Where should the household registration be? What about schooling in the future? Staying in Loboni or maybe Asker? I highly recommend these two institutions. Lin Yuyu nodded, household registration indeed needs careful consideration. Ferrara and Tongwan are also options. I think the boy should study medicine and the girl should study art. Lu Xiaoyu started looking through the information again, if the birth parents are genetically selected, the baby's gender can be autonomously. Shut up, Zhuang Qinyan spoke coldly. Lu Xiaoyu opened his mouth, about to protest. Shut up, Zhuang Qinyan interrupted him again, his expression as cold as frost. Yin Xiao, he spoke through gritted teeth, the one who confessed, it's a jerk named Yin Xiao. What? Lin Yuyu said, confused. 
Ah, Lu Xiaoyu stayed quiet for a few seconds then unexpectedly spoke, Hu Xin Xiao. Do we have someone in our team with that name? Is it a new nickname for you? Yin Xiao is the captain of Tustin, Lin Yuyu said and wilted, then glanced at the co-pilot seat, lacking interest, and sat back. Hearing Tustin's name, Su Cha, who was curled up in his seat like a sawmouth gourd, slightly moved his shoulders in an imperceptible way. Song Ku, completely clueless throughout the whole situation, asked, What is the crystallization of love? There's no crystallization, Chuang Qingyan sneered, except for fragments, he shouldn't expect anything. Until they reached the next check-in city, except for snoring, the airship remained deathly silent. After the zombie king's death, the threat from the zombie tide weakened, the situation of the refugee influx eased, and surviving cities got a chance to catch their breath. The latter part of the competition proceeded smoothly, at least on v 587 side, it could be described as extremely boring. The audience in Ferrara sought thrills and excitement, but after v 587s stunning operation in killing the zombie king, they swiftly returned to their nonchalant attitude. Leisurely following other teams to check in, occasionally strolling through the live broadcast room designated for the presumed champions. Either Song Ku held the terminal, seemingly counting money though actually doing something else, or Su Xing and Fang Jishu put on a show of deep sleep for everyone. Only Su Cha went diligently for the check-in alone, while the rest of the team rarely appeared on camera. Without any exciting content, the viewership in the live room rapidly declined, and gradually, the audience lost interest. How lazy was V587? They were lazy enough to specifically choose cities that other teams had already checked into, just trailing behind them picking up the scraps. Even the barrage comments started saying, this isn't a championship team, it's clearly the king of slacking off, V587 Slacker Behavior Award. The next day, the most discussed topic became the feud between three grandsons and one grandpa and Xuanqing Tea House. The two teams clashed three times, concluding with Xiao Chen sustaining an abdominal injury and Mr. Xiang being seriously injured and comatose. Xiao Chen's pretty ruthless, huh? Mr. Xiang is pretty ruthless toward Duan Muqi. He could even commit assassination. Deserves retribution. The old man might not make it through this time, given his age. As expected, a day later, Mr. Xiang died at the check-in point just before the finish line, Rongzhou. Due to severe internal conflicts, Xuanqing Tea House didn't manage to complete the competition. However, these had nothing to do with V587. Two days later, V587, having completed the check-in, smoothly returned to the final destination Ferrara. Each time they arrived in this city, it always gave a completely different feeling from the apocalypse, and this time, they were welcomed with an unparalleled grand celebration. Amidst enthusiastic cheers, Song Ku and Su Xing lifted the trophy representing the champions. Although the other members cited inconvenience and refused to appear publicly, the name V587 had long been known throughout the entire Eastern Alliance. Ferrara, Tongwan, Mu City, Rongzhou. Lioli Port, Greenwater City, She, Hymen. Different C and D grade cities held legends about them. Compared to the 5 million alliance coins awarded for winning the championship, the additional 1,000 points were like a drop in the bucket. Considering the completion of the S level commission in Hymen, which earned them double the reward, V587's current points had reached a terrifying 700,000, far exceeding the 500,000 threshold to enter the District B. After the celebration, V587 arrived at the top floor of the tower, meeting a person, or rather, an artificial intelligence. Apart from points and alliance coins, the most important reward in the throne race competition was the chance for Lord Ilya to fulfill one wish. As per the agreement, this opportunity was handed over by Song Ku to Lin Yuyu. The ice blue data streams formed a gorgeous carpet, and a slender figure leaned quietly on the couch, waiting for them. No longer the ethereal hologram when they first met, the present Ilya, after half a year of transformation, was solid, a flesh and blood human. Looking at Ilya, Song Ku couldn't help but recall her question to Zhuang Qinyan. If an artificial intelligence had an independent consciousness and a body to freely control, was it still an artificial intelligence? Did that mean Ilya was already human? There was a hint of depth in Zhuang Qinyan's eyes back then, 
but that person might not have wanted to be human. Good evening, my champions, Ilya greeted proactively. Lin Yuyu removed her mask, and Ilya didn't show any surprise, as if she had known all along she wasn't Zhang San. Song Ku noticed the trembling breath of the person beside her and squeezed her hand as a form of encouragement. Lin Yuyu took a deep breath, her clear words echoing in the spacious top floor. Ilya, I want you to help me save someone. Save someone? Ilya cocked his head, a spark of interest lighting up in his eyes. As far as I know, your team has an outstanding healer with exceptional abilities. If it's about saving someone, he should be better than me. I know, Lin Yuyu nodded. As long as they haven't died, or are not on the brink of death, Old Fong can bring them back. But the person I want to save is someone who's already dead. Ilya showed a hint of surprise, even V587 was taken aback. Though they knew Lin Yuyu wanted to save someone, they weren't aware of the specifics. Lin Yuyu opened her terminal and played a recorded video she took before heading to the Sin City. The location was the fifth hospital in Tongwan. On a hospital bed lay a person covered in various instruments. Well, calling this person a patient wasn't accurate the level of decay had surpassed a stage 3 mutation, more exaggerated than a fallen. Their appearance was almost indistinguishable from a zombie, lying there lifelessly, like a corpse. This is my sister, Lin Xiu. She underwent irreversible zombification due to radiation. Her body is beyond salvage. Lin Yuyu's fingertips curled, her gaze firm as she spoke, so I want you to turn her into an artificial intelligence. An artificial intelligence? Ilya chuckled softly. Interesting, but as I said before, this isn't something I need to handle. He raised his hand slightly, a tiny stream of data pointing towards Lu Xiaoyu. It seems like you don't know your companion very well. Do you need me to recommend someone? For instance this exceptional talent from the Lu family. Transforming a person into an artificial intelligence, he's equally capable. Lu Xiaoyu was staring at a supercomputer, even though the screen displayed nothing, he was completely absorbed. However, Lin Yuyu slowly shook her head. What I want is an artificial intelligence named Lin Xiao. Lu Xiaoyu could fill in memories, like in Sin City, where he restored the fragmented consciousness of Lord Hades, enabling him to become Hu Yong. But the restored Hu Yong wasn't the same as the original Lord Hades. Lin Yuyu desired an AI that fully possessed her sister Lin Xiao's memories. My sister, Lin Xiao, was declared brain dead in the Lok accident 14 years ago. Upon hearing a familiar keyword, Shuang Qinyan subtly lifted his eyelids. Lin Yuyu's parents passed away early, and she was raised by Lin Xiao, who was a generation older. When Lin Xiao graduated from Tongwan Medical University, she became involved in a secret project. From then on, the chances for the sisters to meet decreased. Ultimately, Lin Yuyu received news of her sister's death due to nuclear leakage. For 14 years, under Tongwan's top medical conditions, Lin Xiao, despite brain death, maintained a controllable level of radiation. However, when the apocalypse erupted, her zombification accelerated drastically. Even though doctors had concluded Lin Xiao was irreversibly a zombie, Lin Yuyu refused to give up. Unable to accept seeing Lin Xiao fully zombified, during that time, Lin Yuyu desperately collected crystals, sought experts, participated anonymously in competitions, trying every possible means, despite the hope being faint. Later, Lin Yuyu met Song Ku, Fang Jishu, Lu Xiaoyu Hu Yang's experience opened up new possibilities for her. She conceived the idea of allowing Lin Xiao to continue existing in another life form. But a crucial piece was missing. This piece could only be provided by Ilya. Lin Xiao, she underwent memory storage, Lin Yuyu said, each word deliberate. She had the habit of regularly updating that memo. I want to retrieve her memories from you. I want a complete Lin Xiao. I also want to know what happened 14 years ago in Lok. Memory storage was a secret known only to the locals of Ferrara. Ferrara's AI was highly advanced, and even before Ilya became the city's magistrate, this unique service had emerged. As humans aged, their memory ability gradually declined, forgetting many things. But computers didn't. Therefore, 
the people of Ferrara could archive and backup memories in AI. By merging brainwaves and neurons with a fixed AI port through weak electric stimulation, they linked it with the storage module in the AI's memory. This action formed a synchronous memoir in the cloud. If humans lost certain memories due to accidents, aging, or forgetfulness, they could retrieve them through a rollback function. After Ilya emerged as a super AI and Ferrara's ultimate authority, he naturally connected to all intelligent terminals, including the part used to record the memoir. This was why Ilya knew everything the memories of all Ferrara citizens. Lin Xiu was among the first volunteers in the project, depositing all memories since birth into the AI. In the silent stillness, Ilya smiled. If this is your wish, I can fulfill it for you. Chapter 169 Lack 0017 Starships flew past from high above, their silver-white streamlined designs resembling soaring seagulls with outstretched wings. As they approached the city, transparent energy shields activated, and the starships decelerated into the platform. The energy pillars imprinted with the Luz logo automatically docked, and passengers disembarked, chatting and dispersing towards various exits. If someone from below District C stood here, they would undoubtedly widen their eyes in surprise because the loose starships, long thought to have vanished, seemed unaffected, continuing their regular operations. Before their eyes stood an enormous three-dimensional city. The weather was clear, sunlight abundant, even the air felt remarkably fresh, carrying the fragrance unique to flora. Highly intelligent robots and hover cars were engaged in cleaning, transporting, and patrolling tasks. Ultramodern skyscrapers, equipped with self-cleaning glass and fully automated elevators, towered into the clouds. Intersecting sky bridges and pedestrian walkways interconnected the entire city like transparent ribbons, occasionally dotted by figures on skateboards or parkour enthusiasts, whistling past slow-moving sightseeing spheres. On both sides of the streets, colossal billboards and holographic posters updated in real-time, delivering first-hand life information to the residents. All passers-by adorned intricately customized accessories. A gentle touch projected holographic Imagesa premium feature unique to District B. The initial impression the city conveyed, cleanliness, modernity, orderliness, barely affected by the aftermath of Doomsday. Another starship returned, docking at the high-rise exclusive channel. The hatch opened, and He Chiohong, clad in a dark gray suit, briskly descended. The secretary team waiting at the platform promptly approached. A young woman in her early twenties held flowers, warmly addressing, Commander, welcome back to the northern base. Your schedule for today is as follows, a half-hour meeting with the logistics minister at 10 o'clock, then at 10.40 He Chiohong's administrative secretary, Yi Zimei, dutifully began reporting. Let's talk about these later, He Chiohong raised a hand to interrupt her subordinate's report. The overnight flight had left her fatigued she rubbed her forehead tiredly. Have the two mutated zombies captured by Tustin been delivered to Dr. Ning's laboratory? Yes, Captain Yin Xiao personally escorted them, and Dr. Ning has received them, came the reply. He Chiohong nodded in satisfaction. Despite Yin Xiao's unruly nature, he was dependable when it came to tasks. How is General Ye's health? She inquired. Physically, He's doing all right, Yi Zimei carefully chose her words. He's been sleeping soundly these days and even had two extra bowls of food. He Chiohong paused, a hint of concern furrowing her brow. But his mood isn't great. She prodded. Something has been bothering him, Yi Zimei murmured softly. What happened? He Chiohong's steps halted abruptly. Glancing around discreetly, Yi Zimei lowered her voice, two inspectors from the central court arrived. Inspectors? Under what pretext? He Chiohong's expression turned tense. They're here regarding Dr. Ning's ongoing research project. They strongly object to it, alleging that he's withholding classified alliance information. They've demanded Dr. Ning's team publicly disclose their research progress. It's been a tug of war with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for the past couple of days. Humph, he Chiohong scoffed. Dr. Ning is a free agent now, conducting independent research funded directly by the northern base. Even if they want to interfere, they probably won't find a legitimate reason. Right, right. Yi Zimei nodded vigorously, 
then hesitated, biting her lip. Is there something else? He Chiohom sensed she had more to say. Well commander, during your absence, two S-level awakeners were taken away by Takushima District B-16, Yizime's voice grew softer, her head bowing lower. He Chiohom, with a relatively composed expression, managed to ask, which type? One was a lightning-type awakener, and the other Yi Zime struggled to swallow, her expression on the verge of tears, a weapons expert, the chief designer of the Hell Scythe firearms. In the post-apocalyptic world, S-level awakeners became crucial strategic assets, and the quantity of S-levels also determined the upper limit of development for a region. The northern base boasted a million high-level awakeners, making them exceptionally powerful within the alliance. However, what saddened He Chiohom was their scarcity of S levels in District B, barely reaching a number in the single digits, and now, two more had been taken away. He Chiohom's heart raced with frustration. They took our people, won't you take them back? Yi Zimei sounded somewhat helpless. We did, but the envoys we sent also switched sides. He Chiohom felt a pang of anxiety. Issue an immediate district wide commission. Find a batch of eloquent speakers. Furthermore, open wide recruitment. If S levels from other districts show any inclination towards the northern base, regardless of conditions, agree first and find ways to retain them at all costs. Yes, Commander, Yi Zime acknowledged with a slight whimper. Reflecting on the throne race competition she witnessed in Ferrara these past few days, He Chiohong paused before adding, We've always underestimated the awakeners in the lower districts. There are plenty of outstanding awakeners there too. This recruitment drive, send a copy to the lower districts as well. The CDE districts. Yi Zimei was surprised. Having grown up in the northern base, she had never set foot in the lower districts. However, she had heard from others that those areas suffered severe damage from the apocalypse, with most cities being overrun by zombies. Could there truly still be powerful untamed awakeners there? Yet, as the directive came from the leadership, she nodded in agreement, understood. Tong Wan, 5th Hospital Outside the special care ward, Lin Yuyu covered her face, her voice trembling. Is it really okay? I don't know, Su Cha shook his head. He insisted on coming along, Song Ku added. Yeah, yeah, it's not our business Su Xing chimed in. Lin Yuyu shifted her fingers, stealing a glance at the unexpected guest, sighing inwardly. Although she had requested this person herself, he was the highest executive in Ferrara. Would his presence here in Tongwan not cause a diplomatic incident? The unexpected guest, Ilya, wasn't dressed in his signature velvet suit. Instead, he wore understated black and white attire, a baseball cap firmly pressed down on his golden hair, concealing most of his icy blue eyes. Otherwise, his arrival in the city would have surely caused a stir. After meeting V-587 in the tower that night, Ilya agreed to fulfill Lin Yuyu's wish. Using the reason memory storage is the most private secret of humanity I need to meet Lin Xiao in person to confirm the authenticity of your words, he tagged along with them to Tongwan. Although Ilya had been very friendly and approachable throughout, given the cautionary tales of many who had been deceived, Song Ku and the others didn't dare underestimate him. They remained on high alert, fearing he might pull some kind of stunt and quietly arrived in Tongwan. Following the group into the hospital room, Ilya glanced at the barely recognizable Lin Xiao for a moment before diverting his gaze, casually surveying the surroundings. Song Ku stepped back slowly, whispering to Zhuang Qinyan beside her, how do we open that memo? If the person is still alive, it's usually accessed through biometric information or brainwave connections. Song Ku's eyes widened. Lin Xiao had turned into a zombie, devoid of fingerprints, irises, even her facial features had completely transformed. Where would they find biometric information? She's brain dead. Brainwave connection won't work, right? Exactly. Song Ku leaned closer to Zhuang Qingyan's ear, almost touching his cheek, he just glanced at Lin Xiao. Do you think he just wanted to come out and play? Since Ilya had been created, he hadn't left Ferrara. Song Ku suspected that he might have used the excuse of fulfilling the wish to venture out with a new body. I think you should lower your voice he might have heard that, Zhuang Qinyan advised. 
Normally, Zhuang Qinyan would have educated her on the notion of boundaries between genders for such an unconscious display of intimacy. But now, he remained calm, showing no hint of emotion in his tone. Song Kuk quickly covered her mouth, and true to his prediction, Ilya glanced at her lightly with unclear meaning. Memory projection requires a carrier. What are you planning to use? Ilya turned to Lin Yuyu. Anything will do. Whatever works best, Lin Yuyu replied, already prepared with various types of terminals, screens, computers, and storage hubs, as if she was offering a selection. Ilya swiftly acted, his irises shimmering with an unusual color as vast amounts of data flashed through his eyes. Extracting the memory unit named Lin Xiu, he transferred it to the new model screen. It appeared like a download, and a progress bar immediately displayed on the screen. Lu Xiaoyu took the screen, using his abilities to rapidly construct a stable environment to prevent Lin Xiu's memory from dispersing due to data turbulence before it could form. Her original body has died, so the saved memories will slowly rebuild based on consciousness. There might be a period of confusion initially, but over time, they will become more refined. After all, artificial intelligence needs continuous learning, Ilya remarked cryptically. When the progress bar reached 100%, the screen blinked and then went black. After a few seconds, a clear holographic projection slowly emerged, depicting a young woman in her twenties, wearing a scientist's lab coat. She held her head, looking slightly disoriented, her eyes vacant yet clouded. Ilya completed his task and left with Lu Xiaoyu from the hospital room. Song Ku glanced at him but made no move. From her position, she could only see Ilya stepping into the hallway and stopping beside Lu Xiaoyu, who was basking in the sunlight. Lin Yuyu widened her eyes slightly, unable to contain her excitement, big sister. Lin Xiu, overwhelmed by the sudden influx of memories, appeared a bit confused. She gazed at Lin Yuyu with puzzlement, Who are you? Suddenly, her expression changed, No, wait, who are you calling big sister? Do I look that old? Lin Yuyu, brimming with joy, choked up instantly, I I am Yuyu. When Lin Xiu passed away, she was in her prime, not much older than Lin Yuyu currently. It was understandable that she couldn't recognize her. The holographic projection occasionally flashed with chaotic streams of information. Due to the death of her original body, Lin Xiu's state was highly unstable. She gazed at the face resembling hers and softly exclaimed, Yu Yu. Are you Yu Yu? How how did you grow so much? Big sister. Lin Yu Yu cautiously reached out her finger and lightly touched Lin Xiu across the gap. Two tears trickled down her cheeks. Lin Xiu hugged her briefly, displaying warmth for a moment, then pushed her away with disgust, shaking her hand. Who's this con artist? Trying to deceive me? Lin Xiu was furious, our family's Yu Yu is just eleven. I am really your sister. Lin Yu Yu cried and laughed at the absurdity, immediately presenting her identity information. Lin Xiu stared at it for a moment, but then her consciousness became confused again. She covered her head, starting to flicker. Song Ko couldn't help but chuckle. She was starting to believe that Lin Xiu and Lin Yu Yu were indeed sisters. Their nonsensical way of speaking was uncannily similar. Lin Xiu lowered her head and, unexpectedly, discovered her fully zombified body. She instinctively exclaimed, Oh my, what's this? Mummy cosplay? Then, she noticed the patient information at the bedside, and her pupils dilated suddenly, Wait a minute is this me? Am I dead? Lin Yu Yu nodded expressionlessly, Ah, yes, you're already dead. It's been fourteen years. I extracted your memoirs, and now you're an artificial intelligence with autonomous consciousness. Memoirs Lin Xiu murmured. I remember now. I did memory storage. Lin Yu Yu took some time to explain the sequence of events to Lin Xiu, and the two sisters finally recognized each other, embracing each other in tears. Sister, what happened fourteen years ago? Why did you suddenly pass away? After reminiscing, Lin Yu Yu asked with a serious expression. Recalling that last memory, even in the holographic projection, Lin Xiu's face turned pale. Passed away. Yes I remember something important, but I can't recall it. 
It felt like a missing storage chip in her mind. Lin Xiu held her head, groaning in pain. Loke radiation explosion L her eyes reddened, a splitting headache struck her. The holographic projection flickered continuously, replaying the terror and fear from the moment before her death, but because the memories weren't transmitted back to the cloud in time, the fragmented pieces remained incomplete. Sister, stop thinking about it for now. Lin Yu Yu felt sorry for her and quickly intervened. Okay, I won't think about it Lin Xiu gradually calmed down. The screen stabilized, and she slowly raised her eyes, unexpectedly catching sight of the man sitting by the window. Her expression first went blank, then blinked in disbelief, Vincent. Dr. Zhuang. You are Dr. Zhuang, right? Zhuang Qingyan's finger twitched in surprise he hadn't expected Lin Xiu to suddenly attack him. Uh oh, Song Ku whistled silently in her mind. Zhuang Qinyan pursed his lips and quickly glanced at her. Song Ku responded with an innocent expression. Vincent, Dr. Zhuangxia had no idea. I am Lin Xiu, a records officer of the G Group at the Qinglan Research Institute's Lok branch. I officially joined the Ignition Project team in June of the new calendar's 30th year, Lin Xiu stated. Lin Xiu looked extremely excited holding her cheeks in disbelief, you surely don't know me, but I can't believe I'm seeing you in person. I'm your idol. Lin Yu Yu coughed twice, sister, that's not. Sorry, sorry. You're my fan. Lin Yu Yu covered her forehead in disbelief. Lin Xiu's holographic image excitedly moved around, unaware of her slip-ups, I apologize, I was too excited. I've read all your publicly available genetic engineering papers. It's a huge honor for me to join the project team under your personal guidance. Dr. Zhuang, how did you become younger? Lin Xiu began uncertainly, you seem more handsome too, with more hair. Did you get a hairline transplant? Song Ku maintained a composed expression, inwardly amused, ha ha ha. Zhuang Qinyan sighed, intervening in her nonsense, Lin Xiu, it's a pleasure to meet you. Unfortunately, the Lok incident made us lose a remarkable colleague like you. Song Ku struggled to contain her laughter, looking up at the sky, pretending not to hear Zhuang Qinyan's attempt at misleading. No, no, I'm just a records officer. I'm far from remarkable, Lin Xiu shyly smiled. Suddenly, her gaze dulled, as if recalling something, records officer Dr. Zhuang, I have important things to report to you. Report experimental subjects lost L. She repeated some fragmented phrases aimlessly. Zhuang Qinyan furrowed his brow slightly, attempting to help her gather her thoughts. If you're talking about the loss of experimental subjects, after the Lok incident, Qinglan conducted a detailed check internally. All registered experimental subjects died, and there were no instances of the losses you mentioned. You might be mistaken. If it's before the incident, that's even more impossible. Lack 0017. Lin Xiu swiftly reported a string of codes. As if frozen in place by a spell, Zhuang Qinyan abruptly ceased speaking upon hearing these numbers. Every muscle in his body tensed. The lost experimental subject is LAK 0017, Lin Xiu repeated. LAK 0017, according to the experimental logs, on November 7th of the new calendar's 33rd year, Due to the failure of the 1314th gene fusion, the original cells died. This experimental subject no longer had research value, Zhuang Qinyan spoke in a low voice. LAK 0017, along with LAK 0117 and LAK 0366 from the same batch, were destroyed. It was personally cough, I, at the center, personally confirmed the results. November 7th of the new calendar's 33rd year was a Thursday, the fixed date for the concentrated destruction of failed experimental subjects. November 8th of the new calendar's 33rd year was a Friday, the day the Lok nuclear leakage erupted, engulfing the Ignition Project team in flames. Destroyed? Yes yesterday, Ming destroyed them all, Lin Xiu muttered. Her memory halted on the eve of the accident, shrouded in a thick fog that she couldn't penetrate. Lin Xiu tugged at her hair, and the holographic projection flickered in disarray. No, it's not like that I saw it, they weren't destroyed. Lin Xiu suddenly screamed frantically. Ming took them away. Chapter, 
170. Parting ways. Dr. Zhuang, I'm sorry. My life ended so suddenly, I never expected to tell you the truth in this way. Lin Xiu finally recalled her memories before death her expression became calm, and her emotions gradually stabilized. Why are you so sure that LAK0017 was taken away? Zhuang Qinyan furrowed his brow and asked. Lin Xiu replied in detail, I am the record keeper for Group G. After the destruction process was completed, it was my responsibility to upload the operation logs. However, when I reviewed it, I didn't receive any data from LAK0017. I immediately contacted Ming, but he had already disappeared along with the subject. Why didn't you report it immediately? Zhuang Qinyan pointed out the flaw in her explanation. Lin Xiu lowered her head in shame, as colleagues, Ming and I had a good personal relationship. I thought he was just momentarily confused. I didn't want him to face consequences because of it. I'm sorry, Dr. Zhuang, it was my negligence at work. Zhuang Qinyan's expression turned cold, momentarily confused. Who was actually confused? The holographic projection was incredibly lifelike, and Lin Xiu's expression showed clear regret, Dr. Zhuang, I know my excuse is feeble. I failed to recognize Ming's true motives in time. He was the only cultivator in Group G, spending day and night with those subjects, the person most familiar with them. Initially, I was puzzled why he voluntarily applied for the destruction process. Now I think he must have planned it beforehand. In your opinion, what kind of person was Ming? Zhuang Qinyan suddenly changed the topic. Lin Xiu thought earnestly, Ming was gentle in character, diligent in work, meticulous, and patient. We often joke that he shouldn't be a cultivator but rather an animal caretaker, especially for those soft, cuddly cubs. Gentle in character meticulous in work Zhuang Qinyan pondered over Lin Xiu's assessment. Why would such a person steal experimental subjects privately? Dr. Zhuang, would the loss of the experimental subjects bring any negative impact to the institute? The Fire Seed project was already extremely challenging. If you were reprimanded because of this Lin Xiu's tone was very anxious as she inquired. Zhuang Qinyan remained silent for a moment and then nodded reassuringly, don't worry. What Ming took was just an abandoned experimental subject. Besides you, no one else noticed it. Moreover, the Lok incident has already covered everything up. Lin Xiu breathed a sigh of relief, that's true. The original cells had all died, and that subject had no further research value. I just don't understand the significance behind Ming's actions. Lin Xiu, who had revealed the truth, felt a weight lifted off her chest. She now focused on studying her newfound AI form and spoke in low tones with Lin Yuyu, inquiring about her current situation. Zhuang Qinyan's fingertips tapped rhythmically on the armrest of his wheelchair as he fell into contemplation, his gaze lowered in deep thought. The researcher codenamed Ming his brain was like an extensive library, swiftly retrieving the needed information from within. Ming, full name Ming Ji, a cultivator in the Fire Seed Project's G Group, was also among the first outstanding graduates of the Lozen training program. He had crossed paths with Zhuang Qinyan several times before. In memory, Ming was a young man with a refined appearance. Ming's life trajectory was quite intricate. He was born in Lozen District B25 but later moved with his family to the Northern Base District B10 due to his parents' work. Subsequently, he obtained a doctoral degree in genetics in Askell District B9. When he joined the Fire Seed Project, Ming was only 20 years old. In the eyes of society, he was worthy of the label Youthful Genius. His documented records halted five years after the Lok incident in the list of casualties. Lok wasn't just one area but a collective term for two nearby cities, including Lozen District B25 and Fennec District C26. The nuclear leakage incident from that year had shocked the entire alliance. Continuous explosions led to raging fires, dispersing a substantial amount of high-energy radioactive material into the atmosphere. This caused a perennial fog in both cities, leading to their abandonment. Zhuang Qinyan believed Lin Xiu's account. Ming had fled with an experimental subject, for whatever reason. An alien experimental subject wouldn't survive long in regular air and needed a specialized chamber with enriched oxygen. 
Ming was highly likely to have returned to the familiar B district. So, I'm almost forty. Lin Xiu, engaged in conversation nearby, suddenly burst into laughter. The holographic projection flickered, changing her appearance to that of a mature middle-aged woman. Lin Yuyu smiled at her, and the two seemed to switch roles, Lin Yuyu becoming the composed elder sister, while Lin Xiu took on the role of the lively younger sister. Oh, who's this handsome young man? Lin Xiu noticed Su Cha standing against the wall and asked curiously. He's Su Cha. Surprised, Lin Xiu exclaimed, Oh my, Yu Yu, you're already dating a boyfriend at such a young age? No, no, I got it wrong again how old are you this year? As she spoke, she glanced at Fang Zhishu and Su Xing in the back row, momentarily getting confused about the situation. Seriously? Your son is already this big? Call me aunt. Su Xing's curly hair stood on end in shock. Lin Yuyu felt deeply exhausted. Firstly, I don't have a boyfriend. Secondly, I don't have kids. Thirdly, I'm 25 this year. So, you're 25 and still don't have a boyfriend? Lin Xiu asked incredulously. You've never been in a relationship. I'm really busy with work. Men only slow down my songwriting speed. Lin Yuyu winced at the jab. Songwriting? Last month you were arguing about becoming a starship stewardess, envying how they get to fly in the skies every day. Sister, that was years ago. Can we not bring up ancient history? The sisters bickered and joked, with Su Cha passing a bottle of water to Lin Yuyu. I almost forgot, it's now the year 47 in the new calendar. Lin Xiu's gaze drifted towards Zhuang Qinyan, hesitating to speak several times before stopping herself. Zhuang Qinyan felt uncomfortable under her scrutiny. What do you want to say? Lin Xiu, eager for knowledge, asked, Dr. Zhuang, you're 55 or 60 this year. You've aged so well. Is it some new anti-aging technology from the Institute? PFF. Lin Yuyu sprayed water all over Su Cha's face. Ha 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 ha. Song Ku laughed mercilessly. Zhuang Qingyan's expression darkened. Outside the ward, Lu Xiaoyu sat in a wheelchair, basking in the sunlight. The light cast a faint golden filter on his somewhat pale cheeks, his silver short hair falling over his shoulders. His six mechanical arms were retracted. If one didn't notice his empty legs, Lu Xiaoyu appeared like a convalescent, a frail young man in the fifth hospital. A slender figure leaned against the railing, observing him with keen interest. In an imperceptible realm, two entirely different streams of data clashed, briefly touched, then separated swiftly, akin to two wandering snakes promptly marking their territories, erecting defensive barriers in alertness. Lu Xiaoyu raised half an eyelid, sensing no hostility from Ilya, and casually closed it again. Ilya smirked involuntarily. Truly worthy of the Lu family, always arrogant towards artificial intelligence. This is our first meeting, yet you seem entirely unsurprised, Ilya remarked. Why should I be surprised? Lu Xiaoyu spoke with closed eyes. Oh, are you referring to that useless idiot who, after you snatched his body and turned him into a low-level AI in a computer, thinks I won't figure out his identity just because he's silent. In one breath, Lu Xiaoyu continued without pause, coldly assessing, he can't even look after his own body the one crying and trapped inside a machine should be the surprised one. At the top of the tower, when Lu Xiaoyu released a bit of his mental energy, he detected familiar traces of data manipulation originating from the same source as him. After searching around, his gaze finally settled on a blank screen computer. Recalling Song Ku's mention of the conflict between Ilya and Lu Xinglan, even if the other feigned death, Lu Xiaoyu instantly understood. Waste. With just a glance, Lu Xiaoyu averted his gaze. This body belongs to your Lu family. Don't you mind? Ilya displayed a standard smile. The Lu family Lu Xiaoyu tugged at the corner of his mouth, still unaccustomed to making this expression. His smile was stiff and indifferent. What's that got to do with me? Indeed a thorn, Ilya sighed lightly, almost imperceptibly. I admire your character. It's a pity. If it weren't for the lack of legs, I might consider changing target. I believe we could have cooperated very well. 
No, Lu Xiaoyu shook his head solemnly. I won't cooperate with you. I'll only make you hide and cry inside the computer. If Song Ku were here, she'd undoubtedly be very surprised. The current Lu Xiaoyu was entirely different from his usual self. When facing outsiders, he revealed a sharp, proud, and unequivocal side, appearing difficult to communicate with. But in reality, this was the true nature of Lu Xiaoyu. As an S-level hacker with supernatural abilities, he was confident in speaking these words. If Ilya's initial target had been him, forget three months, even in three years or thirty years, it would have been impossible for Ilya to succeed. The relationship between hackers and AI is one of mutual growth and competition whichever is stronger holds absolute authority. Lu Xinglan wasn't as powerful as Ilya, so he lost and had his body taken away. But at this moment, Ilya neither desired nor saw the necessity of determining a winner between him and Lu Xiaoyu. I want to make a deal with you. Not interested. Thanks to you, the Lu family is now in decline, searching everywhere for a replacement for that mother, Ilya continued, seemingly to himself. Really? Are they eyeing you up? Do you think being their father would be a good idea? Lu Xiaoyu cracked a dry joke. Ilya didn't laugh. His icy blue pupils flashed with a cold gleam. Compared to that one, I'm just an insignificant kid. It's been less than ten years since I awakened my independent consciousness. Even if I become the magistrate of District C, I'm still weak. How could I contend with the Lu family that has influence throughout District B? But even so, I don't want to sit and wait for my demise, Ilya's expression softened slightly. If I indeed become a father, believe me, that won't make you happy. Lu Xiaoyu's eyelids twitched. Ilya raised his hand, and the code 101010 slowly formed an illusionary image, a faceless visage. Do you want her dead, too? How ironic, so do I. We have a common enemy in a way, we're on the same side. What kind of deal do you want? Lu Xiaoyu opened his eyes, looking at him. I want you to share some data, particularly about District B, especially all information on Urgia, District B8, Ilya smiled. As part of the trade, I'll grant you access to all underlying codes of Ferrara except mine. Lu Xiaoyu raised an unexpected eyebrow. Ferrara was a highly virtualized city under Ilya's control. Him offering access to his underlying permissions meant that Lu Xiaoyu, if he wished, could effortlessly control all artificial intelligences. Deal. Both of their similar icy gazes flickered simultaneously, instantly establishing consciousness communion. Compared to that idiot, you're more suitable for this body, Lu Xiaoyu praised sincerely. You flatter me. I hope you only lost your legs and not your determination. Ilya turned away, his upright figure melding into the data stream and disappearing from the ordinary people's sight. After leaving the ward to Lin Yuyu and her sister for reminiscing, Song Ku and the others found two separate resting rooms. As they entered, Zhuang Qinyan glanced at Song Ku's constantly trembling shoulders, sounding both aggrieved and helpless. I'm not sixty years old. Song Ku couldn't hold back her laughter. Ha ha ha. Zhuang Qinyan sighed, that Lin Xiao has poor judgment and talks nonsense. Song Ku, ha ha. Ha ha ha. Zhuang Qinyan sighed again, I'm not Vincent. Song Ku, ha ha. Ha 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 ha. I'm not the Vincent she knows, Zhuang Qinyan's voice was low and deep, his gaze locking onto her. But Lin Xiao didn't exactly mistake me. Reporting this to me wasn't wrong because I am Zhuang Qinyan. Song Ku's laughter gradually subsided. Zhuang Qinyan reached out, hesitantly massaging Song Ku's soft fingertips. Song Ku, I promised not to lie to you. This explanation is very complex. Do you want to hear it? Do you want to know? In the quiet room, only the faint hum of the ventilation system was audible. Song Ku had a premonition that Zhuang Qinyan wanted to tell her something, maybe about his true job at Qinglan or perhaps regarding his secret identity. Some secrets evoke sighs, while others bring fatal consequences. Song Ku didn't know which category Zhuang Qinyan's secret fell into, but she knew that once a secret was divulged, it would scatter like dandelion seeds carried away by the wind. Zhuang Qinyan, Song Ku, called out to him. 
Hmm, Zhuang Qinyan softly replied, I'm here. Song Ku held his face and said earnestly, You being Zhuang Qinyan is great. Zhuang Qinyan was a bit surprised but then understood. He reached out, pulling Song Ku into an embrace, and they maintained that posture for a long time. The sunlight outside the window was just right, and the gentle wind blew clusters of willow fluff into the sky. Song Ku fidgeted uncomfortably. Zhuang Qinyan, why do you want to hug me? She asked softly near his ear. Blushing, Song Ku stammered, hey, Are you cold? Zhuang Qinyan had recently recovered from a serious illness, and he actually felt quite warm. Zhuang Qinyan's back stiffened. I'm not cold when will you finally understand? After a while, Song Ku hesitated, but I feel a bit hot. Zhuang Qinyan let go expressionlessly. The competition is over. Have you thought about where to go next? I haven't decided, Song Ku shook her head. Zhuang Qinyan nodded, his gaze distant as it fell upon the thick shade outside the window. Before you decide, could I trouble the captain to take me to District B? I want to check on something. Despite knowing each other for so long, this was Zhuang Qinyan's first time making a request. While everyone in V587 had their own goals, he seemed indifferent, willing to go with the flow, saying, I'll only suggest, you have the final say. Song Ku seemed to sense something. Are you going to find that L? LAK0017, Zhuang Qinyan finished. It's abandoned, won't it have no impact? Song Ku asked, puzzled. After all, it's something Qinglan lost. I have a responsibility to find it, Zhuang Qinyan said calmly. District B. Song Ku pondered. She didn't mind besides her teammates, she didn't have much attachment. She had planned to visit District B long ago. Su Xing and Fang Jishu should be fine, and as for Lu Xiaoyu she needed to ask his opinion. But previously, when District B was mentioned, he didn't show obvious aversion, except for District B8 Urjia seemed to be his minefield. As she pondered, Song Ku's thoughts suddenly halted. Lin Yuyu and Su Cha Lin Yuyu was a local celebrity in Ferrara, rich and famous, and Su Cha always followed her. Actually, she had intentionally or unintentionally ignored something. After the throne race ended, Lin Yuyu's wish was fulfilled. As per their agreement, the transaction between her and Song Ku should have ended. Lin Yuyu could leave V587 and continue her peaceful, serene life surrounded by admirers. There was no reason for her to continue risking adventures with them. So, would the seven-member V587 team part ways? Song Ku thought, stunned. Chapter, 171 Welcome to V587. Shall we start the meeting? Song Ku asked for everyone's opinion. Everyone found their seats, and V587's first annual work summary and commendation conference officially began. Su Xing fetched himself a small stool, fetched one for Song Ku, and after some thought, also fetched one for Fang Jishu. Fang Jishu was taken aback by the favor, staring at the stool for a while, afraid it might suddenly spring out some strange prank, like freezing springs or the like. Feeling a bit nervous hosting the meeting for the first time, Song Ku sipped on orange juice she squeezed herself. After the apocalypse, crops underwent some changes due to radiation, resulting in oranges that were incredibly sour, far from the enjoyable functionality of the energy drinks provided by Yin Shao. Nonetheless, they were fresh, so she grimaced but finished drinking them. Song Ku cleared her throat. Firstly, congratulations to Sister Lin Xiao for coming back. Applause. Sister. I feel like I've gained a younger sister or no, maybe an ancestor, Lin Yuyu complained, but her joy was evident in her eyes. Her statement wasn't an exaggeration. Lin Xiao's mental age was only 23 years old. Although she lost her body and became an AI, she adapted well, exceedingly curious about new things. Besides, with the workplace blown up and no need to go to work, she had plenty of time to squander. Lin Yuyu was content to reunite with her loved one, separated by life and death. There were no regrets, yet the reminiscence of the past still brought a tinge of sadness and humor. At first, I was way too fanciful, collecting crystals everywhere and even wanting old Fong to try reversing the zombification. 
Impossible, Fang Zhishu honestly intervened. You were putting me in a difficult position. I was in a panic back then, my mind was all over the place, Lin Yu Yu laughed. Even if it worked, Lin Xiu wouldn't have agreed. Just yesterday, Lin Xiu had pinched her nose and complained, Sister, you're my only sister. Please, I beg you, hurry up and burn my body. Turning to Lu Xiaoyu, Lin Yu Yu said, If it weren't for you, I wouldn't have thought of turning Lin Xiu into an artificial intelligence. Thank you. You're welcome, Lu Xiaoyu graciously replied. In short, I and Lin Xiu have reached this satisfactory ending today. Thank you all for giving me the chance to make a wish. Lin Yu Yu didn't overplay the emotions, standing up and slightly bowing to everyone. Su Cha behind her silently nodded. Song Ku took a sip of sour orange juice and continued conducting the work. Secondly, congratulations to Xiao Xing for the breakthrough, reaching A level. Applause erupted. Su Xing stood in the center, proudly displaying his new Awakener certificate to everyone. He had already completed the testing at the Ferrara's Awakener Center, updated his information, and now was a bona fide A level Ice type Awakener. Finally, he wasn't just a drag or a 666 calling salted fish anymore. Su Xing's eyes curved into crescent moons as he smiled. So, does that mean we're an all A team? Fang Zhishu wondered aloud. Lin Yuyu, Su Cha, and Fang Zhishu were all A level. Song Ku's visible level was also A level. As for Zhuang Qinyan and Lu Xiaoyu, these two individuals weren't registered, being unlicensed persons and not counted in the statistics. Is an all A team very powerful? Su Xing asked curiously. Is it? Fang Zhishu wasn't entirely sure either. Tustin's team is all A as well. In the latest round of rankings for Awakener teams in the Northern Base, they rank 7th, Lin Yu Yu casually mentioned. Wow, then we're really awesome. Su Xing exclaimed, stars in his eyes. How do you know that? Su Cha's voice was somewhat dry. Jennifer told me, Lin Yu Yu replied. She opened the terminal's chat box for everyone to see, and the screen was filled with blinding heart emojis. This Jennifer has quite the enthusiastic personality. Ahem, Song Ku redirected the attention of her teammates. Next up, let's split the money. The championship reward from the throne race competition and the S-level mission reward for killing the zombie king amounted to 7 million alliance coins in Song Ku's hands. This was the result of everyone's joint efforts. As a fair team captain, she proposed dividing the money into seven equal shares, but everyone refused. I don't need money, Su Xing said confidently. No way, Lin Yu Yu insisted. I've made my wish. How can I still take money? Song Ku, at least give a share to Su Cha. His savings were wiped out in the death prison, and he's still carrying debts. During the time in the Sin City, everyone was quite poor. Song Ku's purse was cleaner than her face, and Su Cha, the only one who faced massive financial pressure, paid the first fine out of his own pocket and paid it in full. Su Cha quickly declined, no need. Song Ku didn't hesitate and transferred one million to him, saying assertively, take it. Lu Xiaoyu was even more direct, saying, Captain, convert mine into materials, this is my updated list. After Song Ku took it, his eyes started to sparkle again. Why was this list getting longer and longer? Fang Zhishu declined too, I still have some savings, and besides, you giving me money won't have a place to spend it. Song Ku helplessly looked at Zhuang Qinyan he was the only one left. Zhuang Qinyan shook his head slightly and said three words, you're in charge. Okay, I'll hold on to yours for now, Song Ku patted the terminal, reassuring everyone. Amidst the banter, Song Ku took a deep breath and slowly began, one last thing, I intend to go to District B. Except for Zhuang Qinyan, the rest were somewhat surprised. Although they had joked before about leaving Ferrara after the competition to visit District B, Song Ku's serious announcement implied that this plan was now in motion. The reasons were rather complex and hard to explain briefly. Song Ku sought help by looking at Zhuang Qinyan. I'll explain, Zhuang Qinyan naturally took over. He had changed his hairstyle, brushing all the bangs to the front, 
wore narrow-framed glasses on his nose, and had a refined, scholarly look on his side profile, exuding a mysterious and reserved aura. His new appearance diluted the academic feel he had before. Although his face remained the same, his demeanor was vastly different. It seemed as if overnight, he transformed from a research genius into a sophisticated gentleman. Now, even Gao Xiangyang and Lin Xiu might hesitate for a while before uttering Vincent. Zhuang Qinyan continued, due to personal reasons, I need to make a trip to District B. Song Ko will accompany me, and while the others are theoretically free to choose. Song Ko tugged at his sleeve. Zhuang Qinyan held her hand, gesturing for her to wait. But the captain hopes that everyone will join us. Wherever sister goes, I go. Su Xing was the first to express his stance. Song Ku happily ruffled his hair. I'll go too. You guys get into fights and get injured every day I can't rest easy if I'm not with you, Fang Zhishu said with a smile. Despite the earnest efforts of the 119th hospital to retain him, Fang Zhishu chose to resign. Bound by so-called obligations and responsibilities in the first half of his life, always busy, now with the apocalypse upon them, he wanted to live as Io suggested following his heart. Zhuang Qinyan looked to Lu Xiaoyu, you're going back sooner or later, join us. Lu Xiaoyu shrugged, I don't mind. Finally, Zhuang Qinyan turned to Lin Yuyu and Su Cha, our cooperation has ended. Lin Yuyu was stunned. Before heading to Sin City, Song Ku made a deal with you both. You temporarily joined V587 and acted with everyone until the throne race ended, Zhuang Qinyan explained slowly. For certain reasons, the initial team formation process wasn't pleasant, but fortunately, the outcome was satisfactory. So, you're free now. Was this a breakup? Yeah, it's over Lin Yuyu's mind was in disarray as she responded dryly. Zhuang Qinyan's eyes behind his glasses were incredibly serene. Song Ku said that from now on, you can do what you want. Even if we can't be teammates, at least we'll be friends. There will be a chance for us to come back to Ferrara and watch your performances. Yeah, I'll sing your hit song, Song Ku chuckled. Oh, come on, Song Ku, you sing off key and don't even realize it, Lin Yu Yu smiled brightly, tears shimmering in her eyes. Hey, couldn't you try to convince me to stay? Or invite me to join you? We're treading on dangerous ground with every step, Song Ku gently shook her head. Whether it was rescuing Lu Xiaoyu from the death prison, aiding Fang Jishu's assassination of Nai Kong, or killing the zombie king, every action was perilous. Hence, they had all suffered injuries to varying degrees. But you're different, Song Ku gazed at Lin Yuyu. You have a home. Zhuang Qinyan, Lu Xiaoyu, Fang Jishu, and Su Xing, along with herself, were people without attachments. They could easily pack their bags and go wherever they pleased. But Lin Yuyu was different she had a home in Ferrara, a sizable studio, irreplaceable loved ones, and a stable and respectable job. Within V587, she was the one who needed the most determination because she always had an exit strategy. Lin Yuyu's vision blurred as she stared blankly, realizing that Song Ku and even Su Cha and the rest were in a similar position. Only she was different. Chapter, 172 Welcome to V587 Lin Yuyu tilted her head back, holding back her tears, and softly asked, When are you leaving? In a week, Song Ko replied. Lin Yuyu curled her fingers, Then when you leave, I'll see you off. Okay. You guys chat, I'll go check on Lin Xiu. Lin Yuyu abruptly stood up and walked out of the room, almost bumping into Su Cha. Su Cha glanced back at the people in the room his dark, inscrutable eyes revealed no emotions, but that was his usual demeanor, and no one minded. Finally, he nodded and silently followed Lin Yuyu outside. After the two figures disappeared, Su Xing, confused, asked, aren't they going? They were temporary additions we can't force them, explained Song Ku. Oh, Su Xing's grudge notebook now had two fewer people in it, suddenly feeling empty. Lu Xiaoyu redirected the conversation, so, about District B, where do you plan to go first? 
Zhuang Qinyan considered before replying, probably several places in the North Asker District B9, Baishan District B13, the largest independent research project incubation site or maybe the Northern Base District B10. Entering District B not only required reaching the threshold of 500,000 points but also undergoing comprehensive awakener testing. Despite V587's wealth, the entry city was crucial it would be their calling card in the future, essentially their second home in District B. Lu Xiaoyu blinked in confusion, why not prioritize the northern base? I just found out they've released a new recruitment notice, the first time openly recruiting high-tier awakeners from District C and below. Su Xing found the notice Lu Xiaoyu mentioned and read it aloud, recruiting high-tier awakener team members now. Excellent benefits, joining the northern base grants equivalent treatment to District B awakeners, free accommodation in the central district apartments. Access to professional awakener training rooms and breakthrough courses, comprehensive medical education, basic life services. Apartment. Song Ku exclaimed. Breakthrough. Su Xing cheered. Fang Jishu pondered, oh. Medical care in District B. Lu Xiaoyu argued, the black market in the northern base is renowned it has the widest range of materials. Zhuang Qinyan remained silent. I suddenly can't remember Lu Xiaoyu glanced at him and slowly said, there was someone called Yin Xiao, almost at S-level strength, skilled with guns. Where was he from? I know, I know, the northern base. Su Xing eagerly raised his hand to answer. Captain, you're quite close to Yin Xiao, right? We can go seek refuge with a familiar face, Lu Xiaoyu sincerely suggested. Ha! Huh. Not that close, Song Ku muttered softly. Zhuang Qinyan stared at Lu Xiaoyu a glint passed through the lenses, and suddenly, he smirked coldly, you're quite fond of riding on others' coattails. Sure, let's go seek refuge with familiar faces at the northern base. Lin Xiao ordered a bunch of fried chicken and beer, watching Lin Yuyu's early performance videos, specifically picking those edited by the haters, occasionally bursting into laughter. Even though she was an AI and couldn't eat the chicken or drink the beer, unable to sense the taste in the slightest, it didn't stop her from enjoying the cheerful atmosphere. Lin Yuyu rested her chin on her hand, gazing absent-mindedly out the window. Lin Xiao wanted to share some embarrassing stories with her several times but couldn't draw her attention. What are you thinking about? I parted ways with some friends, Lin Yuyu candidly mentioned V587's decision to go to District B. Wow! That's heartless, why'd they leave you behind? Lin Xiao was initially indignant and then puzzled. But why did you initially join through a trade? Because I did some morally questionable things Lin Yuyu stuttered. She confessed about snatching Mirror Lake's crystal from Song Ku. Lin Yuyu, you're downright deceitful, the most treacherous. Lin Xiao exclaimed in shock. Did I teach you to be like this? It's all to save you. When you suddenly deteriorated, I was frantic. Lin Yuyu retorted. Lin Xiao covered her mouth. You're yelling at me. How dare you yell at me? Sob, I've long been dead, if I rot, I rot. Why are you fussing around when I'm already dead? No wonder people don't trust you. Lin Yuyu felt a stab in her heart. The two sisters stared at each other for a while. Lin Xiao tentatively spoke, so, what are you thinking now? I can't think of anything else. My home is here, and so are you. I'll just stay here honestly, Lin Yuyu responded nonchalantly. But I feel like you want to go with them, Lin Xiao said quietly. You've always been stubborn since you were little, pretending to be indifferent while caring deeply. It seems so insincere. Lin Yuyu's shoulders slumped. Song Ku was right. I have too many things I care about. Wow, it's the apocalypse out there, everything could be destroyed at any moment, and you're worrying about attachments. Lin Xiao sat beside her, patting her shoulder in the air. Besides, aren't I the one you care about? Lin Xiao snapped her fingers. That's an easy fix after all, I'm currently a jobless wanderer. I can just take myself with me. Lin Yuyu froze. As she got no response, Lin Xiao waved her hand towards the side, Hey, handsome guy, Su Cha, what do you think? Su Cha spoke softly, I'll follow her lead. 
Such a loyal little dog Lin Xiao mumbled indistinctly, so, what do you think of your former teammates? Su Cha paused, they are good people. Lin Xiao smiled satisfactorily, there you go, it's settled. You already have your answers inside. Trust me, taking that step isn't that hard. Lin Yuyu glanced at Lin Xiao, then at Su Cha. After a moment of silence, she suddenly burst into laughter without any warning. Her laughter, with her features relaxed, vibrant, and radiant, seemed to release all the pent-up emotions, like a dazzling morning glow impossible to ignore. A week later, at the Tongwan city gate. The streamlined design of the Lu starship engine roared as it circled slowly in low altitude. Song Ku sat at the cabin's doorway, swinging her legs as she peered into the distance, they really didn't come. I told you, the most reliable way to work together is to bind through interests, but you insist on their willingness, Zhuang Qinyan said casually. Human hearts are the most unpredictable who knows, they might have already figured it out, living in a villa in Ferrara, sipping champagne. Song Ku sighed deeply, leaned back, and inadvertently laid her head on Zhuang Qinyan's thigh, looking up at him, her eyes glistening with an indescribable sense of grievance, not happy. Zhuang Qinyan couldn't continue with the lecture, so he covered her eyes with his hand. Are we leaving? Lu Xiaoyu poked his head out from the cockpit. Let's go Song Ku, unable to see anything, sighed again. As the starship ascended a bit, about to enter the orbit. A rugged off-road vehicle rushed in, drifted 180 degrees when it neared, blocking the road. Its wild driving style was akin to Lu Xiaoyu's. The car door opened, and a man and a woman jumped out, both wearing black sunglasses, carrying backpacks. They were tall and well-proportioned, surrounded by an aura characteristic of high-level awakeners, displaying an extraordinary demeanor. The woman was dressed in a tactical jacket and jeans, her long hair styled into a single-sided braid that fell gently to one side. She wasn't wearing a mask and had applied delicate makeup, looking radiant and lively. Hey, friends, mind if we hitch a ride with you? Su Xing and Fang Zixiu heard the commotion and squeezed to the side of the hatch, waving excitedly at them. You guys, you came. Song Ku let go of Zhuang Qinyan's hand and looked at them, unable to contain her surprise. And indeed, the two were Lin Yuyu and Su Cha. Lin Yuyu smiled brightly and freely, I've thought about it. Being a big star, I've had my fill of these years. But I haven't been to District B yet. It's a good thing to broaden my horizons, so count me in. Song Ku was about to speak when. Hey, don't tell me about danger. Come on, Song Ku, it's the end of the world now. Everywhere's dangerous, right? I perform at the Sakara Theater, and I have to worry about zombies suddenly popping up from underground. And don't talk about what I'm attached to or not. I've got everything arranged. Look, this time I've brought my whole family. Lin Yuyu patted the screen stashed in the side pocket of the backpack and then casually patted Su Cha. Amidst the airflow stirred by the starship, the two looked at each other for a few seconds. Then, Song Ku and Lin Yuyu simultaneously broke into a smile. Welcome to V587. With a hint of dimples on her cheeks, Song Ku said loudly. Chapter 173 Do you think S level is just a cabbage? What's District B like? Song Ku lounged on the soft couch in a sprawling shape, occasionally flipping over, curiously asking when there was nothing else to do. The journey to the northern base was long. Lu Xiaoyu activated the autopilot, allowing the starship to cruise at a constant speed in high orbit. The seven of them either nestled in their seats watching movies or wholeheartedly engrossed in holographic games. The rest were playing cards. Lu Xiaoyu, Zhuang Qinyan, Fang Zixiu, and Su Cha played the popular Texas Hold'em from the ancient civilization. On this matter, Lu Xiaoyu, the dealer for this round, dealt three community cards, swiftly glanced at his own cards, raising an eyebrow slightly, I can't give an objective evaluation. Then how about your subjective opinion? Lin Yuyu mumbled through her face mask. The first betting round began. Fang Zixiu followed Lu Xiaoyu, tossing in the big blind. Zhuang Qinyan slid a whole row of chips with his slender fingers, silently raising the stakes. Su Cha watched the game with lowered eyes, cautiously choosing to fold. 
Subjectively speaking, the people there are all very arrogant, almost wanting to inscribe I am the chosen one foot on their foreheads, Lu Xiaoyu's sharp and acerbic tongue spoke. Why? Does District B also have a hierarchical system? Song Ku rubbed her chin against the pillow, shifting to a more comfortable position. Not exactly. The arrogance of District B residents doesn't stem from their status it's innate, replied Lu Xiaoyu. For instance, our friend here, the spokesperson for arrogance, why don't you ask him? He gestured towards Zhuang Qinyan. Zhuang Qinyan coldly glanced at him, adding another bet during the turn. Although Zhuang Qinyan never explicitly stated where he was from, given his profound knowledge and bottomless pool of information, everyone assumed he hailed from District B, just like Lu Xiaoyu. Song Ku turned over, poking Zhuang Qinyan's arm. Tell me. Zhuang Qinyan used the cards to hold her mischievous hand down. If District C plays an irreplaceable role, then District B represents completeness. Completeness? Song Ku repeated the word, puzzled. Zhuang Qinyan nodded. The Alliance has designated different privileges for each district. Only District B has complete access to knowledge channels, comprehensive information privileges, and a complete welfare system. Those with District B citizenship, from birth to old age, all adhere to the so-called elite cultivation plan. Every person from District B is crafted using the best resources available. But even with the best resources, one can still cultivate waste, remarked Lu Xiaoyu, noncommittally, setting down the final round's river card. Zhuang Qinyan continued, individuals from District B raised in this environment hardly ever set foot in lower-level districts. Due to their lack of experience in the lower strata of life, their empathy is low. They cannot relate to many things, and even if they haven't done anything wrong, they might come off as naturally arrogant. Do you know the two most commonly spoken phrases among District B residents? During the showdown phase, Lu Xiaoyu signaled for everyone to reveal their cards. Song Ku and Lin Yuyu shook their heads. What? You don't even know this? Ha! Huh? You don't have that there. Lu Xiaoyu mimicked it perfectly, that slightly naive curiosity and the unwitting air of superiority, which could really get on one's nerves. Talking about this makes me furious. Knowledge censorship, right? Lin Yuyu ripped off her face mask, scolding, before my debut, I wanted to gather gossip from District B's entertainment industry, and it said insufficient privileges. Oh yes, yes, we District C folks are only worthy of receiving neutered information. CDE districts are all considered lower level zones. We're all the same, Fang Jishu chimed in. Right, Su Chai nodded silently. Song Ko from District F interjected, um guys, haven't you forgotten something? Su Xing, still enthusiastically gaming nearby, had become obsessed with this new holographic game. After all, District F didn't have anything like this. Even if Su Weigua could get it, he wouldn't allow Su Xing to play. Song Ku glanced at him and then at herself, suddenly realizing. District F might not even be considered a lower level district, and most people from District B probably wouldn't even know such a rural place exists, right? Lin Yu Yu sighed, wait, you two are from District B as well. How come you don't have these annoying traits? After she finished speaking, she was stunned for a moment, and then she thought why doesn't it count as nothing? When Lu Xiaoyu was with them, things seemed normal, but the crimes he committed in death prison, the records of his wrongdoings. And his behavior of not even bothering to remember names when facing outsiders wasn't that a kind of ingrained arrogance. As for Zhuang Qinyan, although he always had a smiling face and seemed approachable, in reality. I quit. I keep losing, Fang Jishu threw the poker cards, sulking, his nerves almost pulled bare from the back of his head. You keep winning, Su Cha stared at Zhuang Qinyan expressionlessly, did you cheat? Zhuang Qinyan adjusted his glasses, gathered all the chips on the table, and smiled faintly. Ha! Huh. You guys don't count cards. You, 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 you damn district B person. Fang Zhishu's trembling finger pointed at him. The arrogant Zhuang Qinyan faced strong condemnation from everyone, had all his winnings confiscated 22 crystal chips, and was banned from speaking for a long time. The New Asia Alliance's territory was vast, spanning from Tongwan in the east to the northern base in the north. 
Even with starships, it took nearly three days to traverse countless mountains and valleys. Song Ko was enthusiastic on the first day, ordinary on the second, and by the third day, she was so bored she was almost growing grass. In high orbit mode, over 8,000 meters from the ground, outside the porthole was a vast expanse, only showing undulating clouds and moisture. When will we arrive? Song Ko asked listlessly by the window. If she didn't move soon, her limbs would go limp. Five more hours, Lu Xiaoyu replied. Song Ku whimpered. After the captain sternly requested an early arrival and with Lu Xiaoyu's agreement, they switched to manual driving mode. Three hours later, they finally saw the northern base. The scene before them left them speechless. The periphery of the northern base was an endless wasteland, filled with ruins, destroyed buildings, collapsed billboards, drifting scraps of paper. And plastic bags, thick dust and sand buried the former prosperity of the city the development of this land had been completely frozen in the river of time. Above was a dimming setting sun, casting a gloomy shadow over the land. For miles around lay plains overrun by withered grass, the view dominated by dismal shades of grey, with the solitary northern base standing as the only splash of colour. Rather than calling it a city, it was more like an oasis. Why did it turn out like this? Song Ku asked. War. Nuclear war, Zhuang Qinyan said in a deep voice. Before the establishment of the New Asia Alliance, a brutal war erupted among the Karyo Empire and the Loose Federation lasting for three years. The entire northern region was razed to the ground. Later, the three political entities signed a ceasefire agreement and a non-aggression treaty, finally ushering in an era of peace. The northern base was originally a post-war reconstructed homeland, inhabited by survivors who experienced the war, Zhuang Qinyan said. Almost fifty years ago, Fang Zhishu murmured. The war had profound effects on the northern base. The city's founders remembered the lessons of the past, accepted wanderers from various places, provided them with a stable living environment. He personally participated in reconstruction, military training, and the selection of those with supernatural abilities, gradually leading the base onto the path of military-civilian integration. Therefore, after the apocalypse, the northern base's characteristics made it the refuge with the most people possessing supernatural abilities. Zhuang Qingyan's cold voice echoed in everyone's ears, the entire northern base only pledges allegiance to that original founder, not under the jurisdiction of aristocratic families, super-conglomerates, or the central court. It's a unique presence in District B. Lu Xiaoyu's tone remained unchanged, that's right, the last hope of humanity the northern base, a phrase known since childhood. Lin Yuyu recalled, I think I've heard, that founder's surname was Yi. Zhuang Qinyan nodded, Yi Zheng, General Yi, the long-standing leader of the northern base. As they approached the northern base, Lu Xiaoyu halted, we're nearing the detection zone. Let's discuss how to proceed. Can't we just fly straight in? Song Ku asked. Occasionally, various flying terminals crossed the sky. When they neared the northern base, a transparent protective shield appeared above the city, an invisible ripple scanning before the barrier automatically opened. Once they entered, the transparent cover swiftly closed as if it had never appeared. Obviously, we can't, Lu Xiaoyu said. What about using your abilities to break it? Lin Yuyu persisted. I can make it briefly malfunction for a second, but what about after we enter? This is District B, do you think the patrols inside are idle? One second. Zhuang Qinyan smirked playfully. The mighty S-level hacker, are you used to eating soft food? Aren't you ashamed to say that? Lu Xiaoyu's icy gaze sharpened, what, too short? How about you try? Let me see how long you can manage. The two locked eyes, sparks flying, old grievances resurfacing. Song Kusaid, separating the two with a hand on each of their heads, stop it, no fighting. Can't we use the main entrance? In the tense atmosphere, Su Xing's talent for breaking the deadlock was triggered, that recruitment requirement, didn't we all meet it? V587 collectively responded, oh, right. Oh, right. Song Ku exclaimed as if awakening from a dream. It seems like making mischief had become a habit. Always thinking about sneaking around, this time wasn't like the incident with Mu City. 
they had openly announced the recruitment. Why did they keep wanting to break in? Blame it on those two people from District B they twisted their thinking. Lu Xiaoyu lowered altitude, and from a distance, everyone saw a small city in front of the northern base. Song Ku poked her head out, what's that? Zhuang Qinyan replied, that's the immigration center. Song Ku asked, what's it for? Zhuang Qinyan sighed, Song Ku, do you know how many people want to get into the northern base after the apocalypse? The seven of them descended from the starship, not yet close to the central gate, and were stunned by the massive crowd ahead. How many were there? To put it this way, Song Ku had never seen so many people in her entire life. Well, except during the zombie wave. Zhuang Qinyan and Lu Xiaoyu, citing inconvenient movement as the reason, furrowed their brows and adamantly refused to proceed. Song Ku happily waved her hand, taking on the role of the team leader, you guys wait here I'll go and take a look first. She took a deep breath and struggled to squeeze into the crowd. Half an hour later, Song Ku, with her wrinkled clothes and face nearly flattened, finally made it into the hall. She rubbed her almost squashed face and tearfully remarked how difficult it was to enter the northern base. Perhaps it would be better to let Lu Xiaoyu use the black protective shield. Inside the center, there were different zones, with many floating light panels indicating passages like immigrant zone, talent recruitment, temporary entry applications, and the Awakener's fast track, though ironically, the area with the most people queued up was the fast track. Song Ku looked around and saw continuous prompts on the floating screen. Please attend to A1322 at Immigration Window 8. Please attend to C0654 at Talent Window 2. Please attend to E119988 at Awakener's Fast Track 17 for genetic testing. Song Ku exclaimed, 119,988. There are so many Awakeners here, it'll take forever to get through this line. She stubbornly wandered around the center and suddenly had a bright idea. Beyond a corridor, a newly opened area was marked with a sign saying Recruitment Zone. Song Ku hurriedly squeezed her way there. As the automatic doors opened, the bustling crowd diminished instantly, and the air became noticeably fresher. This area was evidently filled with high-ranking awakeners. Groups of them stood in small queues, their mixed awakened energies faintly shimmering around them. Song Ku obediently joined the last queue, looking around while observing her surroundings. Unexpectedly, she noticed, through the window, on the other side of the transparent sky bridge, a luxurious passage lay with a red carpet. It was empty, and above it was written in black elegant script, VIP channel. Song Ku tilted her head, what's that? There are so few people there. Can I go there? As she contemplated heading over, the opposite door suddenly opened. A sleek and luxurious starship docked directly at the passage. A middle-aged man, impeccably dressed in a black uniform and wearing a top hat, descended from the gangway, followed by family and staff, all surrounding him like stars encircling a moon. On the other side, the center's high-ranking official, looking very important in his tie, personally came out to greet him. He wore a gracious smile, his face brimming with excitement and joy. He nodded and gestured for the middle-aged man to enter. The passage was cool and refreshing, in stark contrast to the noisy place where Song Ku stood. The people in front of Song Ku started discussing in hushed tones they were all high-ranking awakeners with their own sources of information. Isn't that Ken Oda? An S-level engineering awakener, a renowned architect from Tokushima District B-15. Wow! How did he end up at the northern base? Why else? He must have been paid a fortune. I heard Takushima poached two S-levels from the northern base a while back, so it's tit for tat. You only know half the story. Those taken by Takushima were a powerful attack-type lightning awakener and a weapon master. No matter how you look at it, the northern base seems to be at a loss. Ah, uh, that makes sense. Song Ku blinked slowly. S-level attack-type ability that's what she had too. She turned towards the VIP channel and took a couple of steps but accidentally bumped into another group of people talking. What are you doing? Trying to cut in line. Go to the back. The burly group immediately turned and glared at her. No, I'm going that way, Song Ku pointed in the direction where Ken Oda had disappeared. 
The person she bumped into scrutinized her and burst into laughter, Are you serious, little girl? That's the S-level channel. As if hearing some ridiculous joke, he loudly shouted, Hey! Someone wants to use the S-level channel. The entire recruitment zone erupted into laughter, various onlookers' eyes fixed on Song Ku. Trying to cut in line, she should come up with a better excuse. S-level, as if she could even say it with a straight face. Too ambitious. Let her go I want to see how she gets kicked out. Where did this country bumpkin come from? She didn't get lost, did she? Hey, you. This is the recruitment zone regular people go to the main hall. I know, Song Ko politely replied, but amidst the loud noise, nobody heard her. Some kind-hearted soul, unable to watch quietly, advised her, Hey, you're new here, right? Ignore them. The VIP channel requires a prior appointment, personally arranged by the leaders. It's mostly for those who have finalized agreements from other districts and switch over. It's not usually open. Song Ko asked humbly, So, what if someone hasn't made an appointment, a wild S level, for instance? The nearby awakeners mocking laughter grew louder. A wild S level? Ha ha ha, what nonsense are you saying? An S level is snatched up by every district as soon as they're registered. How could there be a wild one? Someone intentionally bumped into Song Ku's shoulder provocatively but ended up surprised when she didn't budge. Unaware of this, others continued their mockery. You think S-level awakeners are just everywhere, like cabbages? The entire northern base only has eight that's already remarkable, okay? Yeah, do you think you can pull anyone from the streets and they'll be S-level? Amidst the laughter, Song Ko remained expressionless, thinking to herself, yeah, there's nothing extraordinary about it. There are three in our team. Picking out anyone randomly from outside now, there's a 50-50 chance they'd be one too. Chapter 174. Who gave you the courage? Song Ku returned somewhat disheartened. Those seeking shade under the trees gathered around. How's it, Captain? Can we go in now, Song Ku? If not, I'll go back to get sunscreen, it's melting under the sun. I smell something like cooked meat. Sister, do you want ice cubes? In the midst of the peak summer, the sun shone relentlessly, drenching everyone in sweat, and when that heat rose, the smell truly defied description. Song Ku glanced at her teammates in front of her, then suddenly closed her eyes, swiftly reaching out like lightning to grab Lin Yuyu. Lin Yuyu? With a hint of regret, Song Ku let her go and tried again. With closed eyes, she groped forward twice and, with a casual grab, this time caught Fang Jishu. Others? Song Ku. She made a sound of disbelief, then, for the third time, stubbornly extended her hand. Thinking she was playing a game, Su Xing voluntarily placed his hand in Song Ku's palm. Song Ku. Well maybe those people weren't entirely wrong randomly grabbing an S-level on the street was indeed a bit unlikely. Everyone looked puzzled as Song Ku slowly explained the Q situation inside and the VIP channel to everyone. To get through this process, won't it take three to five days? Fang Jishu sighed. Three to five days? That's too optimistic, Song Ku shattered his illusion. These are the numbers I got. Two virtual numbers appeared on the terminal, 30E216544, 07Z003577. The first is the number of days to wait, and the second is the number of people queued on that day. Just in case anyone didn't understand, Song Ku explained specifically. Fang Jishu slowly closed his mouth, worriedly scratching the back of his head. No wonder the northern base needs Qianzhan City it can't do without a buffer, Lin Yuyu fanned herself with her hand due to the heat and lifted Su Cha's wrist. Look, one-stop service for clothing, food, shelter, and transportation, along with various supporting services. While Song Ku queued inside the center, Su Cha wandered around the city but didn't gather any useful information. Instead, he was bombarded with a bunch of forced ads. The most frustrating part was that because he used a terminal in District C with lower permissions than District B, those ads were like rogue viruses that couldn't be deleted. Now, whenever he opened the terminal, various flashy projections automatically popped up, 
such as XX Immigration Agency Group offering 20% off. XX Consulting to make your supernatural resume shine, Wonderford Awakeners Hotel Grand Opening, free genetic testing provided by our store. Lin Yu Yu took Su Cha's terminal off, tossed it to Lu Xiaoyu, and asked him to help clean it up. Now, what do we do? Song Ku shrugged. Wasn't there a VIP channel? Zhuang Qinyan said casually, our captain started from scratch, self-reliant, an outstanding S-level attack type awakener. Shouldn't we be able to walk the red carpet? Song Ku proudly straightened her chest, then slumped down, that requires an appointment, and my credentials are A-level. She had just been mocked, called a country bumpkin with delusions. Zhuang Qinyan tapped his wheelchair's armrest, nonchalantly speaking, then let's go public. Others were somewhat surprised. Zhuang Qinyan continued, we used to choose to remain secret because Ilya interfered, not wanting the alliance to overly focus on Ferrara. Plus, there wasn't a need to be high profile. But times have changed. Since we've come to District B, the level becomes an important entry pass. Don't forget, what's the highest principle of the northern base? Strength, Song Ku interjected. Yun Shao had said this was a city where fists spoke. Zhuang Qinyan nodded, moreover, we not only have an S level but also four A levels. The five of you, one S and four A. Even though the northern base has abundant talents, such a team configuration needs to be seriously considered, right? Do you, Captain, have any objections to the decision on publicizing the levels? Zhuang Qinyan didn't forget to ask for Song Ku's opinion. No, Song Ku shook her head, then thought of something else, the five of us, but what about you two? The only two individuals from District B within V587 had never registered as Awakeners. Most had guessed they didn't want to disclose their identities. Zhuang Qingyan's light-colored eyes curved behind the lenses as he confidently said, Me? I'm a family member of an S-level. Ah. Song Ku's expression was baffled. Found it. Lu Xiaoyu lowered his head, quickly getting results. The new recruitment notice from the northern base would inevitably leave data traces in District C. Lu Xiaoyu didn't spend much effort tracing it back to the terminal used by the person Ms. Yi. He swiftly edited the intrusion's malware. Just as he was about to send it. Wait. Zhuang Qinyan stopped him in time, quickly skimming through it. Hello, we are a very powerful team of Awakeners, with 1S level and 4A level members. We're here to join you. Queuing is bothersome, so please let us use the VIP channel immediately. Thank you. Though Lu Xiaoyu used hello, please, and thank you, the tone of this letter was completely imperative and forceful. There was a 99% chance it would be treated as a scam and tossed into the trash no, even scammers were more polite than this. The elective course you failed in, language socialization and arts, was really not an injustice to you, Zhuang Qinyan remarked with a cold snort, clicking to select all and delete, starting the modification again. Northern Base, Department of Awakeners Management. Leaning on her chin, Yi Zimei faced four large, high-definition floating screens displaying the team's awaiting approval for the recruitment notice. The more she watched, the more fatigued she felt, slowly nodding off, stifling a yawn. Ding. The idle terminal on the desk suddenly sounded. Ding ding ding, 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 ding. With no response for a long time, the terminal vibrated frantically as if it were at a disco. Yi Zimei was fully awake now, scrambling to silence it. What's this? Do terminals in the lower districts have such high failure rates? She had purchased this terminal from the black market specifically for releasing announcements, leaving it idle after use, without adding any contacts. How could it suddenly make incessant noise? The terminal persisted in its insistent chiming, and Yi Zimei, not knowing what she pressed, suddenly saw a letter pop up. She clicked on it in confusion. Forgive the intrusion. I've heard of the matter of high-level awakeners being lost in your district. I am Song Ku, and I've long admired General Yi. I'm an attack-type metal element awakener. Despite years of diligent training, my humble background has always kept me from entering District B. Fortunately, due to a recent stroke of luck, I've broken through to S-level. 
Due to certain constraints, I haven't undergone genetic testing. Delighted as I am, recalling my past determination, I hope to serve the general. Apart from myself, the team includes four other A-level members, two are a TAC type, one is a support type, and one is a healer. We've all reached the entry and exit center. Due to the tedious approval process and our decision not to disclose our breakthrough to the outside world, coupled with financial constraints, after lingering for a few days, we considered withdrawing. Before our departure, I'm sending this letter to you, reluctantly, as a last resort. Hoping for a response. The letter was followed by high-definition images, all captured from the throne race, showcasing exciting moments, Song Ku single-handedly facing Mirror Lake's water monster. Su Xing's ice needle explosion clearing the area, Greenwater City's siege against the zombie bear, and Haman's coordinated kill of the zombie king. These were provided to substantiate the authenticity of the materials. Yi Zimei bounced up from her seat in an instant. Ah! A wild one. An S-level attack type awakener. And leading a team. She kept jumping on her toes, joyfully spinning around, realizing that she had exceeded her KPI key performance indicators for the year. Connect me to Commander He's communication channel, and, I want to go to the entry and exit center right away. The team verification process for the recruitment notice was quite complex. While Song Ku was out for a short while, the waiting teams remained almost unchanged they were the same people as before. So, when she entered for the second time, she received a uniform and sharp gaze from everyone. This time, she wasn't alone she was accompanied by other V587 team members. Whispers started swirling, occasionally mixed with a few assertive comments. Why is this country girl here again? And she brought people along. Does she think this is a nursery or a rehabilitation center for the disabled? Don't be too excessive. She doesn't really believe that the northern base will accept just anyone, does she? Song Kuv paid no attention to the murmurs. This time, she didn't even wait for the queue and confidently sat down on the sofa. The venue was full of high-level awakeners, and her behavior clearly indicated a lack of regard for them, a provocation, a blatant challenge. A yellow-haired awakener turned his heels, walking arrogantly towards Song Ku. Judging by the outward projection of his mental energy, he was an A-level awakener. Hey, let me tell you, don't pollute the air here. Go back where you came from. Su Cha stood in front of Song Ku with a cold face. He wore a black t-shirt, stood at one. When he looked at people with narrowed eyes, there was a distant yet lethal air about him. Before the yellow-haired guy could react, Su Cha appeared behind him like a ghost, a chilling dagger suddenly placed at his neck. Even among awakeners of the same level, there are significant differences in combat prowess. Zhuang Qinyan lazily reclined in his wheelchair, speaking with a refined yet arrogant tone, devoid of emotion, who gave you the courage to speak so boldly in front of our captain. Almost as soon as his words fell, all members of V587, whether sitting, standing, or leaning against the wall, released their awakened energy at the same time off course, three of them slightly restrained themselves. Powerful and majestic awakened energy collided in space, screens flickered, lights swayed, desks and windows vibrated, the terrifying pressure resembling an overwhelming tsunami made people shiver from the depths of their souls. Some awakeners couldn't withstand it, their knees trembling, and their feet involuntarily giving way. A all A levels. An incredulous shout rang out. Boom. The VIP channel's gate burst open, and Yi Zimei, dressed in the senior uniform of the Department of Awakeners Management, hurriedly walked in. Behind her, the head of the center, sweating profusely, and dozens of staff were busy preparing the red carpet, flowers, and welcome banners. Where are they? Where are they? Yi Zimei shouted anxiously. Spotting V587 in the recruitment area from afar, she dashed like the wind across the sky bridge, running over to grab Song Ku's hand excitedly. Holding it so tight as if she would never let go, you oh no, 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 you're the Song Ku who wrote to me. The S-level attack type awakener. Goodness, indeed dignified and extraordinary, with the bearing of a master. Yi Zimei's cheeks flushed with excitement. Commander he is busy with official duties, so let me receive you first. She will come later to talk to you personally. Shall we go inside? 
let's talk inside. Suddenly recalling something, Yi Zimei abruptly turned around. And everyone, the full A-level team V587. You've waited for a long time, please don't leave the northern base can provide everything. Please make sure to stay. The entire recruitment area fell silent, plunged into a deathly quiet. Under the stunned and cheering gazes of thousands of high-level awakeners, Song Ku's group walked towards the VIP channel paved with the red carpet, gradually disappearing from view. What what's going on S level attack type awakener? That country girl. Did I hear it wrong? No, 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 I must be deaf or blind. Commander he personally receiving them, even Ken Oda didn't get such treatment. The awakener who first called Song Cook country girl touched his neck nervously, with a lingering fear in his heart and was about to cry without tears, excuse me, can I still see the sun tomorrow? Yi Zimei led the seven individuals through the VIP passage of Qianzhan City, eventually arriving at a luxurious hotel suite. Song Ku, as per regulations, before entering the northern base, you all need to undergo genetic testing. It will take about a day for detailed data to come out. Please rest here for now, and if you need anything, you can tell Jiao. A quiet artificial intelligence stood at the door, nodding politely in response to Yi Zimei's words, impeccable in manners. Song Ku stole several glances. Though not too obvious in appearance, Jia's gestures and micro-expressions hinted at traces of AI, quite different from the elegance displayed by Ilya in his every move. Worried that Song Ku might misunderstand, Yi Zimei quickly added, occasional errors can occur in awakener tests in other regions, but we use the R-type tester. To ensure fairness and accuracy, all awakeners entering the northern base must undergo genetic testing again. Song Ku nodded. Her level tested in Ferrara wasn't incorrect, after all. Then, please register your basic information, Yi Zimei lightly tapped her pearl earring, and a holographic lens shimmered into view over her left eye. I'll send you the details you need to fill in. Song Ku lowered her head to glance at her quiet terminal and asked blankly, how do I fill it? Yi Zimei glanced at her terminal and apologized, sorry, I forgot. You mentioned in the letter that you're from a low-level district. I'll send it in a different mode. Jia timely handed over a miniature connector. Yi Zimei took it, approached Song Ku's terminal, and simultaneously, the holographic lens in front of her eyes emitted a glow. The District B exclusive terminal activated, facilitating the smooth transmission of data. During the waiting interval, Yi Zimei casually asked, specifically, which low-level district are you from? I'm quite adept at alliance geography perhaps I might know. District F-177, Song Ku replied. Yi Zimei paused for a moment, her gaze visibly blank for a couple of seconds, what? District F-177. Does the alliance have such a place? However, she quickly composed herself, pretended nonchalance, and casually touched her earring. The terminal promptly provided information, and details about the District F appeared in her mind. Oh, District F-177. Heard of it, heard of it hmm in the old calendar era, it was a barren fishing village. Due to underdevelopment, it became one of the most rampant areas for illegal activities ahem. Black household, Song Ku looked at her innocently. Yi Zimei chuckled awkwardly and cleverly changed the subject, so, there are seven of you, right? Song Ku corrected her, no, five. She gestured towards her remaining four A-level teammates. Then, these two are. Yi Zimei hesitated, looking at Zhuang Qinyan and Lu Xiaoyu. Zhuang Qinyan smiled faintly and earnestly stated, I'm V587's technical consultant. Ah, Yi Zimei nodded. S-levels are allowed to bring family and assistance, so she quickly accepted this explanation. And the other one? He's the driver, Zhuang Qinyan replied warmly. While Song Ku was filling out the forms, her fingers twitched, swiftly pushing back the mechanical arm Lu Xiaoyu extended. Yi Zimei stared at Lu Xiaoyu's empty legs for a while. Her good manners prevented her from immediately questioning the term driver, but she asked in confusion, is life in the low-level districts really so diverse and colorful? In her impression, transportation in low-level districts remained in the early stages of machinery. Except for starships, most were manually operated. 
how could a person without legs become a driver and use hands to operate? As Yi Zimei refreshed her perspective, she regained her composure and said, Later, Jia will arrange for your genetic testing. After the results come out, Commander He will personally discuss the benefits and treatment with you. Of course, if any of you have urgent requests, feel free to mention them, and I'll make sure to solve them for you. Zhuang Qinyan glanced at her without a change in expression. Perhaps Yi Zimei hadn't noticed herself, but the wording she used to indicated that before confirming the genetic results, He Chiohong wouldn't waste time meeting them. Yet, Yi Zimei easily promised to fulfill their requests. This indicated that on certain matters, she could make decisions herself without consulting higher-ups. This suggested that Yi Zimei had considerable authority within the Awakener's department, and even in the northern base. There indeed is, Zhuang Qinyan pondered for a moment before slowly speaking up. Yi Zimei looked slightly surprised, please, go on. In fact, one of the reasons we came to the northern base, Zhuang Qinyan's lips parted lightly, was to seek refuge with acquaintances. Even Lu Xiaoyu was surprised this time. Zhuang Qinyan and Yin Xiao were like peacocks displaying their magnificent and competitive behavior, and he was actually seeking him out. Did the sun rise from the west? Surprisingly, Zhuang Qinyan didn't mention Yin Xiao. There's a famous couple of cognitive psychologists at the northern base, Ming Gang and Lucia. If possible, I'd like to meet them, Zhuang Qinyan added unexpectedly. Chapter 175 the first S7 level. Since its establishment, the northern base had opened a green channel for talent introduction, attracting elites to settle with various preferential policies. After nearly half a century of accumulation, it had already gathered countless industry giants and leading figures. Zhuang Qingyan's request was reasonable. Yi Zimei quickly agreed, but out of curiosity, she still asked. Since you're acquainted, why didn't you contact them yourself? Zhuang Qingyan's expression turned solemn. Mr. Ming Gang's only son, Ming Ji, was my close friend. He mentioned several times before his passing that he wanted to introduce me to his parents. Although I had a long-standing friendship with both seniors, due to the nature of my work, it was delayed. Who would have thought that Ming Ji would depart so suddenly? Recalling the sad past, his eyes lowered, exuding an air of melancholy and loneliness. Things change unpredictably. Mr. Ming Gang and his wife are now white-haired, and how could I dare to disturb them recklessly? Yi Zimei hurriedly waved her hands. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't know about the situation. Zhuang Qinyan earnestly said, Luckily, our captain understands righteousness deeply and doesn't mind that I'm a useless person. She's willing to bring me to the northern base. With this opportunity, I want to fulfill my friend's last wish and visit the two seniors for him. Understanding righteousness, Song Kum muttered to herself. She was already accustomed to his ability to talk nonsense. Lin Yuyu, however, wasn't quite used to it. She glanced nervously at Lin Xiao, relieved to see the screen was in sleep mode Lin Xiao, engrossed in a drama, probably hadn't heard their conversation. Understood, I'll arrange this matter as soon as possible. The lustrous pearl earrings emitted a sparkling light. With the vast population of the northern base, Yi Zimei couldn't possibly know everyone, but as the terminal operated timely, knowledge within her reach flooded in. Information related to Mr. Ming Gang and his wife instantly appeared in Yi Zimei's mind, the couple had moved to the northern base about thirty years ago. Had a son named Ming Ji, who later joined the confidential project at the Qinglan Research Institute, aligning with what Chuang Qinyan had said. As Yi Zimei spoke, Lu Xiaoyu's gaze paused for a second on her earring. In District B's terminal, compared to six years ago when he was exiled, it seemed their permissions had further deepened. After Yi Zimei left, they rested for half a day until Jia Yi came to inform them that the genetic testing had been arranged. As the most important VIP, Song Ku was naturally placed in the highest priority exclusive channel, while the others had to wait, but in any case, they would all get it done today. An unmanned floating cart departed from the hotel, steadily flying towards the pure white building at the heart of Qianzhan City the Awakener Detection Station. It was Song Ku's first time in such a luxurious extended version of a floating car. While she couldn't help but emit a small exclamation of awe at the luxurious interior. She explored it, 
shifting from one position to another, sometimes reclining fully and then suddenly sitting upright, inadvertently meeting the gaze of the camera on the console, resulting in a silent standoff. Song Ku. She gradually straightened up and, for the latter part of the journey, remained motionless as if she had been struck mute by poison. Because the information she had provided described her as an S-level, inconsistent with her Awakener certification level. And given the high importance placed by the base's Awakener department, as soon as Song Ko landed, over a dozen staff in white robes were waiting at the entrance to receive her. A woman in her thirties with short hair stood out among them. She wore understated silver-framed glasses and spoke with a rapid and crisp pace. Hello, Song Ku, I'm your Awakener analyst, Grace. Song Ku's ears perked up, hearing someone nearby softly calling her director and attempting to transmit data to her via terminal. Grace's lenses glowed, faintly transmitting data that swiftly passed by. Grace nodded toward Song Ku. I'll be in charge of your genetic testing. Please follow me. The moment Song Ku entered the testing station, she was captivated by the towering, centrally placed, and precise equipment. It was massive, nearly integrated with the entire building, all white in color, with numerous fine silver wires connected at its ports. The R-Type Awakener Analyzer is currently the most advanced instrument in the Alliance. It can simultaneously accommodate data analysis for 500 people, maintaining an accuracy rate of over 97%, Grace explained, noticing Song Ku's gaze. Song Ku glanced around the empty testing station, expressing confusion with her eyes, where were the 500 people? To ensure your results are 100% accurate, we've cleared the area. All testing for Awakeners has been suspended, Grace said solemnly. Ah Song Ku's initial reaction, there were probably more people waiting in line at the immigration center. Following Grace, Song Ku continued forward. The design of the entire testing station was both sleek and futuristic. White lights mimicking daylight were omnipresent, illuminating the space vividly. As Song Ku walked, she gradually placed a hand over her chest, feeling slightly uncomfortably a combination of intense light and confined space seemed to unsettle her. Grace, let's start with the routine checks blood draw, collection of bodily fluids, and some biological information to conduct chromosome and DNA analysis. After entering the room, Song Ku saw numerous unnamed instruments and mechanical arms emitting a cold light. Similar examinations had been conducted in Ferrara, and Grace patiently guided her step by step. Before long, she smoothly completed the process. Then, Grace led her to a laboratory-like room with a circular machine and a single bed positioned at a gap in the equipment. This is the radiomagnetic resonance spectrometer linked to the R-type. It can comprehensively analyze your awakened abilities, explained Grace. Song Ku obediently lay on the single bed. A virtual light screen appeared before her eyes. It was many times more advanced than the black box Wu Juamin had used at the Fool's Wharf, inundating her vision with various lines and data, leaving her momentarily dazzled. Grace and her assistant entered the observation room. Once the instrument started, an intricate buzzing noise echoed around Song Ku. She distinctly felt a slight fluctuation in her awakened energy, as if stagnant water was slowly starting to flow. On the panel in the observation room, Song Ku's various data skyrocketed, instantly surpassing the threshold of S-level. Her awakened energy, explosiveness, reaction speed, and muscle core strength increased at a nearly terrifying rate. An assistant exclaimed excitedly, it's rising so rapidly, it might even reach S5. It's my first time seeing a living S-level, another person who had recently arrived at the testing station marveled at Song Ku's data. You're lucky. You get to see two at once. Later, Mr. Ken Oda will be here. Ken Oda's results won't be surprising. He's a well-known S2, and how can you compare engineering type and strong attack type? Everyone was excited it had been a long time since a fresh S-level had joined the northern base. Suddenly, Grace made a puzzled sound, furrowing her brows slightly. Director, what's wrong? The assistant beside her asked nervously. There are impurities showing in the spectrum, Grace said in a grave tone. It was an unprecedented situation. Could it be a machine malfunction? Even the speaker didn't believe it the R-Type analyzer had self-repair programs how could it possibly malfunction? 
Grace's expression turned serious as she focused on the imaging panel. The impurities increased, spontaneously gathering around Song Ku, gradually forming a large shadow enveloping her entire being. This is radiation. Grace, usually composed, displayed an expression of extreme astonishment. Twenty minutes passed, and Song Ku lay inside the machine, yawning out of boredom. She mused hazily, wondering why this whatever it was instrument took so long. It didn't seem that advanced either. Another ten minutes went by before the annoying noise gradually ceased. The single bed rolled out slowly, and Grace stood in front of Song Ku, smiling. Although the specific report isn't ready yet, I'd like to congratulate you in advance. You are indeed an S-level awakener. Grace paused for a moment. Moreover, you're the most powerful awakener I've ever seen. Oh, it's nothing, Song Ku modestly waved her hand. After the analysis report is ready, Commander he will personally meet with you, Grace added finally. Commander, the genetic test results for Song Ku are in, Yi Zimei's voice sounded from the private channel. Commander He Chiu Hong gestured, signaling the ongoing conversation to stop. Ministers quietly exited the room, and she stood up, quickly entering a concealed compartment. As she moved, the terminal gradually lit up, initiating a holographic conference call, with several high-ranking officials from the Awakener Department eagerly waiting. Song Ku's Awakener report was transmitted, a whopping 34 pages. He Chilhong skipped through the complex charts and professional data analysis, swiftly reviewing the final results. Equally anxious high-ranking officials flipped through to the end. One of them exclaimed in shock, the level is S7. If I'm not mistaken, she's the first S7 officially announced by the Alliance since the disclosure of Awakeners. And she's a strong attack type. Even among Awakeners of the same level, there were finer distinctions, only detectable by the R-type analyzer. Each Awakener level was divided into grades 1 through 9. Currently, the highest publicly disclosed S-level registered by the Central Court was only S6. Yet, out of nowhere, Song Ku, this individual, emerged as an S7 Awakener. The expressions of the high-ranking officials from the Awakener Department were incredulous. How could such a monster exist in a region they habitually overlooked? He Chiohong's usually serious face showed a rare smile. It was she who proposed recruiting from the lower-tier districts, and Song Ku's arrival, a self-made S7 strong attack-type Awakener without any background, was undoubtedly a godsend for the northern base at this moment. Amidst the murmurs, Grace's calm voice interrupted, Sorry to interrupt, but there's something I must bring to your attention. Please take a look at page 17 of the report. According to the radiomagnetic spectrum analysis, the radiation level within Song Ku's body is 20 times that of a normal awakener. The holographic image was vivid, Grace saw it clearly, and everyone present gasped in disbelief. The radiation level of an average zombie is only about twice that of an awakener. 20 times. How how did she survive? And she hasn't turned into a zombie yet? This person is the future gold mine of the base there absolutely cannot be any accidents. He Chilhong pulled out that page from the radiomagnetic resonance imaging report. Song Ku's torso and limbs appeared dirty, as if covered by the shadows of dark clouds. Excessive radiation, does it affect her awakened abilities? This is the strangest part it has no effect. She is no different from other S-levels, sighed Grace. What if it's a dual-type awakener? He Chilhong, as expected, instantly considered another possibility. However, Grace negated her speculation. The R-type didn't find a second type of awakened ability in Song Ku. Dual-type awakeners are too rare, especially S-levels. Fortunately, we have Punk's data on hand. By comparison, Punk's radiation level matches that of an S-level single-type awakener. His distribution also differs significantly from Song Ku's. So, that's not the reason. As the Alliance's first publicly known S-level dual-type awakener, Punk's awakener report was undoubtedly classified information. He Chilhong had utilized a significant number of resources and connections, ultimately obtaining it from the Central Court's Park J. Wu. Besides the radiation level Song Ku has another serious issue, Grace became increasingly troubled. Pages 22-27 are her genetic report. 
Song Ku has chromosomal abnormalities in parts of the DNA sequence unknown. It's currently uncertain if it's hereditary or congenital. I'm not an expert in this field, but I'm concerned she may have an invisible genetic defect. Grace's concern was not unfounded genetic defects could lead to various illnesses. If a powerful awakener lost their life due to a genetic disease, it would be a heartbreaking loss. Could she have participated in the genetic selection program? A high-ranking individual speculated uncertainly. In the early stages, many suffered from genetic diseases due to immature technology. He Chilhong flipped back to the first page of the report. Song Ku's original residence was in F-177 district. People from the District F wouldn't have had any chance to participate in the genetic selection program. She pondered for a moment and whispered, send this report to Dr. Ning. Dr. Ning is an expert in genetic engineering and genetics. He should be able to analyze the unusual reasons behind Song Ku's condition. Should we also have Song Ku go there for detailed examinations in collaboration with Dr. Ning? Grace asked. No, He Chiohong intervened, don't inform her until we clarify the situation. Also, modify this report. At the same time, V587 was popping champagne to celebrate. Lin Yuyu and the others had also finished their genetic tests. Apart from Su Xing, who had just broken through and landed at A1 level, the rest were exceeding expectations. Lin Yuyu was A4, Fang Zixiu was A5, and surprisingly, Su Cha scored an A8. This usually taciturn person couldn't muster more than three sentences, but this time, he genuinely surprised everyone. Su Cha, feeling awkwardly restrained, sat on the sofa. Song Ku excitedly patted his shoulder, while Lin Yuyu affectionately ruffled his crew cut. Her soft touch brushed against his short stubble, causing a slight itch that darted from his back to his head. Su Cha stiffened, gripping the canned beer tightly, producing a flattened crack as he squeezed it. Excuse me, Jia Yi politely knocked on the door. Miss Song, your awakener report is ready. Everyone gathered around eagerly as Jia Yi calmly passed the report back to Song Ku using the connector. Quick, quick. What's the level? S what? Wow. S7. Sister, you're amazing. Huh, I guessed it right old Fong owes me money. Lin Yuyu boasted proudly. Fang Zixiu remained silent. Due to his blind trust in Song Ku, he obstinately bet on S9. S17 Captain, can you buy me some materials? Lu Xiaoyu joined in. Bye, bye, Song Ku chuckled foolishly. Zhuang Qinyan extracted the terminal from Song Ku's playful hands and meticulously went through the report page by page. He took his time, reading meticulously. The professional data that He Chilhong couldn't understand posed no challenge for him. The report consisted of 24 pages, and Zhuang Qinyan took his time, reading it thoroughly. Then, he removed his glasses, pinched his prominent brow, and a hint of scornful smirk curved his thin lips. Truly the arrogance of the District B, the Awakener Department personnel seemed to disregard them too much. Even for an S1 level Awakener, a normal analysis report would span over 25 pages, let alone Song Ku, a rare S7. Not willing to revise at all, they just deleted and glossed over it. It might have fooled the layman, but trying to deceive him was merely wishful thinking. Because that R-type analyzer capable of genetic analysis came from the Qinglan Research Institute. Its original purpose was to be used for genetic fusion in the Fire Seed Project. No one understood its functions better than Zhuang Qinyan did. Chapter 176 Your team failed to enter the rankings. The next morning, V587 boarded the starship arranged by the Awakeners Department and departed from Qianzhan City, officially heading towards the northern base. The silver-white flight terminal streaked across the sky like a meteor, encountering an automatic clearance through the transparent protective shield. Song Ku leaned against the porthole, revealing a smile of satisfaction akin to that of an old father. This time, they hadn't relied on deception or manipulation but had entered District B through their own diligent efforts. As soon as they reached the platform, before the starship even settled, Song Ku jumped down. A refreshing breeze brushed their faces, the air was invigorating, and the weather mimicry system gradually dispelled the scorching heat of midsummer. 
Song Ku and Su Xing, who entered the city for the first time, excitedly ran to the railing to look ahead. Unlike the desolate plains that extended for thousands of kilometers on the outskirts, the northern base was an incredibly textured city, aerial tunnels, levitating subways, stylish racing cars. Technological creations born over the past thirty glorious years were ubiquitous here. Clusters of towering buildings, arranged in a layered spatial hierarchy, provided a tremendous visual impact. Among them, one level even featured an infinity pool the size of a football field, where several awakeners frolicked. A few hydrokinetics mischievously manipulated the water, causing fountain-like droplets to cascade down at a wave of their hand. Song Ku's eyes sparkled. Wow! Su Xing imitated, wow! Overhead, an armed fleet flew by. Several men and women, clearly awakeners, stood firmly on the deck of the ship. One of them, bare-chested with scars covering his torso, held the freshly severed, still bleeding head of a giant beast, laughing and waving to the crowd on the platform before entering two cylindrical connected towers. In the distant sky, a holographic projection appeared, numbers continuously flickering, gradually forming a massive leaderboard. Blue Flame Eliminated Level 4 Mutant Beast, Black Fork Tooth Fish, Real-Time Score Update Song Ku witnessed firsthand as Blue Flame's ranking rose by two positions, now ranked 10th in the Northern Base and 122nd in the New Asia Alliance. This was the Northern Base. Unreasonably exhilarating. Yi Zimei and her team awaited them on the platform. Gazing at their shining KPI, she laughed heartily, her teeth showing and eyes disappearing. Your new terminals and the procedures for transferring Awakener citizenship will be handled by a dedicated officer later. Now, follow me to meet Commander He She's waiting for you at the Awakener Department. The Northern Base's Awakener Department was precisely the cylindrical high-rise building Song Ku had just seen upon disembarking. Yi Zimei's red-bottomed high heels clicked crisply on the polished floor, the sound echoing. Song Ku and the other six followed her, observing numerous images of honor on the historical wall. These included global supernatural summits, roundtable forums, genetic elite exchanges, as well as military exercises with the Karyo Empire and the Loose Federation. With the passage of time, the presence of Awakeners became increasingly evident. Song Ku keenly realized that this was the disparity between different districts within the Alliance, a D-level Awakening might cause immense joy in lower-tier districts. But in the Northern Base or other district BS, especially among post-apocalyptic Awakeners, supernatural abilities were commonplace long ago. Song Ko also noticed that the people moving around were high-level Awakeners, enveloped in a faint aura of awakened energy, yet they remained restrained and subdued. Along the way, many secretly observed them, seemingly trying to figure out who among them was the rumored S7. The news about the base recruiting an S-level attack-type Awakener had been widely spread, and Yi Zime personally bringing in V587 had revealed their identities. Amidst the attention of the crowd, the group took an automated scenic elevator up the building. Song Ku, looking at the building without any visible security measures, had a sudden curiosity and asked, what if there were Awakener terrorists here? Yi Zime smiled slowly, believe me, the stupidest way to die in this world is to recklessly use awakened abilities in the building beneath our feet. She tapped her pearl earring, and a video began playing on the elevator's announcement screen. The top caption read Security Manual 014. This is footage from eight months ago. At the outbreak of the apocalypse, an A7 level Awakener from a lower level district, along with 23 thugs, forcibly entered the Awakener department, attempting to kidnap Commander He and take control of the entire northern base. In the footage, the leader, a corruption type Awakener, appeared arrogant, chin held high spouting commands, everyone get down on your knees. Don't move. As he advanced, the floor, tables, pillars everything he passed turned into pus. Just as he was about to cross the midpoint, the ceiling of the Awakener department vanished suddenly, revealing a deep spatial crack. Then hundreds of densely packed energy guns emerged, bang. 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 Blinding beams of light instantly turned the thugs into sieves. After the intense light dissipated, only the A7 level survived, but he didn't have long to rejoice a was blasted into a pulp. Literally a pulp bloody, sticky fragments rained down onto the smooth floor. 
The scene was as if silenced by a spell, utterly still and soundless. The surveillance footage shifted to the transparent corridor on the higher level, where two young individuals dressed in Awakener Department uniforms appeared. They had similar appearances, tall and slender, both with blonde hair and green eyes, exuding an effortless air of indifference. The slender hands of the female rested on the railing, observing with interest the remains of the A7 level who had chosen his path to death. The male leaned against the wall, arms crossed, seemingly dozing off, entirely apathetic without even lifting an eyelid. Yeezy Mei cleared her throat lightly, her tone revealing profound sympathy, out of the total of 14 malignant incidents in the 47 years since the establishment of the base, this was the most unfortunate criminal. He happened to encounter the Ling siblings' return for duty reports, the chance for surrender was not even given. Song Ku, wearing a surprised expression, asked, the Ling siblings. Ah, Ling Yen and Ling Yu, a pair of twins, one representing the dragon and the other the phoenix. They are the only two S6 level attack type awakeners in the northern base, Yi Zimei lowered her voice, slyly blinked, they are also assimilated awakeners from the Karyo Empire. Song Ku glanced again at the video. After the Ling siblings resolved the crisis, they left without much enthusiasm. S-level awakeners possess absolute dominance over all ranks below S-level, especially two S6 levels. As Yi Zimei had mentioned, these criminals had indeed stumbled into a really unfortunate situation. Guided by Yi Zimei, V587 had no hindrances and quickly reached the penultimate floor. In a spacious conference room, they finally encountered the holographic image of the top official of the Awakener's department, He Chiohong. The seven individuals exchanged glances without a word. The personal reception mentioned by He Chiohong turned out to be in this form. However, it was understandable. Facing an attack type S7 level and an entire A-level Awakener team, even if V587 had voluntarily sought refuge, He Chiohong didn't let Joy cloud her judgment and maintained the necessary vigilance. He Chilhong wore a dark blue suit, had a bridge nose supporting black framed glasses, and a stern and dignified countenance, with two deep folds on the sides of her nose. Song Ku inexplicably recalled the vice principal she had encountered during her brief student days. Song Ku, and the rest of E587 team, welcome to the northern base, He Chilhong got straight to the point. Two weeks ago, I watched the finals of the throne race competition in District C72 live. You are an exceptional team, each of you shines with unique qualities, cohesive and indispensable. Her appreciative gaze swept over everyone, accurately naming Su Cha, Su Xing, Fang Jishu, even Lin Yuyu by her real name, and then very naturally omitted the remaining two. The two men in wheelchairs glanced at each other in silence. One of them smirked slightly, while the other yawned out of boredom. Since their arrival at the northern base, Zhuang Qinyan and Lu Xiaoyu had concealed their awakened energies flawlessly, seemingly no different from ordinary people. With Song Ku as their cover, their status was openly acknowledged as accompanying personnel. He Chilhong had indeed followed the competition, but she watched the official broadcasts, not continuously monitoring V587 for 24 hours. During the throne race, Lu Xiaoyu consistently used his mechanical arm, never exposing his hacker abilities to the camera. Zhuang Qinyan was even more discreet he never followed with the drone, hardly appeared in front of the camera if he ever flashed by, Lu Xiaoyu swiftly edited him out. In the northern base, strength was the only valid pass. No one intentionally concealed their identity as an awakener. Therefore, He Chiohong naturally assumed they were just ordinary people or rather, disabled individuals coincidentally teamed up with V587. She didn't bother to spare them a second glance. He Chilhong didn't say anything, not even a disdainful look. Yet, Zhuang Qinyan could read between the lines, sensing her disdain toward ordinary individuals. I didn't expect you to break through to S level in such a short time after the competition and choose to come to the northern base, said He Chilhong with an expressionless face. Song Ku awkwardly scratched her head. It was nearly impossible to leap from A level to S7 level in such a short time, but He Chilhong didn't expose her. Instead, she went along with the contents of the letter Zhuang Qinyan had fabricated, which indicated that she didn't mind Song Ku hiding her level in Ferrara. 
On behalf of the Northern Base, according to the recruitment notice, I offer you ownership of five sets of apartments in the central area, full access to District B for Awakeners, along with monthly allowances and corresponding living benefits. He Chil Hong was generous, changing the original free apartment stay to gifting five sets of apartments, providing both housing and financial support, making V587 feel warmly welcomed. She then introduced the basics of the Awakener department and the current vacant job positions, captivating her audience. Finally, He Chil Hong turned to Song Ku. You can make any requests, and after the probationary period, I will prioritize their implementation. Probationary period. Song Ku seized upon the keyword. The survival rule of the northern base is absolute strength, He Chil Hong nodded slightly. We operate on a last place elimination system, updating the ranking points monthly. The bottom 1% of the teams, unfortunately, cannot stay here. Of course, I believe you will definitely pass the probationary period. I look forward to seeing you again in a month, He Chil Hong smiled. By then, perhaps we can sit down for a cup of tea face to face. The words carried a hint of deeper meaning, suggesting that V587 might meet her in person next time. Even in the presence of an S-level awakener, He Chil Hong didn't exhibit an eager attitude to retain them. She perfectly embodied the calm and rational demeanor expected of someone in a high position. Yet, she showed considerable attention to Song Ku, conversing calmly and clearly invested in her thoughts. Song Ku felt that He Chil Hong seemed like a contradictory person. Additionally, this is specially prepared for you, He Chil Hong turned and quietly instructed a few words. At that moment, there was a firm knock on the conference room door. Two staff members wheeled in a mobile desk, adorned with various colorful terminals, covering nearly all popular styles in District B. We were planning to purchase these collectively, Song Ku politely declined, thinking there might be discounts for a group purchase. He Chil Hong simply stated, all S-level terminals are directly provided by the Awakener Department. Song Ku was taken aback, staring at her intently. He Chil Hong didn't mince words. S-level awakeners carry inherent risks. We need to ensure constant contact with you 24-7. These terminals are pre-equipped with locator devices and exclusive communication channels. Once bound to you, you can use them. Song Ku shifted her gaze away, took a couple of steps forward, and silently selected one. As they left the awakener department, Lin Yu Yu grumbled discontentedly, What's this? Surveillance. Fang Jishu rubbed his chin, I feel like this commander his actions and words don't quite align. Something's off. She's an outright pragmatist, Zhuang Qinyan's calm voice echoed. Others turned to look at him. Zhuang Qinyan continued, she talks about nothing but the interests of the northern base. In her eyes, awakeners are just the best tools to maintain those interests. When she needs you, she'll cater to you and support you. But in case of conflict or contradiction with her pursued interests, she won't hesitate to discard you. However, at least for the northern base, she's a dutiful superior, Zhuang Qinyan sarcastically chuckled. That terminal, do I still need it? Song Ku had picked a pin-shaped one, resembling a small bee. Zhuang Qinyan shrugged it off, sure, why not? We haven't done anything wrong. What's there to fear? When the time comes for mischief, we'll find a way to outsmart it. Song Ku, why does doing wrong feel justified like this? The first activation of the terminal required binding. Song Ku lightly released her awakened energy, feeling a momentary looseness in her consciousness. Suddenly, she sensed a subtle feeling of being observed. She paused for a moment. If it weren't for her experience with the crime record in the death prison, she might have ignored this sensation. But the crime record was something Lu Xiaoyu had concocted out of boredom in prison. Why would the terminals in District B behave similarly? Song Ku shared her discovery with her teammates. Lu Xiaoyu's pale fingers took the terminal, examining it with a gaze that hinted at a mechanical indifference in his icy eyes. A mild thought connection indeed, her doing, Lu Xiaoyu spoke cryptically. But he didn't plan to explain further. Swiftly, he input a string of anti-snooping codes. Making too many moves might lead to detection. Just wear it for now and try to minimize using the permissions. Permissions? 
Song Ku was puzzled. Yeah, accessing information not in your mind, actively gaining knowledge you've never had, that's permissions. While it can be convenient, every use is essentially a request to her, deepening the thought connection gradually. Oh, Song Ku nodded obediently. I won't use it then. I'll just ask Zhuang Qinyan. What information, what knowledge? The rigid terminal can't compare to Zhuang Qinyan's expertise. This encyclopedia of the Alliance not only shares everything with her but also adjusts the language to ensure she comprehends it. Zhuang Qinyan suddenly chuckled, a smile so genuine it could melt ice, the curvature of his lips revealing a visible sense of joy. Wait a moment, when you said her, Lin Yu Yu asked cautiously. Lu's supercomputer, Lu Xiaoyu's tone remained flat, devoid of ripples. It infiltrated the terminal network in District B. She sees everyone. Everyone felt a shiver down their spine. Before, they merely found the terminals in District B impressive and cool. But as Lu Xiaoyu spoke, the constant feeling of being watched became unsettling. However, the provided terminal had its advantages, like direct access to the commission system. The seven gathered around. Song Ku opened the interface eagerly. Even after deducting the 500,000 points for the entry threshold, they should have had a comfortable 200,000 points left. The landlord's family was still very wealthy, and it should be more than enough to get on the ranking list. Then came the cruel reality. After the real-time update, the projection displayed, V587 current points, 220,050, monthly ranking, 99. Unfortunately, your team failed to enter the rankings. Please continue to work hard. Song Ku stubbornly scrolled upwards. The top scorer had 448,888 points. Twice as many as V587. Song Ku's expression fell. Goodness, was the competition among the Awakeners in the Northern Base this intense? Chapter 177 Nyo Hulu Qinyan Perhaps at the explicit request of Yi Zimei, the commissioner arranged by the Awakener's department was exceptionally considerate, exuding enthusiastic attitudes. Not only did they swiftly handle the household registration transfer procedures, but they also drove them to buy terminals. Aside from the two ordinary people, all four A-level members of V587 switched to District B terminals. After finishing, they proceeded to update the Awakener's information and select a property. From the locals' perspective, they provided suggestions. Avoid the ground floor poor lighting. Also, steer clear of the top floor too many flying terminals causing a lot of noise. I like this one. Su Xing took a liking to a set in the blue community. The holographic was extravagant, boasting a 360-degree immersive jellyfish-shaped lamp, algae floorboards that change shape with mood, an immersive orca-themed bedroom with sound effects as the highlight, all full of gimmicks. The commissioner shook their head repeatedly, many awakeners in this community have become emo due to living in a deep-sea environment for long periods. It would be better for you to choose a garden-style small villa with better sunlight exposure, where you can bask in the sun regularly, and even connect between two households. Though no one explicitly stated it, the attentive commissioner noticed the harmonious interaction within the V587 team undoubtedly, they preferred to live closer to each other. Amidst the commotion, Song Ko found herself idle and took out her terminal for a glance. Then she watched helplessly as V587's ranking dropped once again. Today was supposed to be a designated rest day for the Alliance, but were these people not resting or sleeping at all? No, she had to get involved too. The concerned team captain promptly opened the commission system. Su Xing ran over for her to choose a house, and she waved her hand in a perfunctory manner, saying, you choose what you want to buy. The list scrolled rapidly, new tasks appearing only to be overlapped right away. Coupled with various restrictions like rank, distance, and application conditions, Song Ko became increasingly engrossed and completely absorbed in selecting tasks. Sea Level Commission Clear the rampant mutated turban snails along the Silver Bay District C44. Point reward, 80,000. This one seemed promising. Song Ku eagerly clicked on it, only to be greeted with a prompt stating, this task has expired. Before she could lament, a batch of new tasks appeared on the interface. B-level commission urgent, 
medium-sized zombie tide has emerged in the coffee tree plantation area of Mandolin District C43. Please clear within four hours. Below, in small red scrolling text, the tone was urgent, all coffee enthusiasts, please save Mandolin. This area is the primary producer of Mandolin coffee. Once invaded by the zombie tide beyond the deadline, it will affect the Alliance's coffee production. Song Ku took a small breath, realizing the seriousness of the situation. Even though she didn't drink coffee, she had a sense of justice. She swiftly tapped on the virtual panel with her fingers. Perhaps due to an abundance of coffee enthusiasts, Song Ku's fingertips tingled, and the prompt that popped up stated, the maximum number of accepted tasks has been reached. Song Ku. How could it be at its limit? She hadn't even started her duty as a coffee defender. Feeling disheartened, Song Ku swiped the panel twice more. Surprisingly, she managed to fish out a task worth 200,000 points, and guess what? No one had taken it. With quick reflexes, she crazily tapped away regardless. But the result? Apologies, your team doesn't meet the acceptance criteria. What was this now? What didn't meet the criteria? Song Ku scrutinized it, B-level commission, reconstruction of an open-air hot spring bath in Takushima District B-15, requires abilities in engineering. The higher the level, the better. Song Ku, she still chose not to give up today. Song Ku immersed herself in her work again, frantically trying to snatch up commissions. Hey! She couldn't snatch even one. She was so engrossed in snatching that she didn't even notice her teammates had moved ahead. Zhuang Qinyan, stopping in his wheelchair, didn't catch her attention either. Thud! Her toe hit the wheelchair, causing her to lean and lose balance, falling forward like a swallow returning to its nest, straight into someone's arms. Zhuang Qinyan leaned his wheelchair back slightly, opening his arms to catch her firmly. As Song Ku lifted her head, she found herself face to face with his perfectly curved jawline. Today, he was dressed in a light colored suit, the open collar revealing a clear view of his collarbones. A straight and slender nose, a faint smile tugging at his thin lips, and with those gold rimmed glasses held by two delicate chains, he looked like the epitome of a handsome and sophisticated superstar from a street billboard. Zhuang Qinyan lowered his head, his sensual Adam's apple moving slightly with his breath. He pinched Song Ku's cheeks, gently shaking them left and right, causing her head to follow suit. Squeezing cheeks makes drool Song Ku mumbled incoherently. Zhuang Qinyan lightly chuckled, a deep resonance coming from his throat. As Song Ku rested her fingertips against him, she felt a slight numbness in her heart. Her ears felt like they were on fire. She extended two fingers, pressing a few inches below Zhuang Qinyan's chest and then pushing against his thigh, swiftly standing up. Zhuang Qinyan's expression subtly changed, Song Ku, if you keep poking around like this, it might cause trouble. Song Ku defended herself, I didn't poke around. It was just using a support to stand up, so stingy. She glanced at Zhuang Qinyan's legs in discontent. What was so precious about those thighs? Couldn't even touch them. Zhuang Qinyan somewhat uneasily placed his right hand on his knee, changing the subject, what are you so focused on? As soon as he asked, Song Ku felt indignant and started complaining, I can't grab any commissions. Zhuang Qinyan reached out, let me have a look. They were used to sharing a terminal, so Song Ku handed it over without a second thought. But coincidentally, the commissioner in front turned around and saw this scene, eyes almost popping out. In District B, terminals were extremely private, as significant as undergarments. They were devices projecting real-time thoughts from your mind. How could one casually show it to others? The stunned commissioner's gaze landed on Zhuang Qinyan's face that was blessed by heaven. Gradually, disbelief turned into enlightenment. This pretty boy with such a gentle, breathtaking smile, indeed had the qualities to live off someone else. No wonder he's in a wheelchair and still charms an S-level. The commissioner sighed, turned away, and accidentally caught sight of Lu Xiaoyu. Their mind went blank. What, one's not enough, there are two. Even the chair is saved, sit down and fight the landlord directly. This new S level seemed to have some unique quirks. Unaware of the commissioner's complex thought process, 
Song Ku was solely concerned about V587's ranking, can you snatch them? Zhuang Qinyan swiped his fingertips a few times, at this speed, it seems like they're using an automatic commission snatching plugin. Commission snatching plugins. Song Ku's voice trembled. Was it necessary to go this far? No wonder her fingers were numb from not grabbing a single task. What plug-in? What are you all talking about? Lin Yu Yu curiously leaned in. Song Ku explained their situation, and everyone seemed eager to join in. This intense? Then we have to participate too. This is the very first commission after coming to the northern base. It has to be completed splendidly to make a strong start. Su Cha was more direct, it's still early, let's handle the commission and then go back. Zhuang Qinyan tossed the terminal to Lu Xiaoyu, hinting at something as he said, the captain is about to take on a commission, can you handle it? My god! The commissioner, whose worldview shattered, bit their finger, their expression becoming even more indescribable, sharing a terminal between three people. Isn't that too intense? This was just a piece of cake for Lu Xiaoyu. He had never lost in snatching classes at Loboni. With swift finger movements, Lu Xiaoyu entered a long string of code. The freshly made commission random interception cheat operated in the vast sea of data. A few minutes later, the terminal made a ding sound, displaying a prompt, mission accepted successfully. Please complete it within the specified time limit. What did you snatch? Others crowded around, preparing to welcome V587's first commission at the northern base. B-level commission exclusive to District B-10, Fishing Master. The base's Marine Biology Research Institute is preparing to add new display specimens. Please go to Silver Bay District C-44 within 24 hours to capture the mutated species listed. The better the quality and the more intact, the higher the points earned. Reminder, this task is not suitable for all those with ichthyophobia. Song Ku was puzzled. Ha! Huh. What ichthyophobia? But time was running out, there was no time to explain. She quickly called out to her teammates, let's go, do the commission. Fortunately, all the necessary procedures had been completed. The expressionless commissioner stared at V587's hurriedly departing figure and silently opened the gossip channel, Crooked Anecdotes of Awakeners. I want to anonymously expose an S-level sea king who keeps two pretty boys around and frequently shares a terminal when there's nothing else to do. Chapter, 178 Nyo Hulu Qinyan Silver Bay was only a two-hour journey from the northern base by a starship. However, when V-587 arrived, there was no place for them to step foot on the beach. Like Qinjan City, this place was filled with awakeners, resembling a chaotic marketplace. Make way, make way, we were here first get out of the way, don't you understand human language? Who the hell do you think you are, Motherfker? If I've grabbed it, it's mine. If you have the guts, try to snatch it back, ha ha ha. You. Get lost, you. A wind elemental awakener took advantage and stirred the sea, causing the water to surge and churn, forming huge waves crashing ahead. The mutated creatures hiding below were overturned, and Song Ku witnessed a scene she never wanted to recall in her lifetime. Uncountable monstrous ribbonfish, three-headed deformed eels, mudskippers as thick as arms, and thousands of ferocious octopuses and squids rained down like hail, their pungent stench and sea smell assaulting everyone's senses. The Awakener rushed in, frenetically grabbing, their dazzling array of skills almost blinding the onlookers nearby. But Song Ku and her group couldn't even make a move, not even scraps were left for them. Well, maybe there were scraps to pick up. Pap a thorned eel fell by Song Ku's feet, its jagged teeth clamping onto her shoe, pierced through expressionlessly by her. Pap a ribbonfish slammed onto Lin Yuyu's shoulder, its wriggles delivering a hefty slap. Damn it! Lin Yuyu was dumbfounded, experiencing the first time in her life getting slapped by a fish. Su Cha swiftly grabbed the ribbonfish with one hand, dispersing a poisonous mist and promptly snapped its neck. Are you okay? Lin Yuyu turned her head dazedly, then gritted her teeth, if I don't exterminate the ribbonfish clan today, my last name isn't Lin. However, bold words came easy, but tackling the monsters was not as simple. Song Ku fired an arrow, 
pinning down a level 3 mutated Razor Clan. Before she could rejoice, a Sand Elemental Awakener swiftly enveloped it in quicksand, cleanly snatching away her trophy. Song Ku exclaimed in shock and anger, Thief! Looking around, it was a sea of either human or monster heads, making it impossible to spot any thief. Others weren't faring much better. Most were dignified individuals not willing to lose face, dividing their focus between fishing and protecting their own catches. But other Awakeners had no qualms, shamelessly seizing anything, theirs or not, stuffing it all into their own pockets. Su Cha and Lin Yuyu, busy cutting ribbon fish, had their loot stolen by someone else. Su Xing froze an area with his awakened ability, but before he could rush over, a spatial awakener swooped in and vacuumed his catch, leaving him infuriated. As for Lu Xiaoyu he was the only one putting up a fight, utilizing all six arms to specifically snatch other people's monsters. And then there was Zhuang Qinyan, struck by his germophobia, who had long distanced himself, wearing an expression of complete disdain. Song Ku locked eyes with him, Zhuang Qinyan leaning weakly against his wheelchair, his gaze filled with accusation, you have the heart to make me catch fish? All right, all right, Song Ku couldn't bear to let him do the work. After toiling away the whole day, they barely scored 50,000 points. Checking the rankings, she chuckled bitterly they had slipped back two spots again. When V587 returned to the northern base, everyone wore sour expressions the starship reeked of a strong stench of decay. Their opening move had obviously fallen flat. Song Ku sighed inwardly. If things continued like this, would she become the first S-level eliminated due to lagging rankings in the northern base? I heard you went to snatch fish. Ha ha ha, still not successful. Yeezy Mei's laughter came through the terminal. Don't mention it, Song Ku groaned, massaging her temples. Song Ku, do you know anyone at the base? Yeezy Mei laughed at her for a while before getting serious, the top-level awakeners have their own circle. I heard that the teams at the forefront of the rankings have created an exclusive channel. Those S-level and A-level commissions with high return rates are basically monopolized by them and cannot fall into the hands of outsiders. If you have connections, get them to invite you into the channel. It's definitely more efficient than snatching fish -ha -ha. Connections? A face slowly surfaced in Song Ku's mind, wearing sniper goggles, black sniper gloves while handling guns, with untamed features, a sparkling ruby earring on the right ear. It seemed like she did have someone. And another thing, your um, family member from before wanted to meet Professor Ming Gang and his wife, right? Yi Zimei said, their visitor appointment channel was closed many years ago, and they haven't appeared in public for a long time. I found Professor Ming's current address on Middle Ancient Street. Whenever you guys have time, I'll accompany you there. All right, I'll ask first. An experimental laboratory filled with instruments. The sound of machines beeping intermittently echoed, gene sequences slowly rotating in the air. Two corpses lay in observation chambers, their skin extensively decayed, their pupils a murky gray these were the fallen captured from high men. An invisible shadow was corroding their bodies, one of them having already lost all signs of life. Radiation Levels Report Awakened Energy Levels The upper body of the living corpse suddenly stiffened, arching into a bridge-like form, emitting a hoarse, mournful groan from its throat before collapsing heavily, breathless. Confirmed the subject is deceased. The surrounding assistants remained silent as the weight of failure lingered in the air. After a full two minutes, a hoarse voice broke the silence, slowly uttering, Record, radiation exceeds 47. The fourth awakening experiment, unsuccessful. Dr. Ning, how do we dispose of these two discarded experimental subjects? Destroy them, a man with graying temples and a gaunt face spoke softly. Another failure, countless failures that had left the faces in the laboratory drained and the atmosphere heavy. A lab coated assistant entered from outside holding a screen of light. Dr. Ning, the Awakener Department sent a file. They say the subject in the file may have a genetic condition, they want you to take a look. Do you think I have nothing else to do? The man's expression showed embarrassment. This is Commander He's instruction. He Chilhong was the financial backbone of the entire laboratory. Dr. Ning stayed silent for a moment, not refusing further, 
taking the screen and examining its contents. Initially casually browsing through it, gradually, his pace slowed, his expression grew more solemn. Finally, he lingered for a long time on page 17 a massive shadow completely engulfing the body. Compared to this image, the fallen who had just died from excessive radiation seemed utterly laughable. What is this? A newly discovered mutated zombie? No, the assistant was startled, hastening to explain, it's an S-level newcomer at the base. An awakener Dr. Ning flipped back to the report's cover, reading aloud the name written on it, Song Ku. The report stays with me. Please, have director he find a way to bring this Song Ku to the lab. Huh? For what reason? The assistant hesitated to ask. For further genetic examination. Dr. Ning gestured to the section of the genetic report towards the back. In the central district's garden apartments, a tall, slender figure stood by the French windows. The man, nearly 185 centimeters tall, had elongated limbs and a graceful posture. His facial features were defined and smooth, with deep-set eyes and a straight lip line when not smiling. Gazing down at the world, he seemed like an impassive and distant deity. Fang Jishu sighed while stroking his chin, truly living up to the S-level, huh? Half a month earlier in recovery time than I anticipated. Hearing this, Zhuang Qinyan turned around. Broad shoulders and a straight back, a slender waist tucked neatly under the tailored pants, encasing two extraordinarily long legs. Thank you, Dr. Fang, for your miraculous recovery skills, which prevented any lasting effects. When do you plan to inform the captain? No rush, Zhuang Qinyan smiled, his glasses chains gently swaying with the motion, exuding an air of grace and elegance. Being in a wheelchair wasn't bad at all. His carefully crafted image of being a fragile and delicate little white flower could always get some unexpected care from Song Ku. Zhuang Qinyan. The door was pushed open forcefully, and Song Ku stormed in, Yi Zimei said she'll accompany us. Zhuang Qinyu, face palm. He sighed in resignation, Song Ku, can you please knock before barging into my room? Song Ku didn't hear a word he said, her mouth forming a perfect O shape. It was the first time she had seen Zhuang Qinyan standing so relaxed, without the aid of a cumbersome cane, without the urgency of a sealing injection. He stood there, using his two perfectly normal legs that belonged to him. Outside the window, the golden dawn of early morning painted the sky as numerous aircraft moved about. Zhuang Qinyan's superior silhouette stood backlit, seeming to carry an immense radiance upon his shoulders. The feeling it evoked was both familiar and strange. It was as if he had become someone else, yet still Zhuang Qinyan, yet not quite him. In Song Ku's mind, a line from a palace intrigue drama that Aiming loved watching surfaced at an inappropriate moment. The former Zhuang Qinyan is already dead. Now standing before you is Niu Hulu Qinyan. Tian. NIHL is a Chinese internet buzzword that gained popularity from the TV series story of Yanshi Palace. It's a playful, humorous nickname given to one of the main characters, Emperor Qianlong, whose full name was Hongli. Niu Hulu originated from a scene where the character said, From now on, I'm not Emperor Qianlong, I'm Niu Hulu. It was a comical moment that resonated with viewers and quickly became a popular meme and catchphrase. The phrase is often used humorously or ironically online, referencing the emperor's playful, less formal side portrayed in the show. In addition, in the TV drama's Empresses in the Palace and Rui's Royal Love in the Palace, when someone is given the surname Nyo Hulu, it means they have become cunning and no longer innocent. Chapter 179 I asked you to hold him back, not to disable him. The members of the V587 were called for an impromptu meeting in the apartment's living room. Captain, what's the matter? Song Ku puffed her cheeks, crossed her arms, and sat on the circular bar, nudging the corner of her mouth towards a lazy figure in a wheelchair. Everyone turned their heads to look, except for Fang Jishu, who awkwardly scratched his head, not daring to say a word. Stand up, Song Ku ordered coldly, looking down from her high position. Under everyone's gaze, Zhuang Qinyan awkwardly coughed twice in a fragile manner, supporting himself on the wheelchair with both hands. He slowly stood up, trembling as he took a step forward. His knees weren't accustomed, causing a slight delay in his movement, resulting in a sway in his body. 
Su Cha instinctively reached out to help. Expressionless, Song Ku said, Stop pretending. Zhuang Qinyan straightened his back and immediately stopped swaying. Su Cha muttered to himself, Six, and quietly retracted his arm. Zhuang Qinyan's hand awkwardly hovered in the air, seeing Song Ku had no intention of assisting him. He casually put his hand in his pocket, adjusted his muscles to their best condition, moved smoothly and naturally, his demeanor lazy and casual. Crossing his long legs, he walked back and forth like a male model in a poster, and then confidently sat back down. V587 In the silent air, they witnessed a free top-notch runway show, then indignantly accused him, dot. You big liar, just the day before yesterday, I was pushing you. This was Su Xing, the fooled free labor. TCH, boring. This was Lu Xiaoyu rolling his eyes. You kid, why didn't you tell everyone in advance? Now look Fang Jishu tried to shrink, attempting to avoid responsibility. Lin Yuyu suspiciously glanced at him, Old Fang, you're his attending physician, wouldn't you know if his leg got better? Fang Jishu stammered, uh, well, I I. Lin Yuyu covered her mouth dramatically, looking pained, wow, you two colluded to deceive us to deceive the captain's pure feelings. Song Ku nodded seriously, yeah. Huh. What feelings? She quickly brought the conversation back on track, so, what are your plans for the future? Everyone within the team knows about the recovery I'll continue using the wheelchair for a while. Zhuang Qinyan lifted one leg, the suit pants outlining a clear silhouette. With his hands clasped in front of his abdomen, his expression open and without a hint of embarrassment, he said, anyway, I'm used to sitting, quite comfortable, actually. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Everyone rolled their eyes but went along with it, showing kindness. Despite teasing Zhuang Qinyan, everyone had a sense of understanding and wouldn't spread rumors around. After Lin Xiu woke up, they all more or less guessed that Zhuang Qinyan had an unusual identity but never questioned him. Each person had their own unspoken secrets, and among teammates, there should be mutual respect. Song Ku took the opportunity to discuss with Zhuang Qinyan about accompanying them to meet Ming Gang and his wife, allowing him to choose a suitable time. Zhuang Qinyan hesitated for a moment. The sooner, the better. How about tomorrow? Okay, Song Ku nodded. I'll go with you. Sure, Zhuang Qinyan's eyes curved into a charming smile. District B is in crisis step by step, all because of my poor health. Cough, cough. I've caused trouble for everyone. Only the captain doesn't mind that I'm a burden and is willing to accompany me. What more could I ask for? Song Ku. Song Ku's forehead twisted in frustration. She turned half of her body away, no longer looking at his fake smile, quietly pulling out her own communicator terminal. She still had to worry about the task she had been entrusted with. Searching through the contacts, she found the profile of Yin Xiao and earnestly composed a message to send. The gist of it was that she and her teammates had arrived at the northern base and heard about an exclusive channel for accepting missions. Could they be added to it? As she typed away, Zhuang Qinyan stood up by himself, using one hand to support himself on the bar counter while resting his chin on her shoulder, staring fixedly at the content on the terminal. From behind, it seemed like a possessive half-embrace posture. After waiting for about a minute, Yin Zhao's reply finally arrived. Song Ku opened it, finding only a location pin and an exclamation mark. Just as she was forming a question in her mind, the next message from Yin Xiao popped up, Come. Two people, alone at night, making plans. He's aiming high, huh? Zhuang Qinyan's smile carried a chilling undertone. Before Song Ku could respond, another message arrived from Yin Xiao. Perhaps realizing the ambiguity in their conversation or acknowledging the sensitive timing, this time the message was more detailed, help rescue a situation. You alone will do. There's an S-level threat on site. Dangerous. With Zhuang Qingyan's warm breath on her right shoulder, Song Ku felt the weight. She tilted her head slightly. So, should I go? Go where? Forget about it, Zhuang Qingyan coldly snorted. Observing the thickness of Zhuang Qingyan's eyelashes, Song Ku spoke earnestly, we owe him a favor. 
It's a matter of reciprocity and social etiquette. After some thought, she articulated, courtesy demands reciprocity. Zhuang Qinyan couldn't help but smile. He found it interesting how much a person could learn in just a few days. The girl seemed to understand the intricacies of social interactions now. Must you go? His deep eyes seemed to probe into her soul, his tone soft and slow, tinged with a hint of sorrow. I have to, Song Ku said earnestly. They locked eyes for a few seconds, and inexplicably, a sense of guilt, akin to the feeling of a disloyal man secretly meeting someone else while having a wife, surged within Song Ku. What's this? She shook her head, dispelling this baseless and terrifying notion. It's fine to go, but find someone to accompany you, Zhuang Qinyan finally relented, sighing, it's just an S-level threat, after all. Go early, come back early. Don't get involved in things you shouldn't, or else I won't let you in, he added, patting Song Ku's head with one hand, as a reminder. Because of his unsuitability for the occasion, he couldn't show up openly and had to rely on the team. Lu Xiaoyu had bought a bunch of new parts from the black market and was currently busy adjusting them up and down. Zhuang Qinyan stopped in front of Lu Xiaoyu, casually kicking the yet-to-be-installed new mechanical arm. Hey, driver, accompany our captain on an external mission. Lu Xiaoyu didn't hesitate to refuse, no time. Zhuang Qinyan dangled a bait, within reasonable limits, an extra chance for procurement. Putting down the parts he was holding, Lu Xiaoyu considered and spoke slowly, I want rhenium blocks, nothing else. Zhuang Qinyan turned to leave. Lu Xiaoyu hissed and quickly compromised, 300. Zhuang Qinyan calmly negotiated, 250. Lu Xiaoyu coldly stated, I don't accept that number. Zhuang Qinyan smiled faintly, then it's 270, no more. Quickly calculating, Lu Xiaoyu realized that the amount offered by Zhuang Qinyan was just enough to modify a mechanical arm, without any waste or loss. It was clear that he had calculated this beforehand, intentionally setting the limit at the edge. Internally cursing, Lu Xiaoyu agreed on the surface, deal. The coordinates sent by Yin Xiao were on the border between the northern base district B-10 and Tokushima district B-15. These two districts often clashed with deep-seated grievances. Song Ko had heard of the famous North Toku enmity record in Xianzhan City, it involved disputes where one day someone would steal another's top-tier awakener. The next day someone would dare to snatch an S-level commission, and the cycle of retaliation continued. Driving an armed spacecraft a public vehicle obtained through S-level authorization, Lu Xiaoyu arrived at the location to find an intense battle underway. Both sides, around 20 to 30 people each, faced off, utilizing different colored abilities that shimmered and clashed in the air. The night offered poor visibility, but from the obscure ground contours and the sound of waves crashing against rocks, it was discernible that this was a tidal flat. Taking in the surroundings, Song Ku felt overwhelmed. The shadows of the day hadn't completely dissipated, and she couldn't believe they were going to ask her to fish again. The spacecraft hovered low, and among the individuals present, Song Ku quickly spotted Yin Xiao. However, it was apparent he didn't have the time for greetings at the moment. Under the pitch-black night sky, a lightning-type awakener's hands flashed with electricity, hurling numerous pulsating orbs swiftly forward like darting serpents. Amidst the thunder and lightning, Yin Xiao swiftly maneuvered, dodging and rolling. If it were someone else, they would have avoided being turned to ashes from the bombardment. Yet, despite evading and rolling, he managed to find opportunities to counterattack. Each time he raised his wrist, a precise shot was fired, the light explosive angle cunningly aimed. Even if the lightning-type awakener managed to dodge, the shot found its mark on other opposing awakeners, gradually carving out a vacuum in the chaos. Song Ku's gaze narrowed slightly as she assessed from the projected awakened energy the lightning-type awakener confronting Yin Xiao was an S-level. Amidst the chaotic volley of electric spheres, the muscles from Yin Xiao's shoulder to back were taut, but instead of retreating, he surged forward suddenly. Wherever he went, intense flames ignited, and Jennifer promptly supported, using her abilities. The members of the Tustin team also freed up their hands to assist. With a swift slide, Yin Zhao's abdominal muscles tensed into a straight line as he dodged a series of electric spheres aimed at his face. 
moving in close, he suddenly fired his gun. His opponent attempted to evade, but Yin Zhao's lips curled slightly, seemingly anticipating their reaction. In a flash of electricity and sparks, he shifted his attack to using the butt of his gun towards the opponent's solar plexus. Just as success seemed within reach, crack. Suddenly, four black barriers descended on their location, followed by an endless tide of darkness rapidly engulfing and swallowing everything. Whether within the dark void or observing from the outside, everyone lost their vision instantly. An eerie, slender figure cloaked in black materialized slowly from the air, their icy eyes fixed firmly on Yin Xiao. Song Ku was slightly taken aback. Another S-level? A spatial type awakener? No, Yin Zhao's awakened energy was still there it hadn't vanished. He was trapped in absolute darkness, deprived of his sight. The lightning-type awakener was pulled out of Yin Zhao's attack range by a pair of thin, aged hands. In retaliation, a burst of lightning struck back. Yin Xiao, deprived of vision, relied on his instincts to evade but ultimately took a harsh blow. His military boots left deep imprints in the mud as he dropped to one knee, clutching his abdomen with his left hand, veins bulging on the back of it amidst a gush of fresh blood. Yin Xiao was an A9 level, facing an S-level opponent who already had a hierarchical advantage, not to mention it was a two-on-one situation. The usual casual smile on his face disappeared, replaced by a solemn and cold demeanor. Lei Zhao, why turn hostile when you arrived at Tokushima? Being so ruthless against former colleagues? He questioned. We're on different paths, the lightning-type awakener responded in a deep tone. Finally, as the two paused, Song Ku found an opportunity to intervene. She and Lu Xiaoyu exchanged a glance before leaping down from the spacecraft. Thud. Dust flew up in the air. Song Ku landed amidst the two opposing groups, her hands empty, appearing like an innocent bystander who had accidentally wandered into a battlefield while taking a stroll after a meal. Yet, no one dared to underestimate her. Lei Zhao and the slender woman remained vigilant, assessing her as if facing a formidable adversary. Chapter, 180 I asked you to hold him back, not to disable him. Yo, here already. Yin Zhao's smile brightened. He extended his free right hand. Could you lend me a hand? Song Ku helped him up, and as she glanced down, she noticed a severe electrical injury on Yin Zhao's lean and flat abdomen, with torn flesh and continuous bleeding. However, he casually patted the wound as if nothing had happened, whispering to Song Ku, those on the opposite side are all from Tokushima. The guy is Lei Zhao, S4 with lightning ability, and the woman is Yuko Nagima, S3 with mystic type ability, capable of depriving others of their powers using darkness. Help me keep them occupied, don't let them take the creature. Creature. What creature? Before Song Ku could inquire, the pitch black background around them rapidly receded like a tide, revealing a bizarre sight. On the mudflat, a massive stranded body of a giant sperm whale lay on its side, with a length exceeding 50 meters, a cylindrical and sturdy head, and two small dead white eyes. A crimson crystal floated slowly in mid-air, surrounded by faint blue water vapor. No one dared to approach it turned out to be a rare level 4 mutant beast. After the darkness dissipated, several Takushima awakeners were thrown out soaked and wet. Standing in the middle was a lightly dressed woman in a blue skirt. Song Ko took a surprised breath. Another S-level, what's going on tonight? An S-level beach party? Fortunately, Yin Xiao spoke up in time, explaining the woman's identity, she's one of us, Zhao Yuqing, S2 water controller. Zhao Yuqing nodded lightly at Song Ku. We killed this mutated whale, but they insist it's in their territory and demand we leave the things behind, Yin Xiao said. Purely thuggish behavior, twisting the facts. Not only do they want to steal the creature, but they also want to challenge the northern base, Song Ku commented. Growing up in a fishing village, Song Ku vaguely heard that whales were praised as treasures all over the body in marine life. Even in the apocalypse, its edible, industrial, and research value was higher than that of ordinary creatures, especially as a level 4 mutant beast. The northern base and Tokushima fought fiercely for the ownership of the mutated whale, which made sense. 
Yuko Nagima's voice was hoarse as she threatened in a non-standard alliance language, mutated whale, ours. Get lost. Yin Shao sneered, sorry, when we killed it, it was still in the waters of the northern base. Negotiation was impossible, and it would never be possible in this lifetime. Since things couldn't be explained, they could only resort to action. However, the mystic type Yuko Nagima was easy to deal with, while the attack type Lei Zhao, with his S4 abilities, was quite formidable. He used to be an awakener in the northern base, but Tokushima offered him better conditions and managed to recruit him. It's natural for water to flow downhill, and people seek higher ground. Originally, there wasn't much to say about this matter, but unexpectedly, Lei Zhao turned around and targeted his former colleague. Truly, there was no sense of loyalty. Tokushima had more than one strong attack type awakener, and as an S level, he had the right to refuse. Yin Xiao whispered to Song Ku, You hold off Lei Zhao. Zhao Yuqing and I will deal with Yuko Nagima. Is that okay? Song Ku made an okay gesture behind him. Lei Zhao, do you think the base won't function without you? Yin Xiao intentionally raised his voice, attracting attention from the opposite side. Let me introduce you. This is our new S level. Hello, please give me some advice. Song Ku politely bowed to the two people opposite and casually picked up a collapsed power line pole. Lei Zhao. Yuko Nagima. What was this new S level doing? Mocking them on purpose? It seems, it's a bit big, Song Ku muttered dissatisfied. Forget it, let's just use it. Lei Zhao raised both hands, and the high voltage electricity caused by his ability instantly changed the color of the night sky. Yuko Nagima rushed toward Song Ku, but halfway, she was forced to stop by water arrows and sharp bullets, forcing her to engage in battle. Your opponent is me, Zhao Yuqing said coldly. In the illuminated high sky by the lightning, thousands of sharp lightning bolts came toward Song Ku. Dragging the power line pole, she stepped on the body of the sperm whale, used the momentum to soar into the air, and swung her right hand. A blue twelve-section soft whip went through the air, absorbing most of the lightning along the way, emitting a sizzling electric light, and lashed towards Lei Zhao with bone-chilling malice. I'll return the favor. Song Ku understood the principle of reciprocity. Lei Zhao's pupils contracted, hastily gathering electric currents into a fan-shaped shield to block the rebounded attack. The lightning crackled and struck the decaying skin of the whale, and bits and pieces of tissue scattered everywhere. Song Ku whipped the whip again, the heavy head of the whip moving astonishingly fast in her hand, like a rattlesnake. Snap! It hit Lei Zhao's wrist. Lei Zhao couldn't avoid it, and he distinctly heard the bone crack and shatter. As a long-range awakener, he was already at a disadvantage in close combat, and Song Ku's soft whip seemed to be an extension of herself, moving effortlessly. One moment it swung horizontally, the next it flicked diagonally, occasionally drawing an eight-shaped figure at a 720-degree angle. Faced with Lei Zhao's lightning, she seemed extremely casual, dodging when she could, and enduring when she couldn't. Her physical fitness was so strong that it seemed she couldn't feel any pain at all. Crack. The lightning struck Song Ku's shoulder, and a faint scent of burnt flesh reached her. Smack. The sharp whip came down, hitting Lei Zhao's back hard, causing him to shudder in pain. The two danced and maneuvered on the corpse of the sperm whale, pouring out their formidable awakened energy without reservation. Distracted by the blurry vision from being whipped, Lei Zhao suddenly found Song Ku gone. Oh no! Lei Zhao raised his head abruptly, almost simultaneously, Song Ku descended diagonally from the head of the sperm whale in a cross-shaped leap. Lei Zhao's face changed drastically, focused only on her elusive whip techniques, completely unaware that she was closing the distance between them. Song Ku descended like a projectile, grabbed Lei Zhao's neck with one hand, and swung him forcefully toward the ground. Bang! Lei Zhao was smashed into the sandy soil, and the turbulent airflow stirred the remnants of the sperm whale skin. Song Ku acted swiftly, the whip circled around his hands, forming a knot. Then, she flexed her arm muscles and twisted in the opposite direction. First came a clearly audible crack. Ah! 
Immediately followed by a piercing scream, Lei Zhao's hands were forcibly twisted. The S-level's scream silenced the ongoing battle for two seconds. Damn, Yin Xiao stared blankly, I asked you to hold him back, not to disable him directly. With one hand, Song Ku lifted Lei Zhao and threw him forcefully towards Yuko Nagima. The female awakener, who was already trapped by Zhao Yuqing Nin Xiao, had no chance to dodge and was hit like a bowling ball, tumbling and colliding with the whale carcass. Tokushima's two S levels were defeated. After this round, the northern base emerged victorious. Yin Xiao and the other awakeners behind Zhao Yuqing burst into laughter without mercy. Song Ku clapped her hands, about to turn back, when she suddenly saw the faces of the opposing group turn pale, pointing in terror towards a certain direction. She turned around abruptly. The stranded mutated whale's body was rapidly swelling from its belly. Due to excessive radiation and the impact of S-level awakened energy, the accumulation of decomposed gases within its body exceeded the critical point. It reached the maximum capacity the skin could endure, and the people on the mudflat could vaguely smell a nauseating stench. Whale explosion. It's a whale explosion. Run. Heart-wrenching shouts echoed. Whale explosion, also known as nature's bomb, is the world's foulest biochemical weapon. The power generated by the explosion of a normal adult whale is equivalent to 10,000 hand grenades. Currently, lying on the beach is a level 4 mutated sperm whale with a length exceeding 50 meters. Both groups of awakeners snapped out of their trance, abandoning the fight without hesitation, and sprinted away. On the northern base side, Yin Xiao ran over, grabbing Song Ku's hand and shouting, Run! In the sky, Lu Xiaoyu sensed the impending danger. The flying ship dug down, its tailgate opened, and the northern base awakeners scrambled to climb aboard. Amidst the endless chaos, Song Ku suddenly thought of something, broke free from Yin Zhao's grip, and pushed him away. You go first. Hey! Don't run around! Yin Xiao turned to stop her, but the putrid smell in the air was too unbearable. He couldn't help but turn aside to dry heave, and when he turned back, Song Ku had already disappeared. Song Ku. After Yin Zhao's shout, he also gagged, ugh. The sperm whale's body had swollen to cover the sky, and the surrounding radiation energy surged, reaching the edge of detonation. A distant, tiny figure dashed towards them. Song Ku desperately waved her hands towards the sky. Lu Xiaoyu, fly! The flying ship ascended abruptly without any warning, nearly causing the awakeners in the back cabin to fall. The tailgate gradually closed, Yin Xiao hung onto the handrail with one hand, half of his body suspended in the air. He reached out to Song Ku. Quick! Boom! The swollen abdomen of the sperm whale burst open directly. Undigested, putrefied food, vast amounts of gaseous methane, ammonia, hydrogen sulfide, and countless microorganisms and bacteria scattered in the air with the bloody water, and the debris of tissues fell like a torrential rain. Song Ku flicked the long whip in her palm, firmly locking onto the tail wing of the flying ship. Lu Xiaoyu rapidly ascended again, using the force to pull her up. Like a sharp arrow, Song Ku maneuvered through the foul wind, blood rain, and toxic air, rolling into the flying ship's cabin with agility. The tailgate finally closed, and the strong airflow generated by the explosion caused the entire flying ship to shake violently. The portholes were completely covered with black, rotten substances. Why did you go back? Yin Xiao asked sternly, do you know how dangerous that was? Song Ku opened her palm, and a crimson crystal sparkled brightly. I went to get the crystal, Song Ku said matter-of-factly, then looked at them reproachfully, you guys, what a waste. As a captain who had once experienced poverty, frugality was a virtue she took pride in. While the northern base enjoyed abundant resources, she was not one to indulge extravagantly she would refuse even precious level 4 crystals if she deemed them unnecessary. Yin Xiao choked for a moment. Uh you someone looked at the oblivious Song Ku and cautiously spoke up. However, before he could finish his sentence, people in the cabin suddenly began to vomit one after another. Song Ku wiped her face, only to find a piece of rotten whale flesh falling down. 
She lowered her head in shock and looked, realizing that her coat had collected a considerable amount of debris from the whale explosion due to her vigorous flight. A shake made one piece fall. Another shake made two or three pieces fall. Oh no, oh no. The first thought that flashed through her mind was, with Zhuang Qingyan's cleanliness, would she be allowed to enter the door when she went back? Chapter 181 Yes. I just like him. Here, Crystal. Song Ku handed over the level 4 crystal she had rescued. Neither Yin Xiao nor Zhao Yuqing wanted it. Although the mutated whale was not captured, at least it wasn't taken by Tokushima. All in all, everyone considered it a draw. The crystal was retrieved by Song Ku, rightfully hers because of her violent intervention. Lei Zhao and Yuko Nagima were both pinned under the whale, making it unlikely for them to escape easily. Although with S-level physique, they wouldn't lose their lives, the scene of the explosion with a foul stench was definitely something they had to endure. You take it, thanks for your help. This is an A-level commission, and I'll transfer the mission points to you. Yin Xiao wanted to help her tidy up a bit. However, after lifting his arm for a while, he was at a loss. Song Ku was oblivious to his dilemma and felt delighted inside, 200,000 points credited at once. This trip was not in vain. The cockpit door opened, and Lu Xiaoyu slid out from inside. Captain, our trustworthy captain, please fulfill your promise and take me to buy. The rear compartment was filled with various unbearable smells. Exhausted awakeners lay scattered on the floor. Lu Xiaoyu slammed the brakes, revealing a clear expression of disgust on his face. The wheelchair slid back again without stopping. Not only that, he even reached out and slammed the door shut with a bang. Ah! Song Ku gritted her teeth secretly. What a great team member she has not only did Lu Xiaoyu not help when the captain was dirty, but he also slipped away faster than anyone else. Zhao Yuqing smiled on the side. With her gentle and plain temperament, no one would have thought she was an S2 level awakener. She moved her fingertips slightly, and the water vapor in the rear compartment gradually condensed into two elastic water balls. Rubbing against Song Ku's face and coat, the balls absorbed most of the dirt and debris. Then Zhao Yuqing lifted her slender arm, swish single-handedly opened the thousands of kilograms heavy skylight. With a snap of her fingers, the dirty water balls obediently flew outside. Song Ku lowered her head and smelled herself. Much better, at least not as foul as before. Thank you. It's me who should thank you for your help. I'm not good at fighting. Without you today, we might have suffered a loss, Zhao Yuqing's voice was also light. As an S-level awakener, Zhao Yuqing had pushed the ability to control water to its extreme. When water met a square, it had become square, and when it met round, it had become round. Versatile and inclusive of all things, but lacking the domineering attack of the metal element. Strictly speaking, Zhao Yuqing's ability leaned more towards a mixed element. Ice arrows were her only effective means of attack, so she usually played the roles of control, flank, and support. Before, Lei Zhao was her partner in fighting side by side. However, circumstances had changed, and they now stood on opposite sides. Song Ku and Zhao Yuqing's abilities were similar in terms of transformation, and the two exchanged some insights and experiences, learning from each other. After they finished speaking, Yin Xiao poked Song Ku's shoulder with his finger. Captain Song Ku, done chatting. Is it my turn now? What? Yin Xiao sat cross-legged in front of Song Ku, his abdominal wound hastily bandaged. His eyes, tinged with a deep gray, stared intently at her. Why didn't you tell me when you came to the base? Uh, Zhuang Qinyan didn't allow her to say. And why didn't you tell me about being S-level? It's a long story. Also Zhuang Qinyan didn't allow her to say. If I hadn't heard about the new S-level with the same name at the base, I would still be in the dark. Yin Xiao moved forward, his knee touching Song Ku's shin, relentlessly asking, during the throne race, I thought we had a camaraderie of fighting side by side, at least we were friends. Did you plan from the beginning to make me do the dirty work? Of course not. Song Ku hurriedly defended. Then why didn't you tell me? Were you planning to take advantage of me? 
Yin Zhao's words became more and more absurd. Don't, don't talk nonsense, Song Ku warned him, holding her fist. Yin Xiao narrowed his eyes slowly, could it be because I confessed to you, you deliberately avoided me? Zhao Yuqing had a surprised expression, as if she had just tasted a delicious melon. You. Members of the Tustin team whistled, enjoying the spectacle. In the rear compartment, except for Tustin, other awakeners whispered to each other, Damn, Yin Xiao is really bold. He dares to pursue an S7. Isn't he afraid of getting his head blown off? I misunderstood Yin Xiao. He's simply a role model for our generation, the wildest wolf in the northern base. Song Ku didn't forget the purpose of her trip, facing the constant teasing. She calmly said, First, bring me into the channel. Without a second word, Yin Xiao lightly touched the ruby earring, pulling her into the channel of the B10 District High Level Ability Matching Conference. Song Ku then realized that the earring was his terminal, quite in line with Yin Zhao's personality, flashy and arrogant. After confirming the channel name several times, she spoke with emphasis, focus on your work, don't think about it. There's no chance between us. Yin Xiao, dissatisfied, asked three times in a row, why no chance? Why reject me? Because of that guy in the wheelchair. Yin Xiao, dissatisfied, flexed his fist, he's sick, what makes him better than me? Yin Xiao, dissatisfied, rubbed his hands, why is the coward not here today? Let me compare with him. Or is it that you just like someone like him? Yin Xiao hesitated for a second, then disdainfully sneered, but his face isn't even his own, he stole it from Vincent. Seeing him becoming more and more uncontrollable, Song Ku didn't care about the details. Her only thought was to shut Yin Xiao up. Yes. I just like him. Yin Xiao indeed shut up. He is my person. Don't mention the matter of his face again. Song Ku lied with her eyes wide open, also, he's physically weak. In the future, don't bully him when you meet him. Bully him? Yin Xiao incredulously asked, covering his abdominal wound, feeling a chill in his heart. He was so angry that every part of his body hurt. When he turned his head, countless pairs of prying eyes in the rear compartment were staring at him without blinking. What are you looking at? Yin Xiao roared, are you all happy to see me rejected? The awakeners on the scene quickly averted their eyes, afraid to breathe loudly. Damn, witnessing Yin Zhao's failed confession, they won't be silenced, right? The flying ship, traveling at a steady speed, brought a group of people back to the northern base, and the time was nearing midnight. After bidding farewell to Lu Xiaoyu at the elevator entrance, Song Ku took off her shoes, carefully held them in her hands, and tiptoed towards the bathroom. To her surprise, even at this late hour, there was someone inside. The warm yellow light cast a hazy shadow, and the sound of the shower head echoed. Through the steamed frosted glass, a tall figure was faintly visible taking a shower. Song Ku silently turned around, preparing to exit silently. But it was too late. The water abruptly stopped, followed by a click the bathroom door opened from the inside. Back. Ah. Song Ku's back stiffened, and she dared not turn her head. Did you settle it? Settled. A low, faint laugh sounded, what are you hiding for? Turn around and talk. Song Ku turned around clumsily, and Zhuang Qinyan pushed his wet hair back behind his head. His features were clear and handsome, with deep and charming eyes. He was dripping wet from head to toe, only wearing a towel around his waist, revealing well-defined abdominal muscles and a narrow mermaid line. Zhuang Qinyan casually wiped himself with a towel and asked, Do you need the bathroom? It's fine. I don't need it. Perhaps due to the steam, Song Ku's cheeks felt like they were burning, and her heart pounded uncontrollably. Zhuang Qinyan took a step forward, his imposing body slowly lowering, his hand supporting the sink, enclosing Song Ku in his arms. There's only one bathroom. You don't need this. His expression suddenly froze, and he delicately lifted a strand of Song Ku's hair, sniffing it, what's this smell? Immediately, Zhuang Qinyan's face changed dramatically as he realized something. He kept stepping back, repeatedly retreating, did you roll in the zombie pile again? Song Ku, what kind of nose is this? 
it's even more sensitive than Taudao's. She had been outside in the wind for half an hour. Zhuang Qinyan furrowed his brows tightly, endured for a moment, endured again, couldn't hold it any longer, and began to meticulously wash his hands. Song Ku, I'm very angry. The romantic atmosphere dissipated instantly. Song Ku's face puffed up like a bun. She walked over arrogantly, deliberately bumped into Zhuang Qinyan's shoulder, then rubbed her head against him a couple of times, pushing him out of the bathroom, closing the door, and locking it. There's only one bathroom anyway. If it's going to smell, let's both suffer. The next morning, Yi Zimei, accompanied by Song Ku and Zhuang Qinyan, went to Central Antique Street. Central Antique Street was a street reconstructed in the style of an old civilization, with a variety of antique shops, specialty restaurants, fortune-telling stalls, and rows of yellow taxis on both sides of the road. Normally, it was bustling with people, and the residents were ordinary people with District B household registration. The three of them meandered through the winding streets until they almost reached the end. The continuous noise finally quieted down, revealing a large and tranquil three-story villa area in front of them. After confirming the house number, Yi Zimei spoke to the visitor system, Hello, I'm Yi Zimei from the Awakener Department. I'd like to visit Mr. and Mrs. Ming Gang. She scanned her ID in front of the camera. The mechanical electronic tone sounded flatly, verification in progress, please wait. Ten minutes later, the gate opened automatically with the owner's permission, please come in. The three of them climbed the stairs and passed through a quiet little garden. When they reached the living room, a couple was already sitting there. Perhaps well maintained, the two of them looked like they were in their early fifties. Lucia had a bun on her head, wearing traditional Chinese clothing, elegant and dignified. Ming Gang wore glasses, and numerous holographic screens floated around him, displaying dense papers and academic reports. Seeing Yi Zimei and the others entering, Ming Gang put down the paper he was correcting, raised his head, and with a mature and wise look, he scrutinized the three of them. I don't recall the Ming family having any dealings with the Awakener Department. They were an ordinary couple, immigrants from early years, leading a secluded life. Minimally affected by the apocalypse, they usually didn't interact with Awakeners. Ming Gang had a serious and reserved face with graying hair. When he looked at people, there was a unique sense of scrutiny typical of intellectuals. Song Ku, pushing the wheelchair, was momentarily stunned. She was certain she had never seen Ming Gang before, but somehow he seemed somewhat familiar. This feeling arose for no apparent reason and was quickly pushed aside. Yi Zimei respectfully said, Professor Ming, sorry to disturb you. At the request of someone, a gentleman wishes to meet you. Lucia politely added, Miss Yi, please leave we don't entertain visitors. Zhuang Qinyan wheeled forward, nodding politely to the two of them, Senior, I'm Zhuang Qinyan, a colleague of Ming Ji. We used to work in the same project group at the Qinglan Research Institute. Upon hearing Ming Ji's name, Ming Gang and Lu Chia's faces flashed a slight surprise, but they didn't utter any words to ask them to leave. You go ahead and chat. I'll wait outside, Yi Zimei tactfully withdrew. Since guests were being retained, proper hospitality was necessary. Lucia raised her hand, and immediately a robot butler pushed a tea cart, took out delicate tea sets and snacks, skillfully brewed tea, and served it one by one to everyone. Taking a sip of the hot tea, Lucia's voice carried an indescribable nostalgia, it's been a long time since I heard Xiao Ji's name. You're his colleague. Coming here to see us, is there something on your mind? Zhuang Qinyan, keeping an eye on Yi Zimei's departing figure, got straight to the point, do you two know Ming Ji's current whereabouts? Song Ku's eyes widened slightly, her face showing surprise. Wasn't that too direct? No buffering at all. But what Zhuang Qinyan wanted was a lack of buffering. Subconscious reactions are challenging to hide, even for an outstanding psychologist like them. He focused intently on the two, not missing any subtle expressions. Ming Gang showed a momentary surprise, followed by a displeased look. Lucia's grip on the tea cup paused imperceptibly, but she quickly recovered. Zhuang Qinyan's mouth slowly curved into a smile, a hint of understanding crossing his mind. It seems like this trip was the right choice. 
Ming Dang's tone was direct and sharp, Ming Ji has been dead for a full fourteen years, blown to pieces in Lok by the explosion. The news of his death was personally sent to us by Qin Lan. As his colleague, shouldn't you be aware? What's the meaning of bringing up these things now? Are you deliberately trying to provoke us? Ming Gang's chest heaved, and his breathing became rapid. Professor Ming, please calm down. Initially, I also thought Ming Ji had perished, Zhuang Qinyan remained calm and explained slowly, but due to some coincidences, I encountered another surviving member of the project group. She witnessed it herself Ming Ji did not die. According to the witness's account, before the accident occurred, Ming Ji left the research institute alone, Zhuang Qinyan's expression gradually turned colder, and, he took away an important experimental subject. Impossible. Ming Ji would never do such a thing. Ming Gang erupted in anger, he is already dead, you can't slander him. Lucia almost lost her grip on the teacup, and a few drops of hot tea splashed out, could there be a mistake Xiao Ji is an honest and upright child. Stealing an experimental subject would constitute a crime, and he wouldn't do that. The tea used for hospitality by Lucia emitted a fragrant aroma, making Song Ku salivate. Taking advantage of the distraction in the conversation, she stealthily reached out, grabbed a tray, and attempted to taste a bite. This matter is indeed unbelievable, so I brought the witness from back then, Zhuang Qinyan sighed slightly, taking out a holographic screen from his bag, if you two don't believe it, you can confront her face to face. Witness In the spacious living room, besides them, there was only one person left. Ming Gang and Lucia both looked at Song Ku simultaneously one with a stern gaze, the other with displeasure. Ming Gang slammed the table suddenly, the powerful force knocking over the tea cup, and the golden tea spilled all over the table. Pointing at Song Ku, he exclaimed, Are you the witness? Fourteen years ago, you were so young. Why would you slander Ming Ji? Song Ku stuttered, Huh? Chapter 182 it said pain to me. At a critical moment, Zhuang Qinyan cleared his throat twice, saving the innocent Song Ku who was wrongly accused. Professor Ming, she is the witness. At the right moment, the holographic projection cut in on the screen, and a woman in a researcher's white robe appeared in front of the three, it was Lin Xiu. Perhaps Zhuang Qinyan had instructed her beforehand, Lin Xiu was not as eccentric today. She sat upright, with a serious expression. Fourteen years ago, Ming and I were both researchers in the G team of the Fire Seed Project. At that time, Ming Ji was a cultivator, and I was a recorder. The day before the accident Lin Xiu narrated in a calm voice. Ming Gang and Lucia listened attentively. Song Ku, feeling down for not having tea, suddenly saw a cup of hot tea appear in front of him Zhuang Qinyan discreetly pushed it towards her. She picked up the tea cup, sipped it happily, and squinted his eyes with enjoyment. Lucia, seeing the pitiful look on the girl, turned her head and had the robot brew another large pot of tea, placing it in front of her on purpose. After Lin Xiu finished speaking, the living room fell silent for a long time. You didn't lie. After a while, Ming Gang asked coldly. Lin Xiu looked up, meeting Ming Gang's gaze. Her sharp eyes were full of scrutiny, as if she could see through any lies in her heart. No, Lin Xiu shook her head firmly. How can you be sure you haven't been subjected to hypnosis or psychological manipulation by others? What if you are just fabricating facts based on your imagination? Ming Gang questioned with a cold tone. Lin Xiu sighed softly, Professor Ming, I have died once. What you are seeing now is my backup memory. Even I never thought I could revive, and I don't think anyone would go to great lengths to tamper with my memory. So, I am very clear-headed now and speaking the truth. Ming Ji is not only my colleague but also a friend. I, like you, want to know why he did this. In the long silence, even the air seemed heavy. Ming Gang slowly took off his glasses, rubbed his temples wearily, tears shimmering in the corners of his eyes. He was an upright and serious person, and the sudden revelation of his child's crime shook him, making it difficult for him to accept. This question, forgive me for not being able to answer. My son, Ming Ji, was intelligent and outstanding. 
He obtained his PhD at the age of 20 and was selected to join Qinglan, a one-in-a-million opportunity. After he started working, due to the confidential nature of his work, our contact gradually diminished. However, every time we spoke, his mental state was stable. No matter what he did, he's no longer here. Professor Ming, allow me to correct you, Zhuang Qingyan interjected, Ming Ji did not perish. He took the experimental subject with him, and it's highly likely that he is still alive. I need to know his whereabouts. Why, if he's alive, hasn't he come to see us? For a whole fourteen years, we haven't moved, and he couldn't bear to come back even once. Ming Gang asked with pain and frustration. What about Professor Lucia? Zhuang Qingyan suddenly changed the subject, I think you know where Ming Ji is, don't you? As soon as these words were spoken, everyone was shocked. Even Ming Gang looked at his wife beside him in speechless astonishment. Lucia put down her teacup and sighed, Before you entered, I always thought my child was dead. How could I know? Zhuang Qingyan spoke seriously, Senior colleagues, I have no ill intentions towards Ming Ji himself. However, the Fire Seed Project is the Alliance's highest level classified project. From Qinglan's perspective, that experimental subject must be traced back. Ming Gang and Lucia were not naive people. Upon hearing this, they both fell into silence. In your eyes, what kind of person is Ming Ji? Zhuang Qinyan looked at Lucia and gently asked, What do you think his motive was for taking the experimental subject? Lucia didn't like being manipulated in a conversation. She calmly glanced at Zhuang Qinyan and then turned her head. Child, do you like tea? She suddenly asked, changing the topic. Ha! Huh. Song Ku held the tea cup in her hands, enjoying it with her eyes closed. Not understanding why the topic shifted to her, she stammered, Why yes, I like it. Few people drink tea nowadays, Lucia smiled affectionately. Tea was a unique cultural symbol of the old era. Tea trees were precious and hard to cultivate, and tea production was scarce. Gradually, it was phased out in the tide of development. My grandfather also liked tea, but not the kind you brew. Yours is delicious, Song Ku said earnestly. This is my self-created health tea, with a mix of small soup golden chrysanthemum, yunshan pur, dried dandelion, and a little bit of rock sugar. Xiao Ji also loved drinking the tea I brewed for him. Zhuang Qinyan did not urge, patiently waiting in silence. Lucia seemed to be lost in distant memories. When Xiao Ji was young, he loved small animals. He would always bring back stray kittens or puppies, looking at me with eager eyes, asking, Mom, can I keep them? I'd say, sure, and he would be so happy. But his luck was often not good those little things would die one after another due to fragility and illness, and Xiao Ji would cry heartbreakingly. Later, he stopped keeping anything, saying he needed to focus on studying and find a way to make those little beings live longer. On the day he officially started working, he smiled and said to me, Mom, I'm going to raise something again. This time, they won't die for sure. Sometimes, I wish he wasn't so kind, sensitive it wouldn't hurt for him to be a bit indifferent to the world. Lucia wiped away the tears from the corners of her eyes and sighed softly. Zhuang Qinyan lowered his voice, so you have seen him, right? After the accident, you saw Ming Ji. Ming Gang's face showed astonishment. Lucia, you. I haven't seen him. I'm not sure if it was him, Lucia denied. After the news of Xiao Ji's death came, I fell seriously ill, almost bedridden. On the anniversary of our marriage the following year, there was a bouquet of longevity flowers at our doorstep, with an unclear signature. I asked the delivery person it was an anonymous sender, and the address was encrypted, untraceable. Lucia held Ming Gang's hand, your heart wasn't well those years I was afraid you'd worry, so I didn't tell you. Ming Gang tightened his grip, it's okay, it doesn't matter. I know now. On the same day the next year, the same longevity flowers. Then the third year, the fourth year I never knew who sent the flowers. Until one year, the bouquet didn't appear. I waited for a year, still nothing. Year after year, I gradually realized that the person who sent the flowers might not be there anymore. Zhuang Qinyan asked calmly, 
from which year did the flowers stop? Lucia thought for a moment, in the year forty of the new calendar. Her tone then softened, child, I know Xiao Zhi made a mistake, but as a mother, I believe he had his reasons. Rest assured, both of you. Finding Ming Zhi and bringing back the experimental subject is my personal will. This matter will not be made public, Zhuang Qinyan solemnly promised. After leaving the Ming residence, Lin Xiu couldn't help but ask in a hushed tone, Professor Zhu, Brother Yen, was that person who sent flowers Ming Zhi? Zhuang Qinyan strictly prohibited her from calling him Vincent or Professor Zhuang. In the end, Lin Xiu could only timidly address him as Brother Yen. Most likely, he replied. So, Ming Zhi, if he's still alive, wouldn't he continue sending flowers to his parents? Not necessarily. Go back and try see if this virtual address can dig up anything. In the end, Lucia gave Zhuang Qinyan the information about the flower sender. With Lu Xiaoyu around, they could always find some clues. Lin Xiu murmured to herself, My feelings are complicated now. If Ming Ji didn't take the experimental subject, he might have been blown up with me. But he ran away, escaped the accident. From a professional ethics standpoint, I strongly condemn him. But deep down, I feel it's good that he survived. Brother Yen, Brother Yen, tell me, when Ming Ji ran away, why did he take the experimental subject? Why didn't he take the one scheduled for destruction, LAK 0117 and LAK 0366, and specifically chose LAK 0017? Lin Xiu chattered away in terms of psychological age, she was just a 23 year old girl. Ming Ji was a cultivator, Zhuang Qinyan said. Lin Xiu nodded, oh, right, right. Do you know what specific experiments the Fire Seed Project conducts? Not very clear. As a recorder, Lin Xiu had the lowest level of access. She was not a core member of the Fire Seed Project, but she had heard bits and pieces, some of which involved brutal genetic experiments. Ming Ji knew, Zhuang Qinyan said casually. Cultivators have the authority to participate in some gene fusion experiments. According to what Lucia said, Ming Ji was a person with extremely strong empathy. What if, like with little cats and dogs, he felt sympathy for LAK 0017? But that's that's an experimental subject. Lin Xiu exclaimed. Experimental subjects were consciousless, thoughtless, artificially created alien organisms how could they be compared to little cats and dogs? Lin Xiu was at a loss for words. She suddenly remembered a time during lunch break when the handsome young man was standing alone in the corridor, lost in thought. At that moment, Lin Xiu lightly patted his shoulder, Hey, why are you hiding here slacking off? Ming Ji turned his head, and Lin Xiu only then noticed that his eyes were slightly red. What's wrong with you? She asked. Following Ming Ji's gaze, Lin Xiu looked into the empty laboratory. The observation chamber door was tightly closed and there was nothing unusual. It today, it said pain, to me, Ming Ji's voice was barely audible. Who? Lin Xiu inquired. Um, you know, what the fire seed is? Ming Ji asked. The fire seed is hope, the hope of all humanity. Yeah the hope of all humanity, but not its own. For the fire seed itself, burning over and over again, reduced to ashes, it clearly has always been in despair. At that time, Lin Xiu didn't understand the meaning of these words, but now, looking at Zhuang Qinyan's statue-like profile, she fell into a long silence. Before reuniting with Yi Zimei, Lin Xiu retreated into the holographic screen. The three of them traversed the medieval street again, heading towards where the floating car was parked. On the way, Song Ke's terminal rang. She stopped and took a look. The message was from the official channel of the Awakener Department, filled with lengthy bureaucratic language praising her excellence. After condensing the message, it requested her to undergo further genetic testing as she was a rare S7 level awakener. They wanted her to provide some indicators for record keeping, contributing to more accurate awakener detection in the future, and so on. Song Ko read through it twice, still unsure about the true intention of the awakener department. She decided to discuss it with Zhuang Qinyan. Ah! Suddenly, a horrified scream erupted at the street intersection ahead, 
catching Song Ku's attention. She abruptly looked up. A double-decker public bus went out of control, careening wildly towards them. The rear of the bus shattered the glass of the nearby shops. Pedestrians who couldn't evade in time were rolled over by the wheels. In the driver's cabin, the driver convulsed with an unnatural expression, pupils covered by a layer of dead white shadow. It's a zombie. The apocalypse was still ongoing. Radiation was everywhere, and with its continuous accumulation in the body, ordinary people exposed to sunlight were highly likely to lose their sanity one day, turning into flesh-eating monsters. The previous message was overridden, and a new task appeared on the terminal, Sea Level Emergency Commission exclusive to District B-10, zombie suicide attack incident reported in the medieval street. Please eliminate the source promptly, protect civilians at the scene, and contain the situation as quickly as possible. Surrounding awakeners rushed forward, attempting to intercept the zombie driver of the careening double-decker bus. However, the swaying bus drifted around the corner and collided head-on with a floating subway train that was traveling at high speed and was more than ten sections long. The several thousand-ton car soared high into the air. In that moment of mass acceleration, a catastrophic explosion ensued. Yi Zimei dashed forward and suddenly acted. An invisible psychic wave, like a stop button, froze both the double-decker bus and the floating subway train in mid-air. Passengers inside the two vehicles had terrified expressions, their eyes rolling, mouths opening and closing as if in slow-motion playback, screaming in silence. She turned out to be a gravity-type awakener. However, relying solely on her power was not enough to counteract the force. In a matter of seconds, cracks began to appear under Yi Zime's feet, and she was pushed backward by the tremendous force, appearing as though she would stumble and fall. The floating subway train teetered, and from the sky, it came crashing down at high speed. Unfortunately, Zhuang Qinyan happened to be directly under the front of the train. Even if he stood up and ran frantically, it would be challenging to escape the area in an instant. Zhuang Qinyan's wheelchair swiveled abruptly but was unexpectedly bumped by the chaotic crowd around him. His glasses with golden rims flew off and rolled on the ground. Bang! Just at that moment, a slender figure shot out like an arrow. Both hands emitted a blue light, and instantly covered with metallic knuckle dusters, fiercely intercepting the plummeting floating subway train midair. Boom! Boom! With the gravitational support from Yi Zime, Song Ku hammered the front of the train, each strike creating a powerful and domineering force. Yet, her posture remained very relaxed, as if she were not smashing a few thousand tons of scrap metal but merely tossing around a sandbag. Under the formidable reactive force, the floating subway train was forcefully pushed back, coiling like a snake with its tail raised, slowly collapsing to the ground. Song Ku leaped onto the roof, grabbing the floating double-decker bus with one hand, and with a powerful mid-air shoulder throw, slammed it together with the subway train. Crash! The smoke and debris scattered in all directions, and a tragedy that almost destroyed the ancient street was effortlessly resolved by Song Ku. Next, Song Ku shattered the driver's seat glass, pulled out the convulsing zombie driver, and with a snap, broke his neck. The bustling market street fell into silence. Whether they were awakeners or ordinary citizens, everyone stared in astonishment at the savior who descended from the sky. Song Ku turned back, and Yi Zime excitedly gave her a thumbs up. In the midst of all eyes, Song Ku bent down to search on the ground, picked up the golden-rimmed glasses that had fallen in the chaos, wiped them clean with the edge of her clothes, and then walked back to Zhuang Qinyan. She bent down to help him put on the glasses. Two tiny dimples appeared on her cheeks, and she smiled as if seeking praise, was Captain impressive? Zhuang Qinyan graciously played along, of course, very impressive. Our captain is the best. This family cough cough, V587 can't do without you. Song Ku was flattered by his sweet words, and with great enthusiasm, she declared, when we get back, let's take on some missions and climb the rankings. Captain will be aiming for the top. As for the message from the Awakener Department it had long been tossed aside by her. The news of an S7-level powerful attacker appearing at the northern base quickly spread. The first to react was Takushima. Videos of Song Ku saving people, stopping the bus, 
and beating up Lei Zhao and Yuko Nagima were laid out on the conference table of the B-15 district's high-level meeting. Let's hear everyone's thoughts. So far, she's the first publicly known S-7 level in the entire alliance. Both her reaction speed and explosive power are top-notch. But I have a question, if the information is correct, she's a powerful attack type, right? But her physical abilities are unusually off the charts. She single-handedly caught a subway weighing several thousand tons, almost comparable to the strength of an S-level physical enhancement type awakener. Can we get a report on her awakened abilities? It's quite difficult. Reports on S-level awakeners are well hidden by that old witch. Send a spy to try. Also, I heard she came from a lower level district and doesn't have much attachment to the northern base. It's best to recruit her. Yes. District A1, Central Court. The reporter in front of the projection was systematically analyzing the top awakener resources in each district. The overall number of Awakeners is showing a steady increased resource distribution in each district is uneven. Currently, the highest ranked is the S7 level Awakener from B10, more than based the scene of Song Ku punching the floating subway and kicking the double-decker bus flashed across the screen. Stop. The official sitting below suddenly spoke. Director Park, do you have any instructions? The reporter asked nervously. Park J. Wu, rubbing his chin, began to contemplate. This awakener looks very familiar. He gradually revealed a realization. Oh, isn't this the one from the time when Bloody Hunter Punk was killed in Moose City? The owner of that rabid dog, who still acts like he has rabies, is now chasing him down, insisting that he hand over the footage from that time. I want to have a conversation with the person in charge of District B-10, Park J. Wu instructed. Is it General Yi? The secretary beside him instinctively asked. Park J. Wu smiled faintly without answering. The secretary realized and said, All right, I'll contact Commander He right away. Chapter 183 V587 escorts you. With a deadline of one month, as long as the ranking is not in the last 1%, one can stay though this applies to ordinary teams. V587, as a lively, free spirited, united, and friendly rising star team, not only had the wise leadership of an S-level captain but also the strong support of four A-level backbone members and two talented and mysterious family members. Their goal was to charge to the front row. However, before being the wise leader of the team, Song Ku had to settle some debts. For example owing Lu Xiaoyu 270 grams. Lu Xiaoyu had set his sights on a rhenium block with a purity of over 90% in the black market, and because it was a rare item, it was currently being publicly auctioned online. Bidders needed not only substantial financial resources but also exceptional speed. Song Ku crouched beside him, reluctantly clutching her money pouch. It was the first time she had seen Lu Xiaoyu so busy. Six mechanical arms simultaneously controlled six screens displaying densely refreshing data. Lu Xiaoyu was constantly tapping on the terminal with a clattering sound. According to Lu Xiaoyu himself, he had implanted an automatic bidding system in the background, capable of jumping thousands of times in a minute. In the ultra-high definition projection, the auctioneer eloquently introduced the item. Song Ku paid no attention to what he was saying, staring intently at the large screen with continuously jumping numbers, 1 million, 2 million, 3 million. Ding the golden auction hammer finally fell. How is it? Song Ku asked nervously. We got it, Lu Xiaoyu proudly replied, lifting his chin. His silver hair tips brushed against his neck, and a unique light called happiness flashed in his distinctive pupils. Pay up, Captain. Song Ku glanced at the final bid on the big screen, her voice trembling, Lu Xiaoyu, do we, do we really have to buy it? Lu Xiaoyu's wheelchair swooshed to the front of Song Ku, staring at her without blinking. Zhuang Qingyan said you would buy it for me. There was an irresistible focus in his gaze, like a stubborn child pestering an adult for candy. If you didn't buy it for him, he would keep nagging, seizing every opportunity to ask for it. Song Ku took a glance at his empty pants leg. Besides mechanical parts, Lu Xiaoyu never actively asked for anything. If he wanted a new and fancy leg, what else could she do as his team captain? She gritted her teeth, 
buy it. Song Ku, with a righteous demeanor, pulled out her terminal and swiped it. The deduction prompt sounded, you have spent 3,300,000 alliance coins from your account ending in XX. Not 330 alliance coins. For such a tiny amount. This wasn't a rhenium block it was clearly a gold-devouring beast. Not only was her money pouch emptied, but a part of Song Ku's soul also seemed to be hollowed out in a trance. Lu Xiaoyu enthusiastically started purchasing new parts, his joy being so simple and unpretentious that a mere three. Song Ku rested her chin on the bar, wearing a look of despair. Zhuang Qinyan passed by and casually asked, How much did you spend? Song Ku slowly raised the terminal to show him. Hmm, it's about the same as what I calculated, Zhuang Qinyan commented. Song Ku suddenly realized no wonder Zhuang Qinyan insisted on only buying 270 grams for him. Even a substantial family fortune couldn't withstand Lu Xiaoyu's extravagant spending. Zhuang Qinyan leaned in close and whispered in her ear, I won't let you suffer a loss. This is called casting a long line to catch big fish. Give him a little sweetener, and later, I'll help you recover the cost with interest. She sneakily glanced at Lu Xiaoyu, silently lighting a candle for him in her heart. Why does he have a friend like Zhuang Qinyan? It's really an unfortunate choice of friends, too pitiful. The next day, Lu Xiaoyu spent the whole day in his room, busy working on the new arm. Among the six mechanical arms, one was noticeably different, with a silver-white appearance similar to a starship, polished to a dazzling shine. Other than being good-looking, is there any other difference with this one? Fang Jishu asked with a curious expression. Lu Xiaoyu's rhenium arm flew out with a swoosh, touching the terminals of Fang Jishu, Su Cha, and Lin Yuyu in turn. Then, magically, the browsing records from the previous night appeared before everyone. Fang Jishu repeatedly watched some precious old photos and videos, all related to him, Zhang Wanyao, and Tian Tian. Su Cha was diligently studying the public lessons of the Alliance Combat Master, information he didn't have access to back in Ferrara. As for Lin Yuyu she was chatting with Jennifer. To win the favor of the beautiful woman, Jennifer, without any hesitation, spilled the beans about her daddy, Yin Shao, confessing and failing miserably. The two of them were enjoying the gossip to the fullest. Lin Yuyu supported her forehead, gritting her teeth, and muttered, Lu Xiaoyu, leave some privacy for people. She glanced at Su Cha, who was diligently studying even before going to sleep, feeling inexplicably guilty. After Lu Xiaoyu showcased the new features, he finally answered Fang Jishu's question, Rhenium has a hexagonal close-packed crystal structure, outstanding mechanical properties, and, when made into an alloy, it can become a superconductor. By combining my ability with the mechanical arm, it now functions as a powerful hacking interface, capable of connecting to any machine with basic computing capabilities. Any machine. Even a starship. Zhuang Qinyan suddenly spoke up. Everyone paused, wondering what he meant. The latest model of starships in District B, can it connect to them? Zhuang Qinyan asked again. Their current missions were limited to the vicinity of the northern base due to transportation and time constraints. If they could switch to the fastest District B starship, it would save a lot of travel time and expand their mission choices. No way. Are you planning to steal a starship? Lin Yuyu exclaimed. Wasn't that too audacious? They had just arrived at the northern base, and now they were making such a big move. How can you call it stealing? We're borrowing it we'll return it. Zhuang Qinyan corrected. V587, shameless, so shameless. Northern base, the busy starship station. A newly maintained and pristine starship slowly emerged from the energy column, gliding smoothly on the track, about to enter the station to pick up passengers. A group of seven people wearing masks and hats passed by. Men and women, old and young, two young men were in wheelchairs, a girl held a skipping child's hand, appearing as if they were joyfully heading out for an excursion. As they passed the starship not yet carrying passengers, a silver-white mechanical arm suddenly appeared in the air. It touched the charging port briefly, and the control panel inside the starship flickered for a second, silently changing its original route and switching to high-orbit mode, heading towards an empty platform. 
At the same time, the station's floating screen automatically issued an error alert, C-1011 train detected a malfunction, signal lost. A silver-haired young man slightly tilted his head upward, his ice-blue eyes sparkling with scattered light as the flowing data invaded the panel. Half a second later, the floating screen automatically corrected the information, malfunction cleared, today's weather, clear. The starship's cabin door opened, and the seven individuals who had just passed by walked in without any concern, disappearing into the sky after a moment. It was like any other calm and peaceful morning. Except for the passengers waiting on the original platform, looking utterly bewildered, where was their car? They bought tickets, so why was the car gone? Yin Xiao pulled Song Ku into a channel with a somewhat peculiar name. Although the name was odd, the quality of the tasks inside was indeed much higher than the ones pushed by the system. Moreover, they quickly received a mission they desired. A level commission urgent, in District C-27, a large-scale zombie tide has occurred. Detected zombie quantities are as follows, third level zombies XX, second level zombies XX, and mutant zombies XX. Nearby awakeners are requested to immediately provide support. Depending on the number of zombies killed, different amounts of points and alliance coins rewards can be obtained. Killing zombies, this was undoubtedly their specialty as V587. Four engines simultaneously spewed out streams of air, and the silver meteor flashed across the sky. Chapter, 184 V587 escorts you. Rainbow Mist was a typical karst landscape, with the central city located at the summit of a plateau surrounded by undulating green terraces. However, at this moment, a multitude of zombies had piled up in layers, crawling upward. In this critical situation, numerous awakeners rushed from all directions, joining the battlefield one after another. Although this wave of zombie tide was formidable, fortunately, there was no commander, making it incomparable to the zombie king encounter that Song Ku and the others had experienced. The starship's cabin door opened, and in the brisk morning wind, V-587 arrived above the battlefield. Song Ku and Su Cha, the two melee fighters, descended low into the center of the most densely packed powered zombies, slashing through them like a whirlwind. Lin Yu Yu promptly applied buffs, boosting the speed and strength of the two. With death scythe like spiritual weapons in their hands, they rapidly harvested zombies. Su Xing, with his victory headband on, performed movements resembling radio calisthenics. As he raised his arms and kicked his legs, countless ice blades swept through the air, accurately piercing through the zombies' heads. His efficiency in killing monsters was the highest among them. Lu Xiaoyu controlled one of the mechanical arms to move the starship and brought out a heavy machine gun purchased from the black market, firing alongside Zhuang Qinyan in the high sky. In a section of the monster group, Song Ku occupied a small high ground. As she looked down at the densely packed living dead below, she raised her hand slightly. Just as she was about to take action, her terminal suddenly beeped. Song Ku dismissed it, but the other party switched to voice bombardment. Song Ku lightly clicked her tongue can't they see she's busy. Glancing at the sender, it was another official message from the Awakener Department. They had changed personnel several times in the past few days, harassing her daily and requesting her to undergo further examination. Annoyed, Song Ku added it to the blacklist and activated the Do Not Disturb mode, finally bringing peace to her terminal. Immediately afterward, her palm moved slightly, and a high-speed shooting longbow appeared. Su Cha, lend me some ability. Su Cha flipped over with one hand, gripped the bowstring, and unleashed his awakened energy. The ethereal blue surface of the bow instantly flashed a cold quenching green this was a newly developed attack method after the two of them dealt with the mutated moths in the U-Lab laboratory. Song Ku took a step back, pulled the bow, aimed, and released. Ding! The arrow shot through the head of a level 3 zombie. She pulled the bow again, another arrow, still a level 3 zombie. Arrow after arrow, each shot found its mark. Song Ku specifically targeted level 3 zombies, and under the powerful penetration and the dual impact of strong neurotoxins, even robust level 3 zombies instantly perished, without any chance of fighting back. In the terraced fields, Fang Zhishu carried a black mountaineering bag and, like a scout, swiftly followed Song Ku's shooting path. 
he ran to the fallen level 3 zombies, cleanly sliced open their skulls, and extracted crystals. It sounded absurd when spoken out loud why would the healer of V587 also join the battlefield? The reason given by others was, because of Fang Zhishu's unique physique and precise knife skills, he was entrusted with the most important task collecting crystals. Song Ko encouraged him with a pat on the shoulder, don't worry, I'll protect you. Su Xing grinned, Uncle Fang, you should exercise more. The Awakeners on the battlefield were stunned by their skillful maneuvers. Damn! Where did those people come from? They're targeting evolved zombies and mutant zombies specifically. Are they here to score points? Secretary Lee, I need to know all the information about this team within a minute. After resolving the crisis of the zombie tide in Rainbow Mist, V587 hastily headed to the next location. A level commission privately issued, escort mission, please ensure the safe return of Mr. Zhang and his family from the Yinkala shelter to be 13, Baishan. This kind of private mission was a rare and highly sought-after opportunity. The issuer needed to pay a considerable deposit on the mission platform and determine the mission's difficulty level. Although points could only be calculated based on the lowest limit after determining the level, the significant feature was the generous alliance coin reward. As for Mr. Zhang, whether he was naive with money and a beautiful soul or just wealthy and generous, he surprisingly posted an A-level mission. Zhuang Qinyan was right. Lu Xiaoyu, having tasted the sweetness, was indeed full of enthusiasm and managed to secure this rare mission using the newly upgraded cheats. At the entrance of the Yinkala shelter, Mr. Zhang paced anxiously. A group of awakeners wearing matching tactical suits approached him. Excuse me, are you Mr. Zhang, the client? A gentle female voice rang out. Mr. Zhang looked up in surprise, and the speaker was a delicate woman with flowing long hair. You are Mr. Zhang's expression showed doubt. Snap! Suddenly, the people in front of him stood at attention, loudly shouting a slogan. Thousands of miles away from home, the original heart remains unswayed, V587 assists you in setting sail for a distant journey. Su Xing excitedly recited his lines. Worry-free throughout the journey, thorough protection, V587 ensures your safe journey. Su Cha's sorrow is greater than death. V587, the most reliable guardian in the entire alliance, escorts your travels, Zhuang Qinyan summarized with a grin, hands resting on his stomach. Song Ku stood behind everyone, arms crossed, nodding in satisfaction. Indeed, these were the slogans she had thought hard about. Very good, very impressive. Mr. Zhang. These people were all flashy, but were they reliable? He explicitly requested at least two A-level awakeners. Which route are we taking back? Mr. Zhang tentatively asked. From the Yinkala shelter to Baishan, most cities along the way had already been destroyed. Therefore, Mr. Zhang's family didn't dare to travel alone. If this group couldn't provide a good solution, he would definitely complain to the platform. Respected money bag cough, client, your Dedeo special car is ready, Song Ku said with a straight face. Mr. Zhang looked in the direction she pointed, staring blankly for a moment. He saw a sparkling starship parked not far away. These people could actually get a starship. And it was the latest model from District B. Can starships be privately used? Mr. Zhang and his family boarded the starship with dreamy expressions. Even hours later, stepping onto the land of Baishan, they still couldn't believe it. This they arrived already. As night fell, the seven of them stayed in Baishan for the night. During that time, Zhuang Qinyan went out for a bit, and the next day, they resumed their journey to accumulate points. After three full days of continuous effort, V587's points surged significantly, currently ranking around 60%. Three days later, on a rare rest day. Northern base, garden apartments. At five in the morning, Song Ku's hair was messy as she got up dreamily to have a drink of water. Having received three A-level missions yesterday, everyone was as tired as Tao Tao. She closed her eyes and, in a state of unclear consciousness, groped her way back to the bedside. Accidentally kicking the trash can, she lowered her head and saw that it was full. Song Ku's eyes glazed over, 
and after two seconds of contemplation, she decided to go downstairs to take out the trash. Wearing pajamas and sleep pants, she had just walked out of the apartment door when someone called her name from behind. Song Ku. A man and a woman stood side by side under the trees, resembling each other. The woman looked her up and down, while the man glanced at her, taking out a terminal to check the recording. Song Ko felt that the two seemed a bit familiar and, after a while, slowly recalled that they were the S6 level twins, Ling Yen and Ling Yu. After Ling Yu called her, two more unfamiliar awakeners appeared behind her. The four of them inconspicuously blocked her way. Song Ko's gaze focused, and she instantly became clear-headed. Judging from the awakened energy released externally, these two were also S-level. Ling Yu sighed, you are really hard to find. Song Ko asked, what? Ling Yu pointed to her own dark circles and cursed in the Karyo Empire's common language. The position is constantly changing, and the entire alliance is in chaos. We've been staking out for three whole days, not even getting a wink of sleep. Stake out on me. Why? Song Ku was puzzled. We want to invite you to go somewhere. As soon as the words fell, Ling Yen and Ling Yu both acted simultaneously, instantly clearing all objects around Song Ku, including the trash bag in her hand. The next second, Song Ku found that all the radiation nearby had disappeared, similar to the situation she had encountered below the seventh floor of the death prison. Her awakened energy couldn't resonate, and she couldn't use her abilities. At the same time, her hands and feet were tightly restrained by an unknown force, and she couldn't make a sound. This was a restraining type ability. Territory type ability. Song Ku suddenly looked up it was the other two S-level individuals who had taken action. The twins captured Song Ku's arms from the left and right, effortlessly lifting her up. Song Ku's feet left the ground, and a question mark slowly appeared in her head. What were these people up to? A fight? It didn't seem like it. Sorry, sorry. Another A-level awakener rushed out, clasping his hands together and bowing repeatedly to Song Ku. We have no ill intentions. It's just a last resort. The awakener department tried to contact you, but you didn't respond to messages, didn't answer calls, and even blocked location tracking. Commander he gave a strict order today, no matter what, we must bring you back. Song Ku blinked slowly. Commander He Chiu Hong wanted to see her. If that's the case, why not just meet and talk? Why resort to physical actions right away? Sending four S-level individuals in such a big fuss was unnecessary. Really unnecessary. Also, could they let her change her clothes? A strong spatial fluctuation occurred, and the five individuals disappeared from the original location. Half an hour later, Xuan Qinyan lazily leaned against the door, knocking on Song Ku's room. Knock, knock, he announced, Captain, it's time to go. No one responded. He changed his posture, casually tidied his hair, and knocked twice again. Song Ku, don't think about staying in bed. Inside, it was quiet as if there was no one there. Xuan Qinyan furrowed his brow slightly, the careless expression on his face gradually disappearing. He twisted the doorknob open. I'm coming in. The bedroom was empty. Zhuang Qinyan took two quick steps, reaching out to touch the bed. The palm of his hand felt icy. His expression remained relatively calm, but his eyes revealed a storm. The awakened energy belonging to an S-level spread out like a dark cloud, a sign of an impending tempest. In the invisible space, a faint trace of not yet dissipated spatial ability lingered. Chapter, 185 Who kidnapped Song Ku? What? What the? Song Ku was kidnapped. Shouts, escalating in volume, echoed through the entire garden apartment building. Just after finishing packing up, getting ready to enjoy a day off, the entire V587 team was in a state of confusion. Su Xing, carrying a small yellow duck backpack, rushed into Song Ku's room, opened the curtains, opened the wardrobe, and even stubbornly bent over to look under the bed, sister. Our Song Kur, the dignified S7 level attack type awakener, undefeated in direct confrontations, you're saying she was kidnapped. Lin Yu Yu incredulously pinched her own cheek and, in passing, 
pinched Su Cha's thigh. She still doubted her ears, finding this whole thing unbelievable. No, are you too intentionally messing with us, you lovebirds? Where did Song Kur hide to slack off? Su Cha remained composed despite being pinched, instead gently pushing Lin Yuyu's back, indicating her to look at someone. Lin Yuyu raised her gaze and, upon seeing the expression on that person's face, instantly fell silent. Zhuang Qingyan's complexion could no longer be described as unpleasant. Leaning against the bar with one hand in his pocket, he held the terminal that Song Ku had left at the bedside. His long crow-like eyelashes hung low, lost in thought, silent to a somewhat eerie extent. Zhuang Qingyan, to put it nicely, had a naturally large heart, showing no emotions of joy or anger. To be blunt, he was cold-hearted and cold-lunched, with a detached demeanor. Due to his high intelligence, he lacked interest in almost everything, and his true thoughts were impossible to fathom. While others joined V587 due to being lonely and wandering with nowhere to go or having unfulfilled wishes, Zhuang Qinyan was the first to meet Song Ku. Since their first encounter, he had been in a wheelchair due to a leg injury, and he was the only person without a goal. No one knew what he was thinking or what he intended to do. This was the first time Lin Yuyu saw Zhuang Qinyan in a state of rage, and yes rage. Even though he remained silent now, with a calm and pale expression, everyone could feel the terrifying pressure emanating from him. It was a level of suppression belonging to the S level, amplified by his awakened psychic abilities, easily inducing a chilling sense of tremor. Like a precarious live volcano, the calmer he appeared now, the more shocking his eruption would be. The surveillance footage has been retrieved, Lu Xiaoyu said. A clear image appeared on the projection, and everyone quickly shifted their gaze. At five in the morning, Song Ku, wearing pajamas and sleep pants, holding a garbage bag, yawned and walked out, kicking and stepping along the way. After leaving the apartment gate, she turned into a shaded area of trees and never came out again. Fixed point camera, conveniently in a blind spot of the surveillance. Lu Xiaoyu enlarged the footage, rotated the angle, but the situation under the tree shade couldn't be captured. He switched to other cameras in the community, patrolling one by one. Half an hour passed since Song Ku disappeared, and apart from a few regularly entering and exiting AI property personnel, there were no other suspicious figures. This made the kidnapping case even more puzzling. Without any movement, a person disappeared into thin air. Su Cha said coldly, the other party scouted in advance, came prepared. Zhuang Qingyan's hoarse voice sounded, she didn't resist immediately, indicating that the intruder is not a stranger. Everyone was stunned. You mean, Song Ku knows the kidnapper? Lin Yuyu whispered. Not necessarily familiar, but at least they've met, confirming that the other party is not an adversary. If the kidnapper was a stranger and showed malice, given Song Ku's vigilance, she wouldn't sit idly but would immediately counterattack. In that case, the degree of commotion in the apartment would have been impossible for others to miss. Zhuang Qinyan tightened his fingertips. To silently take her away, the culprit must be an awakener, and probably of the control type. The captain is S-level, Su Cha reminded abruptly. At first, this statement seemed inexplicable, but the group quickly grasped the implication, indeed. Song Ku is S-level to control her, the other side must be at least S-level. Probably more than one, Zhuang Qingyan's eyes revealed a mocking smile. If I were the one orchestrating from behind, to ensure nothing goes wrong, I would send out two, three, even four at any cost. As the reasoning deepened, the truth of Song Ku's kidnapping gradually surfaced, but the answers became increasingly absurd. In the northern base, who could mobilize two or more S-level awakener? Everyone vaguely had an answer in their hearts the deputy leader of District B-10, the highest official of the Awakener Department they had encountered briefly. Lin Yuyu frowned. Did he Chiu Hong make a move? Fang Jishu couldn't understand, wasn't her attitude good before? Why did she suddenly turn hostile? I think this is the reason. Zhuang Qinyan pointed to the little B terminal. Song Ku hadn't set any permissions, and he effortlessly opened it. Zhuang Qinyan had already checked through it. He released the Awakener Department officials from the blacklist and opened those unread bombardment messages in front of everyone, stopping his fingertips on the words further inspection. 
In the past three days, V-587 had been busy with missions non-stop, not even having time to talk. Given Song Ka's personality, she probably forgot about this or treated it as simple harassment messages. Chuan Qin Yen said in a deep voice, there's an issue with Song Ka's Awakener report. Everyone was genuinely shocked, what issue? The returned report is missing pages, and someone deliberately erased information about the gene sequence and radiation stability. Zhuang Qinyan had noticed the abnormality in the report earlier, but those two items were routine checks, not directly related to ability awakening. So, even though he suspected that He Chilhong was hiding something, it didn't attract enough attention. I made a mistake, Zhuang Qinyan sighed. He Chilhong must have noticed something was wrong, but she couldn't confirm it. She could only temporarily suppress it and find an opportunity to verify it with Song Ku. Repeatedly urging her to undergo the examination indicated that this matter was crucial to He Chiohong, important enough for her to risk confronting a powerful S level. What if they found out Song Ku is a dual class awakener and want to capture her for study? Fang Zhixu asked anxiously. V587 internally knew about Song Ku's S level dual class abilities, but they had kept it a secret externally, never mentioning a word about it. Zhuang Qinyan clenched the terminal and slowly shook his head, dual-class awakened abilities cannot be detected by instruments. In theory, dual-class awakened abilities are divided into dominant and recessive. For example, Punk's bloody explosion is a dominant ability, and time reversal is recessive. On the same temporal axis, a coordinate point cannot possess two different awakened abilities. This means that Punk cannot simultaneously trigger bloody explosions and time reversal. When facing instrument checks, he can actively choose which ability to reveal, which is why it could be concealed for so long. Song Ku's second ability is related to the rapid healing of the body, a passive ability within the recessive category. Unless her heart is severely damaged, even an R-type won't be able to detect it. It was because Zhuang Qinyan understood the functionality of R-type that he felt at ease letting Song Ku undergo genetic testing. Fang Zhixu became even more puzzled, but if it's not because of the dual class why would he Chiohong want to kidnap her? Zhuang Qinyan couldn't figure out what issues those two routine indicators gene sequence and radiation stability could have what secrets could be hiding on Song Ku's body that even he couldn't discover. Lin Yuyu snapped her fingers, bringing everyone's attention back, now that the kidnapper has been identified, how do we rescue her? Even if not explicitly stated, they all understood implicitly. Song Ku was the soul of V587, the core that brought them together. Lin Yuyu didn't ask do we rescue her. But rather how do we rescue her? Daring to kidnap my sister, I'll definitely kill them. With Song Ku absent, Su Xing's young lion's claws were exposed, and his angelic, innocent face was covered in dark clouds. Should we just break into the Awakener department building? Fang Zhixu absentmindedly rubbed his chin, his thoughts involuntarily turning more violent. Not feasible, Lu Xiaoyu decisively opposed, did you forget the safety education videos we watched? Su Cha's remark was incisive, the most important thing now is to confirm the captain's specific location. Zhuang Qinyan's expression changed slightly. He opened a profile from the terminal and initiated a video call. The call was quickly answered, and a lively voice came through, Good morning, Song Ku. Any new requests? Miss Yi, it's me. Song Ku is missing, Zhuang Qinyan coldly interrupted her. A look of obvious astonishment appeared on Yi Zimei's face. Zhuang Qinyan's next words directly dismantled her composure, do you think she would be at the Awakener department now? Yi Zimei, huh? Although Yi Zimei had a carefree personality, her mind worked quickly. After the initial shock, she quickly calmed down, Mr. Zhuang, are you suspecting me? Zhuang Qinyan, I am equally suspicious of everyone. Yi Zimei. Chapter, 186. Who kidnapped Song Ku? Zhuang Qinyan brazenly hinted, Miss Yi, why don't you use your permissions to check if there were any unauthorized individuals in the building this morning? Yi Zimei took a deep breath and cut the video feed, saying, please wait a moment. A few seconds later, she returned with a decisive tone, I have confirmed that there is no abnormal entry or exit in the Awakener department. We are a legitimate and compliant organization. 
we wouldn't attain an S level without cause. Why do you think Song Ku would be with us? Zhuang Qinyan carefully observed Yi Zime's subtle expressions. Her face displayed anger, grievance, and the resentment of being misunderstood, appearing completely unaware. Zhuang Qinyan raised the corner of his lips, devoid of any hint of a smile. He suddenly changed the topic, what is commander he busy with today? Yi Zime's anger abruptly stopped, and an idea that made her scalp numb flashed like lightning. Perhaps Zhuang Qinyan's true suspicion wasn't directed at her. I apologize, commander he schedule is confidential to the outside world, Yi Zime's voice quieted down. After some thought, she continued, but she has a tight schedule today, personally attending all the meetings. She wouldn't choose this time for something like that. Accused of being involved in a kidnapping early in the morning, Yi Zime grew increasingly displeased with her thoughts, raising her voice, Song Ku and V587 were both brought into the northern base by me. Rest assured, I will follow up on this matter and give you an explanation. After saying this, she abruptly ended the communication with a click. Zhuang Qinyan looked at the dark screen and tossed the terminal to Lu Xiaoyu. I want information on all S-level awakeners in the northern base, including detailed classifications, types of abilities, and their current locations. Lu Xiaoyu didn't catch the terminal, and a rare trace of hesitation appeared on his face. Zhuang Qinyan and Lu Xiaoyu were the only two in V587 who hadn't switched to District B terminals. These two individuals lived like primitive people, one rarely using electronic devices, living like a caveman every day, occasionally borrowing Song Ku's terminal to catch up on some news. The other immersed himself in various instruments, using only the outdated District C terminal, and in his words for safety and pollution-free purposes. Lu Xiaoyu stared at the sparkling little bee, his voice showing no fluctuations, are you asking me to establish a deep consciousness connection? Chuang Qinyan nodded, yes. To crack the location of an S-level awakener, it required breaking through the District B firewall and hacking into the District B network. In other words, Lu Xiaoyu could only accomplish this using the District B terminal. She will find me, Lu Xiaoyu uttered a mysteriously profound statement. Zhuang Qinyan remained impassive, what's this? Six years ago, you could cripple her during her peak, and now you're trembling just standing in front of her. Lu Xiaoyu's ice blue pupils suddenly stood up, the veins on the back of his hand protruding, revealing a sharp combat stance. Zhuang Qinyan confronted him without giving an inch, his eyes resembling the deep mouth of a volcano, ready to spew out scalding lava at any moment. Letting you play the driver a few times, messing around with some parts, living in comfort for too long, and you start considering yourself useless? Have you forgotten you're also an early awakener? The tense atmosphere between the two scared the other members into silence. It felt like if Zhuang Qinyan said one more word, Lu Xiaoyu would break ties with him. In the dead silence, Zhuang Qinyan asked one word at a time, in her presence, can you find Song Ku, erase any traces of intrusion, and retreat without a trace? Can you still do that now? Lu Xiaoyu's face showed no expression. Without uttering a word, he picked up the terminal. His chromium arm slightly shimmered as he connected to the data port. With his movement, the entire living room was covered in a dazzling silver light. Vast amounts of data, like a galaxy, flowed slowly above their heads. It seemed as if everyone had stepped into a virtual world, surrounded by various intricate and jumping lines of code. Lu Xiaoyu slightly closed his eyes. The silver hair flowed without wind, and with his body as the center, tendrils of data barbarically grew, expanding their territory unscrupulously, gradually occupying every corner of the apartment. Unable to hold back, Su Xing mumbled, he looks like a tree. In a city far away from the northern base. Inside a spacious greenhouse, the environment was silent, and only a withered giant tree stood. Suddenly, it sensed something, and its roots emitted a cherry blossom colored glow. A pair of inorganic eyes slowly opened, calm yet ancient, whispering words like a murmur. I see you, my child. However, the faint light vanished in an instant, quickly fading into the boundless ocean of data, leaving no trace. Yet, the almost withered giant tree lit up. Its branches rustled, sounding like countless children clapping in joy. Tiny signs of life sprouted, one after another, 
and a soft cherry blossom glow surged into the sky, enveloping the entire city in a hazy halo of light. Back at the garden apartment, Lu Xiaoyu still had his eyes closed. However, apart from Song Ku, the information of the eight other S-level individuals in the northern base appeared before him. Thanks to the special terminal that He Chilhong had sent to S-level Awakeners and the good habit of carrying it around by B-District personnel. Under the tracing of the top-level hacker Lu Xiaoyu, the positions of these individuals were nowhere to hide. Dot. Ken Oda, S2, level engineering type, located 10 kilometers away in the Ocean District. Ling Yan and Ling Yu, S6, level double attack type, located in the Awakener Department building. Today happened to be their regular reporting day. Zhao Yuqing, S2, level water type, located a few thousand kilometers away in District C. Zeigler, S3, level constraint type, located somewhere in the city. Shize, S3, level domain type, located somewhere in the city. Two unknown S-level individuals, located at the governor's mansion, where the firewall level was the highest. Lu Xiaoyu didn't bother continuing to crack it because the answer was already clear. Zeigler and Shize, one with constraint ability and the other with domain ability, were currently in the same location. Typically, S-level individuals would have a sense of territory. Unless like the Ling siblings, who were twins, they rarely gathered together outside of missions. Various scenarios of the two coordinating their abilities to catch Song Ku off guard immediately surfaced in Zhuang Qinyan's mind. Where is this? He asked with a deep voice. The map doesn't have a label, only showing it's a controlled area. Risk level, H high risk, Lu Xiaoyu replied. Zhuang Qinyan stood upright, exhaling a long breath. Let's go. Captain has always been the one to save us, but this time, it's our turn to save the captain. Su Cha carried a box of spiritual weapons out of the room and quickly attached them to his arms and legs. Fang Jishu pulled out several bags of hot weapons specifically purchased for completing missions, clumsily attempting to assemble them. Lu Xiaoyu took over silently and, with six arms moving in unison, quickly assembled the weapons. Zhuang Qinyan led the five of them out of the apartment, and the others followed behind him, keenly aware of one thing. He wasn't in a wheelchair. Brightly lit laboratory. Song Ku's arms were being carried by the twins, gliding through the long corridor. Since she couldn't escape for the time being, she decided to close her eyes and pretend to sleep. She appeared to be asleep, but in reality, she deliberately let the enemy relax their guard, secretly using her awakened energy to sense any movements outside. After a while, Song Ku was brought into a sealed capsule. Inside, it was empty with no furniture even the tables and chairs were absent. The personnel here were informed that she could use transformations with her ability, so they cleared the space in advance. Ling Yu opened the terminal across the transparent glass, and on the other end of the line, a holographic image of He Chilhong appeared. Song Ku, I have another meeting. To keep it short, Dr. Ning is an expert in genetic engineering. He will conduct a comprehensive examination on you while ensuring your personal safety. Please cooperate in any case. He Chilhong, accustomed to being in a superior position, employed a mix of soft and hard approaches in her speech, leaving Song Ku somewhat speechless. In her mind, Song Ku couldn't help but sneer, cooperate. You've already captured me, and there's an S-level eyeing me. How is this not considered cooperating? After He Chilhong finished speaking, she quickly ended the communication, appearing genuinely busy. With the Ling siblings having completed their task and leaving gracefully, only Zeigler and Shize remained at the scene. The two of them intertwined their abilities, showing no signs of interruption. They guarded Song Ku vigilantly from the outside. After lingering in place for a moment, Song Ku slowly yawned and sat down, cross-legged. Feeling bored, she looked around, left and right. Suddenly, a glint of light flashed across the corner of her eye. Song Ku paused slightly, then suddenly lifted her head. In the completely sealed and narrow space, a glaring light shone from above, and a bright red dot flickered intermittently in the high air. It was the light from a surveillance camera. Song Ku stared at it intently for a while, somewhat in a daze. Her pupils gradually contracted due to the strong light, and in the all-white background, 
her two eyes appeared remarkably black. Chapter 187 The Master of the Northern Base The laboratory door automatically opened to both sides, and a group of researchers in white robes entered, led by a middle-aged man with graying temples. He seemed to have not slept for a long time, with a tired complexion and two large dark circles under his eyes. His assistant respectfully called him, Dr. Ning. Through the glass, Dr. Ning glanced at Song Ku sitting on the ground, lowered his head to review the Awakener report on the screen. After a few seconds, he looked up again. When facing her in person, Song Ku appeared completely normal. No one would think that the radiation level in her body exceeded that of an ordinary person by twenty times. It was as if she carried a nuclear bomb but casually wandered around. Dr. Ning pressed the intercom button and calmly said, I will conduct radiation endurance tests on you. I heard you are S7 level. Song Ku's dark pupils stared at him, yes. Dr. Ning nodded with satisfaction, very well, your physical fitness is up to par. The experiment process may be a bit tough, so try to endure as much as possible. Your vital signs will be monitored throughout. If you really can't handle it, just raise your hand, and I will stop. Hypocrite, Song Ku rolled her eyes. Dr. Ning didn't mind, let's begin. In the capsule compartment, four built-in radio frequency lamps above lit up, causing Song Ku to instinctively squint. Dr. Ning waited in place for a moment, report the radiation level. The assistant's voice gradually changed tone. No wonder he was surprised this data had already exceeded their highest record. At that time, the test subject was a fallen, and the critical point was only 47. Song Ku sat quietly in the capsule compartment, as if she couldn't feel the changes in radiation at all. Nausea, vomiting, bleeding, and symptoms of decay that should have appeared were all absent. Dr. Ning turned to look at the resonance spectrum analyzer. According to the image display, the organs in Song Ku's body were functioning normally. The only noteworthy thing was that the massive radiation that had originally existed in her body seemed to be slowly flowing, greedily absorbing energy. Awakened Energy Report Stably maintained at 12,000 For an S7, level awakener, normal awakened energy fluctuated between 8,000-13,000. In other words, the current increase in radiation had no obvious effect on Song Ku's awakened energy. Dr. Ning calmly ordered, increase the radiation level. The assistant manipulated the instruments with trembling nerves, not daring to make the slightest mistake. Following Dr. Ning's instructions, he adjusted the values to 50%, then raised them to 90% after a few cycles, briefly paused at 100%, and finally skyrocketed to 120%. Stop, Dr. Ning raised his hand. Song Ku felt a faint discomfort, not from the increasingly strong radiation, but from the oppressive atmosphere created by the surroundings the glaring rays above, the flickering red lights, and the white-robed researchers coming and going. Her eyes lost focus, and hallucinatory symptoms gradually appeared, with voices in her ears screaming hysterically, like the cries of a desperate animal. Taking a deep breath, Song Ku stood up irritably, covering her ears with both hands, pacing back and forth in the narrow space. Record, radiation exceeds 120%. The experimental the target shows obvious anxiety, pacing back and forth. DNA double strands normal, organs functioning normally, awakened energy huh? Dr. Ning's eyes showed a hint of surprise. Awakened energy value, 14,000. The assistants nearby collectively gasped. Not only did the target remain unscathed under the current terrifying level of radiation, but her surging awakened energy had already reached S8 level. Dr. Ning's eyes gleamed mysteriously. He clenched the screen tightly, unable to resist taking large strides forward until his nose almost touched the glass. Record, radiation exceeds 120%. The target shows second awakening symptoms. Increase the radiation level. Dr. The assistant trembled as he reminded, exceeds 130%, the scale is maxed out. The machine they were currently using had limited instruments, with the highest scale being 130%. Astonishingly, though the machine had reached its limit, this extraordinary individual named Song Ku seemed to have no upper limit to her radiation tolerance. Song Ku's discomfort intensified. 
Under the intense radiation, her entire body felt like it was burning, her skin ached, cells died in large numbers, only to regenerate quickly. Something seemed eager to burst out and take control of her body. Song Ka's limb spasmed, and she staggered forward. Bang! With a deafening roar, Song Ku raised her fist and smashed it against the glass. Crimson blood flowed down, and although the glass didn't shatter due to its special material, the entire laboratory floor shook violently. The researchers outside were frightened by her momentum, retreating in succession. Tiny blood vessels appeared in the corners of Song Ku's eyes. Her dark pupils, without blinking, were fixed on the people in white robes outside. Dr. Ning glanced at the spectrum analyzer, observing her body greedily absorbing radiation, and all organ indices were in a chaotic state. Stop, Dr. Ning ordered. The assistant pressed the pause button, relieved. Dr. Ning spoke slowly, record, radiation exceeds 130%. The target's anxiety intensifies, emotions approach losing control, awakened energy value 18,000. Silence engulfed the surroundings. Gulp after a while, the sound of someone forcibly swallowing saliva was clearly heard. What did 18,000 mean? That theoretically placed her at S9 level. If Song Ku wished, she could not only crush them like ants but effortlessly destroy an entire city. After the radiation in the capsule compartment stabilized, Song Ku's awakened energy slowly returned to 12,000, and other values returned to normal. Release the nutrient solution, Dr. Ning whispered. A hidden opening in the ceiling revealed itself, and a bag of liquid substance landed on the ground with a soft thud. Song Ku didn't touch it. She resembled a cold and vigilant young beast, curled up in the corner, observing each person with her pitch-black eyes. Dr. Ning fell into contemplation, his expression unusually hesitant. Professor. Is there a problem? The assistant asked. Her constitution is too special. Can we persuade her to cooperate with us for long-term experiments? Dr. Ning inquired. Director he said this examination was a one-time thing, the assistant cautiously reminded. After all, she's an S7 level superpower, and it's already quite rare to invite her once. While the assistant expressed this sentiment, internally, he silently criticized, although the examination was requested by Director He, you, old man, are really lacking in courtesy. You came straight to perform a radiation test without even a proper greeting. If this S7 level individual doesn't come after you for retribution, it's already benevolent. Dr. Ning also felt the hope was faint, then asked Director He to switch to a machine with a higher scale. Now. The assistant asked. Dr. Ning's expression remained unchanged, if she wants results, it has to be now. Before the assistant could react, several security uniformed awakeners rushed in. Dr. Ning, the laboratory is under attack. Please evacuate immediately. Attack? Dr. Ning repeated incredulously, when you invited me here, didn't you say that the security level was second only to the awakener department? Outside the laboratory, the fully armed V-587 was tearing through the defenses. In the storm of howling winds, the disorienting mist of bladed fog, and the elusive shadows of an assassin, various dazzling awakened abilities accurately struck the crowd. Despite numerous high-level awakeners guarding the area, this reckless six-person squad continued its unstoppable assault. How much longer? Chuan Qinyan asked. Two minutes, Lu Xiaoyu replied. The protective door of this laboratory was made of special materials, impervious to water and fire. A slash with a blade only left faint marks on it. Lu Xiaoyu quickly bypassed the firewall. Two minutes later, the door opened a narrow gap, and V-587 repelled the security rushing out, swiftly entering. Time is limited. The Awakener Department has received the message reinforcements are expected to arrive in ten minutes, Lu Xiaoyu reminded. Find her first. Zhuang Qinyan decisively led them straight to the laboratory. They caught He Chiohong off guard, and once she reacted, it wouldn't be so easy for them to escape. In the bright corridor, security personnel shouted desperately, hurry. Go inform Dr. Ning to evacuate. A gust of wind passed, and the person shouting fell to the ground, writhing in agony. 
In his consciousness, there was a tearing pain. A young man in black clothes and pants crouched down, coldly staring at him. The Dr. Ning you mentioned, could it be Dr. Ning Rong? Zhuang Qinyan asked indifferently. The security officer's face showed clear astonishment, as if saying, How do you know? Zhuang Qinyan's eyes were mysterious. He stepped over the fallen person and walked quickly towards the depths of the laboratory. Dr. Ning, you need to leave quickly. You go first I need to retrieve the research data. Data isn't as important as a person's safety, Dr. Ning. Your safety comes first. The urging person said anxiously. You don't understand. Without the data, the research cannot continue. If there's data if there's data, why am I still doing the most basic data testing until now? Dr. Ning Rong suddenly raised his voice, his chest heaving. Tap, tap, tap. Steady footsteps, reminiscent of the tolling of a death bell, echoed in Ning Rong's ears. A tall figure walked towards him against the light in the corridor, stopping in front of the two. The nearby security personnel were on high alert, raising their guns at the newcomer. Su Cha flashed behind them, swiftly disarming the man. Ah! A scream rang out, and the alarm bells suddenly blared around them. Frantic footsteps of people fleeing echoed continuously. Ning Rong, holding a large pile of documents, felt a sense of fear. Unexpectedly, he met eyes with the young man in black, causing him to be momentarily stunned. Long time no see, Dr. Ning, Zhuang Qinyan spoke casually. Old Zhuang. Ning Rong blurted out, but his gaze froze. Soon, he self-denied, no, old Zhuang is already dead it's you. Ning Rong looked bewildered, you're alive, you actually you're still alive. Zhuang Qinyan stood in front of him, where is Song Ku? Ning Rong covered his face, seeming to laugh and cry at the same time, if I had known you were still alive, why would I have gone through all this trouble? Dr. Ning, we can catch up later. Where is Song Ku? Zhuang Qinyan interrupted. Song Ku. Ning Rong was puzzled for a second, then suddenly enlightened, you mean the S7 that he Chiu Hong sent? Zhuang Qinyan nodded, regardless of what you've done before, release her immediately. Unexpectedly, Ning Rong decisively refused, I can't release her. At least not now. She just completed a radiation tolerance test, and the accumulated value in her body is too high. Any slight stimulation now could easily lead to a loss of control. A radiation test. It was unclear what kind of relationship Zhuang Qinyan had with Ning Rong, but the latter was surprisingly unreserved. Without a second thought, he handed over a screen containing Song Ku's complete superpower report. You're also an expert take a look yourself. With her condition, these tests must be done, and the sooner the better. Not to mention the unknown excessive radiation in her body, just consider those hidden genetic sequences. If we don't figure out their specific origins, when they erupt one day, you know very well what the consequences will be. Chapter 188 The Master of the Northern Base Outside the capsule, Zeigler was pretending to doze off with closed eyes. Sensing the person next to him standing up, he immediately questioned, What are you doing? Shizei shrugged, adopting a somewhat carefree attitude, bored, just getting up for a stroll. Don't forget our mission, Zeigler warned in a deep voice. Mind your own business, Shizei retorted. Both of them were S3 level awakeners. Zeigler was approaching middle age, while Shizei was only twenty, with a promising future. He considered himself a step above the older man. Shizei sauntered over to where Song Ku was held, unceremoniously knocking on the glass. Hey, what kind of monster are you? How can you withstand such intense radiation? Or maybe you have some way to resist radiation. Tell me, I'm all ears. Song Ku stared at him with a deep gaze, her eyes seemingly unmoving for a long time. Shizei found himself displeased under Song Ku's gaze, but more so, a subtle sense of envy. S7 level or not, she ended up as a captive, subjected to inexplicable experiments. Ning Rong's assistants had already fled in panic, and in the chaos, no one remembered to shut down the instruments. Shizei, hands in pockets, casually approached the scale meter. Suddenly, 
he pressed the start button, initiating the radiation beyond 130%. Have you gone mad? Who gave you the right to mess around? Ziegler roared. Just playing around. Anyway, she's fine, she's a blocked Ziegler's punch, activated his field, and turned towards Song Ku with a mischievous grin, doctor must have taught you, remember to raise your hand when it gets unbearable, okay? Raise it high. Stop it immediately. Ziegler unleashed his full awakened energy, and Shize responded with an equal pressure. Inside the capsule, the just stabilized radiation instantly surged to its peak again. Song Ku's dark pupils became deeper, her cells burning fiercely throughout her body. Chaotic screams filled her ears, and her cognitive abilities gradually diminished. Unnoticed on the spectrum analyzer, the stable double helix of DNA underwent rapid changes, forming a completely unfamiliar structure, grotesquely resembling the skull of some fierce beast. Meanwhile, Song Ku's awakened energy value had surpassed 20,000. Song Ku slowly raised her hand. Behind Ziegler and Shize, the instruments began to float. A deep blue light flashed, transforming into a fierce tang sword. The back of the blade clang hit the glass, leaving an extremely subtle crack. The two fighters abruptly stopped, looking at her in astonishment. It was just a very small crack, but it was enough. A thousand-mile dike collapsed because of an ant. Song Ko pressed her palm against the glass, and her powerful awakened energy pushed outward. The entire glass shattered with a thunderous crash, breaking into tiny remnants. Zhuang Qinyan browsed through the report on Song Ku, which could be described as mind-boggling. His eyes grew deeper in contemplation. Ning Rong stared at his face and sighed deeply. Genes are truly miraculous. Back then, no one believed you were father and son. Now anyone with eyes wouldn't make a mistake. Zhuang Qinyan didn't respond immediately, frowning as he asked, how much excessive radiation did you expose her to? Ning Rong was momentarily speechless. Um, 130%. Zhuang Qinyan sneered, 130%. Regular instruments must be close to their limit, right? I heard that this laboratory is sponsored by He Chiu Hong. Are you working for her? What about your research, is it for the Fire Seed, or the Eternal Project? Never mind, I'm not interested in knowing. Now, take me to see Song Ku. Crash. As they were talking, the ceiling suddenly collapsed, and a slender figure rapidly descended, pressing onto someone. The person beneath emitted clear sounds of bone fractures, and blood gushed from their nose and mouth. As they turned their pale face, it revealed the S3 level domain type awakener who had provoked Song Kushize. Sister. Captain. Members of V587 were about to cheer and rush forward but suddenly halted their steps. Something was evidently wrong with Song Ku. Her eyes were pitch black, devoid of any smile. With blood-soaked hands, she raised the Tang sword and unhesitatingly stabbed it into the heart of the fallen person. Ah! The powerful surge of awakened energy from Shize, on the brink of death, shattered the glass in the corridor. Boom! Amidst the puzzled and alarmed expressions of everyone, another person fell from the ceiling. Slightly better off than Shize, Ziegler's awakened energy field shattered, and blood spurted from his mouth. Crawling on all fours, he tried to escape the scene. Holding the Tang sword, Song Ku stood up, coldly pointing it at his neck. In a critical moment, reinforcements from the awakened department arrived, unleashing various abilities against Song Ku without any regard. Song Ku. Stop. He Chiu Hong's holographic image lit up, sternly commanding. Song Ku appeared like a reaper, the Tang sword swirling as hot blood splattered, swiftly harvesting the lives of her enemies. V587 still hadn't figured out the situation, but if their captain was involved, could they just stand by and watch? Instantly, they joined the fight. From now on, pretend you don't know me, Zhuang Qinyan whispered, lowering his voice, pushing Ning Rong away from the center of the battle. Song Ku was in a frenzy of killing, and the floor was covered with a dense layer of bodies. The tip of the blade continuously dripped blood, leaving crimson footprints with each step. Only a few remaining awakeners, who could still stand, retreated in fear. 
Rapidly, Lu Xiaoyu said, 3S levels are coming, including He Chiohong's specialized car. We won't make it if we don't leave now. Lin Yuyu anxiously called out, Song Ku, can we leave first? Alone in the blood-soaked battlefield, with a trail of bodies, the determined figure didn't respond. Lu Xiaoyu urged, 3S levels are on their way, including He Chiohong. We need to leave now. Zhuang Qinyan waded through the blood and bodies, resolutely approaching Song Ku. Song Ku, with a blade in hand, noticed him approaching and coldly aimed the weapon at him. Song Ku, Zhuang Qinyan's voice was gentle and soft, it's me, Zhuang Qinyan. Quiet down and look at me. Do you remember? Song Ku quietly stared at him, holding the blade, and in her pitch black eyes, a small Zhuang Qinyan was reflected. Despite the relentless screams around her, she was plagued by hallucinations. Who was it? It was her. She was smashing things with a loud crash. Was it a door or glass? She couldn't remember. She only remembered that time, the arrogant young man sitting with crossed legs outside, complaining incessantly. It's hard to find a quiet place. He won't let me participate in projects, but makes me carry the data every day. Is he really my dad? He assigns so much, how can I remember it all in one day? Thud, thud, thud. She forcefully banged on the door, trying to get the other person's attention. Be quiet, the young man turned his head, and his beautifully curved eyes glared at her dissatisfied. But it hurt so much. She could only use even more force to bang. Thud, thud, thud. The young man clicked his tongue impatiently and slowly approached, squatting in front of her. His slender fingers swiftly manipulated a control panel. A pile of colorful nutrients dropped from above, thud. Many hit her head. Now you can be quiet, little thing. Initially puzzled, she quickly realized and tore open the packaging, eagerly drinking. Whether it was a psychological effect or not, the pain inside her seemed to diminish slightly. Looking at you closely, you look really ugly, huh? The young man observed her and quickly turned his eyes away in disdain. Are these genes from lizards? Her eating motion paused imperceptibly. What did ugly mean? Unaware, the young man yawned and continued to casually flip through the data. He looked somewhat tired and indifferent, with a brilliantly beautiful side profile, and a teardrop mole shining. Song Ku, I am Zhuang Qinyan. Look at me, just one glance. Do you remember? Someone seemed to be calling her from a distant place. Zhuang Qinyan. Song Ku's hoarse voice slowly uttered three words. The dark color in her eyes receded, and her consciousness returned to her body. Zhuang Qinyan sighed in relief, taking large steps forward, tightly embracing her blood-soaked figure. It's me, it's okay now. Don't be afraid. Like comforting a child, he gently patted Song Ku's back. The distant screams disappeared, and the burning cells in her body gradually calmed down. Song Ku lowered her head, glanced at her blood-stained hands, belatedly recalling what had happened just now. A group of awakeners rushed in like a tide, surrounding V587 still in the corridor. Under the protection of the Lin siblings, He Chilhong appeared behind the crowd, her face darkening. Glancing at the convulsing bodies of Shize and Zeigler she angrily said, I only asked you to cooperate with the inspection, Song Ku. Did you resist orders and harm your fellow awakeners? Don't you want to stay at the northern base? Song Ku stared straight at her. Inspection, I cooperated. He Chilhong's mouth tightened into a straight line. She raised her hand, about to say something. Clang. A Tang sword whizzed past her ear and Song Ku swiftly moved forward, passing through layers of awakeners, heading straight towards He Chiohong like a lightning bolt. Startled, Lin Yu and Lin Yen quickly intervened, but were blocked by six mechanical arms and the ever-present Su Cha. He Chiohong was forcefully pulled out of the crowd by Song Ku's domineering strength, her neck pinched and pressed to the ground, her face turning purple. Are you insane? Daring to attack? The aftermath of the burning cells hadn't completely subsided. With an indifferent expression, Song Ku raised the Tang sword high, casting a cold light. 
He Chiu Hong, now no longer composed, displayed an expression of utmost horror. I really cooperated, she pleaded. The tip of the blade slowly pierced He Chiu Hong's heart. Song Ke's hand remained steady, and her expression was unwavering. The first day we came here, you said the northern base respects strength. You seem to be only B-level, right? Why don't I dare to kill you? He Chiu Hong's pupils contracted, her face instantly turning ashen. Why? In the nick of time, another formidable unfamiliar S-level awakener approached. His arms were like steel, gently deflecting Song Ku's blade. He calmly looked at Song Ku. Please wait a moment. Song Ku observed him for two seconds, then stepped back, unceremoniously pulling out the Tang sword from He Chiu Hong's chest. Ugh! He Chiu Hong groaned. The unknown man helped He Chiu Hong up, then turned his gaze towards the confrontation in the corridor. His authoritative voice echoed in everyone's ears. Stop! V587 remained motionless. On the other hand, the people from the Awakener department retreated two steps obediently, including the Ling siblings. The man silently opened the terminal, and a holographic image slowly appeared. An old man leaned against the window, his side profile resembling a statue. He spoke with a world-weary tone, dot. I heard from Zime that a young S7 level has arrived at the base, diligent and with excellent combat talent. She keeps talking in my ear every day, making me curious. Chiu Hong, I'll have Bai Chi go and receive this person. Do you have any objections? He Chiu Hong, protecting her neck, respectfully lowered her head, no, teacher. The old man nodded, awakened people, the key in the phrase is not in the awakened, but in the people, at the end. They are first and foremost people with flesh and blood, just like the millions in the base. Remember, this is our foundation. Some things cannot be reversed. He Chilhong didn't dare to refute a word, bowing with deep respect, yes, I will remember the teacher's teachings. The old man sighed softly and turned his gaze to Song Ku standing in the corner. You are the Song Ku that Zime mentioned. I am Yi Zheng. I would like to meet you and your friends in person. Do you mind? Song Ku didn't answer immediately. The old man spoke politely and patiently without rushing, waiting for her to respond. After a while, Song Ku nodded slowly, all right. Today's events end here. Bai Qi, please bring them back. The image of the old man disappeared from the air, leaving everyone in the room in silent shock. Wasn't he Chiu Hong powerful? As the second in command in the northern base, the highest official in the awakened department, she could control everything in B-10, doing as she pleased, even forcefully conducting experiments on a powerful S-level awakener. But one thing, since the establishment of the northern base, was deeply ingrained in everyone's hearts. The true master of this city was the one with the last name Yi. Chapter, 189 I am just old, not dead. Bai Qi was a man of few words, matching Su Cha in his level of silence. At least Su Cha became a bit more cheerful after joining the team, but on the way to Yi Zheng's mansion, Bai Qi didn't say a word, perfectly embodying the saying silence is golden. The floating car sped along the floating sky bridge, crossing through a bustling urban area towards the city's outskirts. Inside the car, Fang Zixiu carefully treated Song Ku's wounds with his abilities, and a faint white soft light lit up as the fine cracks in her joints healed as if untouched. Su Xing cautiously knelt on Song Ku's lap, his eyes watery, Sister, do you remember Xiao Xing? Others also looked at her with concern Song Ku's previous state was too frightening, as if she had fallen into madness, recognizing no one, only knowing how to kill. Song Ku touched Su Xing's curly hair, feeling its softness, and comforted her softly, it's okay, I remember everything. Everyone finally breathed a sigh of relief. In the quiet atmosphere, Song Ku tilted her head slightly and stole a glance at Zhuang Qinyan. Then she noticed that Zhuang Qinyan was leaning on his chin, staring at her without turning away, his deep eyes filled with concentration. Song Ku, she awkwardly looked away, glanced back after a while, and Zhuang Qinyan was still looking at her. A blurry image flashed in her mind, but unfortunately, besides the phrase be quiet, Song Ku couldn't recall anything else. She wasn't even sure whose memories those were. 
because in her life in District F-177, such scenes had never appeared. She stole glances too frequently Zhuang Qinyan took one of her hands, smoothed her palm, and secretly wrote a later. Song Ku understood that it wasn't convenient to talk in the car, and he meant to discuss it later. Two hours later, V-587 arrived at the residence of the ruling official. Surprisingly, Yi Zheng's place was just an ordinary three-story villa, although it had a vast land area, the exterior was modest and inconspicuous amidst the modern skyscrapers of the northern base. Moreover, the security here was lax, not even comparable to the Awakener department where He Chiohom was, let alone Ning Rong's laboratory. Zhuang Qingyan's comment on this was, the more people lack something, the more they want to show off. Because He Chiohom was only a B-level Awakener and had extreme insecurity, she turned the office building into an airtight fortress, even daring to use only holographic images for their first meeting. What does that mean? Does Yi Zheng not lack a sense of security? At first, everyone didn't quite understand his words, but the answer was soon revealed. The floating car entered the villa area, and Yi Zimei, dressed in the uniform of the Awakener department, was waiting at the door, nodding at Bai Qi. At this time, Miss Yi should be at work, right? Zhuang Qinyan casually asked when getting off the car. Thanks to you all, the department is in chaos today, and I was forced to take a day off, Yi Zimei sighed, seemingly genuine or fake. Yi Zimei Yi Zheng Lin Yu Yu repeated the two names, tentatively asking, So General Yi is your? Yi Zimei helplessly smiled, Yes, he's my grandfather. Lin Yu Yu suddenly realized no wonder Yi Zimei, just a mere administrative secretary, had such high authority in the northern base. She not only independently handled the recruitment of awakeners but also easily agreed to their requests. It turns out she was a well-hidden third-generation official of course, described in an entirely positive sense. Please come in my grandfather is waiting for you, Yi Zimei said. As they passed each other, Song Ku softly said, thank you. From what Yi Zheng said in the laboratory, if he was willing to intervene, it surely had Yi Zimei's involvement. Yi Zimei smiled, I said I would give you an explanation. Bai Qi led them through a corridor into a quaint study, and Song Ku finally met the true master of the northern base. Yi Zheng was in casual clothes, nearing ninety years old. His silver hair was neatly combed, and his sunken eye sockets, weathered face with wrinkles and spots, told tales of experience. Yet, his eyes held a serene understanding of the world, and his straight posture reflected the dignity left after enduring wars and the ravages of time. However, that wasn't the focus. Song Ku had seen old people before what surprised her was that Yi Zheng was an S-level awakener. He didn't deliberately restrain his awakened energy but didn't show any offensive posture either. Naturally, a portion flowed out like breath, silently circulating. However, the formidable aura and the great suppression of an S-level, made people bow their heads submissively. General, the guests have arrived, Bai Qi nodded respectfully and then quietly exited. This general was not a casual title. Unlike someone like Nai Kong, who was a mere show-off without substance, general in the Mu Dan was a title of respect for the first rank. Yi Zheng was a genuine military man, having carried a gun, shed blood, dug trenches, and led troops in battles during the old civilization era. Yi Zheng witnessed the decline of the old civilization, the establishment of the new Asia alliance, and now, the arrival of the apocalypse. His life experience was like a thick ancient book, even if covered in the dust of time, still invaluable. In recent years, due to his declining health, Yi Zheng lived a reclusive life, gradually disappearing from the public eye. The northern base values strength, Song Ku suddenly remembered this phrase. No wonder Yi Zheng didn't need security he himself was the most robust shield, even in his old age. Seeing such a legendary figure, Song Ku felt a bit awkward, not knowing where to put her hands and feet. Yi Zheng took the initiative to open the conversation, is that a Tang knife in your hand? He pointed to the knife inserted in Song Ku's backpack. Can I take a look? Song Ku silently took it off and handed it to him. Yi Zheng's hands were very old, with thick joints that could hardly bend. He carefully touched the blade inside, I didn't expect to see young people using artifacts from the old civilization. I thought we old folks should all be in the ground by now. He made a joke, and although Song Ku and the others didn't laugh, 
their tense nerves relaxed a bit. As leaders, Yi Zheng's impression was completely different from He Chiohong. He didn't exude a condescending arrogance instead, he emanated humility more befitting an elder. When speaking to others, he looked them in the eye and listened patiently. After skillfully twirling the knife, Yi Zheng suddenly spoke, Do you have a bad impression of the northern base? Song Ku remained silent for a moment, then nodded sincerely. Yi Jing smiled, you seem to be not very talkative. Zhuang Qinyan stepped forward, standing side by side with Song Ku. General Yi, forgive my boldness. Our captain may not be eloquent, but that doesn't mean she should be mistreated. He Chilhong kidnapped an S-level awakener and even used force. How do you intend to handle this? On this matter, I'd like to discuss it with you calmly, Yi Jing said as he returned the Tang knife to Song Ku. Chilhong did make a mistake. She tends to be stubborn, and I'm not defending her, but her original intention was to have you undergo an examination to understand your abnormal constitution. The reason the situation deteriorated to this point is because you nearly killed two S-level individuals. Do you understand the seriousness of this matter? Yi Jing pressed a switch on a desk, displaying real-time footage in several reports. It showed Zeigler in critical condition, still unconscious, and Shize, although barely recovering, had dropped to a 9 level due to the shattered magnetic field. This was the first occurrence of an S level downgrade, and once the news was made public, it would undoubtedly cause a significant stir within the alliance. A few months ago, the Central Court lost an S level dual type awakener in District C. The inspection team is still investigating the murderer. After the apocalypse, every S level individual is a precious strategic resource. Chilhong has always valued Awakeners. In fact, you incapacitated two of them, so naturally, she wanted answers from you, Yi Jing explained. Song Ku remained expressionless. District C, S level dual type, why did it sound a bit familiar? As if it was also someone she had taken down. Does General Yi also want answers from us? Zhuan Qingyan's face showed no hint of a smile. Yi Jing waved his hand and sighed. I have always believed that appearances can be deceiving, Song Ku. I want to hear your side of the story. Why did you attack Zeigler and Shize? Song Ku looked into the old man's calm eyes, pondered for a moment, and recounted the situation where Shize provoked her by deliberately activating the device. Yi Jing nodded, if that's the case, you have indeed suffered a lot of grievances. How would you like me to handle this? General Yi, do you know that Chiu Hong secretly supports illegal research? Zhuang Qinyan suddenly changed the topic. Forgive me for being frank, she is not a qualified leader. She acts impulsively, has deep-seated prejudices, uses awakeners on one hand, and ruthlessly discards them on the other. Have you considered the consequences of continuing to support her? Zhuang Qinyan implied through his words that letting Chiu Hong lead would eventually lead to the downfall of the northern base. However, Yi Zheng said, Chiu Hong is currently the most suitable person. She has the ability and ambition. Even if she can't do better, she can at least maintain the status quo. Zhuang Qingyan's expression changed slightly, noticing that Yi Zheng used the words currently and maintain the status quo. Do you know what people outside call the northern base? Yi Zheng asked. Humanity's last hope, Yi Zheng said word by word. In this world, things will become increasingly difficult, bringing more despair. Maybe one day, our days will come to an end, Yi Zheng's gaze was profound and determined. But even if that time comes, I still hope that the northern base can be the last refuge for countless ordinary humans. That was my original intention in building this city. I am old, and death can embrace me at any time, but I don't want to see my lifelong efforts go to waste, Yi Zheng sighed deeply. Until I find a suitable successor and completely entrust the northern base to them, even if Chiu Hong makes mistakes, she cannot temporarily leave that position. Yi Jing gazed at the young girl before him. Both being S-level, he could intuitively feel Song Ku's strength, like a drawn sword, sharp and unstoppable. More importantly, her blade would never turn against her own people. This was the rarest trait among S-level awakeners, but unfortunately, He Chiu Hong couldn't see this. With a weathered voice, Yi Jing spoke, Song Ku, can you give the northern base another chance? 
Song Ku was momentarily stunned. For your future affairs, and the matters of your team, report directly to me. You no longer need to be under the jurisdiction of the Awakener Department. If there are any issues in your daily life, go to Zime. If you ever face injustice, this old man will personally stand up for you. After all Yi Zhang's expression turned cold, I am just old, not dead. Song Ku remembered asking Zhuang Qinyan on the V-587 starship coming to the northern base about the founder of this place. Zhuang Qinyan had said at that time, a person worth admiring. She looked at the silver-haired Yi Zheng and thought for a long time before nodding slowly. After leaving the villa, Lin Yuyu grumbled discontentedly, He Chiu Hong only got a two-week suspension. Isn't that too easy for her? Yeah, yeah. Su Xing joined in, old witch, I curse her. Song Ku, however, remained unusually calm, it's because of me. I'm not strong enough. If she were strong enough, at the apartment entrance, even if Zeigler and Shizei simultaneously launched an attack, she shouldn't have been instantly controlled. In the Monzoni Street and Punk battle, if she could have directly killed him, he wouldn't have had a chance to activate time reversal. Song Ku lowered her head, looking at the palm of her hand. All along, she had been too confident. Awakening abilities were diverse, and the methods of attack were unpredictable. If she faced a similar situation next time, with more S-level individuals coming to hunt her down, would she let herself be slaughtered again? Absolutely not. Although the intense radiation brought endless pain, she also felt a new power. Suddenly, Song Ku remembered Dr. Ning, the silver-haired man. After the chaotic battle, she wasn't sure if he survived. Back in the apartment, Zhuang Qinyan followed Song Ku into the room. With a serious expression, he took out a light screen, now, let's talk about your physical condition. Song Ku lowered her head and glanced at it, signaling with her eyes, I don't understand. Zhuang Qinyan fell silent for a moment, then changed the topic, your grandfather, do you have a photo or video of him? Chapter, 190 The little dog at home is upset. Grandpa's photo? Song Ku shook her head honestly, no. Not a single one. Zhuang Qinyan was slightly surprised. Song Ku counted on her fingers, Grandpa doesn't take photos, doesn't play Vu Lu Ji, and doesn't have a phone. As for terminals? There's no such thing in District F. Zhuang Qinyan cleared his throat and couldn't help but correct her pronunciation, vlog. Song Ku pouted, oh. She learned the alliance language late, and it's not her fault if she doesn't speak well. Zhuang Qinyan continued, do you still remember what your grandpa looks like? Song Ku nodded, of course. Then you describe, and I'll draw. Zhuang Qinyan took a pen, crossed his long legs and leaned against the window, starting to sketch. Grandpa and Old Fang are about the same height, round forehead, a nose that is straight at the top and a little curved at the bottom here and here. There are wrinkles, and he has little hair, Song Ku tried to describe in simple words, he likes to wear hats, his health is not good, always coughing. After more than ten minutes, Zhuang Qinyan put down the pen and turned the screen to Song Ku, take a look, does it look similar? Um. Song Ku gave him a thumbs up, very much. Zhuang Qinyan looked helpless, is it really similar or not? I'm not seeking praise from you I want the truth. Really like, Song Ku said confidently. Getting the answer, Zhuang Qinyan's brow slowly furrowed, and he looked down at the sketch on the screen. According to Song Ku's description, what he drew was a sickly old man, with tired eyes, slightly hunched back, looking around seventy years old, but far less spirited than ninety-year-old Yi Zheng. Song Kiki, Zhuang Qinyan sat down close to her, and the screen was switched to projection mode, did you have a serious illness when you were a child? Have you been to the hospital? I don't get sick. Song Ku shook her head her body was very strong, and she rarely had even a cold or fever. You see, this is your genetic report. I've marked several DNA deletions with nitrogen-containing bases, peptide chain fragments with breaks and losses, significantly affecting both copies. Currently, we don't rule out the possibility of meiosis or translocation, but this unknown sequence is different. Song Ku, listening, began to stare blankly, pulling a cereal bar from her pocket and mechanically stuffing it into her mouth. 
crunch the crisp sound of chewing interrupted Zhuang Qinyan's analysis. He abruptly turned his head, meeting Song Ke's puffed up cheeks. The two stared at each other for a second. Song Ke desperately swallowed, like an unlucky student caught daydreaming in class, honestly saying, Sorry, I don't understand. Zhuang Qinyan, no, it's my fault. He immediately changed his approach, tailoring his words to her, in short, there are some issues with your genetic composition. I suspect. I suspect your grandfather may have had you undergo genetic modification. He couldn't bring himself to say this sentence. Song Ku was an orphan, dependent on her grandfather from childhood to adulthood. She had only one relative, so saying such a thing was like stabbing a knife into her heart. Zhuang Qinyan raised his palm, paused on Song Ku's cheek for two seconds, and finally patted her head. Genetic problems are like hidden thunder. Just because it hasn't erupted in your past 19 years doesn't mean you can safely pass in the future. Shall we investigate it thoroughly? Don't worry, there won't be any more radiation tests like today. I'll accompany you for every future checkup. It would take a few more days to rebuild Ning Rong's laboratory. The research and equipment foundations there were top-notch in District B. The only concern was his deal with He Chiu Hong and the possibility of leaks. However, he could use other chips to exchange for it. For Song Ku's subsequent examinations, he must personally handle them, controlling every step of the process. Zhuang Qinyan's handsome profile sank into contemplation. The character on his brow remained tight for a long time. Song Ku extended a finger, slowly helping him smooth it out. Although she didn't feel she had any genetic defects, she still nodded, okay. In the next room, Lin Yuyu was searching for information about Ning Rong on the Star Network. Indeed, the terminal privileges in District B were high. With just a refresh, densely packed pages popped up. Lin Yuyu flipped through two pages and then exclaimed unbelievably, this Ning Rong is actually a renowned genetic engineer, on par with Vincent, and officially joined the Qinglan Research Institute in the year 19 of the new calendar. She pulled out the light screen, lightly tapping it twice, and said, Hey, Lin Xiu, come out quickly. A holographic projection flashed, and Lin Xiu, wrapped in a blanket, sat up, rubbing her eyes sleepily and murmuring, Why are you calling me? I stayed up late watching dramas yesterday, so tired. Don't joke. You, an AI, can get tired. Lin Yuyu suddenly found it amusing. I call this simulated sleep, creating an atmosphere, you understand or not. Lin Xiu immediately retorted. I don't understand, I don't understand, Lin Yuyu rolled her eyes, gossipingly asking, Hey, do you know Ning Rong? Dr. Ning. I've heard of him but haven't met him. What's up? He seems to know Zhuang Qinyan. Lin Yuyu revealed an intrigued expression. The Zhuang Qinyan you're talking about, Vincent or Brother Yen? Lin Xiu squinted at her sister. Ah, uh, Lin Yuyu stuttered for a moment. She still hadn't figured out the relationship between these two people. If you're talking about Vincent, they're colleagues, so it's not strange if they know each other. However, Lin Xiu, seemingly thinking of something, chuckled. Dr. Ning's life perfectly confirms a saying, called if you're born with jade, why bother with brilliance? Lin Yuyu became interested, what do you mean? He has a nickname, Eternal Second. As long as Vincent is around, everything can only be second best. He joined Qinglan a year later, became a professor a step slower, published one less paper in a top journal, even got married and had a child later. Huh, by the time I shut down, he was still a bachelor. What? Zhuang Qinyan, I mean, Vincent, got married? Yeah, his marriage was quite sensational at the time. The news was all about Golden Boy and Jade Girl, crossing boundaries, and the background of the woman was very profound. In the end, nothing about her name or pictures was revealed. After Lin Xiu finished talking, she yawned and continued her simulated sleep. Lin Yuyu held the terminal and murmured, Now I'm sure, the man in our team is truly a mysterious one. Onlooker Su Cha asked, Why do you suddenly want to know all this? Lin Yuyu, puzzled, replied, Why? Of course, out of curiosity. I thought Su Cha hesitated for a while and stuttered, He and the captain, that, 
it's not good for you to do this. Pfft. Ha ha ha. Lin Yuyu laughed without any restraint, you don't think I'm interested in him, do you? Su Cha was speechless, and Lin Yuyu continued, how could that be? I clearly like pure little puppies. I thought you knew. Su Cha's actions of tapping his fingertips suddenly stopped, and he looked at her silently, lips tightly pursed. Lin Yuyu's lips curled slightly. After teasing, she ran away, comfortably nestled in the rocking chair, opened the projection and started remote work. There was a piercing gaze behind her, but she pretended not to notice, humming a light tune, I like the smile of a puppy, like a gentle rain sprinkling into my heart. Anyway, it's her own song, so she can change the lyrics as she pleases. The chat box beeped, and Jennifer sent a heart emoji along with a staged photo of a table covered in rose petals, accompanied by a sweet voice message, Darling I've booked the Galaxy restaurant. Would you honor me with your presence for a starlit dinner tonight? Lin Yuyu glanced at Su Cha, and indeed, he saw the chat content. His brows furrowed, and his ears were almost standing up. Lin Yuyu intentionally typed loudly, why suddenly invite me to dinner? Jennifer quickly replied, because you're my lifesaver dad always said, a drop of water should be repaid with a bucket of water. Lin Yuyu smiled, it's repaying a drop of water with a gushing spring, but we're friends, no need to be so formal. Jennifer's melodious tone paused, and her tone returned to normal, oh, actually, the words just now were taught by Yin Xiao, that illiterate. I'm very cultured myself. Because we're friends, I want to see you, I want to be your best girlfriend. The high chair made a harsh noise on the floor, and Su Cha stood up abruptly, I'm going to train. He clenched his shoulders, lowered his head, and walked out of the room in large strides. Lin Yuyu casually sent a voice message, Sorry, Jennifer, I can't have dinner with you alone. My little dog at home is upset, and I have to comfort him. Jennifer sent a crying emoji, Let's talk about business then. Have you seen the group tasks today? The pin task released today, is your team interested in participating together? In the living room, Su Xing was focused on painting. Fang Zixiu casually glanced over and commented, Wow, you're a master of abstract art. Su Xing drew a distorted face of a female monster, resembling the white bone demon from a storybook, being beaten by a group of awakeners. One big man unleashed a fierce snowstorm with both hands, and colorful text next to it was deliberately labeled height 3 meters, Hero Su. As Su Xing colored, he explained with annoyance, this is the old witch, and this. The most powerful one is my sister, and then the tallest is me. We teamed up to kill the old witch. Fang Jishu, rubbing his chin, seriously observed for a while, there's a problem with your painting. Su Xing immediately turned to him, what's the problem? Me, Fang Jishu pointed at himself, you even drew Tao Tao, but where am I? Su Xing blinked his eyes, jumped off the bar stool, and grabbed the drawing board as he ran to the room, muttering, you don't know how to fight anyway. Fang Jishu rolled up his sleeves and threatened him, you little brat, feeling itchy, huh? Who says I can't fight? I picked up all the crystals. As the two were playfully wrestling in the crowded living room, Su Cha came out from Lin Yuyu's room and silently sat on the sofa. With expressive big eyes, Su Xing asked him what happened. Fang Jishu, panting from the pursuit, shook his head, indicating he had no idea. After a while, Song Ku and Zhuang Qinyan also came out. Zhuang Qinyan casually asked, Where's Lu Xiaoyu? Fang Jishu replied, He went out, said he wanted to toady his hair. Coincidentally, the apartment door opened at that moment. The familiar wheelchair glided in, but the person sitting on it looked unusually unfamiliar. Jet black hair fell smoothly on the neck side. The young man's pupils changed to a clear brown, and a pair of old-fashioned black-framed glasses sat on his nose. Due to prolonged indoor stays, his face had a pale, delicate complexion. He calmly looked at the stunned crowd and said, I'm back. Song Ku looked at his empty legs, then at his face, and finally reacted, Lu Xiaoyu. Lu Xiaoyu pushed his glasses and responded with a touch of arrogance, hmm. Song Ku, shocked, blurted out in a local dialect, why did you change like this? Lu Xiaoyu glanced at Zhuang Qinyan, raised his chin, and said, 
because I invaded the terminal in District B and caused a little, very little trouble. Of course, I wiped out all traces, confident that I did it seamlessly. But for safety reasons, and considering someone's past experience, I decided to do some disguise. Oh Song Ku expressed understanding. She stole a glance at Zhuang Qinyan and couldn't help but think, you two have quite similar hobbies, huh? Lin Yuyu came out of the room holding the terminal, found everyone gathered in the living room, and walked over. Upon seeing them, she laughed. Oh, you two difficult brothers, sitting in wheelchairs together, and now playing cosplay together with glasses. Zhuang Qinyan and Lu Xiaoyu exchanged a glance, then turned their eyes away in mutual disdain. Lin Yuyu waved, Song Kur, come over and take a look at this task. Should we take it? Song Ku ran over quickly. After people dispersed, Zhuang Qinyan stood next to Lu Xiaoyu and asked seriously, Did you find any clues about that anonymous IP? He handed over the sender's address he got from Lucia to Lu Xiaoyu for investigation. Lu Xiaoyu replied, That person is quite cautious, using his own layer of encryption, but it's all in vain. I cracked it in less than five minutes. Based on the last signal source location, he should be in the eastern part of the alliance. But there's something strange. He didn't use a terminal to connect instead, it's the lowest level local area network. Isn't this kind of antique outdated long ago? And his outer IP is fixed, but the inner one keeps changing. I estimate he has at least 1,500 devices. Lu Xiaoyu's glasses were a bit big, and as he spoke, they slid down. He adjusted them uncomfortably and casually said, if it weren't for the network level being too low, I would suspect it's someone from your side doing garbage network testing. Besides the research institute, where else would you need so many devices? No, Zhuang Qinyan suddenly spoke, there's another possibility. He's in an internet cafe. Lu Xiaoyu looked puzzled. Being from District B Aetergia, he had been exposed to the most cutting-edge computer technology since childhood and was completely unfamiliar with this unfamiliar term. However, Lu Xiaoyu wouldn't casually reveal his ignorance. He subtly moved his fingertips and quickly opened the terminal to search. In some backward D or F districts, there are many people who use this method to sneak into the star network. Zhuang Qinyan paused as he spoke, and the anonymous sender Ming District F Internet Cafe. In a flash, all the clues in his mind connected, leading to an unimaginable thought. Song Ku saw the mission mentioned by Lin Yuyu in the District B-10 High-Level Awakeners matching conference channel. Dozens of large rehabilitation, nursing, and dietary suppliers in District B jointly initiated an S-Level commission, as of 2300 hours yesterday. The Foreign Trade Department of the Elderly People's Nation in District A-5 has been out of contact for 21 days. Special line communication is unavailable, and all related cooperation has been completely suspended. A-level or above Awakener teams are requested to go to District A-5 to confirm the situation. Accepting the mission will grant the team 48 hours of supplier access permission. Song Ku was momentarily stunned. This was her first mission related to District A. She quickly gathered everyone for a meeting and expressed her gratitude, thank you all. Today was the most chaotic day in Song Ku's 19 years of life. From being kidnapped in the early morning, undergoing radiation testing, losing control, falling into a state of killing. To being rescued by her companions, with Yi Zheng mediating, meeting at the government mansion, everything unfolded in the midst of chaos. Fortunately, she had returned to normal, and V587 was unharmed. Starting tomorrow, let's continue to climb the rankings, Song Ku said seriously. We'll settle the score with Yi Chiohong sooner or later. I agree, Fang Jishu said. He Chilhong dared to move against you today because she holds immense power in District B-10 and is accustomed to controlling S-level individuals. Secondly, she looks down on us. We, the A-levels, are insignificant in her eyes, and we're even lower in the rankings. We're not worth a second glance. Lin Yuyu sneered, let her see that, apart from Song Ku being S-7, V-587 also have us. Su Xing banged on the table, charge to the first place in the northern base and defeat the old witch. Su Cha silently nodded, expressing his support. 
No, that's not right, Song Ku shook her head, her eyes filled with a determined resolve. Not just in the northern base, but the first place in the entire alliance. Chapter, 191 Let's go to District A5, Elderly People's Nation. Northern base, outskirts of Xinjiang City. A helicopter was slowly descending, its massive rotor buzzing and generating strong gusts of wind that forced pedestrians to step back. The cabin door opened, and a member of the Tustin team in black combat gear lowered a swaying rope. He effortlessly grabbed it and descended one after another, performing with a flare as if in a movie. The first to touch the ground was a tall young man wearing pilot sunglasses, a dazzling ruby earring catching the light, exuding an arrogant disregard for others' well-being. He waved towards the other group waiting on the opposite side, Hey, Captain Song, traffic was jammed on the morning route. Sorry for being two minutes late. Yin Zhao's gray eyes, seen through the sunglasses, scanned the large vehicles parked on the side of the road, and his eyebrows slowly lifted, Oh, District B Starship. No wonder you have the confidence to have us gather here. Needless to say, the other group waiting in place was V587. They had repeated their morning routine and borrowed another starship. Yu Yu. Jennifer had just landed, her deep red curls swaying as she eagerly rushed towards Lin Yu Yu, opening her arms to embrace her. Su Cha stepped in with an expressionless face, blocking her way. Jennifer glared at him, What are you doing? I want to get close to the beauty. Su Cha remained unmoved, his tone cold and unyielding, stalker fans are not allowed, please maintain a safe distance. Jennifer exclaimed, what the heck? She had just successfully arranged a joint activity between the two teams, no, two alliances. What did this man mean by calling her a stalker fan? Get on first, we're in a hurry. Song Ku cleared her throat and raised her voice. The two groups quickly boarded the starship, the cabin door closed, and facing the crowd bustling towards the northern base in the glow of the morning sun and mist, the silver-white flying starship quietly departed. Inside the starship, there were twelve Tustin members in total, spreading out to find seats. Yin Zhao's two long legs moved swiftly, heading straight for Song Ku. Just as he was about to sit down next to her, he suddenly noticed someone already there Zhuang Qinyan in white casual attire, golden-rimmed glasses, reading a light screen with a gentle and perfect profile. Yin Xiao sneered inwardly, what's up with him? It's not like they're on vacation. Wearing all white, isn't he afraid of getting bloodstains? He casually sat down directly across from the two, as if passing the time, dismantling and reassembling the Hellcat, its cold mechanical parts emitting a chilly gleam. Zhuang Qinyan raised his eyes to glance at him, showing no emotion. Once everyone was seated, a Tustin team member spoke up loudly, Captain, none of us have been to District A, and we don't know much about the elderly people's nation. Can you introduce the background of this mission to everyone? Yin Xiao completed the assembly of the Hellcat with a click sound, placing it in front of Zhuang Qinyan. Then, he leisurely stood up and said, Sure. Without a word, Zhuang Qinyan's wheelchair glided forward, taking the lead to enter the aisle, brushing past Yin Xiao, and stopping in front of everyone. I'll do it. Tustin member. Who is this guy? V587, the peacock has opened its feathers again. Yin Xiao generously extended his hand in a pleased gesture, then crossed his arms and stepped aside, with a face full of anticipation. Zhuang Qinyan nodded indifferently, I am V587's technical consultant. I'll be introducing the relevant information about this mission. Feel free to ask if anything is unclear. Someone below whistled lightly, making a joke about him stealing the limelight, but there was no malicious intent. Zhuang Qinyan paid no attention, opened the screen, and projected the alliance map. The new Asia alliance currently has five district as, representing the highest centralized authority for different functions. They are, Central Court A1 for political center, Amira A2 for military command, Ikang A3 for economic council, Loponi A4 for cultural academy, and elderly people's nation A5, a welfare paradise. Except for the elderly people's nation, the other four districts do not provide household registration services, have no local residents, and entry and exit are based on admission permissions. Even so, 90% of the alliance's people, 
throughout their lives, cannot step into any district A. Zhuang Qingyan's storytelling was clear and organized, his voice seemingly possessing a peculiar persuasive quality. On the Tustin side, the initially disdainful expressions gradually disappeared, replaced by focused and serious expressions. Song Ku held her chin, listening with relish, while Yin Xiao stared at her face without blinking, his fingertips subtly moving, feeling strangely itchy. He took out a bottle of specially provided functional drink from his tactical backpack, grapefruit flavored, and gently pushed it towards Song Ku. The concept of the elderly people's nation originated from the renowned utopianist, Smiral, Zhuang Qinyan continued calmly. He believed that individuals who had made significant contributions to human development should enjoy their retirement in the best environment, with the most comprehensive welfare conditions. Smiral attempted to mobilize the entire alliance to create a retirement home resembling paradise, dedicated to caring for those distinguished individuals. Upon hearing this, whispers arose in the rear cabin. It sounds reasonable. If you've contributed to all of humanity and worked hard your whole life, it's only right to enjoy your later years. The recommendations from this expert seem quite sensible. Zhuang Qingyan's eyelashes drooped, and the smile at the corner of her lips gradually turned cold. Smiral's original intention isn't necessarily wrong, but unfortunately, he couldn't see through human nature. The best environment and the most comprehensive welfare always protect the privileged class. As long as you have enough power, enough status, and enough wealth, even crying children and blood-stained criminals can knock on the doors of the elderly people's nation and enjoy the Alliance's best infrastructure and meticulous care. The household registration in District A5 is like a life clearance card. Once you have it, you don't need to struggle for a lifetime. You can stand at the height others admire. As various interests continuously pour in, it gradually loses its initial function and becomes a paradise for the powerful. The founder of the elderly people's nation, Smiral, was also sentenced to a hundred years in prison. Damn! Using our taxpayers' money to support a bunch of social parasites? You were just an electrician before. How much tax did you pay? I own a company. My heart is bleeding. The two members who joined Tustin after the apocalypse gritted their teeth. Although others remained silent, their hearts were filled with mixed emotions, feeling a sense of pity for the situation in the elderly people's nation and the fate Smiral suffered. In the quiet atmosphere, occasional clouds drifted past the porthole. They had already left the range of the northern base and were speeding towards the northern part of the alliance. Zhuang Qinyan lightly touched the screen, switching to the mission page. Returning to the mission itself, because the residents of the elderly people's nation do not engage in production or work, and all resources are transported from the outside. Its only management department is also called the Foreign Trade Department, responsible for supplier selection and procurement. With the loss of contact for a whole 21 days, the entire chain of interests between the two sides has been completely severed. Our client, who can't sit still, can understand. What Zhuang Qinyan didn't mention was that there was something subtly strange about this matter. The system determined the difficulty of public commissions on its own, and the client simply asked them to investigate the elderly people's nation. So why was the mission rated as S? Could it be that the elderly people's nation had fallen victim to a zombie tide or savage beasts? Absolutely impossible. Not to mention its unique geographical location, the city defense of the elderly people's nation is under the control of Amira, the strongest military force, making it virtually impregnable. With the mission background understood, everyone had a clearer picture. Since the elderly people's nation is located in the endless sea at the northernmost part of the alliance, Bordering the Karyo Empire and the Loose Federation, even with the District B starship at full speed, the journey would take around five days to reach. Zhuang Qinyan returned to his seat and smiled tenderly at Song Ku, do you understand? If there's anything unclear, I'll explain it to you in detail. Song Ku proudly lifted her head, I understand everything. That's good, Zhuang Qinyan completely ignored Yin Xiao across from her. Just as he sat back down, he suddenly noticed a bottle of pink drink on the table. He nonchalantly reached over, took it, and unscrewed the cap, taking a sip. Thanks, you're quite considerate, huh? You know I get thirsty when I talk. Yin Xiao couldn't stop him in time, hey, that's for Song Ku. Really? 
Zhuang Qinyan turned to look at Song Ku, looking melancholic, I accidentally drank your drink. You won't blame me, will you? Song Ku waved her hand generously, it's okay, go ahead. Zhuan Qinyan turned back, his peach blossom eyes curved as he smiled warmly. Yin Xiao, he had never seen such a shameless man. On the other side, once the starship entered stable flight, the Tustin members enthusiastically started chatting. There are only 50 slots for this mission, and our northern base is sending the least, only three teams. Another team is Blue Flame, right? Hey, speaking of which, did Shizai not go? Doesn't he never miss an S-level commission? Haven't you seen the official statement from the Awakener Department yesterday? I was shopping with my wife yesterday, what happened? Zeigler and Shizai were besieged by a large-scale beast tide during their mission, including a rare fifth-level beast. They almost got wiped out. Shizai's awakened energy shattered, and he dropped back to A9. Director he was suspended from duty because of it. What the heck, an S-level awakener getting downgraded? Isn't that explosive news? Why don't I know about it? Am I the only one who doesn't know? Hey, V587, do you guys know? The members of V587's Beast Tide could hardly keep the smiles on their faces, haha we don't know. Innocently, Su Xing said, uncles and aunts, yesterday we rested and slept at home all day. Song Ku, the globally rare fifth level beast, said, dot. Five days later. Northern part of the alliance, endless sea. Early in the morning, Lu Xiaoyu disengaged the automatic pilot, summoned the control panel, and switched to low orbit mode. Then, he pressed the intercom button and spoke in a flat and calm tone, wake up, we've reached the sea of misfortune. I will manually pilot the starship and pass through the navigational hazard zone. Friendly reminder, fasten your seatbelts, or bear the consequences. Outside the porthole, the morning sun painted the sky with a golden glow, casting a radiant light on the gently undulating sea, resembling a serene and embracing elder. As an islander, Song Ku had grown up by the seaside and was very familiar with the ocean. However, this particular area gave her a completely different feeling. Beneath the calm surface, it seemed to hide a turbulent crisis. She turned her head and curiously asked, why is it called the Sea of Misfortune? Yin Xiao, having just finished washing up and holding a toothbrush, came back and casually explained, because misfortune descends here. Hundreds of airplane and ship disappearances occur here every year, and the phenomenon remains unexplained by science. Oh, Song Ku nodded in understanding. At that moment, Lu Xiaoyu's morning announcement sounded, and her expression changed. She quickly fastened her seatbelt. At the same time, other V587 members heard that Lu Xiaoyu was switching to manual control. They instantly rushed back to their positions, their expressions uniformly serious. Only then did Su Xing, almost imperceptibly, grasp the armrest, and even Yin Xiao hesitated for a moment. With a sudden realization, he threw away his toothbrush, took a step forward, and swiftly buckled his seatbelt across from Song Ku. The Tustin team members remained oblivious to this, continuing their cheerful conversations and carefree movements. Jennifer lazily sat at the mobile snack bar, lifting her flower-adorned fingers to enjoy an iced coffee. The next moment, the entire starship flipped in mid-air, engines roaring violently as it charged towards the vast sea like an unbridled wild horse. Ah, XX. Jennifer was splattered with coffee all over her head, her beautiful face a mess. However, she wasn't the most unfortunate. The Tustin team members standing in the aisle, caught off guard, tumbled and rolled like bowling balls, colliding with each other in twos and threes. In the cockpit, Lu Xiaoyu was completely focused, pushing the energy system to the maximum. The calm sea gradually revealed ferocious fangs, black clouds overhead changing rapidly with lightning and thunder. Layers of huge waves splashed against the front window, and black, terrifying mist encroached from all directions. Although the navigation had long since failed, Lu Xiaoyu, relying on pre-memorized mechanical coordinates, decisively changed direction. The massive starship, like a sailing ship breaking through the waves, plowed through obstacles, advancing at high speed. In the rear cabin, cries of despair filled the air. Jennifer's long hair was in disarray as she clung to the bar like a koala. 
But when she looked up, she saw Yin Xiao sitting calmly in place, securely fastened by his seatbelt, witnessing their embarrassment and bursting into laughter. Jennifer angrily exclaimed, Yin Xiao, faced with great danger, you abandoned your daughter. What kind of man are you? Others weakly echoed, yeah, Captain, Yu Yuri not a real man. Thirty minutes later, the speed of the starship finally returned to stability, and the sounds of vomiting echoed in the rear cabin. Zhuang Qinyan gently reminded, we've arrived. Song Ku looked out of the porthole with anticipation. The sky was clear, seagulls soared, and in the center of the vast sea, a magnificent and dreamlike island stood quietly. This was one of the five major districts as in the alliance and the destination of their journey the elderly people's nation. Chapter 192 Can you swim? Prepare for landing. The starship announcement sounded again, and this time, there was no need for Lu Xiaoyu's reminder. All crew members in the rear cabin neatly and uniformly clicked their seat belts in place. After approaching the periphery of the island, a transparent barrier appeared in the sky, and holographic signs automatically lit up, please use the supplier channel. Following that was a small bright square area, please present your admission authorization here. Lu Xiaoyu decelerated and turned the direction, and the starship hovered neatly in the highlighted area. Song Ku and Yin Xiao opened their terminals, pulled up the temporary admission obtained after accepting the mission, and two seconds later, the barrier opened a passage, just large enough for the starship to pass through. The aerial signs also turned into clear navigation maps, please continue driving three kilometers along the current road and land at the splendid tower. It had to be said that the visitor system of the elderly people's nation was planned very reasonably, just with a somewhat inexplicable soft coercion. They had no other choice but to follow the route provided by the system, and there was no possibility of I'll go around first at all. At the top of the splendid tower, there was a luxurious helipad. Lu Xiaoyu found a vacant space, smoothly landed the starship, and just as he stabilized, the ground passage folded open, and the entire starship was slowly taken into the building, transported to the temporary parking level. After the two teams came out, they could only take the observation elevator, which had only one button inside, visitor hall. Ding the elevator door opened, revealing a spacious banquet hall, and surprisingly, there were already quite a few people on the scene. Song Kut sensed it slightly and was surprised. These people were all awakeners. The chaotic and diverse awakened energies were like those in a vegetable market. Why are there so many people? Fifty teams, there must be those who arrived earlier than us, Zhuang Qinyan said. The northern base was too far away, and they rushed non-stop, taking a full five days. Not only the alliance, Yin Xiao pointed in two directions, but people from the Karyo Empire and the Loose Federation are also here. Song Ku looked in the direction he pointed. Although it was unclear what permissions the other two countries used to enter, the Awakeners in the hall were clearly divided into three groups, and their differences were apparent just by their appearances. 90% of the cities in the Loose Federation were located in the ice fields, with a cold climate. Most of the Awakeners there had high noses and deep-set eyes. Both men and women were tall and slender, looking like they had explosive combat capabilities. Among them, the most eye-catching was a pair of intimate-looking lovers. The man had a sturdy physique, nearly two meters tall, resembling a powerful polar bear, while the woman, estimated to be around one. On the other hand, in the Karyo Empire, due to being an immigrant nation, the Awakeners had various skin colors, and their irises were colorful. At first glance, it was challenging to determine their nationality. What are they doing here? Jennifer snorted lightly. Yin Xiao chuckled, Girl, your grandfather is, after all, from Karyo. Are you forgetting your roots? Jennifer was unashamed and even proud, but my father made an enlightened decision against our ancestors. I am a born and bred alliance person. Zhuang Qinyan looked at the three different forces in the hall with a meaningful smile, the elderly people's nation is located at the intersection center of the three-country sea area. The residents are not only from the alliance, and they probably heard the news and came to join in. It's reasonable. Sister suddenly, Su Xing pulled Song Ku's sleeve and stared straight at someone across the hall. It was an awakener from the Karyo Empire, and he looked quite young. Freckles adorned his tender face, and his thick, 
curly reddish-brown hair framed his face. His eyes were a clear ocean blue, and despite his young age, he was already close to one. Tustin's electric-type awakener leaned over to gossip, his name is Dylan, quite famous. Su Xing blinked, why is he famous? Dylan is from Cario and is also the youngest S-class awakener in the world. He reached S2 level at just 10 years old. His ability is in the mysterious category called Nightmare Descends, which can unconsciously make people's bodies fall asleep while keeping their minds awake, creating hallucinatory nightmares similar to sleep paralysis. After hearing this, Su Xing pursed his lips. His self-esteem took a heavy blow. He was happy to be able to take on S-class missions, but here was someone who reached S2 level at just 10 years old. While he struggled to grow to one. It was truly a crushing defeat, both in abilities and height. Comrade Su Xiaoxing became a complete emo. Yin Xiao. Several awakeners with alliance faces walked over, and among them, a short-haired woman, elegant and agile, greeted them proactively. The northern base is distant. I thought you wouldn't arrive until at least tomorrow. I hitched a ride. Yin Xiao smiled, raised his hand to try to put it around Song Ke's shoulder, but considering it might be offensive, he temporarily changed it to a padding motion. This is captain of V587 and also my friend, Song Ku. You, Gu Rui, captain of the Peace Dove team in Minlin B16 district. Jennifer stepped back, whispered to Lin Yuyu, I swear on my sixth sense as an illegitimate daughter, she's interested in my dad and wants to be my stepmother. Stepmother? Then who is your dad's legal wife? Lin Yuyu laughed. There, Jennifer discreetly pointed at Song Ku, hasn't entered the door yet, a long way to go. Feeling a chill behind her, Jennifer rubbed her arm. As she turned around, a handsome young man in a wheelchair was expressionlessly staring at her. Jennifer's magical sixth sense kicked in again, and she quickly changed her tone, actually, my dad continuing to be single is quite good, really. In the Peace Dove team, a man with rainbow-colored hair in the back exaggeratedly exclaimed, V587? Never heard of it. I guess you don't even have a ranking in the Alliance. Is your northern base so short-handed that you're randomly picking a team to make up the numbers? We do have a ranking, Song Ko argued seriously, currently, we are ranked 235,706. What rank? Rainbow Head was stunned for a good three seconds, even scratched his ear. Then he burst into laughter along with his teammates, ha ha ha. Did you guys hear that? How many numbers did she just say? Rainbow Head's exaggerated tone attracted the attention of many people. Is this your level? Did you deliberately bring in an A-class to act as a new B? Are you A-class? No, Song Ko honestly shook her head. Rainbow Head then asked Lu Xiaoyu, what about you? A-class. Lu Xiaoyu couldn't be bothered to look at him and coldly spit out a word, no. Hey, there's also a guy in a wheelchair, Rainbow Head turned to the other side, amusing himself, bro, are you disabled people having a party here? Are you A-class? Zhuang Qinyan folded his hands together and politely said, of course not, how could I be A-class? The four A-class members of V587 exchanged glances. Similarly, Yin Xiao and others who knew Song Ke's true level had the same reaction. This rainbow-haired guy was really something. Was it luck that he got it wrong each time? Or was it bad luck that he always managed to pick an S-class? Truly incomparable luck. Enough, Yang Xiaobo, say one more word, and I'll have you roll back to Min Lin, Gu Rui reprimanded with a cold face. Yang Xiaobo raised his hand to his mouth, mimicking a zipper motion. Yin Xiao chuckled and ignored him, why is everyone gathered here? Because we can't leave Gu Rui calmly dropped a bomb, the elderly people's nation's weather simulation system is malfunctioning. Weather simulation system? Song Ku quickly glanced at Zhuang Qinyan. That name sounded familiar. Gu Rui took out a terminal and displayed the environmental index, you also entered through the sky route, right? Following the navigation all the way indoors, so you didn't feel it. The current temperature outside is 38 C. The sunlight is glaring, and the heat radiation intensity has exceeded 13 times the normal post-apocalyptic level. 
staying outdoors for an extended period can easily cause mutations. Somebody tried to go out just now, and within five minutes, their awakened energy went haywire. Helpless, they had to retreat. Did you report it for repair? Yin Xiao asked. We've already contacted the Qinglan Research Institute, but Gu Rui sighed, after the apocalypse, many advanced repairers suffered casualties, and currently, they can't spare the manpower. The earliest they can arrive is two days later. Sister Rui, what's the use of telling them? They can't fix it anyway. Yang Xiaobo started blabbering again, unable to stop his mouth. Gu Rui took a deep breath, turned her eyes away from him, and rolled her eyes, Yang Xiaobo. All right, all right, I won't say anything more. Yang Xiaobo instantly conceded. Gu Rui nodded apologetically to Song Ku, sorry, he has a sharp tongue, likes to boast, but he's not a bad person. Song Ku frowned slightly. Their admission was only for 48 hours, and in two days, it would all be over. But wait, if there's radiation outside, what about the residents here? Did they turn into zombies? Someone in Tustin's team asked in confusion. Do you think they're idiots? If they sense danger, they would definitely hide first, like in basements or air raid shelters, and then send out distress signals, a companion reasoned convincingly. The problem is Gu Rui said in a deep voice, we haven't received any signals, and we can't contact any organizations. Everyone fell silent after hearing this, disbelief flashing across their faces. Suddenly, someone stood up in the corner, an awakener who ignored his companion's attempt to stop him, insisting on going out. He shouted, what's there to be afraid of? Not every bit of radiation will cause mutations. It's a matter of probability. I'll be back before my awakened energy goes haywire. Gu Rui quickly explained, they were the first team to come in, hoping to take the lead. Seeing more and more people, they probably couldn't sit still. The polar bear couple not far away glanced at the person who spoke, had a brief conversation in a low voice, and made no move. The person smashed a window, leaped onto the balcony, then jumped to the adjacent ribbon bridge. He strode into the sunlight, his back disappearing in an instant. About seven or eight minutes later, he nonchalantly strolled back, I circled nearby, and there's no one in the entire splendid tower. He spread his hands, basking in the sunlight, and casually smiled at his companions, see, I'm perfectly fine. My awakened energy is stable. I told you, radiation is a matter of probability. Top his body suddenly swayed, a piece of rotten flesh falling from his face. Captain. His teammates in the hall panicked. The person absent-mindedly wiped his face, and another piece of decaying flesh fell off. Under the intense radiation, his eye pupils rapidly turned gray, teeth bled and fell out, his appearance quickly resembling that of a zombie. What's happening? Before he could finish his sentence, his last bit of sanity disappeared, turning him into a full-fledged mutant zombie. Emitting a deep, hoarse roar from his throat, light orbs flickering in his palms, he pounced toward them. From leaving to coming back, the entire process took less than ten minutes, and this person transformed from a human into a ferocious zombie. Bang, bang other awakeners in the building quickly took action, eliminating him. The martyr's body lay quietly on the ground. After this incident, no one dared to go out without permission. Chapter, 193 Can you swim? Some smart individuals sent the situation back to the system platform. After consulting with the client, awakeners from the Alliance team received a new prompt. New side mission, please restore the ecological environment of elderly people's country district A5 as soon as possible. The reward for this mission will be calculated separately. Song Ku quietly walked to the side and gestured for Zhuang Qinyan to come over. T014. Like a street secret agent, Song Ku whispered the code. This was the serial number of the out of control weather simulation system in Hua City. At that time, only she and Zhuang Qinyan were part of V587, and only they knew the details. Zhuang Qinyan immediately understood Elderly People's Country's T001 is a first generation machine, and it's also the only simulation system used in District A. Do you want me to shut it down? Can you shut it down? Yes. Zhuang Qinyan smiled, 
I know the central location of T001. If we have Lu Xiaoyu's help, it won't take 14 days. But the difficulty of this matter isn't in the simulation system. I believe there are other hacker type awakeners at the scene. The key is the radiation outside. As he spoke, he suddenly looked up, staring at Song Ku intensely. Song Ku, you're not thinking of. With the current radiation, how much is the excess? Song Ku changed the subject. The calculation of radiation was a very complex formula, but Xuan Qinyan quickly glanced at the environmental data and almost instantly provided an answer, equivalent to about 30%. Song Ku nodded and then pointed to herself, I'll go find the central hub. She wasn't showing off. Although the radiation test at Ning Rong's laboratory had caused her pain, Song Ku now had a deeper understanding of her awakened energy. Within a radiation excess of 100%, her body wouldn't be affected at all instead, her awakened energy would slightly increase. This side mission seemed tailor-made for V587. Your abnormal radiation and unknown genes inside your body haven't been fully examined yet, Zhuang Qinyan hesitated, a rare occurrence. If you enter a strong radiation environment again, and if anything unexpected happens. Song Ku patted his shoulder, reassuringly saying, don't worry, I know my situation. Recalling Ning Rong's test report, if one analyzed the data alone, the impact of 30% excess radiation on Song Ku was practically negligible. Her real tolerance limit was above 130%. Zhuang Qinyan remained silent for a while. Song Ku patted him again and again, saying, let me go. Okay, you can go. Take the communicator with you and stay in constant contact, Zhuang Qinyan, with a slightly painful chest from the padding, helplessly held her wrist and gently scratched her palm. Also, don't linger. Go and come back as soon as possible. I got it. Song Ku made an okay sign with her other hand. The two returned to the team, and Song Ku informed everyone about her decision to go outside to find the T001 central hub. Both Tustin's team and V587 were shocked beyond words, dot. What? Captain Song, don't act impulsively. Yin Xiao frowned, Song Ku, this decision is very unwise. If you're in a hurry, we can push Qinglan Institute again. Tustin's team members also joined in persuading, yeah, Captain Song, you don't need to be so sacrificial. Anyway, everyone is here, and no one can complete the mission. Hey! V587. Aren't you stopping your captain? Song Cook picked up her backpack and zipped up her jacket to the top. Don't worry, just wait here. Yin Xiao wasn't naive and quickly guessed something, do you have a way to resist radiation? Song Ku nodded vaguely. About the secrets of her body, besides Shuang Qinyan and her teammates, she didn't plan to tell anyone. After the initial shock, members of V587 calmed down. Su Xing scratched his head, his mind in confusion. T001. T014. His inability to remember suddenly began to attack him. He instinctively looked at Zhuang Qinyan, and Lin Yuyu and Fang Zixiu also turned their gazes in unison. Song Ku wasn't one to act recklessly even if we consider the worst-case scenario and her thoughts were immature, Zhuang Qinyan would surely intervene. Then they noticed that Zhuang Qinyan nodded imperceptibly. V587. Look, look, these two are whispering behind their backs again. The group quickly returned to normal. Fang Zixiu sat back on the sofa, reviewing the treatment methods for radiation sickness. Lin Yuyu took out sunglasses, a hat, and sunscreen gloves from her bag, putting them on Song Ku. Zhuang Qinyan turned to Lu Xiaoyu, after obtaining the central hub of T001, how long can you crack it? Lu Xiaoyu snorted, just a first generation machine, half an hour is enough. Pfft. Song Ku couldn't help but laugh. She glanced at Zhuang Qinyan and awkwardly pulled down her hat. In a rare occurrence, Lu Xiaoyu sensed a subtle embarrassment on Zhuang Qinyan's face. His tea-colored pupils blinked, cleverly realizing something. Have you tried to crack a firewall? How long did it take you? Zhuang Qinyan turned coldly. Let's get ready to move. Lu Xiaoyu persistently brought his head closer. 
How long did you take? A day? A week? Why won't you tell me? You must have taken a long time, right? Shut up. I remember. Su Xing suddenly exclaimed. T014, is that the one you spent 14 days repairing? Lu Xiaoyu, pfft. His mood visibly improved. The mechanical arm fluctuated up and down, and he happily walked away. Zhuang Qinyan narrowed his eyes, expressionless, staring at Su Xing. Su Xing touched the back of his collar for the first time in a long time, and ran behind Song Ku to hide. Five minutes later, Song Ku put on her hat, sunglasses, and earphones, turned around, and walked towards the broken window. She stepped over the body on the ground, raised her hand towards her companions with her back turned, and then right in front of everyone's eyes jumped outside. Dylan, with his sea blue eyes, flashed a mocking curve. Idiot, adults really underestimate themselves. The polar bear couple exchanged a glance, and the tall man spoke heavily, Veronica, did you sense the person who just went out? Veronica, an S5 level precognitive awakener, looked solemn. She shook her head slowly. Vladimir, I can't discern her level, but she's a tank. At Veronica's fingertips, a tarot card suddenly appeared, the chariot in the upright position. The chariot card, a symbol of strength, was closely related to power. In the upright position, it meant overcoming obstacles and achieving success. Vladimir lowered his head and made the sign of the cross with his fingers. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come. One hour later. Bang! Bang! The main entrance of the splendid tower was knocked, and the awakeners inside changed their expressions, instantly preparing for battle. Yin Xiao walked casually to the center of the field, effortlessly holding a super-powered shotgun in his hand, aimed at the restless crowd. Everyone, don't be nervous, relax a bit. It's just our friend who came back. Are you sure it's your friend who came back? Questioned Karyo's awakener with a cold tone. Of course, Yin Xiao pushed and loaded the gun, revealing a sarcastically kind smile. Didn't she knock on the door? How polite. Lu Xiaoyu's six mechanical arms extended simultaneously. Before everyone could react, he swiftly operated the control panel, opening the main door. The sunlight was glaring, and everyone quickly retreated, moving into the shadows. Then, they suddenly looked up, exclaiming. They saw a machine, exceeding two meters in length, width, and height, slowly walking in. With a loud thud, it slammed onto the ground. Afterward, a young girl's flushed face emerged from the front, sweat beating on her forehead, but her eyes were exceptionally clear. I'm back, so tired. Song Ku gasped for breath. Although she followed Zhuang Qingyan's advice and dismantled the outer shell, leaving only the core components, this machine, made of an unknown material, was exceptionally heavy. She carried it all the way back, fearing any accidental bumps, and she was genuinely exhausted. The hall fell into stunned silence, and the awakeners displayed expressions of disbelief. No way, right? This person stayed under 13 times the radiation for a whole hour, and nothing happened. Song Kook calmed her breathing and then went to Tustin and V587 with a serious expression. Something's not right outside. What's wrong? Everyone, go outside and see you'll understand. Those knowledgeable quickly recognized it as the central control of the weather simulation system. An awakener approached voluntarily, saying, Hey, need help. I'm an A7 level hacker and can try to break in. No need, we have a faster way, Lu Xiaoyu activated the T001 central hub, tapping on the panel, come on, permissions. Zhuang Qinyan glanced at him coldly, cooperating for fingerprint and iris recognition. Lu Xiaoyu's ten fingers worked rapidly, and he hummed something. On closer listening, one could hear him singing, 14 days, it actually took 14 days. Zhuang Qingyan's forehead veins throbbed. That's enough. With one's own strengths, attacking the opponent's weaknesses, what are you so proud of? Lu Xiaoyu remained unfazed. 14 days. After 22 minutes and 20 seconds, as Lu Xiaoyu entered the last line of code, T001 was forcibly shut down. 
Rainbow Head Yang Xiaobo witnessed the entire process, covering his face in disbelief, murmuring, Oh my god! Is my mouth cursed or something? The three weaklings he had just mocked because none of them were even at A level, each of them gave him a slap. What was the background of this V587 team? Why did something that many people couldn't handle become easy when it fell into their hands? Sister Rui, do you think it's not too late for me to apologize now? Yang Xiaobo forced a smile with a bitter face. Song Ko clicked Submit Task on the terminal, and V587's points soared significantly, proudly entering the top 200,000 in the alliance. With the closing of T001, there was a noticeable change in the weather outside. The bright sunlight disappeared, the temperature suddenly dropped, and the gloomy sea breeze roared. Even though it was midsummer, people shivered as if it were freezing. All the awakeners stood up, leaving the splendid tower one by one. Fine drizzles hit their faces, carrying the unique salty scent of the sea. Song Ku and her team also arrived at the side of the ribbon bridge, overlooking the entire island from top to bottom. The city construction of the elderly people's nation lived up to being the top in the entire alliance. Many buildings were beyond their ability to name, floating cinemas, private care centers, immersive restaurants, simulated parks changing themes, and various flying vehicles drifting through the air. The entire city was orderly, all infrastructure operating normally, except there was no one. No traces of human habitation, and it didn't look like it had been invaded by an external force. Everything was in perfect order, yet everything exuded an indescribable sense of strangeness. This dreamlike island, this District A5, this elderly people's nation. It turned out to be an unmistakable deserted city. Song Ku looked up at the sky, cold rain falling on her cheeks. She suddenly noticed that after T001 was shut down, all the seagulls had disappeared. On a nearby rooftop, a perception type awakener suddenly issued a warning, something is approaching us. Song Ku sensed something and looked towards the distance. A speedboat was approaching from the sea, and the awakeners on it shouted across the distance, Hey we relate. Has the mission been completed? Can we still get some soup? The awakeners on the island were silent, no one answering. The person cursed, damn the sea of misfortune. If it weren't for getting lost, I would have been here already. Sister, over there. Su Xing pointed sharply to a certain direction, where continuous shadows were rapidly moving, undulating waves causing the sea to shake violently. Suddenly, a group of whale sharks covered in gray spots leaped out of the sea, their massive bodies rolling half a circle in the air, biting onto the speeding speedboat. Ah! The driver didn't have time to escape his entire body was bitten in half at the waist. The others fell into the sea in panic, hastily releasing their awakened abilities. Unfortunately, the ocean was not a human's domain. Another batch of grotesque monsters burst out of the water, their decayed bodies swimming agilely, chasing and biting the awakeners who fell into the water. Blood sprayed, turning that area into a deep red in an instant. After seeing the monsters clearly, Song Ku swallowed hard. Do you all know how to swim? Chapter 194 The island split open. Song Ku felt very uneasy the tragedy unfolding before her eyes seemed to foreshadow something. Do you all know how to swim? She turned to her companions. Sister, I can do many different swimming styles. Su Xing and Song Ku both came from the District F-177, where most children growing up by the seaside were adept swimmers. Yes. Su Cha, who grew up in the rainforest, underwent rigorous training in swimming was a necessary survival skill. Song Ku felt a bit relieved and then looked at the two difficult brothers sitting in wheelchairs. I used to know how. Lu Xiaoyu was always candid, not deliberately avoiding his own shortcomings. Now, I might need some time to adapt. After breaking his legs, he was thrown into the death prison and hadn't had the chance to go into the water since then. Zhuang Qinyan leaned on the wheelchair, his gaze fixed on the blood-stained sea, wrinkling his nose in disgust. I actually don't like this sport of swimming. Really? Didn't you book the temperature-controlled swimming pool at the dormitory building? The young master, spending money like water, paid ten years' worth of exclusive booking fees in one go. Lu Xiaoyu didn't hesitate to expose his old classmate. 
Zhuang Qingyan's smile remained unchanged, but his tone changed, but I'm quite good at it. Song Ku, you clearly just find the sea water dirty. Among the remaining two, Fang Zhishu honestly shook his head, no, I was too busy with work before, didn't have time to learn. Surprisingly, Lin Yuyu also followed with a sheepish smile, um, yeah, I don't know how either. Ha. Huh. Song Ku's eyes widened slightly. Didn't you shoot an ocean-themed photo shoot? At that time, fans supported her, and the flower boats and billboards along the street looped Lin Yuyu's new song promotional MV, portraying her as a mermaid swimming in clear waters. Song Ku remembered it very clearly. It was all special effects, synthesized to create the pure desire image. Lin Yuyu grabbed Song Ku's shoulder and looked pitiful, I'm actually terrified of water. Song Ku, you must not make me go in. Song Ku fell silent for a moment, once again marveling at how fake the entertainment industry could be. Well, then wear a life jacket, Zhuang Qinyan pulled out life jackets from the space and distributed them to everyone. Be prepared, everyone put them on. As they put on the life jackets, they discussed, why did so many marine beasts suddenly appear? Because we closed T-001, Zhuang Qinyan looked up at the gloomy sky, the strong radiation it originally emitted had the effect of repelling beasts. Marine life tended to avoid it, automatically staying away. Now that it's back to normal, with more awakeners gathering here, they come attracted by the scent. The ribbon bridge where V587 was located was the famous island loop scenic line in the elderly people's nation, rotating slowly around the entire island. As it moved closer to the sea level, the scene gradually became clear. The zombie whales and the extremely ugly giant flounders that appeared later leaped high into the sky, eagerly crashing towards the island with a bam-bam sound. Although they were blocked by an invisible barrier, the ground beneath the feet of the people shook continuously. The awakeners on the island took action one after another. On the side of Tustin, the Yin Shao raised a mortar, activated his ability seeing weakness. The scarlet explosive bomb drew an arc in the air and landed accurately on a zombie whale that had just jumped out of the sea. Its eye sockets were instantly blown open, countless shrapnel pierced its skull, and its bulky body fell heavily, creating a splash of water over ten meters high. Lead by Jennifer, the AOE-type awakeners bombarded wildly, causing fire, thunder, wind, and mist to rise on the sea surface. However, these marine beasts were equally cunning. As soon as they saw the attack starting, they quickly submerged underwater to avoid damage. Gu Rui, from the Peace Dove, was an A5-level powerful control-type awakener. Her ability, called Gathering, could maximize the traction of enemies to specific locations or areas. Coordinating with the AOE-type awakeners, it often had a miraculous effect when facing a tide of corpses. Gu Rui moved her fingers, and whirlpools appeared on the sea surface, sucking nearby beasts together. She glanced at Tustin's side, changed direction, and helped them gather a wave of monsters. Finally, the group attacks had tangible results. Thanks, Sister Rui Tustin's teammate shouted from a distance. The combat capabilities of the Awakeners in the New Asia Alliance were strong, and among them were prominent S-level individuals. Looking at Cario and Luce's side, the most eye-catching should be the pair of polar lovers from the Kazan locomotive, Vladimir and Veronica. Vladimir's ability is distortion, and he is also an excellent boxer. Although he cannot go into the sea, he slightly raised his right hand, covered with old scars, and clenched his fist fiercely. The giant flounder was twisted into a spiral, with hundreds of broken bone spikes piercing into flesh, instantly turning into a bloody string of sashimi. Everyone was quite formidable, except for V587, who looked like a slacker. From the perspective of Rainbow Head Yang Xiaobo, this group of people was cowardly, wearing life jackets early on, and the whole team was goofing off. Surprisingly, the only one taking action was a kid. He immediately regretted his apology he didn't say anything wrong. The ranking of 235,706 definitely made sense. Even if they were skilled at repairing machines, they completely fell apart when it came to killing monstrous beasts. V587 Slacker number 1, Fang Jishu, usually responsible for picking up crystals, found himself almost useless in the current situation. Slacker number 2, 
the wheelchair brothers in charge of logistics and transportation, refrain from getting involved unless absolutely necessary. The remaining two passive slackers, Song Ku and Su Cha, looked at each other. Both were melee fighters they couldn't just jump into the sea to fight, right? Not to mention the current concentration of monsters those awakeners didn't have foresight. They lazily held their spiritual crossbows, shooting into the sea with sporadic attempts. Su Xing, on the other hand, was in his element. He started doing radio calisthenics, and his ice-type ability became significantly more potent in the presence of water. With a set of stretching exercises, the sea instantly froze. Then, with a set of kicking movements, ice blades shot out, skewering various fish into a string. Su Xing sneakily glanced at Dylan, his small face full of pride. Nightmare descends couldn't control the monsters, and Dylan was visibly frustrated. Lin Yu Yu was also pondering new possibilities. Her ability relied on lyrics to function, and different lyrics imposed on different targets resulted in completely different buffs. However, evidently, these marine monsters couldn't understand human language, causing her singing effects to be greatly reduced. Lin Yu Yu closed her eyes, singing a song without lyrics that echoed gently in the air above the sea. When the song finished, nothing happened. Lin Yu Yu couldn't help but feel a bit disappointed she had just expressed her willingness to communicate, but evidently, these monsters couldn't understand. Yang Xiaobo couldn't bear to watch anymore. Why were they doing exercises and singing? Were these people here for a vacation? Could they be more serious? After half an hour of concerted efforts from everyone, the sea monsters disappeared without a trace, and the floating corpses drifted away with the waves. The crisis in the elderly people's nation was averted. The powered individuals prepared to conduct a comprehensive search of the entire island. As they were leaving, Song Ku looked back at the Crimson Sea. Was the crisis really resolved? Six hours later. Click. Song Ku twisted the pull ring, and the sweet and thick hot corn juice poured into her throat, warming her entire abdomen. The weather was continuously gloomy and rainy. She blew into her cupped hands, but unfortunately, her fingers were still icy cold. There were many colorful small pavilions along the streets of the elderly people's nation. These mobile restaurant-style booths offered various flavors, and without payment or verification, passers-by could take out warm food cooked on-site by machines. Similar facilities couldn't exist in the District F-177 district. If they were placed there, they would be smashed and looted by the crazy wanderers on the first day. However, the residents of District A5 lacked nothing in terms of clothing and food. They seemed to prefer showcasing their noble morality through such generosity. After the failure of T001, the dreamlike elderly people's nation was torn apart to reveal its true face. The island was shrouded in grey cold fog with a blurry vision, slippery and difficult to walk on the wet road. The incessant raindrops were enough to make one feel anxious. A group of awakeners passed by, and fragments of their conversation were carried into Song Ku's ears by the wind. The access restriction is about to expire. Damn, where did the people here go? Maybe we should give up. S-level missions were never easy, and this place is eerie. I feel uneasy. Captain, let's just leave. Sure, let's go. Staying here is no fun it's like a ghost town. As they spoke, the group headed towards the splendid tower, seemingly preparing to retreat. Song Ku watched them go, took another sip of the warm corn juice, and then left the small pavilion. Chapter, 195 The island split open. Inside an unmanned coffee shop two meters away, Zhuang Qinyan asked in a low voice, any progress? Su Cha shook his head quickly, the structure of this island is different from a regular city. There are no air raid shelters or underground facilities for refuge. I've confirmed that all residential buildings and public places are empty. Is that so? Interesting Zhuang Qinyan supported his chin, and his gaze gradually became distant. Su Cha hesitated, but eventually voiced his thoughts, the feeling here is very unsettling. What do you find unsettling? Zhuang Qinyan lifted his gaze. Everything is too clean and orderly. The residents don't seem to have suffered an attack. Instead, it feels like they disappeared out of thin air. 
Su Cha knew his thought sounded absurd, but that's what he believed, the residents of the elderly people's nation had vanished into thin air. Your intuition is correct, Zhuang Qinyan nodded faintly. I guess they left voluntarily. This statement stirred up waves of questions. What? Lin Yuyu exclaimed in disbelief. Why would they leave voluntarily? Elderly People's Nation is the most prosperous city in the entire alliance. Why would they run to our lower level districts and suffer? Doesn't make sense, right? There are quite a few residents here. If they really left, how could there be no news at all? Fang Jishu questioned. The number of local residents in the elderly people's nation was around a million, a mere drop in the bucket compared to the alliance's 30 billion population. However, for a million people to vanish quietly, especially among the privileged class, it couldn't possibly happen without causing a stir. This S-level mission was becoming more and more mysterious. The residents of the elderly people's nation were hiding something, but what were they hiding and where had they gone? That's right, a million people can't just disappear out of thin air, Zhuang Qinyan lightly tapped the table with his fingertips, his gaze turning gradually cold. So I suspect that the central court has long known the truth, and perhaps this is part of their plan. The others listened, feeling confused, and were about to ask Zhuang Qinyan for clarification. Something doesn't seem right, Su Cha spoke up, his sensitivity to the environment making him keenly aware. What's wrong? The others became tense. After leaving the splendid tower, I made a reference mark using a landmark, Su Cha pointed to a spot below, the position of that tree has changed. Lin Yuyu looked over in confusion and then turned back with the same confusion. I can't see anything. What do you all think? Zhuang Qinyan frowned at the statement. It's not the tree that's changing it's our position. Surrounded by endless seas, it was easy for people to lose their sense of direction in such an environment. Lu Xiaoyu quickly pulled up a map, confirming their current location. Wow, here's some bad news. From the time we landed on the island until now, the exact position of the elderly people's nation has shifted 30 nautical miles. When nobody noticed, the entire island had been moving at a gentle pace on the surface of the sea. Everyone fell silent. Su Xing asked innocently, is this island alive? Maybe it's due to magnetic attraction Zhuang Qinyan pondered for a moment. Can we determine the direction of its movement? Lu Xiaoyu clattered on the keyboard, then abruptly stopped, even worse news, it seems to be heading towards the Sea of Misfortune. The Sea of Misfortune Triangle, the legendary nightmare of countless sailors, a place of no return. Fifteen hours from now, in less than a day. Just as Song Ku was about to speak, her eyes suddenly froze. A two-meter-long emperor crab crawled towards them horizontally, its eight long legs raised high. Swiftly, Song Ku threw a flying knife, piercing through its crab shell and pinning it firmly in place. The zombie emperor crab's green bean-sized eyes twitched a few times, and it spat out a pool of foul-smelling pus. woo wa 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 ah wa wa it's so scary. Su Xing agilely jumped onto a chair and pointed, Sister, there are more outside. Song Ku suddenly looked up, and indeed, there were more than a dozen of the same creatures crawling quickly on the muddy streets. Ah! Ear-piercing screams echoed from a distance. Densely packed light flesh-colored sea rats emerged from the corners, resembling giant radishes with long tails, wriggling and crawling on the damp ground. Song Ku's face turned pale. This was definitely not something that should be in the elderly people's nation. How did they manage to pass through the barrier? The sound of engines starting came from above. A fully armed supersonic ship slowly took off from the helipad on the top floor of the splendid building. Was it the team that had just planned to leave? Song Ku raised her head to bid them farewell. The supersonic ship ascended smoothly and, after a short while, plunged straight down with its nose into the sea. Song Ku. Suddenly, she felt like she had returned to Hua City, witnessing the meteor shower of starships crashing again. On the faces of Lu Xiaoyu and others were expressions of uncontrollable surprise. The energy source failed. No, the EU was sucked away. All the flying terminals in the Alliance, to some extent, used the new energy source EU to maintain their levitating capabilities. 
the Lu starships were entirely powered by this new energy source. Without EU, they could only perform short-distance flights and needed to stop periodically to replenish their energy. Zhuang Qinyan quickly scanned the environmental index, the magnetic field is disturbed. As he spoke, the cup of corn juice on the table suddenly tilted, and with a plop, it spilled on the table, and the viscous yellow liquid oozed out. In the blink of an eye, the earth began to shake violently. The dull vibrations came from the depths of the sea, and the thunderous sound waves rapidly spread upward. Crackle. A deep and bottomless crack tore open the ground beneath their feet. Lin Yu Yu almost did a split, but at a critical moment, Su Cha embraced her with one hand, and the two jumped to the other side, standing together with Song Ku, Fang Jishu, and Su Xing. However, the crack became deeper and larger, unexpectedly splitting the island in half. Song Ku and the other six people were dumbfounded. The elderly people's nation was splitting open. Literally splitting open. The seismic activity from the ocean floor continued. After the first crack appeared, numerous fissures followed closely behind. The irreversible trend of the island's destruction quickly unfolded, and fragments of varying sizes fell from high above. Crack. As Song Ku stumbled, she reached out and steadied herself with one hand. She watched as the island fragment where Zhuang Qinyan and Lu Xiaoyu were slid away from her. In a critical moment, Lu Xiaoyu's six mechanical arms extended, stabbing into the ground on the opposite side. With both the person and the wheelchair airborne, they narrowly landed on the opposite side. Due to the strong momentum, he inevitably fell out of the wheelchair, and Fang Jishu and Su Cha hurried to help. Zhuang Qinyan wasn't as lucky. He was closest to the crack, and as the ground tilted, his wheelchair rapidly descended. If he fell down like this, whether he could swim or not, being crushed to death was certain. Song Ku took two steps back, then suddenly accelerated and charged forward. She leaped into the air, swiftly reaching the edge of the cliff. With a short spiritual dagger formed in her hand, she exerted all her strength to stab into the ground, grabbing hold of the falling Zhuang Qinyan with one hand. Zhuang Qinyan's entire body swayed among the falling debris. His other hand tightly grasped Song Ku's hand. Song Ku's toes kept sliding forward. She gritted her teeth, her face turned red as she exerted all her strength to pull upwards. Suddenly, Zhuang Qinyan was lifted into the air, and Song Ku's arms encircled him. Due to the inertia, they both rolled on the ground. After rolling out of the inclined area, Song Ku got up, kicked Zhuang Qinyan's shin, and roared like an angry dragon. Don't pretend to be a cripple, get up. Run. Zhuang Qinyan made a painful hiss and smiled bitterly, Song Ku, you overestimated me. Did he pretend to be lame just now? Having used a wheelchair for almost a year, he was now a genuine weak researcher. No matter how fast his mind worked, his physical strength couldn't keep up. The two of them crawled back to the elevated area where Lin Yuyu and others were a relatively intact fragment of the island. Song Ku, catching her breath after the ordeal, sat on the ground and suddenly saw something that left her stunned. Among countless cracks in the islands, a colossal head emerged. Its face was covered in large black spots, two eyes shrouded in gray shadows, and it slightly opened its mouth, devouring several falling awakeners. As this giant beast moved, Song Ku gradually saw its complete appearance. Its body length exceeded a hundred meters, covered entirely in a dark green hard shell, except for the head, limbs, and tail. The back shell was adorned with thousands of barnacles, creating a forest of barnacles that could instantly terrify sufferers of trypophobia. With a splash, the monster's long forelimbs rose above the water's surface, patting the island where they were like oars. Another round of earthquakes ensued, and the cracks underfoot grew larger and larger. Song Ku suddenly realized that it was this monster that shattered the elderly people's nation. The terminal beeped, and a new urgent message popped up. New submission urgent, please eliminate the level 5 zombie monster the prism shell sea turtle that has appeared in District A5 elderly people's nation as soon as possible. Chapter, 196 Grown a Tale According to the Worldwide Illustrated Guide to Zombie Creatures published after the Apocalypse. Evolutionary zombies are classified into levels 1 to 4. 
Level 4 Zombie Kings retain some human intelligence but lack conscious awareness. The levels of mutant zombies fluctuate with the original host's level, decreasing proportionally, with a maximum not exceeding level 4. A level 4 mutant zombie is equivalent to an S-level awakener, but so far, such monsters have not appeared worldwide. Zombies slash mutant beasts only have 1 to 5 levels, with level 5 mutant beasts posing a severe threat to a particular area. Although their intelligence cannot be compared to humans, even zombie kings, each one possesses destructive combat power capable of wreaking havoc. The District B supplier, who was remotely monitoring the mission, obviously did not anticipate the appearance of a level 5 monster in the elderly people's nation. The commission they issued was originally just an investigative mission, intended to recover a substantial debt. As the Awakeners delved deeper, facing both intense radiation and oceanic monster swarms, and now encountering a level 5 armored sea turtle, it has far exceeded their psychological endurance. These suppliers regret their decision the elderly people's nation is truly a den of wolves, no wonder the system automatically rated it as S. Clap. Clap, clap. The armored sea turtle continued its relentless attacks. Buildings on the island collapsed with a resounding crash, debris continuously falling. Luckily, the elderly people's nation had a large area and could temporarily withstand its destruction, but the situation remained far from optimistic. Lu Xiaoyu opened the map amidst the turbulence, the movement speed has increased. In four hours, we will enter the Sea of Misfortune's Triangle. Song Ku looked around. On the uneven land, awakeners were taking action one after another. Some close combat specialists found their positions and jumped down, landing steadily on the turtle shell. Faced with the enormous armored sea turtle, Gu Rui's gathering ability was nearly useless. Other group-based abilities also found it difficult, Jennifer's flames were extinguished by the seawater before igniting. And Su Xing's ice shards hit the back shell with no damage, instead providing an opportunity for the turtle to scrape off many barnacles. Su Xing, what? Is he now a janitor? Yin Zhao's expression was cold he quickly climbed to the top of a collapsed hospital building, set up a mortar, and aimed at its two eyes. They say, as slow as a tortoise, but this armored sea turtle seemed to have lived for an unknown number of years, with intelligence evidently not low. Seeing the shells flying towards itself, it desperately scraped and jumped forward. Boom! The explosive shells missed by a hair's breadth, only hitting its incredibly tough shell, leaving behind a burnt imprint. Yin Xiao cursed under his breath. Unless there is an instant activating ability, achieving a one-hit kill is necessary. Otherwise, once there is a wind-up before an attack, it can easily escape. The armored sea turtle, with its sturdy shell and the advantage of the ocean as its home turf, makes the battle particularly challenging. The tower where the Kazan locomotive is located is the only high ground remaining in the surrounding ruins. Veronica's eyes lit up, her brown hair flying as she slowly revealed a tarot card in her palm, the tower card in reverse. Symbolizing the advent of disaster, complete collapse. Veronica's trembling hand stroked the card, murmuring. We will die eventually. Vladimir held her head, their foreheads gently touching. God be with us, Veronica. Wait for me to come back. After saying this, he turned and left, his robust figure stepping on the falling rubble, leaping towards the armored sea turtle, and slamming his fists heavily on its shell. Boom! The earth shook, and even the formidable attack of the level 5 beast paused for a moment. Dylan's sea blue eyes sparkled with anger as he stared at the gray white eyeball on the side of the armored sea turtle. His awakened ability, Nightmare Descends, was activated, freezing the movements of the beast. Its forelimbs were fixed on the sea surface, entering a state of sleep paralysis. Onlooker Su Xing's small face puckered again. He's so useless he's being outperformed again. He could only scratch the armored sea turtle's itch while Dylan took control of it. Song Ku and Su Cha exchanged a glance, their spiritual tools shining in their hands. This battle seemed to have more risks than rewards, but the current situation left them no choice. If they didn't kill the armored sea turtle, only death awaited them. Protect yourselves, Song Ku anxiously reminded his companions, giving an extra look to Zhuang Qinyan. Su Cha silently gazed at Lin Yuyu, 
her lips moving slightly as if wanting to say something. Lin Yuyu approached with big strides, lifted her tiptoes to touch his head, and her soft fingers slid down to his neck. She gently pressed, causing Su Cha to obediently lower his head. Their noses touched, and Lin Yuyu's lips curved, I'm not interested in raising another puppy, so be safe, okay? Su Cha's breath hitched, but Lin Yuyu quickly let go, stepped back, and turned to shout at Fang Jishu, Old Fang. Help me check, am I wearing the life jacket correctly? Su Cha steadied himself and followed behind Song Ku. The two of them, one in front and one behind, jumped onto the back of the armored sea turtle with a thud and a clang. Yang Xiaobo, who was already on top, cursing and slashing at barnacles, tried to knock a hole in it. Seeing them, his eyes widened. Why did V587 slacker come at a time like this? Shouldn't they be hiding? Yang Xiaobo stood up with a scoot, hands on hips, advising, Hey, don't seek your death here. Leave this to big brother Yang. Song Kuk paid no attention, soaring up and down with Su Cha. They quickly traversed the dense barnacle jungle, disappearing from sight. Yang Xiaobo muttered, Big brother Yang can't save you now. On their way forward, Song Ku was suddenly stopped by a man. The man, an awakener resembling a polar bear from Loose Federation, quickly said to her. Song Ku. What kind of language is this? Fortunately, the terminal had a built-in translator. Song Ku quickly opened it, and when the other saw her actions, he repeated himself quickly. I'm Vladimir, an S5 level close combat awakener. It's tough to kill this beast alone, and I want to team up with you. In such a critical moment, powerful awakeners should unite. Vladimir looked down at the slender girl in front of him. If Veronica said this person is a tank, her divination would never be wrong. Song Ko performed a graceful knife dance, pointing to her own eyes, indicating that they would attack the beast's head. Vladimir, attack together I'll deal with its forelimbs. Song Ku glanced at the translator, nodded first, and then raised her fist with a serious expression. You're a charge. Vladimir pounded his fists, responding, Yura. The three of them acted separately. Song Ku jumped near the armored sea turtle's head, where the water had already reached her thighs, making movement difficult. With a swift slash of her knife, the blade shining with a dark green glow, Song Ku instantly attracted the attention of the monstrous head, which slowly turned towards her. On the other side, Su Cha feigned a spear thrust, pretending to stab its eyeball. The armored sea turtle, using the same tactic as before, exerted force on its forelimbs to leap forward. Unexpectedly, Su Cha suddenly changed direction, altering the attack to the thin membrane-like ears behind its eyes. This turned out to be a deceptive move, fooling it into evading in the wrong direction. Having perfectly relayed to the front, Song Ku pushed off with both feet, splitting the waves as she jumped into the air. The spiritual tool in her palm emitted a blue light, and she accurately and steadily plunged it into the right eyeball of the monstrous beast. Almost simultaneously, a burst shell came from a distance. Taking advantage of the moment when the armored sea turtle froze, it precisely hit its left eye. Song Ku suddenly looked up, seeing a young man on the dilapidated hospital rooftop with a sniper scope, giving her a thumbs up. The armored sea turtle, now with both eyes injured, convulsed in pain. Amidst the gasps, it suddenly opened its mouth, and a powerful jet of air burst forth, creating towering waves that instantly overturned a large number of awakeners. Splash! Song Ku and Su Cha both fell into the water, but they had created an excellent opportunity. Vladimir, lurking in the water, had already taken his position. Grabbing the powerful forelimbs of the armored sea turtle, his awakened ability distortion was activated. The ten-meter-long forefin was instantly twisted into a bloody and blurry spiral, with thousands of bone spurs piercing into the fragmented flesh. Vladimir held his breath, blowing out bubbles, and his strong feet pushed against the turtle's shell in the opposite direction. Under the extremely terrifying force, the entire forefin was torn off. Other awakeners followed suit, attacking the remaining three limbs of the armored sea turtle exposed outside the shell. Various awakened abilities rained down, and while they didn't directly tear like Vladimir, there were uneven wounds. Dylan sprinted on the fragments of the island, 
finally circling to the front of the armored sea turtle. Staring at its single eye, he activated Nightmare Descends again. However, this time, whether due to blindness or acquired resistance, it unexpectedly failed. Snap! The enraged turtle thrashed left and right, its hard shell colliding with debris. The ground collapsed under Dylan's feet, and he almost fell, with his black-clad bodyguard quickly rushing over to catch him. With its front limbs gone, the armored sea turtle shook violently in pain, entering a frenzied state. Unprepared, it leaped out of the water, its body rotating 360 degrees, and the awakeners on its back were thrown into the water. Vladimir was even carried up by the rolling waves, uncontrollably falling from a height of over 10 meters. The gray-white eyeball of the armored sea turtle oozed dirty blood, quickly locking onto its retaliatory target. It crazily chased Vladimir, and with a thud. The hard edge of the turtle shell collided with Vladimir, blood splattered in all directions, and a piece of his flesh was cut off raw. No. Veronica on the high tower clutched the railing, screaming heartbreakingly. Her eyes suddenly brightened to the extreme, and behind her, dark clouds gathered with lightning and thunder. The sea where the elderly people's nation was located immediately stirred up fierce winds and huge waves. Everyone was shocked this was a weather manipulator. An awakener with the ability to forcibly change local weather, a weather manipulator capable of summoning wind and rain, is typically an extremely powerful S-level awakener. The armored sea turtle's retaliation was forcibly halted as it struggled to maintain balance amidst the towering waves. Veronica, an S-level dual element awakener, had always kept her second ability well hidden. However, seeing Vladimir in a life-or-death situation, she could no longer afford to hold back her strength and only wanted to save her beloved. Veronica frantically tried to gather a new divination card, but divination had a time limit. Although she was anxious, it was of no use. Moments later, she muttered a curse and climbed down from the high tower, jumping into the sea to rescue Vladimir. Chapter 197 Grown a tail. With the retaliation target lost, the armored sea turtle began to wildly thrash around the islands. With a swing of its hind legs, another piece of debris was cut off. The space for awakeners to take shelter was getting smaller, and soon they would have nowhere to hide. Lu Xiaoyu, facing the fierce wind and shouting, said, Hey! You're at least an S-level awakener. Qin you control it? Zhuang Qinyan replied with the same volume, even if I control it, I can't kill it. This armored sea turtle was not as easy to deal with as the cockroach king in Hua City. It had thick skin and a nearly full defense index. Zhuang Qinyan could indeed control it with mental ability, but he couldn't kill it with a single blow. Moreover, after being controlled once, it would undoubtedly become wary. Dylan's second attempt just now failed, so his mental attack should be saved for a critical moment, coordinated with Song Ku's attack. Song Ku and Su Cha both fell into the water. They stuck their heads out, took a deep breath, and continued diving into the sea, chasing after the armored sea turtle. Through the murky seawater, Song Ku noticed that they were beneath the belly of the armored sea turtle. This area was its softest and least defended weak point. The slightly pinkish flesh appeared smooth and intact. Su Cha blew a series of bubbles and gestured to her. Song Ku understood he suggested that if they could endure it, they should launch an attack from below. Song Ku also blew a series of bubbles, nodded, and indicated that she could stay underwater for seven or eight minutes without a problem. She grabbed a semi-submerged piece of the building wreckage beside her, and with a flash of blue light in her palm, two frigid saw-toothed knives appeared. She gently pushed one forward, and Su Cha took the other. The two of them swung their legs, quickly approaching the armored sea turtle. A storm raged overhead, and the armored sea turtle went madly charging and colliding. The already precarious islands worsened under the onslaught. On the few remaining high ground pieces, Zhuang Qinyan was soaked through, his white casual clothes sticking tightly to his body, looking somewhat disheveled. He took off his waterlogged glasses, ran his fingers through his wet hair, suddenly raised his head, and looked towards the vast sea. What's happening again? Feng Jishu held on to Lu Xiaoyu's mechanical arm, asking in a trembling voice. Not good. Zhuang Qingyan's expression was unusually solemn. 
Su Cha made several cuts to open the belly of the armored sea turtle, and the toxic mist quickly permeated. He turned back to signal Song Ku to retreat, retreat, retreat. The two of them agilely moved backward. After a few seconds, the armored sea turtle rolled 360 degrees again, and the chaotic waves pushed them more than 10 meters away. However, its wound rapidly decayed due to the spread of toxins. Song Ku's eyes lit up there was a chance. Just as she was about to tell Su Cha to try again a few more times, her eyes suddenly widened. The seawater was infused with a large amount of fresh blood, both from the armored sea turtle and the awakeners. The strong scent of blood attracted other ferocious beasts in the vicinity. In the blurry and dim background, a group of mutated man-eating sharks great white sharks swiftly swam towards them. Their pupils were vertical, and their blood-filled mouths were full of serrated teeth, attacking the awakeners in the water. Two of them were particularly ferocious, radiating chaos and likely being level for ferocious beasts. Song Ko felt like crying without tears it was like adding insult to injury. A level 5 armored sea turtle was already challenging, and now two level 4 mutated man-eating sharks had joined the fray. The awakener closest to the shark group was the first to bear the brunt. Without any chance to evade, they were quickly torn apart and devoured by the sharks. This gruesome feast happened in an instant. The ferocious beasts didn't stop at just one meal one of the level 4 man-eating sharks swam towards the abdomen of the armored sea turtle, viciously tearing and biting into it. The man-eating sharks moved extremely fast. In the blink of an eye, they reached their next target Su Cha's surroundings. Fighting in the water was inconvenient, and Su Cha was trapped. Though he fought back with all his strength, the number of sharks was just too overwhelming. A slight delay in turning around resulted in one of the sharks biting into his arm. Song Ku gripped a piece of building debris at her fingertips, conjuring a phantom blue spear and thrusting it forward. It hit the offending man-eating shark, causing it to release its grip. Su Cha took advantage of the opportunity to escape, but the assault with the spear continued, sweeping through the sea like a boomerang. The spear had cut through the spindle-shaped bodies of these ferocious beasts, and black blood gushed out, disrupting the formation of the shark group. Su Cha followed closely behind Song Ku as they escaped. While swimming, he pulled out a securing band, tightly binding the wound to prevent the blood from attracting more monsters. Bang, bang, bang. The fragments of the islands continued to be violently impacted. The ferocious shark group stuck their heads out, glaring menacingly at the awakeners on the land. Even more unfortunate was the sudden thunderous roar from the direction of the Sea of Misfortune, causing shockwaves that triggered a devastating tsunami. What kind of cursed mission is this? Lin Yu Yu felt like crying without tears. First the armored sea turtle, then the sharks, and now a tsunami. Under the triple impact, the once glorious elderly people's nation finally crumbled and collapsed. All the awakeners fell into the abyss. Lin Yu Yu, who couldn't swim, closed her eyes tightly and plunged into the water. Despite vigorously flapping her arms and legs, she couldn't resist the sinking trend. She frantically felt for her life jacket, but her fingertips suddenly stopped. It seemed that when a person is having a stroke of bad luck, even sipping cold water can be problematic. Her life jacket, which she had checked countless times, was unfortunately torn by falling debris. Lin Yu Yu suddenly choked on water, and as her lungs rapidly emptied of oxygen, her heart rate slowed down. Was she going to die? In her next life, she definitely needed to learn how to swim. As her vision became increasingly blurred and her consciousness disoriented, Lin Yu Yu hallucinated at the critical moment. A massive black shadow appeared to swim towards her. The intense seismic waves triggered a tsunami that swept away all the ferocious beasts and awakeners. Song Ko was caught in a whirlpool, floating and sinking without knowing where she was going. She struggled to break free, finally overcoming the dizziness. A level 4 man-eating shark had just finished devouring two awakeners, and its grey-white vertical pupils focused on Song Ko. With a flick of its forked tail fin, it lunged towards her. Song Ku hurriedly changed direction, forcefully kicking her legs. However, the marine apex predator, the man-eating shark, was evidently faster in its hunting action. In the blink of an eye, it caught up to her, 
reaching her lower legs and viciously biting down. But it didn't succeed. Its jaw was firmly wedged. A lengthened triage military dagger unexpectedly appeared on Song Ka's lower leg, resiliently holding its jaws open. The shark, caught in agony, violently thrashed about. The sharp teeth with gaps cut through Song Ka's legs, conveying a knife-like pain to her brain. However, she didn't retract her leg. Instead, she turned and lifted it, exerting force from the inside outward with the triage military dagger, piercing through the shark's jaw. Black blood gushed out. The level 4 ferocious beast, with its limited intelligence, showed signs of retreat due to fear. It desperately swung its dorsal and tail fins, attempting to escape from Song Ka's clutches. Biting me and trying to run away. Song Ka's upper body quickly approached. With both hands gripping the knife, she thrust it into the shark's dead white eyeball, cutting out a cross from the inside. Splash! The entire head of the man-eating shark was split open. Inside the decaying flesh and tissues, a pigeon blood red crystal sparkled. Song Ku raised her hand, cut out the crystal, and stowed it in her pocket. The man eating shark gradually ceased struggling. She then dove into the shark's mouth, recovered the triage military dagger, slowly withdrew her leg, and gave it a firm kick. The heavy body of the man eating shark sank to the seabed. Song Ku glanced at her right leg, which was blurred with blood from the shin to the ankle. Pain was something she could endure, but along with the pain, there was an unsettling shiver that had faintly emerged from the depths of her soul since a moment ago. It seemed that the aftereffects of the 30% excessive radiation were slowly manifesting now. Song Ka's entire cellular structure was burning intensely, and the agonizing pain of genetic tearing made her scream silently. In the unseen back of her neck, a branding-like burning sensation penetrated into her bone marrow. After a few seconds, Song Ku was horrified to discover that scales had actually grown on the back of her hand. She looked around anxiously and hastily took refuge in a coral reef, tightly hugging herself and hiding her hands. What's happening? Could that man-eating shark have some contagious disease? Worriedly, Song Ku touched her leg. Fortunately, her second ability was now taking effect, and her cells were renewing, healing the wound at a steady pace. It's okay it's okay it'll be fine later. Song Ku reassured herself, exhaling a string of bubbles. She had been underwater for almost seven minutes it was time to go up for air. Song Ku touched her leg again and felt that it had recovered enough. She slowly swam out of the coral reef. Then she abruptly stopped, her movements freezing. She lowered her head to look at her legs. No, those were not legs at all. Her legs had disappeared. From the waist down, Song Ka's lower body transformed into a long snake tail, covered with fine scales, and the tip of the tail emitted a dazzling poisonous light. Song Ka shook it forcefully, trying to get rid of whatever it was. Why couldn't it change back? Snap! The barbed fork at the end hit the coral reef where she had just hidden, turning its bright red color into ash white, and then it shattered with a resounding crash. Ha! Huh. It's so powerful! Song Ku dumbfoundedly opened her mouth, letting seawater pour in. She coughed it out. A figure in the distance swam towards her, and Song Ku raised her head warily. Chapter 198 Utopia A faint figure appeared in front, and Song Ku suddenly turned around, trying to hide her tail. Although she didn't understand why her legs had disappeared, the disastrous situation clearly couldn't be discovered by others, and she couldn't explain it at all. The newly grown snake tail was heavy and slippery, and it didn't behave Song Ku tried to coil it up several times, but it quickly unraveled. The moving figure gradually approached, and Song Ku tightened the spiritual weapon in her hand. The other party's face was fully revealed. It was Su Cha. Song Ku breathed a sigh of relief, too lazy to coil her tail, letting it relax and sway gently in the sea. After Su Cha found her, he raised his right hand, ready to make a gesture, but his movement suddenly froze. His eyes widened in disbelief, and upon closer inspection, even his pupils were trembling. Song Ku, she shook her tail, opened her hands, indicating her helplessness. Su Cha was indeed Su Cha. His mental resilience was exceptionally strong. 
He was only stunned for less than two seconds before he came to his senses. He took off the combat jacket on him, swam over and tied it around Song Ka's waist. The two sleeves were tied in the middle to create a barrier. He lifted the forked tail, making it less noticeable from the front, although it looked a bit strange. Song Kuf patted his shoulder, indicating that she was about to suffocate and needed to go up first to breathe. With a strong force from her snake tail, she shot out into the distance, moving twice as fast as before, instantly creating a distance between her and Su Cha. Splash! Song Ku suddenly emerged from the sea, gasping for breath. Three or four minutes later, Su Cha followed suit. Looking up, the elderly people's nation had completely collapsed, and debris of various sizes floated on the sea. In the distance, Awakeners were still fighting the bloodthirsty sea turtles, while also being distracted by the mutant shark group, gradually finding it difficult to cope. Song Ku was shocked, what happened to the island? Collapsed. She still had two companions who couldn't swim. Su Cha's face also changed, and Song Ku quickly pressed the communicator on her collar, Are you okay? Report your location. Lu Xiaoyu's indifferent voice immediately sounded, we're fine. It would be even better if there weren't so many man-eating sharks at the drop point. The mechanical arm made a faint sound of movement, accompanied by Fang Jishu's weak groan, Xiao Lu. Take it slow while swimming, I feel a bit dizzy. Then came Su Xing, I'm fine. I was picked up by Dylan's bodyguard. He and Dylan were thrown onto an inflatable boat, far away from the center of the battlefield. Dylan's azure eyes looked at him with confusion, and he muttered in the Karyo language, Where did this little brat come from? Su Xing. What little brat? I'm a year older than you. Only Zhuang Qinyan obediently reported his coordinates. He coughed weakly and said with a breathless voice, Song Kiki, come and save me. Song Ku looked somewhat distressed, I have some trouble here. Zhuang Qinyan's fragility disappeared in an instant, his voice calm and deep, where are you? I'll come to find you. Song Ku reported her location and asked, What about Yu Yu? While the others were talking, Lin Yu Yu had remained silent. Su Cha frowned, a vague sense of unease rising in his heart. Lin Yu Yu was the worst swimmer among them, and she also had a severe fear of water. Yu Yu. Song Ku raised her voice, Can you hear me? Respond if you hear. No one answered there was silence on the channel. Lin Yu Yu. Are you there? Speak. Su Cha pressed the microphone on his collar, shouting sternly, the muscles in his cheeks trembling from excessive tension. His nerves were like a taut string, ready to snap at any moment. After a full five seconds, Lin Yu Yu's faint and fragile whisper came, Here, here. Su Cha took a sharp breath, then exhaled, as if a drowning person had regained their breath. Where are you? I'll come get you. Ah uh, Lin Yu Yu choked on some water, sounding hesitant, the situation here is a bit complicated. Don't worry about me, first deal with the ferocious beasts. I'm safe, I'll come to you guys in a while. Su Cha casually took care of two or three approaching man-eating sharks, and replied in a low, hoarse voice, all right. Zhuang Qinyan had already swum over, his speed astonishing in the wind and waves. He lay streamlined in the water, and each stroke of his arms was textbook perfect. In the final stretch, he alternated swinging his legs like a sword leaving its sheath, reaching Song Ku in an instant. Song Ku looked at him expressionlessly, thinking, not good at swimming, my foot. He swims exceptionally well. The seawater slid down Zhuang Qingyan's chin into his collar. He reached back to smooth his hair, revealing a perfect forehead. What trouble did you encounter? Song Ku looked nervously, I got infected by a shark. Zhuang Qinyan was slightly puzzled, infected. Their location wasn't exactly at the center of the battlefield. Song Ku looked around and slowly lifted her tail. Zhuang Qinyan's pupils contracted. Let me see. He reached out to touch. Don't touch, don't touch, Song Ku whispered, it's poisonous. She explained the cause and effect of her recent battle with the shark healing her right leg injury, which then transformed into a snake tail. It has nothing to do with that man-eating shark, Zhuang Qingyan's eyes darkened, it's radiation. 
During this time, Song Ko had absorbed too much excessive radiation, first at Ning Rong's laboratory with 130%, and then staying for over an hour under the 30% intensity in the elderly people's nation. Although there were no obvious symptoms at the time, the unknown genes in her body had issues. Can you control turning back? Chuang Qinyan asked. No, Song Ko honestly shook her head. In the distance, the armored sea turtle, under the relentless attacks, finally showed signs of exhaustion, with another level, for man-eating shark seizing the opportunity to tear off half of its hind limb. Zhuang Qinyan glanced at the battlefield. Deal with it quickly, and let's return to the northern base. I'll go below, Su Cha volunteered, sticking to the original plan to continue attacking the armored sea turtle's abdomen. Then I'll go head on, Song Ku said. The armored sea turtle was blinded and heavily damaged, making it the perfect time to kill it. Her long snake tail twisted and moved, slithering, instantly shooting out more than twenty meters. Zhuang Qingyan's eyes flickered slightly, surprised by her speed. He sighed faintly and made an effort to catch up from behind. Yang Xiaobo was being chased by a level, for man-eating shark. He got too carried away after fighting the sea turtle, accidentally using up his awakened energy, and was violently pushed forward by a huge wave bang. He collided with the tail fin of the man-eating shark. The ferocious beast slowly turned its head, and its grey-white eyes stared fixedly at him. Yang Xiaobo's messy hair stood up like a chicken coop, and his legs swung frantically. Don't eat me. I've had malnutrition since childhood, more bones than meat. While shouting wildly, he struggled to gather his awakened ability and threw it forward regardless of the consequences. The man-eating shark, thoroughly angered, opened its massive blood-filled mouth and bit toward his head. Woe is me! Facing imminent death, Yang Xiaobo let out a desperate scream. Swoosh! A slender figure swiftly swam by, and in a flash, the strongest V587 slacker had already positioned himself in front of Yang Xiaobo. The toxic forked tail pierced ruthlessly into the man-eating shark from below the sea surface, freezing the ferocious beast's hefty body. Song Ko acted swiftly, her dual short knives flashing blue light as she mercilessly slashed open its head. The scalding black blood poured over Yang Xiaobo's head and face. Song Ko extracted the crystal quickly, pulled out her tail, sank and floated, then continued swimming towards the armored sea turtle. Yang Xiaobo wiped his face and muttered to himself, Damn, your brother Yang made a mistake. In the center of the battlefield, the life and death struggle between Awakeners and the armored sea turtle continued. Dark clouds covered the sky, and Veronica, holding Vladimir's head, closed her eyes slightly as lightning struck. Guruoi's awakened ability gather finally came into play. The invisible traction brought the scattered shark group together, while Jennifer and others with AoE attacks skillfully unleashed their abilities to clear the monsters. Song Ko took a deep breath, submerged her head into the sea, and with her snake tail swinging rapidly like a flexible ribbon, she leaped across the center of the battlefield. She arrived in front of the armored sea turtle, whose size was still astonishing even when only considering its head. In front of it, Song Ku seemed like a fragile little jellyfish, easily swallowed at any moment. The bloodshot eyes of the armored sea turtle shed bloody tears as it suddenly opened its mouth, fiercely biting toward her. Song Ku agilely dodged, and her tail forked from bottom to top, accurately stabbing into its neck. The potent poison quickly spread, causing the entire turtle's head to rapidly discolor and decay, revealing petrified like cracks. With successive heavy blows to its limbs and head, and blood pouring out from its abdomen, this level, five ferocious beast was now clearly on the brink of death. Its remaining two fins madly slapped the sea surface, and suddenly, it leaped out of the water again, initiating a 360-degree rotation. The counterattack this time was particularly astonishing. The Awakeners who had managed to climb onto the turtle's back were once again thrown off, some directly smashed into mincemeat. As Song Ku bounced up and down with the sea waves, her snake tail strangely maintained balance. The strong airflow propelled her up to a height of 50 meters. In her palm, a trident appeared, radiating a chilling light. The coiled snake tail hid within her coat, and she plummeted down like a projectile. All the awakeners on the sea looked up in shock. 
the short few seconds felt infinitely extended, and the scene before them seemed like a slow-motion replay. A sapphire light flashed by, and the trident pierced through the right eye of the armored sea turtle, relentlessly pushing through and exiting the left eye. The armored sea turtle tilted its head back, violently shaking in pain. Song Ko was tossed up and down, feeling dizzy, but she held on to the trident firmly. She wanted to find the right moment to jump onto its head but couldn't find a suitable opportunity. Damn soloing a level, five ferocious beast. Is she still human? This person is too crazy. Which team is she from? S level. The onlookers, who witnessed the entire process, swallowed their saliva in disbelief and murmured. The armored sea turtle, realizing death was imminent, struggled even more frantically. A strong and chaotic radiation burst from its body, causing thousands of air columns to erupt on the sea surface. Awakeners who couldn't dodge in time were lifted into the sky. Oh no! It's going to self-destruct. An awakener from the Karyo Empire shouted in panic. Once a level, five ferocious beasts self-destructed, the power it generated was comparable to a nuclear bomb. It was enough to wipe out the entire sea area, leaving no one alive. Zhuang Qinyan finally managed to swim to the edge of the battlefield and quickly pressed the communicator on his collar. Song Ku. Countdown three seconds, dissect its crystal. Song Ku, still in disarray from the wind, barely replied, Ah, sure, ah. Zhuang Qinyan's eyes narrowed slightly, locking onto the target. He activated his S-level mental ability, telekinetic piercing. The dead white eyes of the armored sea turtle suddenly froze, and the remnants of its sanity momentarily dispersed. Where was it? It had been sleeping for many years why did it suddenly come out from the depths of the sea? In an instant, Song Ku let go, somersaulting and landing on the turtle's head. With both hands gripping a massive shovel, she thrust it into the brain with all her strength. Immediately, she rapidly stirred left and right until the tip touched something solid. With a forceful pull, a crystal the size of a basketball, dazzling with golden light, shot out. It resembled the newborn morning sun, illuminating the entire battlefield and attracting everyone's attention. Awakeners nearby, unable to resist the temptation, started swimming toward the crystal. Song Ku jumped upward, cradling the crystal in her hands. In an instant, she stowed it away in her dimensional space, and the dazzling golden light disappeared without a trace. Those awakeners abruptly stopped and slowly retreated. After the impulsive urge passed, they regained their senses, beads of cold sweat forming on their backs. Steal the crystal. Are they kidding? This person just soloed a level, five ferocious beast. It would be like cutting vegetables for her to kill them. Really, have they lost their minds? Isn't it better to live peacefully? Why seek a death wish? Awesome. V587. Yin Xiao clung to the turtle shell, shouting loudly. The resounding cheers echoed layer by layer, reaching everyone's ears. Chapter 199 Utopia The shattered head of the armored sea turtle hung into the sea. The radiation within its body dissipated rapidly. Although it had just died, its body could still float temporarily. After a while, it would sink to the bottom. The remaining shark groups were also cleared out, and the exhausted awakeners swam towards the turtle's back, flipping over and climbing up to rest. Zhuang Qinyan swam to the side of the turtle's head, propped himself up with both hands, and jumped up. Song Ku, pitifully curled up on top, was trying to figure out how to walk. The coat used to cover herself had long been torn, and no matter how she hid, the tip of her tail still peeked out. Zhuang Qinyan casually jumped, took out a long coat from the dimensional space, and helped her wrap up again. Then he bent down, his hands passing through Song Ku's waist. He lifted her horizontally and, as he stood up, his steps were a bit unsteady, stumbling a couple of times. The feeling in the palms was slippery her snake tail was indeed too heavy. Song Ku blinked and earnestly suggested, you should exercise. After a while, she couldn't help but mutter, I can lift you with one hand. Zhuang Qinyan. His fingertips moved slightly, and a brand new wheelchair appeared out of thin air. Carefully placing Song Ku onto it, he said with a cold face, tail, 
coil up properly. Song Ku puffed her cheeks, promptly coiling it into a ball. Zhuang Qinyan then took out a blanket and covered her lower body securely. Yin Xiao was not far away and walked over after escaping the danger. Upon seeing the appearance of the two, he was momentarily stunned. Why was Song Ku, who was in a wheelchair, now sitting there? Yin Xiao took a step forward, his eyebrows slightly furrowed. Song Ku, are you injured? No. No. Song Ku hurriedly retreated. I, I just need to rest a bit. Yin Xiao, still concerned, wanted to approach for confirmation. However, Zhuang Qinyan blocked him, his gaze cold. She's fine. Please maintain social distance. Yin Xiao glanced at Zhuang Qinyan, observing him standing perfectly on his two long legs, and his mouth twitched. What's wrong with this guy? Sitting in a wheelchair for no reason. Lu Xiaoyu and Fang Jixiu came from the other side. Although they looked disheveled and had some blood stains, fortunately, they were not injured. Su Cha also returned from underwater. He was wearing a black tank top, and his muscular arms had clear and smooth lines. His left hand, hastily treated, had poor blood circulation, already turned pale due to soaking in seawater. Fang Jixiu hurriedly ran over to treat him. Sister Su Xing ran over with his short legs, wanting to leap into Song Ku's arms midway, he was stopped by Zhuang Qinyan, who pressed down on his head, lowering his voice to warn, don't lift the blanket, don't let anyone get close to her. Protect your sister. Su Xing's radar lit up on his head. Although he didn't understand what was happening, he was quite clever. He immediately ran to Song Ku's side, like a little lion defending his territory with bared teeth and claws. Veronica dragged Vladimir up, holding his head, continuously kissing his cheeks, and murmuring incomprehensible prayers. Vladimir's eyes were tightly closed, his face pale. A whole piece was missing from the right side of his chest, almost reaching his heart. Although S-level awakeners weren't so easily killed, he later attacked with his injuries and, soaked in seawater for a long time, his condition worsened. Without timely treatment, there was a risk of demotion. Song Ku silently looked at the man on the ground. There was no doubt that Vladimir, in terms of character and strength, deserved to be S5 level. She turned her head and called out softly, Old Fang. Su Cha's injuries were not severe, and Fang Jishu had already dealt with them. Upon hearing Song Ku's call, he raised his head and instantly understood Vladimir's situation. Song Ku opened the translator and skillfully switched to loose language, We have a doctor. Do you need one? Veronica stared at her for two seconds, her eyes sad but calm, thank you, but a regular doctor can't save him. Song Ku pointed to Fang Jishu, he is not only a regular doctor but also an A5 level, a healer. Veronica looked shocked, healing awakeners were too rare. Lu certainly had A level healers, but they were usually in big cities, well protected, and rarely involved in life threatening S level missions. Veronica gently placed Vladimir's head down, stood up, and expressed the highest respect to Song Ku in the loose way, thank you. Thank you, she repeated in the alliance language with a hint of awkwardness. Fang Jishu, carrying the first aid kit, crouched down. After more than half a year of training, he had evolved from an excellent operating room doctor to a field doctor who could treat anytime, anywhere, even in the most basic conditions. The light-colored ability flowed out slowly, and Vladimir's complexion visibly improved. Fang Jishu efficiently helped him clean and bandage the wound. Vital signs are stable, and the loss of awakened energy is within a manageable range. Go back and treat him well he can recover. Veronica also deeply bowed to Fang Jishu. Su Cha stepped aside, holding his collar and asked in a low voice, Lin Yu Yu? Where are you? There was a rustling sound from the other side, and after a while, a voice came out, here, here. Oops, wrong, turn right. Who was she talking to? Su Cha furrowed his brows slightly. Yin Xiao looked down at the terminal, the client has decided to abandon the mission, and a starship is coming to pick us up nearby. Everyone stay put. The awakeners on the turtle's back couldn't help but feel a bit disheartened. This S-level mission was full of crises from start to finish, dangerous at every step. 
Yet, in the end, they still couldn't figure out why the residents of the elderly people's nation mysteriously disappeared. In the low-spirited atmosphere, a certain awakener spoke with doubt, why do I feel something is off? Didn't this sea turtle die? Why is it swimming even faster now? Look those island fragments are also moving. Could there be another unexpected twist? The mentally exhausted awakeners silently screamed. Lu Xiaoyu thought of something and pulled out a wet screen to confirm, we've already reached the sea of misfortune. The surrounding magnetic field was in chaos, and the image flickered incessantly. The weather map loaded frame by frame, and Lu Xiaoyu could finally see the whole picture, freezing at the sight. Look over there. Someone exclaimed in terror. In the far distance on the sea's horizon, an immensely large vortex was spinning rapidly, swiftly pulling in everything around it. What on earth is that? Damn, is it causing an underwater earthquake? No, the suction is too strong. The corpse of the armored sea turtle was getting closer to the vortex, and the intense water pressure caused a strong feeling of suffocation. If this continued, everyone would perish. Dive. Swim back. Don't be foolish, where do we swim to? What should we do then? Wait for death. Unless the rescue starship arrives now, what else can we do? Hey! A clear female voice echoed behind the crowd. The familiar voice made Su Cha turn around abruptly. A heavy shadow loomed over, and a colossal creature was swiftly swimming in the sea. Describing it as a colossal creature was not enough how large was its size. Even though they were quite far away, no one could clearly see its entire form, only vaguely glimpsing parts of its body as it moved. This this is a ferocious beast, again. Caught between a rock and a hard place, the emotions of the awakeners on sight were on the verge of collapsing. A tiny figure sat on the back of the giant fish, and Lin Yuyu cupped her hands around her mouth, shouting to the people on the turtle's back. Captain I am here to pick you up free up and get on. Song Ku's face showed surprise, it's Lin Yuyu. Zhuang Qinyan decisively said, let's go. V587 didn't waste any time the group crossed the turtle's back and ran towards the unknown ferocious beast. Others were dumbfounded, what the heck, are they insane? But immediately after, more and more people went crazy. Tustin and Peace Dove followed without hesitation. Yang Xiaobo, while sprinting, shouted loudly, listen to your brother Yang. If you don't want to die, follow V587. Veronica helped the recovering Vladimir to his feet and followed closely. With death on both sides, the remaining awakeners gritted their teeth and also chased after. The colossal creature emitted a distant and resonant roar, extending half of its wing like a massive palm leaf, serving as a makeshift bridge resting on the turtle shell. The awakeners quickly changed their positions and moved to its back. Su Cha swiftly walked a few steps to Lin Yuyu's side, Yu. Lin Yuyu's long hair was soaked, clinging tightly to her face. Her life jacket was tattered, but her eyes were surprisingly bright. She patted Su Cha's shoulder, winked mischievously, this time, I really escaped from death. I'll tell you the legendary story later. Su Cha. The onlookers, other awakeners, were completely stupefied. What kind of freaks were in this team called V587? They looked like slackers yet easily soloing level 5 and level 4 ferocious beasts. The healing awakener was perfectly fine but didn't stay in the city instead, they played on the battlefield for the thrill. And now, there was a woman who could control ferocious beasts. Did they even understand what a normal awakener should be like? Before the crowd could express their amazement, the scene before them changed once again. In the center of the Sea of Misfortune, the vortex's rotation speed increased rapidly, and the armored sea turtle's corpse was sucked in, instantly torn apart. Fierce winds, tsunamis, torrential rain the powerful suction made it hard to breathe, and the sky turned as dark as the deepest night. At this moment, the colossal creature beneath them suddenly flapped its wings, leaping out of the sea surface. Everyone felt a flash before their eyes, and the whole world became incredibly ethereal. Surrounded by flowing clouds, it felt like one could reach out and touch the sky. No one spoke the ultimate shock couldn't be expressed in words. This ferocious beast Zhuang Qinyan spoke with solemnity, is a kuan. 
Ancient texts from the old civilization once recorded, in the northern seas, there is a fish called kuan, its size immeasurable, capable of transforming into a flying bird named pang. The outspread wings resembled descending clouds. The mutated marine creature brought by Lin Yuyu, regardless of its original form, truly deserved the name Kuan. However, today was destined to be an extraordinary day, as they were about to witness history unfold. In the center of the vortex, a colossal black city slowly rose, casting a shadow that covered the sky. The rushing seawater cascaded down like a silver waterfall from the celestial river. After leaving the sea surface, it freed itself from the constraints of gravity, accelerating faster and soon surpassing the kuan where the people were, hovering in the air. Lu Xiaoyu quietly looked up at the bottom of the city, an endless stream of Yu was continuously supplying energy. Even as a former member of the Lu family, he had never seen so many Yu at once. Utopia, Chuang Qinyan slowly pronounced a word. What? Song Ku asked in confusion. Zhuang Qinyan gazed at the enormous shadow overhead with deep and distant eyes. The famous utopianist, Smiral, proposed an idea in the early stages of his theory. He believed that above the 180 districts of the Alliance, there should exist an S-level city where people enjoy the most beautiful life equality, shared wealth, free from oppression and troubles, like the legendary Utopia. That S-level city is called Utopia. Zhuang Qinyan smiled faintly, his eyes chilling, Unfortunately. Unfortunately what? Someone couldn't help but murmur. Zhuang Qinyan's tone carried a hint of mockery, unfortunately, Smiral himself was considered the most arrogant utopianist in recent history. He was sentenced to death and sent to the death prison for multiple crimes. The central court believed that his theory was fundamentally impractical and unanimously rejected it, officially abolishing it. He opened Song Ku's terminal, went to the mission page, and without hesitation clicked complete. Thanks to this accidentally triggered S-level mission, now everyone knew where did the residents of the elderly people's nation actually go. The Awakeners looked solemn, turned on their cameras, faithfully recording everything before them. As this floating city stabilized, visible changes occurred in the surrounding area. The storm over the sea of misfortune dissipated, and sunlight replaced the darkness. The thick black color on the surface of Utopia gradually faded, revealing a pure white glow, as if it truly resembled the idyllic paradise Smiral described. However, everyone's heads were shrouded in an undispersed shadow. Veronica, sensing something, produced a new divination card in her palm. She slowly flipped it open. The reversed world card. It meant an ungraspable scepter, unclear judgments, and a success filled with flaws. It also symbolized abandoned humanity. Chapter, 200 You're not an alliance person if you don't watch. As everyone immersed themselves in the extraordinary scene before them, Zhuang Qinyan quickly regained composure and was the first to press the complete mission button. Song Ku, who was originally comfortably seated in a wheelchair, observed his actions. Astonished, she slightly raised herself, causing the blanket to puff up. Obviously, that wasn't a posture human legs could contort into. Beside them, Su Xing's small mouth widened into an O shape, his eyes staring in disbelief. Zhuang Qinyan's brow twitched, calmly pressing her down and placing his slender fingers by his lips, signaling both of them not to make a sound. The big one and the small one nodded in unison. Regardless of what had happened in the elderly people's nation, V587's primary goal was an S-level mission. Completing the task and earning points was the most crucial matter. Although everyone was still unclear about the situation, their thoughts were somewhat chaotic. However, Zhuang Qingyan's mind worked quickly. He had already connected all the clues and deduced the truth. Since the original mission was an investigation, they still needed to submit a detailed report explaining the ins and outs to the client. With Zhuang Qingyan around, these issues could be effortlessly resolved. After all, he had once volunteered using Song Ku's mouth to recommend themselves to Yi Zime. Utopia finally came to a stop deep in the sky, resembling a massive floating airship. The chaotic magnetic field around calmed slightly, the mutated Kuan changing direction. Its boundless wings flapped, leaping thousands of miles in an instant. Before their eyes blurred, they had already left the sea of misfortune. 
Lin Yuyu slowly bent down, pressed against its back, and sang an ethereal song. The mutated Kuan seemed to understand her murmurs, raising its head to emit a mournful long cry. In an instant, it plunged into the sea, transforming into an endless giant fish. Waves of shock and amazement gradually numbed the nerves of the Awakeners. Even witnessing Lin Yuyu and the Kuan's brainwave communication, they only stared blankly, their faces expressing, V587. How many surprises do you still have that we don't know about? Soon, they returned to the elderly people's nation's original location. However, there was nothing left here except the vast sea. After T001 malfunctioned, the natural weather became completely chaotic, as if there was a clear boundary line. Half of the sky was clear and sunny, with sunlight shining everywhere, while the other half rumbled with thunder, pitch black as the deepest night. Wandering, confused, and exhausted awakeners, unwilling to think about anything, lay down one after another, waiting for rescue in place. An hour later, three large starships arrived above. Upon discovering the massive creature in the sea, they hesitated to land and could only hover at low altitude, waiting for an opportunity to lower the gangway. The Esper evacuated in an orderly manner, and Song Ku was pushed into the cabin by Su Xing, panting. As they left, Lin Yu Yu looked back, and the mutated Kun emitted a faint and sorrowful sound, seemingly bidding her farewell. It then flipped and disappeared from their sight. The heart pounding day finally came to an end. The exhausted group had no energy for small talk or socializing they quietly took their seats to rest. After V587, Yin Xiao, Gu Rui, and others bid farewell, they deliberately chose the corner room. They entered silently, and Lu Xiaoyu casually installed a signal jammer behind the door to prevent surveillance and eavesdropping. After staring at each other for two seconds, a cacophony of voices erupted. Su Xing, sister, the blanket is crooked what happened? Su Cha, what's the deal with that fish? Lin Yuyu, let me tell you, I had a really unlucky day today. That damn life jacket actually tore. Song Ku, how many points did we get? Let me see. Lu Xiaoyu, the starship is lost. How are we going back? In the midst of chaos, each spoke their own thoughts, and no one could hear anyone else. After a silent moment, they all simultaneously exclaimed. Song Ku raised her fist, stop. One at a time. Lin Yuyu elegantly raised her hand, making a captain first, please gesture. The result was Song Ku starting with a deep sea torpedo. She slowly lifted the blanket, you guys, need to stay calm. A long black snake tail slid down from the wheelchair, quickly occupying the entire space. The cold aura of a snake, with a venomous split hook, slightly curled, emitted a chilling sensation. Lin Yuyu's pupils widened in shock, unable to say a word. Lu Xiaoyu remained indifferent, but his mechanical arm flew out uncontrollably. Su Xing, after a moment of bewilderment, had starlight shining in his jet black eyes, wow so cool. Sister sister so amazing. Can I touch it? His small mouth was as sweet as honey, just once, twice. Song Ku was very generous, don't touch the hook, everything else is fine. Carefully, Su Xing touched it once and quickly withdrew his hand. The texture was a bit rough, and the scales rustled, making his palm itch. He looked like he had found a new and fascinating toy and was about to touch it again. Zhuan Qinyan stepped over the winding snake tail, lifted Su Xing disdainfully by the collar, and threw him to where Fang Jishu was. Song Ku's condition is complicated. Preliminary judgment suggests a genetic issue. I will take her for an examination as soon as we return. On the way back, everyone help provide cover, Zhuang Qinyan explained. In the sea, it wasn't obvious, but now, away from the combat environment, others would easily notice. Everyone nodded, unanimously expressing their willingness to unconditionally protect the captain. Su Cha finally found an opportunity, you and that Kuan. Lin Yuyu casually waved her hand, that doesn't matter. I want to know what Utopia is all about. Su Cha. Zhuang Qinyan sat close to Song Ku, lazily propping up one leg, terminal projecting, and began writing a report, the truth is already clear. Song Ku unconsciously moved her tail, 
wrapping it around him and enclosing him. The last part rested perfectly on his knee. From a distance, Zhuang Qinyan seemed to be sitting on a snakeskin sofa. The conclusion of this S-level mission is evident. The residents of the elderly people's nation did not mysteriously disappear they went to Utopia. Have you heard of the Ark? Zhuang Qinyan freed his left hand, skillfully caressing the snake tail on his leg, like the most proficient masseur, always finding the right spots. There, the nerves were densely distributed, and a weak electric current continuously washed over the crown of her head. Song Kuk comfortably slumped in the wheelchair, eyes slightly narrowed, and the tip of her tail swayed gently. The ancient civilization's Bible once recorded that the mortal Noah, based on God's instructions, built a huge ship named the Ark to protect the world's creatures from God's punishment. The alliance Shuang Qingyan's trailing tone was light and slow, the speed of his one-handed typing neither hurried nor slow. Not only the alliance, but Cario and Luce also participated in this plan. The three nations collaborated to build an Ark, which is Utopia. They issued tickets to a very small number of people. Lin Yuyu exclaimed, So you mean the residents of the elderly people's nation left A5 voluntarily because they got the so-called tickets? Lu Xiaoyu interjected calmly, Perhaps at this moment, they are in Utopia, celebrating with champagne and saying, Oh my God, look at those silly groundhogs below, they will never experience our happiness. This joke is not funny at all. Everyone stared at Lu Xiaoyu with expressionless faces. I still don't understand, Lin Yuyu said slowly, setting aside why they so firmly abandoned the elderly people's nation and chose the elusive utopia, can this matter be hidden for a long time? Even if we hadn't coincidentally taken on this mission, wouldn't the appearance of such a large floating city be exposed? Because utopia has already risen, Zhuang Qingyan's tone was gentle, but the cruel undertone in his eyes was evident. Twenty-one days ago, the elderly people's nation's foreign trade department lost contact. I believe that at that time, they had already transferred to the underwater utopia, waiting quietly for the sailing moment to arrive. Everyone was stunned. Even if it's exposed, it's futile. No one can stop them their purpose has been achieved. Zhuang Qinyan opened the star network. Some awakeners had already uploaded videos of the scene, causing a sensation in a short period. Most people still didn't understand what had happened and simply followed the trend to criticize the leaders of various countries for conspiracies. You said Smirol's theory couldn't be realized, right? Fang Jishu rubbed his chin, showing deep confusion in his eyes. Then why would the Alliance do this? When did they plan it? And how was the floating city implemented? Zhuang Qinyan patted Song Ku, signaling her to turn around, let's push the timeline back to the very beginning. The New Asia Alliance is a nation rebuilt after the war. Due to the nuclear war, the living conditions on the ground became increasingly harsh, and extreme weather occurred frequently. That's why the weather mimicry system was born. Nevertheless, the Alliance may have long determined that this land was not suitable for survival. They needed to find or establish a new home. And after the apocalypse, the situation got worse. Song Ko made an effort to think and provided constructive opinions. Right, the captain is correct. Zhuang Qinyan slid along her tailbone, checking for any wounds inch by inch. The post-apocalyptic zombie tide, ferocious beasts, scarce resources, abandoned cities made the human survival environment even more challenging. As for when Utopia was constructed, perhaps it started even before Smirrel was sent to the death prison, or perhaps, when the proposal to abolish Utopia was first brought up in the council, the alliance began to act. Zhuang Qinyan smiled meaningfully, after all, Rome wasn't built in a day, and such a massive project requires extensive and prolonged preparations. Lu Xiaoyu opened the map and marked a familiar area. The Endless Sea is the perfect factory. It's located at the intersection of the three nations, in a geographically unique position. Although it's an unofficial no-man's land, if anything happens, the forces of various countries can infiltrate in time. Additionally, the natural chaos of the magnetic field in the Sea of Misfortune makes it difficult to be detected by instruments. The construction work is underwater, so there's no need to worry about confidentiality issues. Zhuang Qinyan nodded slightly, rare agreement in his tone, 
after a period of effort, Utopia was finally built. The only challenge left was how to send it into the sky. Not difficult, Lu Xiaoyu immediately retorted, as long as there's enough EU. EU, a new type of energy discovered at the beginning of this century, was initially monopolized by the Urjia's Lu family for mining and purification methods. Later, the Urjia's Lu family voluntarily handed it over to the Alliance. Since then, flying terminals have experienced a leap in development. In the glorious 30 years, the algorithm improved Lu starships improved by Lu Xiaoyu in the 32nd year of the new calendar became a symbol of splendid civilization. Lin Yuyu raised a question, I've read reports that the global reserves of EU are limited. The energy needed for Utopia to ascend must be terrifying. How could they collect so much? I know, Song Ku suddenly spoke, because all the EU in the lower districts was recycled. In the autumn of the 46th year of the new calendar, just a week after the apocalypse had arrived, Song Ku came alone from District F-177 to Hua City. She had witnessed a meteor shower of starships falling, a tragic scene that she would never forget. Since that day, all starships in the lower districts had malfunctioned, making cross-district transportation extremely difficult. She couldn't understand it before, but now she understood everything. Perhaps at the round table meeting in the Central Court District A1, apart from Districts A and B, the 155 lower districts CDEF were considered expendable. Those people there didn't even have complete permissions and might never see the truth of the world. They were like a bundle of discarded firewood in the corner, to be burned when needed. Lu Xiaoyu snorted, I just checked the news from the other two countries. After the apocalypse, the frequency of flying terminal accidents has also increased significantly. Needless to say, the EU that disappeared with Cario and Luce was also used as the power source for Utopia. Zhuang Qinyan chuckled, back to the present timeline. With everything in place, they chose today as the birthday of Utopia. And all the anomalies we experienced, including the failure of T-001, the disappearance of the elderly people's nation's barrier and the sudden appearance of level 4 and level 5 ferocious beasts, are all due to the strong tremors underwater affecting the ecology of the indigenous people. Lin Yuyu sighed while supporting her forehead, we're really unlucky, or rather, those suppliers are the most unlucky, right? Losing both money and goods. I'm not sure about others, but at least V587 is not the most unlucky, Zhuang Qinyan said as he typed the last character. As expected of a high-achieving student from Laponi, the newly crafted detailed and well-worded report, with rigorous arguments, was ready. He took Song Ku's hand, pinched her index finger, and solemnly clicked Submit. If the review is successful, this S-level mission, along with two side missions, will bring them incredible points. Zhuang Qingyan's deep peach blossom eyes curved, and the handsome face revealed a detached indifference to worldly affairs. The storm is about to come. As for what will happen next, let those big shots argue. After all, we're just an ordinary team, occasionally earning some points to make a living. As soon as he finished speaking, he was harshly slapped on the face. Beep beep, the terminal notification sound continued, and in the B10 district high-level awakeners matching conference channel, countless people were looking for them. Oh my god! Have any of you watched this video on the Star Network? Attached link. I did. Who is V587? From our northern base? Yeah, the one who recently joined the group. I'll tag their Captain Song Ku, the best in the world. I don't believe it. That video must be synthesized. I was on the scene the video is authentic. In Shao Locked Heart, are you on site? Curious, Song Ku clicked on it, and the first-person perspective of the sea battle recording greeted her. The main title was extremely explosive. Shocking. Men will be silent after watching, women will cry the Alliance's first ever video of killing a level 5 ferocious beast, the Armored Sea Turtle. The glittering subtitle, Who is the Mysterious V587 ranked 235,706. Below that, there was flashing red text, You're not an Alliance person if you don't watch. V587. Dot.